Dun 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 that's all right. That's fine. It's four notes well, and you just had to stay in tune. Not even in tune, just in tempo and rhythm. And so well, it was like, you know what? I need to my that, own um, thing. With a delay on the call, I think that really, I think this trying to do yes. something all at the same time really, really, <laughs> really goes to show that there actually is a delay on Discord calls. You just don't notice it when you're talking. I don't know. We might just have a fucking Yoko Ono here who's breaking shit up. <laughs> so I, that's, that's fine. I liked it. It was a good idea. I think it highlights the greatest thing about the movie. Wait, what? The the music? I didn't say is that. that. Is that what your Why do you say that, like that would be bad? What's wrong with that? I've already the sewn the seeds of discontent. Sorry. I will watch them flower and blossom Beats over the next flowered. five hours. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, all right. Yes. We, what are we, we, we are live. There is, a, there is a chat coming in. I just said Elden Ring. Why do you say Elden Ring? Did I title this wrong? Oh shit, nice. We were playing Elden Ring? <laughs> Fuck yeah. Have uh, you uh, 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 made the title uh, Elden Ring? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> Elden Ring. Ring. A complete breakdown discussion of the Elden Ring. No. Yep. What's great is that the oh, wait, theme give for... Oh wait, him hours to finish it. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, it was, um, if it was what Robert Rodriguez and all the, the Disney people, if they did Batman, then the Batman's theme song would just be Batman, 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 <laughs> Batman. Oh, yeah. Are you forgetting the V? The Batman, the Batman, the Batman, Batman, the Batman. It ha it would have to come in like groups of three so that you end on the man. No, no, it works it's better like with rhythm with four. With four, <laughs> so that it's every time it's just out of sync in a different way. Yeah, that's funny. The Batman, yeah. the Batman, the Bat. And now the German version. <laughs> this ends no. on... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be funny. Um, hello everybody. This is welcome to EFAP number 176, I believe. I don't God. Bum, bum. Yeah, that's what it says in the title. 176. Yeah. 176. Um, today, we're discussing a little movie that came out. A little movie about a little man, a little cape, flying around, going, ooh. It's pretty niche, I will say. Yeah, mm. not many people have heard of this one, so I thought it would be a neat thing to cover. Um, we told you all to watch it ten weeks ago, because that's how long it's been out. And it's, um, uh, uh, that's, that's it. That's all I got. My intro's done. Covering Invincible. Oh. Is that got capes in it? I think so. It's Whoa. not a movie though, is it? But uh, it could be if you like just edited it all together. Yeah, and cut out a few scenes, make it a little shorter. I wonder how long the runtime would be. Um, bam, bam. Anyway, the we've gathered some um internet intellectuals to discuss whether mm. this film is a film or not. Uh, that's that's what you guys are here for. I'm sure of it. But gonna... is it cinema, Molly? Yes. 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 What's something interesting is that this movie that has be? that it has the really prominent, you know, da 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 da, and by in by an incredible coin. I don't know how incredible it is, but by in a very, I think, a pretty substantive coincidence amount uh, level. I have I I've been going through. Do you guys know the band The Moody Blues? No. Oh, no. Fuck the hell. name. Uh. <laughs> I know it because of yeah, the but, Simpsons. Yeah, but, that's it. Oh, I didn't know they had. A, I didn't know the Simpsons talked about the movie. For you, am I insane? Um, or is is the part where they're in Vegas and Hoba says like he's looking around, all these people are trying to kill him, and he goes, "Ah, the Moody Blues." And there's some two people. One of them's like cold-hearted Hoba ditching his wife while ancient dead runs for his life. That that's sounds. That sounds, yeah, that I that sounds like something I I'm I'm blanking on that episode, but I, I like, vaguely remember. They're a very poetic band. They're they're probably parodying the song called "The Word," 
which <laughs> is like the prequel song to Om, which is a great song. They have an incredible harmony, that band. Um, but they have a song called A Simple Game, and it's very similar. It has bits in there that's very similar to like the Batman theme. Where they go, do, 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 do. Oh, so Batman ripped off the Moody Blues, huh? I knew it. it Not the worst thing to rip off, but Mm. uh, what a great band. What a great band. I think, you know what else sounds like the Batman theme? The Imperial March. It does a bit. Yeah. Quite a bit. Yeah, the first one was the same two notes. That's the, um, the new version they're coming out with in Disney. I mean, the disco Neat. part of the Empire's new facility. Yeah, it, I, yeah, slow slow versions of the Imperial March. If you put it over the Batman, yeah, I think it will work really, really well. I think so. Yeah. Um, well, you want you want that main part? The. Um, ba, ba, ba. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah. Well, I will Never talk, but you were singing. Yeah. Did you just call the Empire's fucking theme music? Fuck. Oh, yes. the, so I, I went on the Simpsons <laughs> wiki to look up the, uh, the, the Moody Blues, and it says that uh, they performed in Las Vegas where they helped attack Homer Simpson <laughs> and Ned Flanders for yeah, dishonoring right. their marriage vows. They struggled not <laughs> to speak in rhyme. Yeah, because... Uh, yeah, I like that. I like that. He says something like, after the first line, he says, uh, takes of red and blue and white, but we decide who. And then someone interrupts and goes, uh, can the poems, it's ass whooping time. And then one of them just goes, I want fatty. And this is so oh, right after that. <laughs> yeah, 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 now it's coming back. Um, I see no We're reason not. We're not here not. to talk about The Simpsons. We're here to talk about the Bloody Moves. True. I see no reason not to delve into the into the movie, and so the way this this format will work, because we slightly change it every once in a while here and there, depending on what we're talking about, is that we'll yeah. we'll probably go. Wait, actually, you know what? Uh, unprecedented. <laughs> <laughs> Quality meme. I'll put that on screen. <laughs> You have to put that on screen, otherwise everybody's Very going to be confused. Because <laughs> you hear it, <laughs> you hear it in his voice. Where are they? Where are they? Um, in, in a, in, I've been, there's been a mutiny, and I have been cooed, and, That's, uh, that is not <laughs> the truth. <laughs> I am no longer in charge, okay? Free, you, you do out? it. Oh, so I'm just gonna be. <laughs> well, I realize so anything I could just... say about the structure is more so you should probably say it because you know what it is. I'm not 100% sure what okay. it is. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess uh, this film was a little bit trickier, I think, to go through than um, other films that we typically go through in chronological order because I think that we're still going to, but um, there may be points where. We, we should just, like, jump very far ahead to make things extremely clear, because this is a little mystery story, and as the film is progressing, there's a lot of information that you don't have access to yet. There's information that you do have and information you don't have, but the whole picture ain't quite there yet. And uh, having rewatched the film twice... Um... Oh, so you've seen it three times? Oh, idiot, yeah. <laughs> Having watched the film twice, um, okay. <laughs> I will say that personally... Bringing can't count to two. Yeah, I know, I know. I mean, we're, buckle in, guys. This is going to be a train wreck. Um, <laughs> I, uh, nice. Uh, I think that watching it a second time, personally, was incredibly helpful in terms of distilling my thoughts. So I'm going to try to go through, uh, have us go through in chronological order, uh, because that way we can talk about each scene on its own. I think, I think if we don't do that, we're going to miss a lot of, uh, stuff that we can talk about. Um, but if necessary, if it starts to get confusing, I'll just basically try and explain as much as possible, uh, that we, that is relevant so that we can start thinking about how everything works. But I guess, um, before we do that, we should probably get a, an idea of how everybody felt about the movie right to left meme you mean you mean an oh, idea right. yeah. my god we're, we're, we're unprecedented today yeah um 
It's bold. So um, uh, what was my opinion of this film? Well, you see, um, I went through, um, actually, before watching this, I went through all the um, Batman films um, before this one, barring BVS, because, goddamn, I've been exposed to that train wreck <laughs> enough. Oh, Dios mio. Um, so it, it was an interesting experience because... Yeah. A lot of them didn't quite age as well as I thought they were going to, um, in the sense that the Burton Batman films, he's barely even in it at all. Um, the Schumacher ones, Jim, actually Tim think... Burton is barely in them. Yes, yes, I would oh, say he Tim is, Burton. but yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I would. Uh, so Batman is barely in the Tim Burton ones. It's kind of. It feels like Burton was very much more interested in telling stories about the villains and had to kind of include Batman in there because he was in the title. Um, the Schumacher ones, I think, um, well, well, obviously Batman and Robin is a masterpiece, so I will not be uh, dis, dis, um, I will not be smearing that masterpiece at any point. Um, but with Batman Forever, it feels like there was an I there were some ideas for where they were going to take Bruce's character, but they just either didn't have the skill to pull it off or they just didn't have the freedom to do it because of the studio. So that kind of um, ended up in an awkward spot, to say the least. Um, and the Nolan films, I think they did finally focus on Bruce, but there was still, it still wasn't quite that special Batman mix that I personally really like. Like they were getting a little bit closer, but there was still a lot that I wasn't quite jiving with. Well, with this film, I really enjoyed it. Um, I felt like I was getting close. I, I feel like if we haven't gotten there, at the very least, we are extremely close to the to the special to the special blend of uh, Batman that I like. It's a detective story. Um, it, it's film noir. Um, I, I really like um, Batman's uh, morality in this. I really enjoy a lot of the character work um, in this. I think it's very thematically strong. I've only seen it the one time though, so. Um, there's a lot of stuff in here that I'm still um, not entirely sure how how well it's going to hold up on uh, repeat viewings. Uh, so this is going to be an interesting one for me. Um, but like just a one time viewing, I just I, I was I was pretty pretty impressed with it. Um, so that that's my impression of the film. Rags. I am pretty mixed on this movie, and I can see myself going either above or below a five based on the way that this conversation plays out. Um, I enjoyed watching it in theaters for the most part. I really appreciate this movie a great deal and I'm glad it exists. And I'm happy that we got this sort of take on Batman and this, uh, you know, this version of him and the world that he's in. Um, but I, it didn't captivate me. I don't feel very strongly about it. Um, it just sort of, it seems, it seems like a really mixed affair. Uh, I feel like for everything I like, there's something that I would change or didn't quite like, or didn't go far enough. Uh, so I'm not, yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I, I guess we'll sort of see what happens over the course of this EFAP in terms of what I walk away with. Um, but yeah. Moodle. Yes. Uh, so yeah, I, <laughs> that's me. It's a yes, yes from metal. My, yes, yes, out of ten. Uh, no, I, I like the setting. I like the more like gritty, broody style, like very dark. I found that to be pretty cool. Uh, that was like the all detective stuff was nice to see. It was nice to see a superhero movie that didn't have any multiverse bullshit in it. We just had a normal villain with things I can understand without destroying a whole universe. That was nice. Uh, yeah, I think it was pretty solid. Uh, it was, the watching experience for me was weird, but that's a me thing. Because I watched the movie, but I was never super into it. <laughs> but not because I thought it was bad. I, was, I still don't know why. It's very, I don't know if I, it's very tantric. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I was trying to figure out if that's because of the movie <laughs> or if I just didn't really want to watch a movie that night i i don't know maybe i just had to watch it because we covered it and i wanted to talk about it or it's because of the movie because it's just so much things happening i don't know it was it was weird for me because after i was done watching it was like yeah i think it was all right 
even good. But now I'm just going to go home and go to sleep. So I, I don't know. It was weird for me. It was uh, a weird watching experience. But I think overall, like, I think it's pretty solid, I would say. Like a poo. <laughs> like a poo. A like a can, poo. can be. Sometimes you get those loose. Oh, I thought yeah. you were going to say like a can to poo. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Mubes. <laughs> 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 Uh, when I first saw it, I was like, holy mondolium, the production values are so not only good, but unique and, and, and striking. Oh, just the, the damn visuals and soundtrack. I was having, it was a treat. Um, and by the time I had finished it, I was like, huh, that was a long movie, which I don't typically feel. It's not, it's not that common. And I, I think that was indicative of something. And the more that I have thought about this film the less I have found to uh, praise in the writing compared to where I started. And um, another problem I've had since the beginning is that it hasn't struck a chord with me really much at all. There's not, uh, it didn't super duper appeal to me on the fieldisms, and I've been trying to figure out why. Don't know if we'll get there today on exactly as to why, but my, and I said this uh, yesterday on Friday Night Tights, I think uh, I would probably give it a high score, but it just didn't do much for me personally. I don't know if uh, that'll change as we discuss it, but um, I, I think that um, uh, you know we, we got we got a lot to talk about. Um, a lot, lots to talk about. Jay, hello. Um, I thought it was pretty cool. Um, I was very impressed with the action scenes, even though I do think there are some flaws in them. They were executed in this very visceral way um batman would take hits um and while i think that they were a bit too lenient on what they let him survive it was very clear that he was a man in this fight rather than some kind of uh magic god who could just avoid you know ever he, he was he was standing on the ground with the rest of them throwing punches like everyone else was he was just very good at it um I was uh, impressed with all of the performances, like thoroughly impressed. I don't think there was a um, a performance that I wouldn't describe as at least very good from a major actor. You know, there were some cameo parts where I was like, hmm, oh, but for the, for the major performances, you guys know what I'm referring to, don't you? Probably. <laughs> um, but for all the major performances, I was thoroughly impressed. Um, there was um, there was some action scene. Well, sorry, there was one action scene I didn't like. The car chase I felt was just shot yeah. in a way that I found it difficult to tell um, where everything was, which I think is incredibly important for a chase scene is to know just where the players are. Well, what's interesting um, about the car scene is that it's it's really just a it's really just someone just took a camera through a typical commute through Dallas. It's cheating. <laughs> yeah. And we, um, I thought the characters were all pretty good, um, well characterized. Um, I was particularly impressed with um, this film's rendition of Bruce. He was a unique take on the character, at least for um, you know the cinematic ones that I've seen. I don't know so much about the comic ones or um, cartoon ones, but uh, I've never seen a Bruce who it seems this incapable of putting up a like a public face. Um, this Bruce is very, like, both uninterested and seemingly unable to put up a public appearance. Um, I think this might be a world where a lot of people actually suspect that he is Batman for the kind of person that he is. Um, and I find that a really interesting take on him, and I was, I found it very involving. Uh, I was very interested in his character and his relationship with uh, some of the other characters, particularly Alfred, even though that's sort of short and sweet, they only share a few scenes in this film. I really buy their relationship, and I, I, I like it. Um, the plot was interesting. It was very complex, and I, I'll say that it passed my smell test on a first viewing, but I am very receptive to the idea that it's actually just a fucking garbled mess that makes no sense at all. Um, because it, it's got a lot of moving parts that, honestly, um, even as I was watching the film, I was like, yeah, I'm not sure if all this works or not. I'm just, I, I'm struggling to keep track of all the moving parts well enough to, uh, to know. And it's not like I was confused as to what was going on. It's just that I didn't, 
I couldn't keep it all in my mind clearly enough to comprehend whether or not it made sense. Yeah. Um, the thing that was shakiest to me was the Riddler. Like he, the resources that he had access to and everything that he knew uh, was the first thing that made my smell test go, maybe this is pushing it a little far, but I'm not confident on that. The, the plot was too complex for me to get in one viewing, I think. Um, but yeah, um, I've, everyone else been saying that they thought it was like, yeah, this is some good stuff, but I didn't find it involving. I uh, didn't have that problem. I found it very involving. I was very on board with this film uh, from beginning to end. That's my little, little two cents. All right. You know what, Capital, you go first. All right. Um, <laughs> well, let, let's. Let, I, I will say I am thankful that I got to go towards the end. So now I can base my opinion on all of your opinions so i appreciate that opportunity <laughs> awesome. um i thought it was all right it was pretty okay to good i i really enjoyed the first half the first half gave me big you know kind of like david fincher's seven zodiac detective story vibes i'm a big fan of detective mysteries if i had to pick one genre that's my favorite it'd probably be that uh, the movie starts to unravel around what I imagined was the halfway point. And by the final act, whatever you want to call it, um, really a lot of things started to unravel. I I would probably be leaning towards like a, a six out of 10. There are a lot of things I really appreciated visually. And, you know, the soundtrack and everything was very compelling. It was very strong. Um, I wasn't bored, even though it was a very long movie except for towards the end there are a couple sequences that i felt like they could have just cut because they didn't add much but i think the writing is a mixed bag to say the very least and we'll talk all about it because every time i think about something i liked in that movie i i think about oh well then uh, but then they kind of did this thing and that kind of undermined it and they keep going back and forth so it's 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 a big hefty mix of the good mm. and the bad for me six out of ten Oh boy. All right. I need to turn off the music so I concentrate. Um, I have been, list I have been listening to the soundtrack. Uh, <laughs> um, so, I really like this film. It appeals to me. Um, Batman is like basically uh, up there with Daredevil as like my favorite superhero. I, uh, I really like Batman. And this film is interesting in that it is it it contains elements of Batman that I feel have often been underexplored in the live action films while also exploring aspects of Batman that we haven't seen as much before in general in terms of like deviations from what you typically expect um I think actually before I talk that the production is fantastic i feel like that's the least contention like everybody agrees the film looks amazing um the soundtrack is fantastic there are a lot of just downright inspired cinematography choices um i think the acting is great all around um robert patterson's performance is i think i think the best way to describe it would be like understated um but but at the same time there are so many moments when you can and, and instantly identify the shifts and the demeanor, the shifts in based on, you know, uh, things that he's learned, things he finds out, emotional responses. Um, but I, I guess I want to get into that too deep. Um, I think that the theme is very strong and comes through uh, throughout the film. I think that the character writing... Um, we'll, we'll need to talk about that a bit, I think. Um, uh, I really like it, but... Oh God! <laughs> oh jeez! Oh God! We, no. we 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 got to talk about it. <laughs> we have got to talk about <laughs> it. I didn't agree to this. Um, so, I so when I, when I when I watched the film the first time around, um, you might remember on the the catch up, I said I liked it, but I need to think about it. The reason why I felt that way was because I just got the impression, like, hmm, thinking about. When you when you're watching like a miss so the thing that I really like about this film is that it is a detective story. Batman is a detective. We don't look at that side of what he does 
um, in a lot of the films. And in this film, it is the primary focus. There is a mystery that needs to be unraveled. And he spends a lot of time working with Jim in the suit. Very little Bruce Wayne by comparison to how much Batman there is, which I think w was on purpose, as we'll, we'll start to talk about. Um, trying to unravel a mystery. Now, the first time around, I think it can be very difficult to keep track of all of the elements because there are a lot of moving parts. There are a lot of moving parts. There are a lot of names, um, many of which, even if you're like familiar with uh, like Batman stuff, there'll be ones where it's like you kind of start to lose track because uh, we've got like a lot of important players. Um, and of course, you know, depending on how information is presented to you, what clues or hints that you see early on it's hard when you're watching a movie the first time around to know exactly how all of those clues are going to become relevant. So I think you lose, you know, th things just slip out of your mind. The second time around, because you know exactly what's going to happen, you can start to notice things. You can notice in really cool ways how elements were set up, how some of the Riddler's clues foreshadow um, what's to come, how the Riddler's clues in general um, make a lot of sense in terms of where they lead. But you can also start to notice how we get to each next sequence. You can start to see what pieces are really important in terms of pushing the characters closer to the unraveling the mystery. Um, and you know what? Some of those pieces, um, there, there, there is a key word that I think will dominate this discussion. Convenience. Mm. But <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see. I am I am unsure at this point um how I where I would put this film um but I do really like it and that's 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 my ramble I don't think anyone here mentioned where cuz there of course there is of course going to be a point in the film for each of us where this applies but no one mentioned where they cried in this movie <laughs> <laughs> What Interesting observation. I think one thing I wanted to clarify from after what Jay had said, I was um, gripped throughout. The problem was none of it got to my heart, as hard as it is to explain I what see. I'm trying to say there. I was very much paying attention, but um, and I, I think I said this to Rags, but there was mainly one part um, that g got me close. I we got me, got me close. I was like, I was like, ooh, 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 oh, okay, all right. That's that scene then. Hmm. Well, sorry. It was interesting film... when we talked and you brought it up. Like there was that one part, and then we both said it at the same time because it was the exact same part yeah, for both you... of us. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is I think uh, this film is very plot focused. Like it's 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 mostly plot focused. Um, we have important character moments, but there is a big focus on the mystery. Um, now, of course, that poses a problem if the mystery isn't great you've dedicated a lot of time to something that isn't going to get you i guess as many points as uh focusing more on the character moments and of course plot and character can happen at the same time but uh there there is a lot less bruce wayne in this film and a lot more batman which i do think was on purpose i think so too they, mm -hmm. they like explicitly mm -hmm. kind of mentioned it oh yeah i guess i guess i guess uh, something i would say about the film going forward is d despite the issues that we may end up talking about i got the distinct impression after watching it the second time around that it was very deliberately written um like very deliberately written that um every everything that happened or like the the plot beats and character payoffs every everything was thought about um hmm. when it was put to the page but nevertheless, there may be some issues that we need to talk about. Well then, but I suppose, for, uh, I figure, yeah, I figure we we ought to go through in chronological order. Um, otherwise, I think we're just going to be jumping all over the place. Um, so the all right, the film starts with. Uh, someone looking through some binoculars into the mayor's office, but the mayor's name is Don Mitchell Jr., so we'll just call him Mitchell. Um, it's Halloween. We see some a little jack-o'-lantern. There's a kid wearing, like, a ninja outfit. Um, there's some heavy breathing. Now, I guess... Uh, 
<laughs> hey, look, heavy, there was some heavy breathing, all right? I'm just saying. There was. Um, it was quite labored. It's a random guy in the cinema. <laughs> yeah, all the neck no. beards watching the movie. Yeah. Well, and that's just how, they, a, just how they breathe. I'm a big fan of films. film. I was like, oh, that's Paul Dano breathing. I can, I can sense it. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I recognize oh, those breaths. Really? No. You say that exact <laughs> sentence again, but with breasts. I, I remember those, those exact breasts. breasts. I know the sound of those breasts. Some ladies have distinctive breasts. Mm -hmm. They make a distinctive oh, noise. Oh, my bit quiet. Uh oh. Every time oh, I turn a little bit. I can boost Every time you. I turn up my mic volume. Okay. Well, oh, yeah, but that doesn't a... help for everybody else. True. Okay. Is that better? Well, we can boost you if I'm we need to. Ears out. Hopefully that's all right. Do some heavy breathing and we'll get good audio of us. <sighs> oh, that, I know that that's Springy's breathing. I'd know that anywhere. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know well, that was anywhere, it raining really? during that thing? Because if so, it's a bit wet. It was Springy's breast. Oh, no. I know it was anywhere. <laughs> it was <laughs> raining throughout the film. <laughs> the Birds don't have breasts. <laughs> I, get, I get worried because every time I turn up the mic just too much, it blows everybody's ears out once I cross a certain line. So is this okay? Or do you need You can't line? cross that line. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need it louder? You should, no, I, 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 I feel like it has to be all right at this point because you. I think you're louder than everyone else now. So chat, you better not lie. Okay. Get louder, Fringy. Uh, no, no. You sound now, fine to me. Because I'm worried that I'm going to blow over these ear, ear balls. I'll do it. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, if you're talking about EFAP chat's ear balls, out. I'll look after them. Don't worry. How will you look after them? You can't be everywhere all at once. Batman taught me that. Just the one place. Speaking of balls, your volume I need to take levels. a break for just a second. I'll be right back. Yeah. Um, wow, just like uh, Batman. So, he abandons. Yeah, there's not really much to say. So, the next, mm. uh, we, we follow that up. We're inside the, uh, the house of the mayor, and uh, he, he's watching the news. He's watching some really uh, pertinent information getting conveyed on uh, the TV. Now, I don't know about all of you, but at first, when I saw that, I was like, are we really doing like the TV news on re reveals really important information that we need to know? Mm. Um, but the fact that it was contextualized as this is the mayor watching his mayoral debate, yeah. I was like, oh, okay. Like, I feel it's it's uh it's the trope that's often talked about, right? The, the news reel or just some news at the beginning of the film that just conveys to you all of the super duper important information that you need to know. Um. But I, got, I appreciated that it was like contextualized in universe. Um, there are Speaking a of, of which, can you remind me what is said there? Because when yeah. I saw this last night in the theater, <laughs> they forgot to turn the lights off for the really? first like five <laughs> minutes of the movie. Wow. And so people had to go run out and try to be like, hey, can you turn the lights off? So someone ran out. And then about five minutes into the movie, they made the lights even brighter. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And then everyone happen? groaned. And then eventually, another two or three minutes later, they finally turned it off and everyone clapped. Uh, so I don't actually remember much of the first like so, five minutes of the movie. So. The first 45 minutes? <laughs> no, five minutes. Oh, five minutes. Well, so basically, it's uh, the, the broad strokes of the debate is Don Mitchell's been the mayor for a long time. Um... But he is being competed against by Bella Real, who's she's the new candidate. And uh, information they talk about is, oh well, crime is up. Um, there's a mass vigilante out, and then he rebuffs with like, well, uh, you know, Thomas Wayne's renewal fund was super valuable in terms of helping out the city and investing in infrastructure, uh, and plus like the Maroni uh, drug bust, but which gets talked about a bit later. Those are like the main things that are discussed. Um, and then he decides to take a little step to the side to pour himself a drink, and there's there's, there's a little spooky man standing yeah. in the shadows. <gasps> I thought that was a really cool. Ru <laughs> it's not Rudlow, it's, it's Riddler. Oh, same thing. It's Riddler. But um, I th are you making fun so, of Mola's accent for me? <laughs> I'm not making fun of his accent. I'm making fun of his words. The Welsh are disparaged here. His words. I'm allowed to do that. <laughs> Um, so this is the first of many examples of utilizing the shadows to reveal important characters. They do this a lot in I this film, and mm. I really like it. What do they do a lot in this film, sorry? Um, reveals of people in the shadows. We yeah, they do. Or in the background. Yeah. Um, 
I noticed uh, later when someone's following someone else in a motorcycle, your eyes are just elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And then you sort of see it like you're like, oh, something was going on in the back. And I just wasn't really looking. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is you can see the Riddler, um, but it's the flash of the TV, the light that uh, basically reveals exactly where he is. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, he what's that? It's creepy. Yeah. And then um, so in my in my screening, God. someone was uh, I, I had this moment completely ruined for me because someone behind me was just going, oh, bullshit, bullshit. No. Bullshit. And I'm just like, what the fuck are you talking what, about? I was like, oh, Riddler in the back. <laughs> oh, okay, you, thanks, guy. I, I don't. What, so, what would what would be their complaint? Like, how did he get in? Yeah, I think they just didn't believe that he got in and was able to just stand there yeah, unnoticed. Not the but... context. Yeah, we don't have. He doesn't have any of the. And also, he got through in the skylight. That's why they show it. Yeah, well, like, I don't even. I don't even need to see a skylight to know that that's possible. Someone could get in. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Especially with his man prep. has it. Yeah, exactly. unless it's like Stephen Hawking, I can believe that someone could just get into a <laughs> building at any point sneakily. Like you don't. Know, it's yeah, I could buy it. Um, the mayor then has a little phone call. He, he's he's not super happy with his debate performance. It wasn't he wasn't on his A game. Um, yeah, it just didn't go so well. He hangs up and then he continues watching. They keep conveying that information about like the renewal fund. So yeah, so. Right now, the important things that are getting conveyed is the renewal fund, which was set up by Thomas Wayne. That was like a $1 billion public endowment to the city to be used for like infrastructure and uh, services. Uh, and uh, I believe the Moroni drug bust, which is another important thing to keep in mind. Anyway, he hangs up, turns off the TV, and then Riddler beats his head in with like a little carpet removal tool. That's probably worth uh, mentioning. That, uh, I don't know if any of you guys felt this way, but... Riddler's standing there very like he's just watching him and it, and it looks I, I don't I didn't know what kind of character we were in for because um to be fair I think mm -hmm. I watched the trailer once and then avoided anything to do with this film because I was just like I just want to see it for what it is he like I was expecting him to like do one big hit and he'd be down but instead he like doesn't he like wail before doing it and then he does it in a very like almost psychopathic Scrappy, way sloppy yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 and I was like ooh it's, it's okay not clean. He falls over himself. He does like yeah. a running start almost, and just hits him over while he's falling down. I he think this is how the the blood stain is created as well, because he picks up the thing and then goes back. If I'm yes, remembering correctly, that's right. That is yeah. right. Um, it's it's the element of surprise is working in his favor more so than his fighting prowess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I really like that. That was a strong yeah, was first impression. Yeah, it was like he's not as um, completely controlled. This this man, whoever he is. Yeah, there the, the the heavy breathing. There there is a level of collectedness, but also I guess um yeah. You're really just focused on that heavy breathing, aren't you? <laughs> it's it's hard not to notice the it's heavy breathing. Like... <laughs> very loud. Well, I mean, it's I very deliberately. It's very deliberately put right there for you to pick up on to figure yeah. out that this is the same person. In case that there wasn't was... obvious. <laughs> There was a part there where it's just like, it it almost becomes funny at some points in the film. <laughs> the breathing? Um, the breathing, I think. Really? Because it's, I thought really? it was, um... So, really? I didn't laugh, and nobody laughed in the audience for both viewings of the film ever. <laughs> well, that's, that's the thing, right? So, um, I was there with uh, a couple of friends, and... Uh, I think oh, it was just you, that we Jay. had a shared sense of- Shut the fuck up, rags! <laughs> 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 uh, I think it's just- it might just be that we share a sense of humor, because we were listening to the very heavy breathing, breathing, and then just sort of- I think it was because we were both there with the shared sense of humor, we both laughed at it at the same time. Quietly, we didn't disturb anyone else's sense yeah, of humor, I don't think. I would've been that. I would've been like, hey, stop it, I'm trying to watch the movie! <laughs> But to be um, fair, there were there were groups like near us who were giggling throughout the whole thing, and they really annoyed me. Uh, like they were just I don't know I'm what was like, so funny about the whole film to them. That would have yeah, actually it was, pissed me off. Like that, that reminds me kind of, of annoying. I, I had a similar experience when I saw Moonfall uh, with because uh, this <laughs> this movie and Moonfall is basically <laughs> the, basically the same. Um, but there was I went to go see it with my dad, and there was maybe a dozen other people in the theater. Uh, Way busier than the Batman was, oddly enough. But it's, um, but there was a guy who was sleeping during the movie, which is strange because it's not a boring film. 
uh, and he was I'm snoring very loudly <laughs> to the point where I had actually I'd actually gotten up. I stood up and I walked to the end of my aisle and I was like, "Ooh, almost, almost. If it doesn't, if he doesn't, if it doesn't get quieter, I will go up there." Like, "Ooh, I was so fucking close." And he did, he so he him. slept through the entire movie, though his snoring did get significantly quieter for whatever reason. Uh, but yeah, he imagine, slept through the whole thing. Imagine buying a cinema ticket <laughs> to just sit there and sleep the whole way through. <laughs> I feel like it was like the whole. I feel like it's the worst environment to sleep in. A very loud, crowded <laughs> yeah. movie theater. Yeah, yeah very... it was. It's not a quiet movie, and he was like, he was knocked out, and it was most of the film. It must have been at least like a third of the way in. He started sleeping. But he was annoyed just at saying, laughter. Like, that is exactly what was said. Annoyed at laughter specifically. No context at all. Yes, you should be annoyed at laughter if it's in the theater, and especially if it's so, not a funny scene. Hang on. Is, is someone actually trying to push it? Like, I just find the sound of people <laughs> laughing annoying in general. No, no, no. <laughs> is that someone's takeaway from that? I, yes. I, I don't, I'm not sure. Maybe it was a Freeney meme. Freeney doesn't like it when other people are meme. happy. Hey. Okay, Schneider. That doesn't make me happy. Right? Not particularly Jeez. angers me as the laughter of children. I hate that. Me too. They should die. Anyway, that that's the end of that scene, and thus in, uh, <laughs> thus thus begins the best scene in the Laughing. film. Laughing. Wow. All right. Best that's scene in the begin. film. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's what I think. Anyway. Um. And perhaps the best introduction of Batman ever. Probably. I think that our Batman introduction scene in this is probably the best stuff in the movie, and I think it's the best Batman content that I've seen. Like, it's like I just the think best it's single sequence that you've seen. In, Honestly, in like a... yeah. Like, I think it's so, so good. It is so strong. I, I think it's banger. It's awesome. It's oh, a yeah. single gripe with it. <gasps> yeah. I Go dare for you. It. I find the narration, uh, maybe I would have to watch it again to find something that you know is, isn't um doesn't this criticism doesn't apply to but um i find that the narration doesn't um convey any information that i can't in simply infer from watching the scene without the narration right, i guess i guess to clarify i meant the best introduction of batman not necessarily the best scene of batman ever i thought was that not clear enough or i think it's it is my best film. scene in the film you said I, yeah, sure, but there are people talking about well, the I think Rags said it was the best Batman scene. Oh, okay, right. Do, do what, you still, what scene is the best Batman scene, sorry? Well, because a lot of people are saying the interrogation scene in The Dark Knight. Great scene. Well, um, yeah, I, 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 I don't I, I think it scores pretty damn high. I'm not 100% sure if mm -hmm. I would say it's the best Batman scene. It could be, though. I like it. Uh, I mean, do you, is, do you guys feel that the narration... So um, I'm gonna go needed to be there or detracted sorry. from it or was just neutral. Um, I think it added. I think in it the added. beginning okay. it definitely added. There are definitely times later on that it that it kind of annoyed me. But in the beginning, think... kind of getting us into his headspace. I was I gonna like say it. there's a benefit of knowing that's how he believes himself to be, and that's what he believes the state of well, Gotham I, is. Mm -hmm. so, so something yes. that I would say is I think that it it's very on purpose that the two scenes that have narration are. The beginning with the perception of what Batman is now, and the end with the perception of what Batman ought to be in the future. Mm -hmm. So, like that is there is more narration in the middle. Um, yeah, there is. Um, I remember. Oh, I remember narration when he's on his little moped. Yeah, yeah, but but that I I would consider that to still be part part of the broader opening sequence. Sure. Um, but but yeah, I get I get you. Um, so the first there's one line in particular in this opening. It opening narration that he has that I thought was really, really strong. It was the line about, I'm paraphrasing, but it's something like, you know, some people think I'm lurking in the shadows, but I am the shadows. I feel like I that's like, that's the whole point that, of the scene, basically. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, that's really in any good. Other I thought, film, you mean, I would have in any other film I would have said that's edgy. I was about but to I'm say like, it is edgy. Like, no, Tell me it, why it's not. Tell me well, well I well okay it does it does sound kind of edgy. I'll give you that. But I think the idea being that that he I mean, the whole opening introduction scene for him is that there are, what, three different, you know, potential crimes happening, and he only shows up at one of them. But the fear of his presence ah. interrupts or disrupts the other ones as well, because he is 
So that's you know, he is the shadows. fear that keeps criminals in check. I think on that, that line, I side with, I'd way prefer that we say that than he say that. Why? Um, like, he, di he didn't need to say, I am the shadow. Like, he us saying, it's almost with... like shadows are just Batman. Like, whenever there's shadows, people think Batman's there. Instead of him going, I am the shadows. It's like, okay, yeah, okay. Mm. Well, I, I, yeah, I that's, that's my take on it as well. I feel that I, uh, the narration did, took away from that for me. It's like, I would have line. preferred this to be an inference but, that I made myself. I do understand that because the part when he says, the bat, they've got a signal now, it's not just a call, it's a warning. He, he says to them, and it's like, I didn't need that. You could have just said, it's a, like, I don't, I don't need that, you know? Like, I know who it's for. Um, it's a little bit unnecessary, but I, I guess it's like, I don't feel like it's th that significant, I guess, in terms of detracting from the the uh, overall vibe that you're meant to get from the opening sequence. Oh, no, I mean, like, I don't have, I, I don't think it's significant either. Like, I, honestly, even if I was uh, making the film, I might end up, like, leaving it in if that was my decision. I'm not sure, though. Like, it's, I think it probably would. Well, yeah. But um, I, maybe the power isn't sure. there. I, in the I, felt that, I felt that I didn't need it to be there. Uh, yeah, it's worth mentioning. It's like, we've also, it's one of the greatest scenes of Batman ever, so like you know, don't worry, don't worry, we're not. It's worth keeping that in mind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think, it's, yeah, it's, I think it was great. I really, uh, really like it. I guess the the summary of what we see. So we 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 see Gotham. We see we see Bruce all covered up and got a little cap on, a hood covering his face, walking through basically the Gotham equivalent of like uh, Times Square. Um, mm. And then we see three crimes being committed. There's a dude, it's Halloween night, so everybody's got their little costumes on. There's a guy uh, robbing a convenience store. Robin. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> not too. Robin. Robin with a G. I did want to God. say I appreciate that, starting on Halloween. Robin. That was a, a lot of Robin. fan service for me. I appreciate that from Matt Reeves. <laughs> well, I, uh, I, I also get the impression as well that it's meant to be sort of a reference to the long Halloween. Um, well, it, I almost I think it's definitely the, they gave the out uh, the first part of Long Halloween in most or a lot of cinemas. I don't know if you guys got one, but I did. did. They? Yeah. I didn't get one. No, I'm yeah, writing it right now. Like a comic book? Yeah, uh, a comic the Long book? Halloween is a comic. Yeah, so I no, I got I didn't I, didn't I, I got fuck <laughs> yeah. all. I didn't get anything either. I got, I got a ticket a and I had to pay for that. Yeah, I, I'm also in sale. I get the distinct impression that the film was supposed to come out in Halloween um, before it got delayed because of uh, COVID. Oh, well, yeah. Like, I, it's, I it's, can believe it's, it. Yeah. It's specifically October 2021 to like November 2021. That's when the film is set. So I can believe that it was meant to come out in Halloween, which would have been cool, but oh well. Um, yes, yeah, so we have the, the one guy robbing the convenience store. We have a group of guys um, um, vandalizing like a bank of Gotham. Um, building and then we have a group of dudes in like sort of skeleton um in skeleton makeup sitting on a train laughing about videos of people getting beat up and looking to um specifically of them beating people up right yeah yeah uh and looking to beat up a guy who's going to be getting he off the train. people in white face and he assumes that they're all the same kind of fucked up um and we yeah. we have we have three all racists the are the same rags Oh, we discuss have... in the comments below. Oh boy, you're <laughs> all racist. That's the that's the common theme. Demonetized. We have, we have three uh, uses of shadows in <clears throat> these places for the <clears throat> bank robber. The alleyway that he tries to escape down, he pauses because it's really dark. It's very dark in there. Every felony anything. a pause. A, a little bit, yeah. That's a little bit what that man's up to. That's a good pun, okay. actually. I'm pretty. That's actually pretty good. <laughs> that that was a good pun. Um, the second one is as they're vandalizing, he knocks over his can and then turns around and realizes that the entry to like the bank is very dark. You can't see anything. Um, and then the third one, uh, there's two examples in the bus, uh, the train. It's very dark in the other carriage. Um, and every single time we have a real nice steady zoom in on the shadows and the steady zoom in on the people as they look. And damn, I love it as just the I thought really of- I really like mm, it. Oh get, shit. It gets like, you in oh, their heads. Uh -oh. It definitely gets you in the head of like, oh shit. Because every time they're reminded because there's a little helicopter going around shooting its lights and then when it disappears, the bat signal's there. And the bat signal's yeah. not just a call, it's a warning. 
which uh, feels very indicative of the modus operandi of this Batman at this moment. Um, fear of fear. Mm. That's what he's leveraging exclusively. It's scaring the shit out of people to try and deter crimes. Um, and it, we, we then cut back to uh, on the, uh, the train. Um, the, the fella gets off, but the thugs um, ambush him. Uh, they've got a guy with them who they're like almost doing like a rite of passage that he needs to beat him up. But uh, and his face, his face is only half done half in it. the the makeup. Yep. Yeah, clearly yeah. a problem. To earn the other half, he has to commit a hate crime. Um, yes, <laughs> I just wanted to mention. That I think it's totally in line with how they like low level scum fucks who just beat people up and stuff. I just thought it was kind of amusing that on the on the phone, it's like they just punch a person who's doing a jog, and then it like goes to the wide of. One of them just being like, yeah, nice one, bro. The yeah. like high five, someone high five, someone else is like, okay. <laughs> That's just. <Yeah. laughs> they're just also, that level um, of scum. It's the, a prank, bro. It's just a well, prank, bro. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The the music in this section. Oh! They have like the really um discordant, like violin. Um, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Bit that undercuts it. It's really got like a horror vibe to it, which is so cool. I'm so very much a fan of that. Uh, in any case, Bat Batman stumbles out of the shadows, and then we get the the cool trailer fight that everybody's seen, where he beats the shit out of the dude effortlessly. Um, and then he, and then he says he says the line, the oh, the line. He says, I am I'm the vengeance. Batman. No, he doesn't say I am the <laughs> Batman. He doesn't say that. He says I'm vengeance. Imagine he no, just he looks up for them and just goes an the Batman. <laughs> I am <laughs> what. <laughs> I am DC's the Batman. I, I am, am the Batman. Batman 2022. I what if he Mr. fucked up and he Benjamin. said, uh, he was like, he said, I am Bruce Wayne. Oh, fuck. Yeah, I mean, oh. and now he has yeah, to kill him. Pull, pull no, he kills him. Yeah. I am um, Iron Man, maybe. No. I guess. Like, when, it, I, when I saw this line in the trailer, I was so concerned this was just going to be an edge fest as well. Now, yeah. like, it's interesting you say that because it's probably like the most important line in the film. Um, there was emphasis on it for a reason, but yeah, no, I, I yeah. agree. But it is, is one of those vengeance, things. though, Fringy. Is he vengeance? Yes. Like, is his name the Vengeance? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what they should have named the movie. I'm, he, I'm not so sure that he embodies vengeance at all in this movie. So I think it's oh, weird. Well, insight. that's uh, uh, do do you, do you want to talk about that now, or do you think that there's later parts where it might become more apparent what you mean? I mean, when you talk, we've talked already about how this opening scene establishes his M.O., so to speak, and revenge doesn't seem to be part of it. I'm a little confused. Well, so this might be something that becomes a through line as we talk about it. There, there are aspects of the film where I think that you could provide an explanation for things that works, but is not necessarily thoroughly supported by what's in the film, if you understand what I mean. Like it, like the explanation makes sense, but there aren't a lot of scenes or lines that you could latch onto to explain it. Yeah, um, I feel so like, like I was, for instance, I was thinking about it myself yeah, for a moment perfect. there, and I was like, "Man, I'm pulling from um, things I know about Batman rather than necessarily explicit things from this film." But I wonder if that's the uh, well, there's enough kind components, of with meme a little bit. There's enough components in the film to I think justify it, but I don't think they're explicit about how Surely, he is vengeance. Here's the question, though: Do they need to be explicit? The death of his parents is the biggest What's thing, that? right? Which... That's what I was going to say, yeah. Which isn't a spoiler, don't worry, chat. Though <laughs> 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 no, I will say, this um, is full yeah. spoilers. You're going to get all the spoilers, so... Oh, in case that wasn't obvious, yeah. yeah. As, as with Arcane, you're going to have to leave at some point in the next nine hours if you don't want this film spoiled for you. Yes. Uh, you will, <laughs> the slowest we're talking about spoilers? I haven't seen the movie yet. Oh. Fuck. <laughs> Uncle Ben yeah, died. What I'm oh. idiot! No, I, not Buckle Ben. Buckle Ben is Spider Man movie, yeah. Um, but his this one is just Alfred been... Boy. Alfred Boy. <laughs> I feel like. <laughs> I, I feel like. Of, Alfred of all Boy. The... <laughs> Alfred Boy. <laughs> of, the Alfredo of, kid. Alfred Chu. Of all, of all the Batman films, though, he's the least Alfred Boy. Yeah, that's true. Like, honestly. Indeed. He, he is the least. You're uh, not my dad. Boy. Alfred Boy Jr. Why, why You're right, he isn't his like dad. That? Why do you have to say it like that, Jay? 
Why does <laughs> he start... delivers the line while wearing black eye makeup? It's just a bit of a so... gore scene. I don't have a problem with it. It's just a bit funny. <laughs> you um, my dad. Oh yeah, I guess I guess to uh, <laughs> make it clear, by the way, any time that you want to interject with like a question or a point that you want to raise as we're going through, feel free to interrupt. That is totally fine. Um, that that wasn't me being sarcastic, by the way. I'm dead serious. <laughs> like, if something you want to see, interrupt. Um, Batman stumbles out. He's beating him up, and then he gets into a little old brawl with all of these guys. He uh, he hits hard in this film. Oh he's yeah. A, these are some violent scenes, and we he's see an, him he's get an aggressive um, Batman. We see him get shot really as well, but Batman. his his armor tanks a hit. Um, his armor does tank. Yeah. It's yes. just good to know, mm -hmm. and I have no issue whatsoever. It's a it's a thug with a pistol. They aim, they shoot, they go for the biggest part, amount, amount of mass, which is obviously his torso, yeah. and his armor deflects it. And then he like electrocutes the neck. Yeah, he, that uh, was kind of cool. Yeah. I what guess I the question to ask would be, would it be common knowledge within this city that Batman has bulletproof armor? I don't think so. I don't know. I think, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm I think, not sure I, that it would be either. I think, I think not at these early stages, like maybe later think, on, but like within the first couple of years, maybe not. I would even go as far as saying, I'm not sure if it totally matters, because your average thug who's just, Batman's just too. arrived, he's, you know, you're, you're stressed out, everything's moving, you just aim and shoot, aim, aim, aim. It's funny, this happens in games a lot. If you know not to attack... There I reference League of Legends. Someone activates a thing that if you attack them, they get mana or something back. You still do it because it's just the thing to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, I yeah. think um, I think that with the introduction, as well as the fact that the one of the thugs is like, "Who who the hell are you?" It's um, there is yeah, the, it was, this is early like enough. That. Exact. It's early enough in his career because this is only the second year that he's been doing this. Two years. And yeah. Yeah. He is very much a mysterious vengeance. character <laughs> he is vengeance that's right the <laughs> vengeance but he is a mysterious mm. oh, character we, there's not it's, it's probably worth mentioning so just um i was just thinking i'm trying to think of our past comments on sort of stuff like that so i think they fire twice and it's just in the torso and they're pretty much right next to him like a meter away or something like that this is not batwoman where uh she's been terrorizing the city for years and that they every time aim everything away from her face like yeah. we're talking just but this, also, yeah there are a lot of moments in yeah. batwoman where she's like really far away whereas a lot of the times in this film when he's shot he's quite close up yeah um which I, which if you're closer up it's like you probably are just going to instinctively aim for like center mass if you're far away you have the opportunity to just pan your gun up and just shoot towards the head um so I, I guess trying to get the, if you're close to Batman, you're trying to get that shot out as quickly as you can. Yeah, like, pretty much. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's it's something that helps. Though I guess uh, it might be worth noting right now. I'm pretty sure that his um, his mask is not bulletproof. It is just like it doesn't it like leather. leather if, or, if, oh. if, if if it deflected a, a gunshot off of it, I'd be going, "Come on, what?" Well, also Damn, we, I, we see that like he'd be knocked on his ass if it did anyway. Well, so you say yeah, he'd be exactly. in like serious trouble if, let's say, something went off next to his face. Uh, I would, yeah. <laughs> I'd yeah, say yeah, that, you know that what? should be a serious issue. Yeah. Wow. Well, right. we'll I was that. just bringing yes. up an example of something that could happen. <laughs> we're, we're, as a hypothetical, yeah, yes. we will progress what through I, the story. <laughs> would I'd like say to that he should at least and... have a bruise on his lip, at least, you know, some indication a that. A bruise on his lip? You know, or, or you know, an indication of injury <laughs> of, of any kind in, in like yeah, the, if the he got injured, area. you know, at all in the first, you know, two hours of the movie, potentially. What I, I would honestly, like to highlight, I would have, like, um, I would have assumed hey, it was bulletproof. Hey, uh, hey, I'm on topic. You're a tangent. Hey. I, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna punch you. <laughs> oh no! Uh, what, what, what is the reasoning for why you think it's not bulletproof? Is it just the way it looks? Uh, the reason, well, when he takes it off, it seems like it is like leather of some sort. It's not, it's not like a very, it's not, uh, maybe it's Kevlar, mater maybe. The material but... around the nose in particular looks leathery. Yeah. It, it yeah. doesn't look like it's, it's not the same material as his bulletproof yeah. chest and say, shoulders. And everything. I think we may be dealing with a little bit of sci-fi material here because I don't know that there's anything earthly that can do what this suit can do throughout the film for defenses. Oh, no, yeah. Yeah, sure. I, I well, yeah. um, there, there is, well, there well, is one example. We have a few bits. We have a few moments of sci-fi material where you've got the um, camera contact lenses, which I do not believe are possible with current technology. But 
or like yeah, kind of material really technology. The audio um, pick up as well as the visual. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. From the eyes. Uh, well, he has a separate earpiece, doesn't he? <clears throat> I I don't know. I think are we supposed because I thought he puts the thing on the thing and then it plays the audio as if the only thing it's he using. Does. But is I'm the but eye. I'm much more impressed She's with not the also file storage capacity um, <laughs> of the uh, yeah, contact yeah. lens to store like twelve hours of high resolution video. <laughs> Yeah, maybe it's that's like cloud, fucking incredible. Well, well, maybe it's like cloud storage or something. Yeah, it's on the back. It's a very cloud. efficient it's, codec. It's got a really good. Well, Wi-Fi okay, signal. then I'm then I'm really impressed with the fucking size of whatever like is transmitting that in there. I look, <laughs> yeah. Shut up. <laughs> so, um, I'm 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 fine to chalk these up to bad gadgets, but it yeah, is I'm, funny. I'm, I'm also yeah. it is funny. Also, the thing that he injects himself with at some point in the film, I think that that has an effect <laughs> faster than anything that he could actually have injected himself. with. Would have well, so as far as I'm we, aware, we are the jumping juice. super far ahead. But I think but, uh, with with that one, the two interpretations would be that it's like yeah. adrenaline, or alternatively, yeah. that it's venom. Well, it's that's it's a green adrenaline. canister, right? It is so green. that's right. Yeah. It's not my guru, um, but it's it's no it's wonder Fringy right. likes this movie. Yeah, <laughs> what happened now we spotted the goo with your goo Fringy. I managed to get some super duper goo product placement in this movie. Yeah, wow. So I, wow. what, I, what I would like to highlight about the action scene uh, is the uh, about the action scene with the uh, face paint guys uh, is that when the gun comes out, it's not it's actually treated as a more serious threat. Um, it's very clearly presented as an escalation of the stakes, and Batman immediately reacts to it as the most immediate threat in the room, or I guess on the train station, which I think does a lot to ground the stakes of the story in um, like. Maybe this is violated a couple of times later on, but immediately we we ground the stakes of the story in combat where um, an instrument that could kill you is actually a threat. We're not doing like fancy space fights, right? We're doing grounded fights for the most part. At least that's the goal. In the same way of like in Arcane, when Vi takes hits in her first fight, uh, like her street fight, and is actually injured after that fight. Um, it's the same kind of thing that I think is achieved there. I, Even though Batman doesn't take any damage in this fight, him just acknowledging the threat as uh, a serious one is meaningful, I think. I'm sure he takes damage, right? Like, he gets he gets punched he a few times. He gets yeah, we, we, do, we don't see, like, we don't see any... Like, we see him get punched, but we don't see him take any damage. And, like, since he gets I mean, punched in the armor, like, I don't think that... It, it's like I think if if you get to the end of the scene and you think that Batman is fine after that fight, I wouldn't blame I, anyone. I, I think for he's fine. It's just that it, I, he's probably sustained something minor, if anything. Yeah, well, like, I don't get yeah, that well, impression. Like as, as what, like what a is couple of bruises, right? I said I don't get the impression that he had any minor injuries after that fight. Well, I was um, just going to compliment the fact that people were hitting him, which was cool. Yeah, yes. he, and, and yeah, we, we're not we're not looking at Iron Man where someone punches and he just awkwardly laughs at them because they didn't do anything. We see Batman go like, Ugh, that sort of thing. Well, yeah, yeah. He, he he staggers, right? He is he is vulnerable. And remember, he was shot he twice. Um, yeah. yes, in the armor, but I wouldn't be surprised if that gives him a bruise. He was shot once, I believe. <laughs> was it once? Yeah, yeah. Nice if you ever saw that stuff. Yeah. Bruised Wayne. Um, <laughs> oh, nice. sure, you get the laughs when you do it. Fuck you. <laughs> oh, did you say it at all? I legitimately didn't hear you. When did you say this? Twice. <laughs> when? That, that's an amount, not a time. 20 seconds ago, right before. Oh, okay. I, le I legitimately time, did not hear time. you. Mel, you joined the I call? Not. I legitimately I did. didn't know. And then before that, someone said a bruise on the lip, and I was like, huh, a bruise on the lip, and nobody reacted. I was like, okay. <laughs> People um, are saying hey, that he, hey, they I do show some now. of his bruises. I just forgot about them. That's fair. Um, well, because they show him later on when he's he's putting on his shirt. He's got a yeah, I forgot about that. Back. Um, the scene ends with uh, he looks at the dude who he saved, and he says, like, don't hurt me. Hmm. And he says Ligma. <laughs> I don't remember that. I don't remember that, no. The guy's like, like, Ligma. Oh, you didn't see the Ligma cut, Fringy? And then that man just looks down and like, Ligma. Um, oh. that, so, yeah, but, but then he sees the bat signal up. 
the bat signals up and he needs to he needs to go meet uh he needs to go meet jim gordon <laughs> he's going um, adventures yes and now the, the main plot the main plot well the main plot begun in the first scene actually so scratch that they're walking through to go to the crime scene he's following jim but all the cops all the other cops are looking at him a bit weird like the fuck's this bat guy doing here this which this is weird probably dude. already time for us to discuss the, the bat. correct reaction Mm -hmm. uh the, this is i wonder if this is categorized in world building but um you've got very clear and as as with more of the film being watched they have every reason to not only prevent him from getting in any way involved but they also kind of hate him and i think that the biggest reason we're given for him being entered is jim gordon which i don't know is enough mm -hmm. when he's a lieutenant rather than the commissioner um, um... Right. Yeah, that's well, so, a, that's a good question. Well, so, yeah, uh, I would, I'd say that's questionable. I, I guess the question would be: Do we do we know quite how long he has been able to directly um, participate in these investigations? And second one: the letter is addressed to the Batman. Um, nobody, the no, nobody knows that. This that was until... the only one he was there for. Isn't that something I, they reveal no, a little bit I, later? I believe it like is Jim knows later. it, but I don't think that because the commissioner is pissed at this. It's revealed to the commissioner. Yeah, the, well, that's the the commissioner doesn't know that he's even there, right? Until he shows up, and then he, he's like, he "Why is he in, here?" Yeah. And then Jim shows him the letter that's addressed to the Batman. I, yeah, I, I got the impression that this was like the foremost, only investigation that Batman was there for. We need to in the crime too. scene. Yeah. The first thing to sort out is why aren't they arresting him? Because he's a vigilante. Yeah. Yeah, that that's what um I I, I would also that, argue, oh. argue they hate him and they're corrupt. Just as additional Right. And the commissioner says he could be a suspect. The commissioner says, says that possibly. once he sees the uh the letter, yeah, that he could be yeah, a suspect. And so they don't arrest him. Um I I, I feel I like wish they Yeah. I wish they established earlier on that the cops were sort of iffy on him. Uh, they well, I mean, like some of them were clearly like, "Oh, hey, it's Batman!" Instead of this, this extreme skepticism from pretty much everyone. Well, I mean, as far as every I remember. single cop, every single cop looks at him like, "What the hell are you doing here?" I, I'm pretty sure every single cop. And who, to be yeah, one of them, yeah. one of them like is like, what the, one of them literally says, "What are you doing? What here, are you freak? doing?" Or, like, exactly. And and it is an active crime so, scene. Like, it is unusual to bring in. The most well-known <laughs> vigilante to an active crime scene that is unusual. Mm -hmm. I, um, I guess it's it's because the fact that he says we have a signal now. I feel like the like I get the impression that he and Jim have worked together before, but that like his participation in a huge investigation this is new. I th that's because the impression I get. Obviously, the bits of this are in the trailer I saw, and I thought we were going to be getting um, a timeline at least in the film. Maybe it ends by the end of it where he and the police are on pretty good terms, and he's essentially considered a PI, but one that is, you know, unable to be detected, or is, is you know, very fine line between what he's doing and just outright vigilantism that they need to take down. But they do make it explicit, like, a lot of them fucking hate him. A lot of them do not trust yeah. him. A lot of them have good reason not to trust him, by the way, uh, from their mm. POV. Anyway. <laughs> and then, um, yeah. of course, the yeah, he is strictly a vigilante, and it's just like, oh, those get arrested, typically. Um yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. I felt um strange in all of the scenes where he's around any cops uh cuz I was just I think like, um hmm. all we have that we can use is that Jim is protecting him. Um and I guess the question would be is that enough considering that he is the he's not the commissioner and it seems like the only thing cuz we get the line cuz the commissioner and Jim were partners and he says like uh, you know, I, t I tolerate a lot of things because we were partners, but this, it's like, yeah. Which felt also a little clunk to me. Uh, it is a little clunk. It's, it's hey, we were partners. That's Well, because <laughs> we they wrote it for the exact from. reason you just said. They were like, we got to provide yeah, a bit more, probably, to make this come across a bit. These two know that they're partners. Yeah. Why would he say that? I, yeah, yeah like, I know we're partners. And, and, Jim Gordon. <laughs> and it's time for that where you're just like, oh, you should be okay. Just say, like, um, everything we've been through, man, like, I really think you're stretching this. You know, and we can be like everything they've been through. Huh. I wonder what that, that yeah, relates to. I think so. Well, yeah, because he says we we got history. He says that, and it's like I think, mm, yeah, even then, I don't know. Um, but uh, in any case, they're in the crime scene. They're taking a look around uh, at all of the evidence 
Batman is there looking at things and everybody's a little bit... It, it seems like he doesn't give a shit that everybody else is paying attention to him. He's just sort of doing yeah. his thing. Yeah, yeah he's he kind of his own move around him. The bat zone. He, uh, he moves very deliberately through the environment. Very deliberately and slowly um, taking in information. All the things, which makes yeah. sense for later because he's, as we said, he does the recording things with his eye. Yep. Yes. That was that was a thought I when I saw him like ah yeah that would explain why he's so slowly looking at everything, uh -huh. um and keeping maintaining eye contact with things for a long time, uh with people and and things on the ground, um he they they're looking at uh that he's his the guy the mayor he's had his face taped up and it says no more lies and there's also lies written on the wall in red paint, um, lies. No, not no, no, <laughs> stop it. Um, they uh they look at the mayor's hand, uh his thumb has been cut off, and Batman mm -hmm. says it is uh it was cut off afterward because of um you can tell by the wound. Yep. Which uh becomes relevant later on. Uh he 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 then looks at the ground and he sees the blood splatter from the murder weapon uh, uh metal mentioned it earlier on the ground. Um now that's that is like super important to remember but i feel like it's it's very easily um it, when when everything is starting to play out it's something that you lose track of specifically that item which i guess is interesting considering how much emphasis was put on it exactly like the shape the imprint that it leaves in the blood on the uh on the floor um, um that leads us up to my favorite part of the scene does it? Uh, what's, what's your favorite part of the scene? Where Batman is acknowledging the uh, victims of this scenario, and there's a little boy. Oh no, we're not we're not done yet with uh with that. I think that's uh, that's later on. No, no, that's that scene. It is that scene, but it's it's at the end. Fringy, of Fringy, you said we could jump ahead if we wanted. Oh to. yeah, we we just <laughs> yeah, sure. do that. I, I, I don't think I'm it. jumping that far ahead. Surely it's like a minute. No, no, no. It's <laughs> it's, it's, it's I, I, I just saw. It's just so that we make sure that we get back because there's still other stuff in the scene that we need to talk about. But yeah, go for it. Well, yeah, it, it shouldn't mess up continuity that much. It's just Batman sees a, a little boy who's who's struggling with the fact that it's the it's the kid we would have known from uh, that opening scene, right? That in the Halloween outfit. Yes, it yeah. is the same kid. Yeah. Um, and this, by the way, would be one of the things I would cite along with many others as to how he is vengeance. Uh, the the fact that he's just staring at this kid and it's just, you know, I got immediate feels of like, ah, he's looking at himself. Yeah. He's seeing that. Yep. We have, yeah, a, we have yeah. a line that bolsters this, right? Um, when it's made clear that the child was the person who found the body of his dad. Yes. Yeah. That's right. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's a pretty clear parallel. Yeah. And it's just, I just got a sense straight away that this is the job. I'm trying to stop this yep. from happening. Yes. Um, I think that uh, that character, uh, that kid, is like probably the most significant element in terms of uh, bolstering the theme uh, of the film. Because we we this is not the last time that we see him. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I guess jumping back to the the investigation, there they they find the letter to the Batman from your secret friend who, and then inside. Uh, it has a, a, a little old riddle. Um, the the first riddle in the film, what does a liar do when he's dead? Um, the answer to which is he lies still. He uh, lies still. Yes. <laughs> he, he, does, he does say it kind of like that. <laughs> um, now, I, I guess, uh, what, what, what was, what was the, the panel's thoughts on, um, on, on this in terms of like the, the Riddler's... Um, the first example of the Riddler's, I guess, uh, game that he's playing. I like that. Riddle I like a whole it. Bunch. Yeah, I, I do. Like yeah. It yeah. Um, I am it's, pro that riddle. It is. It is quite strong uh, for a couple of. So because he he lies still, it's like all right. Keep that in mind. It's relevant later, but it's also more broadly relevant. Um, and I guess another important thing: there's a cipher in there uh, that corresponds with with that. So there's cipher a bunch rage. Of uh, no, it's not Cypher Rage. Cypher no. Rage. Oh, okay. <laughs> are, you, are you unfamiliar with the masterpiece known as After Earth? No, I'm oh very familiar God. with the masterpiece known as oh, After Earth. It. That's why I, why I was laughing. <laughs> it's, it's my favorite OC name, I think, Cypher Rage. 
Cypher Rage. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that has got competition. Let's it does it make way. sense that uh, Cypher Rage is M Night Shyamalan's OC. Mm-hmm. Not, sit down. Rage. <laughs> God, that movie. <laughs> you don't steal my OC, please. Cypher um, Rage. But I, yeah, they uh, that that's that's uh, they they the the letters he lies still correspond with the ciphers. We'll find out later. Um, and then yeah, we have uh, that he see, he sees a kid, and then he gets on his little uh motorcycle after the commissioner gives a speech about how the mayor was a super good dude, a good friend of his. Um, and then he races off to the Bat Cave underneath uh, Wayne Tower. Um, it's not so much a cave, more like an underground labyrinth. Um, it's 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 built into a I think an abandoned um train terminal. Yeah. You can Which see, you... like, an, an old train in the background yeah. as well. It is super cool how, like, every single Batman film finds a new, unique uh, form of the Batcave. Yeah. Like, every single one has mm-hmm. some sort of u- new, unique one. I, I, I mean, I'm not sure, maybe uh, this is a conversation, but I feel like that is one of the many examples of this film's awareness of the existence of the other Batman films. Um, I'd like, say it, so. Don't do it, it like everyone else did it. So well, to the point where we don't even remin- have the Wayne's death scene, you know. It is reminiscent to me of Homecoming, in that Homecoming was also aware yeah. that everybody knows of of the backstory. So it's like we're not, and and an awareness of like other villains that we've done before, other tones that we've tried to go for, and um, but yeah, um, the the story doesn't depend on the matter because it is still included in the film that Batman's parents were shot, right? It's not uh, a story that actually yeah, you just... can consume this as your first piece of Batman media with no knowledge and still get the full picture. It's proof yeah. that you don't have to have the Wayne's death, the pills fall, etc. No, I think at this point it's 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 fallen into the Uncle Ben territory. It's like, yeah, we know, yes, <laughs> we know. Dude, I would if, argue if, Uncle if Ben this... fell into the Martha's, uh, sorry, the Wayne's territory. True, true. Yeah, true. It's, like, it probably yeah, if um, if this film opened and we were like nighttime alleyway, the Waynes, I go, uh, yeah. uh... <laughs> no, sorry. I still though, <laughs> if it go did. Again. If it did, and any of you were like, that's a bad, I'd be like, it's not a bad, we can't be that mean, you have to let them try their version, it's just annoying, in a meta sense, because we've seen it a million times. Uh, before I forget to mention as well, in the monologue he mentions, basically what we need to know is, I'm doing the Batman stuff, but it doesn't appear to be working, crime is up, I'm not sure that I'm making the difference, like, uh, I don't know mm-hmm. if I can save the city. Uh, and he's writing all of these in the journal, so the context for the narration is that when he finishes a night he'll jot down his thoughts which is um, inspired by batwoman because kate kane would write journals did, that's that's, that's true. right exactly Dear kate. <laughs> didn't want to say i think that. matt reeves said batwoman, uh, batwoman <laughs> was a huge inspiration for this movie which is pretty cool yeah. mm, but all right yeah. no i hate this adaptation movie. Of, of batwoman the, yeah, the, that, the original title was the batwoman man the spin-off. Oh, the Batwoman, man. Imagine telling the lead writers Very Batwoman inclusive. that Matt Reeves took a lot of inspiration and they were just like, why? <laughs> like, what? And then he just said, oh, because of how terrible it is, I don't want to do that. And they're like, oh, okay, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, and then once he's in the Batcave, he then puts his little eye thing on and starts going through the footage uh, while listening to the news. Um... And the news report, we find out that in an eerie coincidence, it's been about 20 years, it's been exactly 20 years uh, since Thomas Wayne died, and he was running for mayor too. Um, hmm, interesting. So, Whoa. The one thing that I was slightly unhappy with in that scene was the assumption from everyone reporting on it that it was a coincidence. Um, right, well, they said an eerie coincidence. I think there is an implication I su- there. I suppose, like... It- I, I wanted acknowledgement that this this killer could have made that decision because it was very close to the you know. Is, is um, the fact that it is eerie not enough of a suggestion of hmm? Potentially, I suppose. Because the problem is you have nothing else to work with at this point other than two mares got killed. Um, I guess it would be that the odds of it just happening like on the same day are like insane but i I mean i i wouldn't have to i guess my thing would be to not have declared it a coincidence uh even like i don't think the word correlation covers it Mm -hmm. 
Um, well, I mean, I guess... Maybe I guess... it's just that there isn't a better word to use in there, the coincidence. Maybe... Well, the what about correlation? Is... Well, they don't know if there's a correlation or not. It is the news. Oh, they, yeah. they don't... Oh, it yeah, just happened. True. They might... They don't... They yeah. actually just might not be able to say... There is definitely a connection between these two things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, of course. Uh -huh. I, like, if, if I, I would have assumed that news reporters would say, um, this has taken place on the same day, you know, the 20 year anniversary, um, and then just um, say it is unknown if this is a con if there is a deliberate connection here or if it's uh, coincidental. Well, wait, was that just in the well, title by of saying the article, that it or? is a coincidence? They say an eerie coincidence. Yeah, and, and that it's been eerie think, coincidence doesn't mean potentially whoa, 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 whoa. not a coincidence. I, sorry, but like I think the, the I, I don't, tone I, would matter, right? Like if if I said to Friggy, yeah, that's an eerie coincidence. It sounds like I think it's you know. More than just like a, a maybe. Is, maybe is that how, how they say it? No, it's, well, my point I, is that you're reading it to mean like a definite, like, oh, what an eerie coincidence. Anyway, uh, moving on. I'm not sure. Yeah, like, I'd, I feel like this is not a point at all because if they said anything else, they would be jumping to conclusions. They have no reason well, to be. Hey, the thing that I suggested they might say is it's unknown as to whether this is a coincidence. Well, how is it not that they talk about explicitly that it's been 20 years and then they talk about how he died? Is there not an implication there of could this be connected just by virtue of the fact that you talked about it at length? Well, they, they, I, I, I don't feel like how, I don't see how this is like, how this is like holding us up because like, I, my read of the well, scene is that they up. declare it's, <laughs> no, as in like the, how it's, because my interpretation of the scene I think is pretty clear, right? They declare it a coincidence. I don't see the word eerie to, I, I didn't interpret that to mean that it potentially wasn't a coincidence. Um, so that's my, it. There's not that, there should be is... any other point besides can the word eerie actually mean that it could be a coincidence from the person saying it? And so, I'm not sure I'm, I'm happy to accept that, but it's not something that's big enough that I want to belabor the point. So the, the two things I would say to that are, one, in universe, all they have to go off of is that it is an eerie coincidence. They have nothing more that they are aware of as journalists, and the implication of talking at length that Thomas Wayne Which was is? killed on the same day implies that there is a connection that is suspected by the press. But second, in universe, uh, 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 I mean, in terms of communicating the story, this is saying, information that they want to think about. Saying that it's a coincidence means that they are reaching a conclusion that it's not connected, which is also something that they don't know. Um, surely, as a journalist... But you err on the side of it's a coincidence yeah. before saying that there is a link between the two. And, yeah. and, and again, I think that I, the I, idea of saying eerie coincidence is almost like an implication of, hmm, this could be related. I, get, I, guess, I'm happy, I guess I'm happy for that to be the case then. Sure. Okay. Like, well. All right, if you're happy, if you're happy, if you're happy, what if <laughs> really weird. What if they said, "Hmm, suspicious"? Would that help? <laughs> Would that make it better? <laughs> if they said one of them had a beard, like a sense. like a mustache, he could twirl, or maybe he could do the chin beard where he just sort of strokes it downwards. Well, so the word correlation as well doesn't mean that there's a link. It just means that it's correlated. It doesn't mean there's a causal link. So correlation doesn't equal but that's, causation. That, that, yeah. But that is yeah. kind of sus. That, that is the truth as it stands in this universe right now. Mm -hmm. It's a little sussy. Um, sussy wussy. Sussy wussy. We are nice. both sussy. <laughs> Murder is sus. Uh, <laughs> uh, mo moving on, um, we, we see Alfred. Alfred uh, comes on in. Alfred played by Andy Serkis, which is really cool. A round of applause. There yeah. you go. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. I, was, I, was, I was like, I saw him pop I, up I and I'm like, that's, that's fucking that's Andy Serkis. I don't know what it is about the idea of an Andy Serkis Alfred, but I was very, very uh, enticed by such things. And I... Mm -hmm. It was very enticed. I... Mm. <laughs> that's the, you had to cross the line there, right? Okay, subtext is everything. I'm just saying... What? Nothing at all. I, I was very happy to see him. And I was, I was like, woohoo! Oh, I want to see uh, what this Alfred and this Bruce are up to because I think yeah, I'm I starting agree. to realize yeah. one of my favorite things about Batman content is uh, what Alfred and Batman's or Alfred and Bruce's relationship are. It is it's a big part. A of very a is very Alfred dynamic. is Alfred the most famous butler? Uh, I yeah, hmm. I think so. I'd say so. Where does the name Jeeves come from? <laughs> what Ask Jeeves? I don't know. <laughs> By the way, I I actually was um I w I think this was I don't know if it's extended universe DC content I don't know if it's from a like a comic book or a graphic something like that but I actually found where 
Alfred went to school. Um, and and they, they I don't know if they bring it up. <laughs> you want to read out the name? <laughs> Butler University. Yeah. <laughs> You learn to be a butler. Uh, is, is <laughs> butler University. Fucking hell. Indianapolis. A nationally, <laughs> a so nationally here, recognized university. I would like to say that in another astounding coincidence, um, the night that I saw uh, the Batman, that's the name of this film, the night that I saw the Batman, which was last night, I was, I was up, and so I was just browsing YouTube and there's a channel called Secret Base, and they talk about sports stuff. And they had a they have a weird rules section where they talk about weird rules. And they had mentioned Butler University randomly in one of their videos. And I was like, oh my God. They was like, oh, Butler University. I'm like, oh my God. That's where Alfred went to school and got his degree in being a butler. Ah. Oh. I mean, um, I believe it. Is everywhere. Yeah. I did. I did like that Andy Circus Alfred uh, used to be in the circus. That was kind of fun. Oh, nice! Oh, I just, oh, I just, yep. Yeah, I like it. We That's are. EFAT. One person takes this <laughs> road, and the other person takes that road. And there's just so much, so much content. Yeah. Um, so, God, can you believe this shit's free? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the impression that we get from the scene with Alfred is that the relationship is not fantastic. Um there's a little bit of distance between them. Um it's mainly uh, Alfred is prodding him that he needs to be more involved in the Bruce Wayne aspect of his life. Um but he's not interested. He he doesn't care. Yeah. He, do he doesn't think, I think he says that, like, the Batman is his parents' legacy. Like, that's what it is, not the company or the, the money or anything. Oh, yeah, um, he says something like, you need to worry about, your, what about your parents' legacy? And you're like, this is family. their legacy. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, and then uh, he basically says something like, stop, you're not my dad. Um, and then Alfred says, I'm, I'm well aware of that. It's like, oh no. And yeah, um, <laughs> I'll be honest, when I was watching that scene, I was like, oh, that's a big subtext. That's That means mm -hmm. that Alfred mm -hmm. saying, I'm well aware of that meeting, of course. I've gotten that impression, Bruce, over the many years that we've been together. Yeah. It's like, oh. Yeah. Like, oof. It is a very different Bruce Alfred relationship because generally Alfred is basically Bruce's dad. <laughs> um, well, or at the very least, like, well, I mean, you know, like the most good terms, able... mentor, assistant. Well, um, the, the, the most stable and important duo. relationship in his life, um, consistently, uh, and it's, yeah. it's a cool dynamic that I typically like as is. So it is interesting that it is different here. Um, on FNT, they were saying that the most common um, comic Bat comic Alfred is more so like the um, the BTAS one, where he is very strictly like almost always calling him Master Bruce and uh, very much he, delivering he food and yeah. drinks, and very rarely does he contradict uh, Bruce or suggest stuff. And I was just like, okay, that might not even be my mm. favorite version. I I prefer more involved and more down. To like, god damn it, I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm sorry. But Justice League, Alfred, he was pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> I really like. I like Justice League, Alfred, the yeah. man in the chair. Yeah, just I, yeah. I just like the sarcastic what about commentary, Tangerine, Alfred, the pushback he gives, and the fact that he's um, he's an engineer of sorts. Like that, that was really cool. I liked that a lot. But I also like the aspect in this one that he's a at least a bit of a brawler himself, um, apparently. Uh, yeah, that he 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 implies that he has a military background. Yeah. Um, Typically, and, but, Alfred was with MI6 or uh, yeah. British intelligence before uh, becoming a butler, which is, explains a, how he's able to help so much. It's a career path that every soldier takes one day. Well, MI6 First to butler, butler university, <laughs> and then to the, you either yeah, die yeah. a soldier or live case. long enough to become a butler. <laughs> That's um, the one. <laughs> Uh, we, we, we see as, uh, they go up to this really cool, like, gothic dining room, um, that I presume yeah. is at, like, the top of the tower. It's super cool as a, as a little setting. Um, Alfred has been working on the cipher, um, using 
at seven letters, he's starting to um, basically figure it out. But then they they have another idea that I kind of don't remember. <laughs> they, they go down and they um they they run through their little uh, computer and they come up with the word drive. Oh yeah, he only oh, yeah, yeah the, they the... they get that. Get, you go ahead, metal. So uh, I think Bruce says like, "Oh wait, what is this? Not what if this isn't a partial key? It's the whole key." And yeah, and they put it in their little machine, and they highlight yeah. all the uh, the things they've got. Right, like they get rid of all the ones they don't have a translation yeah. for, and it makes it weird. Yeah, yeah just exactly. so it highlights letters, the ones yeah. they have, and then it points uh, shows up as drive, yeah. drive, which leads, which them... then leads to oh. the garage. Yes, the garage um, where the uh, mass cars. So I was curious about this one because I was like, oh, that's probably something. I'm not saying this is is a hole or a stretch in any way. It's it's totally fine, but um. The Riddler must have expected they probably will check his car eventually, the police, so whether or not the riddle is solved, they'll probably find that thumb drive, right? Yeah. Um, poss yes. It's possible. Uh, like, it, it, it's not um, something they led to that only the riddle could have gotten them there. Um, I think it's interesting that there is a very slim chance that someone was like, do a check of his car, you know, as part of the investigation, I guess. Someone and would like, have found oh, it. Shit, there's it a would... fucking thumb driving you. Um, but yeah, what it's inevitable. Maybe is more likely is a family member um, to have checked the car for whatever reason and been like, oh my god, there's a thumb. Oh, oh, shit. The Riddler wants um, the Batman <laughs> to find it first. Well, so that's kind of they the interesting part, right? Little... Um, the riddle is something that could have stumped Batman. I guess you he, 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 he hoped you it could wouldn't. Apply that to anything though, right? Any any given riddle could. Oh yeah, so I'll be bringing it up several times. Hard. Yeah, um, and also because there's like a, a little sharp thing sticking out of the uh, the tire as oh, well. Oh, that was the other thing. Um, yeah, where I was like, yeah. man, that's a big yeah, signal. The... It's a big signal. I don't think it was necessary. Once I don't you know why it was in there. there. Um, was yeah. the tool relevant in some way? I, don't I get being, to, to notify was which oh, car it was. It was. He used it to cut off the thumb. That would have been it. Because yeah. it had blood on it. Oh, sorry. I meant um, the type of tool because that comes up later as a, as a thing, you know. But I, oh, I don't think so. No, I think it is just that's it. I think it's just good for cutting off thumbs, <laughs> incidentally, because yeah. it's used to oh. trim branches. And here's the other thought Trim I limbs, had. one might even say. Um, so Batman, I assume, told Gordon he figured out the cipher, right? Uh, yeah, they would have, because they hooked up to go, um... And so, would Gordon not be like, man, you figured it out? Did you write it down or something when I wasn't looking? Um, what, like, that he's wondering why... It would be pretty what, difficult like, to have nailed that out? with the amount of... Remember, he's a huge, like, set of, uh, ciphered letters, right? But he does it because he records it all with his eyes. I'm assuming Gordon doesn't know oh, he's yeah, doing that. Yeah, he doesn't that. take it with him or take a picture, yeah. We, maybe Jim just does know that Batman's doing that. Yeah, we, maybe he does. Um, we just chalk it up to, I don't know how Batman operates, but he just seems to figure things get out. things done and figure things out. I don't know, I feel like I'd be pretty curious about that. I'd be like, man, you nailed that. And, and, and let's go for, for a second with Jim knows it. It's just like, I, I don't think that causes any issues at all. But it is kind of interesting to be like, yep, he's going to record everything that we have access to as well. I suppose Jim is on board with that. Well, Jim, yeah, he, he seems to be really on board with working with Batman. He um, trusts him a whole bunch. Yes. Um, they is they, a bat cuck. <laughs> they they, uh, they go into the car. They they find the the thumb drive, of course, thumb drive. Haha. <laughs> I love that um, gag so much. <laughs> yeah, it's uh yeah. I mean, it's I uh, and then they they realize that they can use the thumb to access like an encrypted uh, uh the encrypted flash drive. Um, and then we get a whole bunch of pictures of the mayor. With uh, with uh, a lady, a little mistress, walking out of the iceberg lounge. Um, this. Oh wait. This is. Well, they this serve is... lettuce. Oh no no no! Yeah, yeah you're right. You keep going. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um. This this is very important. Um. Yeah. So in the in the images now, I guess we're just they they all get sent to news outlets automatically because they got accessed. Um. We see a few people in the images. We see the penguin standing back there. Uh, we also see a lady and her foot, and that's it. We can't see her face. Um, and they deduce, all right, well, let's go meet with the penguin uh, to figure out who this lady is. 
because uh, the, mm. the mayor is happily married, um, or so it seemed anyway. Um, His wife and... wasn't putting out. I felt <laughs> um, I thought it was a little like I don't know what I think about this, but just the fact that it's like sending it to all of your uh, sources and contacts, Jim Gordon. It's like, oh shit, yeah, I probably probably should have put this into a secure <laughs> laptop. Whoops. <laughs> no, instead yeah. of uh, instead of logging my email. Yeah. Like, yeah, I I was thinking to myself like, is that really stupid or is that just a really normal mistake to make. It's just like, because I guess um, he just, he put it in his well, own laptop. It's, it's like, you probably have experience with this, right? It's like a crazy man's USB. You don't know what's on there. Yeah, I guess. Um, but I mean, I, I suppose I could see, like, do you yeah, know? It's not like a huge deal, that if you I put guess. a flash drive in, that it's going to send me, and, and I, I guess the counter would be, if it didn't send the emails, I just would presume that the Riddler would send them anyway. Like, he wants this information out. Um, because the whole why you idea, wouldn't do it like he, that, to be honest with you. Instead, um, I guess there's a. It's kind of funny that, that it's it's Jim's email, you know, like that, that kind of messes with it. Maybe I mean, uh, it would seem more credible coming from the, uh, from Jim surely as well. There is that. Oh, for too. sure, that would yeah. that would, that would be a an intrigue. Yeah. Intrigue in terms of oh boy, why did it come from Jim if it was from the Riddler? Go for it, middle. What, what what would happen? <laughs> What would have happened if you put it at the bad computer, just like Batman oh, shit. at Batman at gmail.com. From Batman with all these info. Um, well, so, because before I forget some, the, the riddle, he lies still, it's like, and I think Jim says, like, uh, d yeah, destroy his reputation after he's dead. It's like, yeah, that's that's like the point of the riddle. Even though he's what dead, the lie still persists. What if it mm. comes from uh, Bruce at Wayne Enterprises instead? I, like, oh, I doubt man. that that's the email that Batman logs into at his terminal. <laughs> Super well, I'm, you know, computer. to be honest, I it's doubt that Batman logs into an email on his uh, <laughs> email address. I, yeah, I doubt that he has a Batman at Batman dot com fan mail. What if, what if it's Batman at Wayne Enterprises? <laughs> <laughs> um, that's my gamer Batman. tag. Leave me alone. Batman at Batcave dot net. Bat at man dot com. <laughs> Bat at man dot com. <laughs> um, oh, we got man dot com. That's great. Uh, that used to be a porn site, you know. <laughs> Batman. So they, they... Batman dot com was a porn site before Batman bought it for his email. <laughs> He's uh, hey, if you're Wayne, you got money to throw around on buying porn site domain names. Like yeah. imagine the lucky bastards who got sex dot com. Yeah. Well, let's find out what sex.com is. It's but probably a porn site. Right now, it seems to be an investment firm. Really? Okay. Yeah. Oh. M A N or M A N N? Imagine, imagine uh, someone one buying the history and you're going, it's yeah. an investment firm, I swear. <laughs> Man group. Sex.com is not an investment firm. <laughs> um, sex is sort of an investment, depending on what your goal is. Founded in 1783. Wow. Wow, they snagged that domain early. Yeah, crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in any case, Batman deduced he he decides to go to the iceberg lounge. Jim's like, oh, you know, we, we need uh, you know, you need a warrant to did get he, in there. Did he go up to the iceberg lounge and say, let us in? No, he, he didn't oh, I like say, it. He, he, <laughs> um he he he, do he doesn't say that, but he, uh, you, you, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, I know. You said a lot of I yeah, I got it. Um, okay, I just made sure. They uh, he he. Um, I thought that you get that. I, I goes, needed to know that Fringy <laughs> was aware of it. He 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 wants to get in um to see the penguin, and there there are these two twins that try to stop him, but uh, he just beats them up and goes inside and gets into a little bit of a fight. Um, in this crazy big lounge, it's huge. Um, there's like thousands of people in there. Uh, well, why don't we open up a controversial big. conversation that happened on FNT? Sure. Uh, see, see, see what everyone okay. here thinks. Mm -hmm. Those okay. thugs, Ooh. they open up the door, and he's like, I'm Batman. And they're like, hmm. And then he closes it, and he opens it back up for his twin friend, and then they decide to be like, get the fuck out of here, or we're gonna beat you up, make you leave. And then they fight him and they lose miserably. So, um, 
Do you think that at this point in Batman's, like, legacy slash Gotham's history that they should be more careful considering who he is and what he can do and how aware of him he is? Absolutely. Yeah, probably. Yes, absolutely. Probably, the whole yeah. entrance of his story is him talking about how he's inspiring fear and he beats the shit out of people and everyone knows it. Yeah, people are aware of his existence and what he does. Um, Especially in the criminal underworld. Yes. Yeah. Because and plus, as I was... Go ahead. As, as I was saying the, the, to Mahler, oh, yeah. okay, you go ahead, Metal. I will. <laughs> okay, we, they, we got our turn <laughs> set, so <laughs> Metal rags me. We'll get there eventually. <laughs> no, especially because this is like a penguin thing we're in here right now, and he is definitely aware about the Batman, so I would assume would he would instruct his security people. It's like, oh, if you see the Batman, don't tell him to fuck off or something. Could it be they're confident because they know there's loads of guys in there with guns? Had they, they had a bunch like... of guys with guns, I'd totally on board with that. But they had two guys with two fists. Well, yeah, two guys at the entrance, but like they know that yeah. they're the backed up by those guys guns. with guns. The twins. Yeah, yeah they get honestly, it. they should have guns, and they would be happy with the scene if they if both I would of them be had happy a gun. With the scene if they had guns, yeah. yeah. Um, but this is not. I would be thing. happy with the scene if they alerted their uh, their bosses well, like immediately. Yeah. When I was talking to Rags about it, been. I thought it would be an opportunity to open the door, and Batman's just standing there. And then he fucking closes it, and you hear lock, 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 lock. And he's just yes. like, "Yeah, I." <laughs> yeah, yeah. When I watched the film, I thought they were going to do something clever, shall we say? But they didn't, and I thought it was a real, uh, real loss. Because let's say you, let's say you don't really know that much about Batman, but a guy shows up in front of your your door, and he's covered in armor and metal plates. I think you want to avoid punching him with your hands. And um and the Batman penguin does not. the penguin comes up to him personally to be like, okay, let's have a talk. And it's just like, man, maybe a bodyguard should be ready to sort of treat him not just as I don't know. I just uh, as a thug, because a lot of people have cited already thugs aren't smart. It's like it, okay, th but, we, but they're not retarded. What? <laughs> like they should have yeah. some self preservation, like, right? I don't want to <laughs> punch a person covered in I don't want to punch a person covered in metal plates with my hands. Whoever said that you're not smart? Whoa, Jay. Oh shit balls. Yeah. I, just, I, just I thought they were gonna do something. And no, like, okay, can we just like thugs aren't smart? What do, is that even like can we talk about that as a rule? It's like what the, thugs are just <laughs> people who are big all. and strong and like use that as their um Savika's their a, leverage, a, right? a thug type, but she's not an idiot, she's smart. Yeah. Yeah, and so is Vi. Like they're just people who use the big muscles as leverage. That's not. That doesn't mean you're dumb. And and like, you'd think like, that you would want your doormen who are watching the door to have some element of judging people and cleverness about them. You know, not smart just enough to do that. At least, yeah. Yeah, you know. At least I'm not asking sense. for. Yeah, common sense would be a good start starting point for this occupation. It's like, well, you know, like if they were like, "Oh, the Batman, come on in." Would you be doing? Oh, well, he's not. They're, they're not smart. They're thugs. So. Yeah, if, if the Batman so shows up and says, I want to talk to your employer, I was thinking that they'd go like, okay, we'll go get him. And the Penguin wants to talk to him because the Penguin's aware of his reputation and doesn't want to cause trouble. Because this is a business. This is like the like I'm fucking, it's stupid that they're shooting guns inside of a nightclub. Like that's absolutely retarded. There's no way they should be doing that. Even from their perspective, that's a horrible decision. But the idea that this is a business, Penguin wants to run this business, and he wants to—he doesn't want there to be fights everywhere. And he knows that Batman is his reputation, and he's vengeance in the night and the shadow and all that. So he's probably just like, "Yeah, let's talk in my office. This will eat, this will work out better if we just talk instead of start fighting." Which yeah. the Peng to his credit, the Penguin does when they finally like—I guess when the Penguin becomes aware that Batman's here. But yeah, you'd you think, think that they'd the let him know. Be like right yeah, away. like, oh shit, the Batman's here and he wants to talk to you. We don't know why, he just, what should we do? This is not usual. This is not covered in our, in the seminar I took when I, when I first started working here. The, the, the thug doorman PowerPoint that they watch every year <laughs> to keep their license, their do certification. Do you think that it goes this way just because they wanted another action scene? Yes. It feels yeah. that way. Oh yeah, there's that, someone just mentioned in the chat, there's that one clip uh, where in the animated series there's a thug that walks into a room, sees Batman, and just closes yeah. the door and pretends he didn't see him. <laughs> like, 
That's and fun. like the videos are are called like the correct response to seeing Batman or the smartest <laughs> thug ever. <laughs> um, um, oh yeah, and I, I mean, guess the other half of it is uh, wasn't impressed with Batman's decision on how to uh, uh, approach the Iceberg Lounge. Yeah, that yes. sucked. To go to the front door. It was a little weird to see him just walk up to the front door. Yeah, like, and start punching everybody. Yeah, it sucked. Um. So I like, that's told, not clever. I was told on FNT that, to be fair, this is an early career Batman who's not learned mm. more sleuthy, you know, approaches, and I don't know that I consider that that compelling as a reason. I oh, think. no, that's yeah, a that's I. a terrible argument, whoever made that, because the entire film he, shows him sleuthy. sneaking up yeah. on people <laughs> and being silent and showing up when people don't expect it. But he does that with Selena for the most part. And he doesn't do it with the people he should be sneaking up on or sneaking into. Uh, I've done zero years of sleuthing, and my immediate assumption is maybe there are better options than the front door. I've played, <laughs> like, I know there are stealth options in video games for a reason. Crawl through the vents, yeah. <laughs> there are vents. Like, I, show, up, show up in the Penguin's office rather than exactly. trying to the front yeah. door. <laughs> we don't see Batman going in. The penguin's just going about his business. He's got a girl with him. He's talking to some patrons on the way to his office. He closes the door. He sighs. He thinks he's alone. He turns around. Oh shit! Batman's in my office, just sitting there waiting for me. Sup? Yeah. Yeah. And but but they but instead, Batman very cleverly shows up at the front door and starts punching everyone. But th this is our first introduction to Penguin, played by Car Colin Farrell. What a great, what a I great like penguin! He, I really like him in this film. Yeah. I think he's great. Um, it's, he's unrecognizable. Really great performance. The prosthetics are super cool. It's making, oh, making yeah. several people rethink what they believe about Colin Farrell. And I've always was like, I've always liked him. He's, uh, he's a lot <laughs> yeah, of fun. Everything he does. Uh, but this is this would be one of those ones where it's like he has range. It's like he's always had range. But yes, yes, I met him <laughs> once, Colin Farrell. Neat, really. Yeah. Did no you joke. ask him um, how it was... was to play Penguin? No, this was uh, before the movie. I wish I'd asked him that at the time. This was years and years back. He just was at the hotel I was working at. He just showed up uh, when I was a valet. He was in a, a suburban, just a just a regular suburban. He was there with a couple other people and just checked him in and brought his stuff inside for the you know bellhop, and that was that. Nothing special. Just check you know. To tag for his vehicle and everything. So, yeah. Um, Me. End of I, story. I, I really like Miss Penguin. I guess we'll get more opportunities to talk about that, though. Um, they go, we they will go, have more opportunities yeah. to talk about that. They go into the Penguin's office. He shows him the pictures. Uh, and he's like, I, yeah, I have no idea who this is. Uh, the girl with um, Mitchell. Um, and, and then uh, uh, Selena. Kyle walks in uh, to to bring in drinks, and she kind of stops for a second because she's kind of shocked to see Batman here, um, just standing here talking to the Penguin. Um, she then uh, like uh, leans down to give him like a drink, but she also exchanges. I can't remember exactly uh, who's who, but money is exchanged uh, for drops, which are like a, a drug in this world. It, um, I think they call them drop heads or whatever, right? The I think drop heads are the people who take them. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. That, drops they, they turn you into a drop head. They are, called, they are called drops because they are taken by a drop. drops. Yeah. Filth. Um, or disgusting. is. Disgusting. Well, it's. Oh. Some call them Just, droppers with a hard R. <laughs> which is, which is um, the one way that, like, people don't take drugs in real life. So it immediately tells you that it's a fictional one. Uh, so I, I guess uh, an import the important thing here is so she comes in, she's surprised that Batman's there. The, she then swaps the money for the drops, uh, but she pauses when she sees uh, the the girl in the in the pictures, um, and kind of plays it off not super great. Uh, and then she leaves, but Batman notices that she's actually keeping an eye on him through the window. Um, and yeah, he, he he basically doesn't get anything out of the penguin. Like he just says, like, hey, I'm the proprietor of this establishment, and that's it. Um, Love his voice. Yeah, I hire all the shitty doormen. 
again, <laughs> I, the the thing to keep in mind in this scene is when Selena mm -hmm. comes in, she appears to be surprised that Batman is there. So this is our first big contrivance then, yeah? How did you detect uh, that's what Fringy was setting up for later, possibly? What? How dare you? Yeah. Can I, hey, wait, uh, I, I forgot to mention, by the way, um, I think Batman is shot at three or four times in the club, in the active think, club I, with many think, people everywhere. At least twice, yeah. Yes, yeah, as I said, yeah. this is... You should never... This is just like a last... You don't want to be doing this. Not just from a... Like, you'd have to be an absolute fool to start shooting guns like that in a crowded I mean, club where you have your workers and patrons and you want to draw as little like police attention to this place as possible to the point where I wouldn't even like give the people who work on the inside guns because that's just a uh, recipe. Wait a minute, for bring things. police attention to it. What are you thinking about there? Like the sense that you don't want to get this place like you, you don't want to create commotion here. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Um, I yeah, yeah, and, and I understand that police corruption is a big aspect, but you can't rely on that to solve all of your issues and stuff. You don't want to get this place on the radar. You don't want to have guns. Like, what if a patron gets shot? Well, yeah, if someone dies. They're going to go. Yeah. yeah, like that's going to be a big deal. Um, and, and it's just it's it's always pretty much going to create more problems than it'll solve. Um, and you want patrons to keep coming back. Exactly. So. It's a business. <laughs> you need people to come. Not everyone here is some shady thug with connections who you're trying to set up. No, they're people. It's a club. Most of the people here are probably just there to go clubbing. And uh, not like uh, seals, yeah. but <laughs> like just to enjoy themselves with like alcohol and drinks and to meet ladies and things like that. And this is less a criticism, more of a preference. But uh, when some guy pulls a pistol on him, Batman throws a metal pole at him, I think, and tanks are shot uh, mm -hmm. after doing that. And I, I had my first thought, and it comes up a couple of times in this movie, where I was just like, okay, Batman didn't really do anything intelligent there. He just... He's just brawling his way through and tanking all of the shots. It would have been cool to see him doing things that make it so that he doesn't have to tank shots. Um, for example, getting shot in the back about two meters away by a shotgun you do get to a point eventually where you're just like, is he just immune to all firearms? Um, Because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, as people know, not a fan of John Wick 2. And one of the main things I found is a difference between John what? Wick 1 and 2, which doesn't apply to this, but it does apply to John Wick, is that we were shown him to be so talented that he doesn't need to wear like a bulletproof fucking vest because he doesn't get shot at typically unless he's making mistakes, which he doesn't often do. If you remember, one of his biggest mistakes was his hesitation in shooting um, the target he had, because I think uh, in the first film, because he's like only just realized, like, holy shit, I have my opportunity, it's right here. As well as um, sometimes you'll make a mistake in terms of his stealth, but uh, in John Wick 2, he gets fucking blasted by an avalanche of bullets, but yeah. it's fine because he's got his super oh, yeah. sci fi jacket, and it's just like, aww. Um, mm. So yeah. Uh, yeah, you don't want to, I mean, it's it's one of those things where, like in the in the army, you will have a bulletproof vest, and it works quite well. But it only covers so much of you, and yep. you. It is not something you rely. It is a very much just in case kind of thing. It is not a rely on this to protect you. Meanwhile, it's not generally. You get taught not to be shot first and foremost. Yeah. Meanwhile, Batman walks around a little like Iron Man in this film, where he's just like, "You can shoot me. It's not going to do anything." Mwahaha. Which um, I think matches uh, Tony Stark's ego as well as the suit he's got wearing. But for Batman, it's just like, oh, surely you want to avoid getting shot as much as possible. Oh, yeah. You would, I didn't, yeah, I didn't get that covered. impression from him. It felt to me when watching it that he was like, if I get shot, it's the same as getting a little slap. It's fine. Mm -hmm. I mean, he gets shot in the back, right? He does, yeah. So, is, it the, is that the same cape that he later uses as a wingsuit? No, he uses like a spe his wingsuit is like this special thing that comes out of his suit. Yeah, I thought right. that um, the wingsuit was a. No, I remember well, after, he... after that he doesn't have his cape anymore. Yeah. yeah. So, so wait, the cape turns into the. Because it's got it's... like straps across. I thought it was like inside of his suit, like in the back of his suit, someplace, and it comes out and it goes over him. I believe that the cape he loses the cape when he uh, does the wing gliding thing, but I mean these are across different nights. So if that cape was damaged, I would just imagine he has a different. Yeah, we definitely got room to say um, he got mm. a repaired one or something. Yeah, um, 
I guess uh, some, so, some uh, yeah. Well, I guess you should be avoiding like if it because his cape isn't just like some cape. Then it's actually valuable equipment, and that's why he has it with him, which makes sense. You know why? Why is he wearing a cape? Well, it actually serves utility. It's not just to yeah. look edgy or whatever. But um, he should then be avoiding getting shot in the back in particular because like that's gonna really unless his cape is made of some kind of bulletproof cloth, which I don't buy. Well, if his back, does it, is his back armored? Do you have well, yeah, armor around? around his back is exactly armored, but the cape yeah. is on the outside of the armor, right? Yes. So it's like, not just for your own personal safety and like, just avoiding getting shot in general, you actually do take damage to your equipment when you get shot then, if, uh, if that's the case, which means that he should be avoiding it all the more. Just another reason for him to not want to get shot. Mm -hmm. Um. So something else that's important to mention as well is he. Uh, well, this is the end of the scene. He notices that the boots that Selena is wearing are the same boots as uh, a girl in the photo nearby is wearing, uh, and this leads him to trail her after she leaves uh, the iceberg lounge. Um. So, in case it wasn't very apparent. Um, so if if Selena had come in to that room five minutes earlier or five minutes later, Bruce would have had nothing to work with anymore. Um, or, in or terms just of different shoes, he, or different shoes. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, actually, yeah, I, I think it's think not a different shoes. Yeah. Not an unreasonable thing to yeah. happen. <laughs> um, yes. And, Wait, do are women? Do women typically have more than one pair of shoes? No. Uh, like one. No, or they're two. very utilitarian. Just, you know, um, just the one, and I Very guess economical. To, just the, the one, one shoe. shoe. <laughs> <laughs> well, just one a shoe. They, hop they have around. to swap it with every step. Um, it's just a very wide shoe. They can fit both their feet in it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Or like a flip flop. Women hop they, like, around everywhere they go. Uh, to emphasize the point now, um, this is. I, this is so important that that he is able to follow her because following her leads him directly to Annika, the girl in question, who is at this point the most important leader he has. And as far as I can tell, Selena wants to avoid Batman. Like she's she's not trying to get anything out of him. Like she doesn't come into the room to get anything from him to su uh, to suss out what he's doing. She seems to be surprised that he's there. So I think it is safe to say that she comes in and it's... Bringy, could you not say sus? Bringy, say uh, sus again. I feel like sus is a times. tainted word. What? Say more tainted words, Bringy. Use as many as you can. Taint. Um, the word taint is less tainted than sus. <laughs> um, I, I do want to... Just have a, a quick fence about hey, Bringy, how does it feel when you're trying to summarize scenes and everyone's making fucking jokes? Isn't it great? <laughs> Yeah, because I, I, I do want to make this clear because this is, like, incredibly important as far as I'm concerned. And, like, to me, this is, this is like, the most significant plot problem in the film. Um, Selena is the, far and away, like, the, the most valuable person that he could have ever encountered to help him with his investigation. Um, now, of course... Uh, I, I guess so that we can make it clear that she is there for a reason. She and Annika are like a, a working. They were working like the mad and and Falcone's. Op well, we're jumping the gun a bit. Falcone, uh, big crime boss operation to like get money um, out of him. So th they're there for that reason. But the fact that she would come in at that time of any time, the the five minutes that Batman was there to talk to the Penguin, uh, that she was wearing the same shoes. Uh, that sh that she specifically is like Annika's girlfriend, um, and th that him following her there basically gives him all that information. It's like without if she had come into that room five minutes earlier or later, the film is radically different, very different. Um, it it is much harder for Bruce to figure all of this out, um, because of this. Now, does anybody have any thoughts on that, or is is that just do we agree? I agree. I think I, I, agree. I agree. Right? Yeah, I think that the, it's not enough that she has a reason to be there. It is too specific. I think it's too specific when she shows up. You can have is that she works there. She notices the big brawl, and then she very just curiously, cu curious like a cat. 
follows Batman into <laughs> Penguin's thing with the excuse of I have a drink, but she's just more interested to see what this Batman's all about. Simple I guess that. the amendment would be that there is no drug swap because I think that the drug swap is just a clear indication to me that this was going to happen. This exchange was going to happen regardless of whether Batman was there or not. Like this was something that she was doing and he just happened to be there at the right time. Um, and, and of yeah. course we're in the same boots as well. And then that allows him to follow her. And again, she is like the key to him figuring out so many things about this investigation that would have been a lot harder for him to figure out without her. Cause he leads him direct. He, uh, she leads him directly to the person that he is looking for at this current moment, who is the main lead that he has right now. It's a huge coincidence. It's not impossible, but damn, is it helpful. Convenient. You're, you're yeah. saying contrivance I'm, here is maybe the word for it? It is, is a that... contrivance, I would say. Um, or, or, it's not... Well, convenient. Con it is convenient. It is very, very, very convenient. It's not one of those... Is that what a really contrivance is? is she does have a reason to be there, but... So, so that's, that's why I'm trying to emphasize it is convenient. It is not, it yeah. is not a whole, because it well, could I mean... have happened. It could have happened that she comes in at that moment, the five minutes that he was there. I mean, but, it's like, not. It wouldn't damn. be a hole if it was just like she goes to the um, she goes to the club sometimes, right? Then it still wouldn't be a hole. It's like, hey, yeah, I, I know Oz, you know. Well, yeah, but we don't. We don't even like, address that. She works there, so like, I understand yeah, why exactly. she's there. It's that she specifically comes in at that moment while he's there with the pictures of her, um, seemingly unplanned, and because of that, Batman can trail her because again, she's wearing the same boots, so he figures that out. And she was acting a little bit weird follow her directly to the woman that he was looking for. It, it's it's perfect. You could even have um, you could even just have her like more clearly visible in the picture and then have Batman ask Penguin who they who um, like, she is. Something I like guess, that. But that that would be a significant change because then you it would just be she if she's in the picture and he can see her visibly, then it's like, well that makes things I guess well well then it would have to be that he'd have to find her specifically, right? So you'd have to seek her out. Is that well, gonna, I guess. How do you um, think that helps, actually? Okay, so she's visible in the picture. Um, he re he finds that Penguin isn't a lead. He asks Penguin, "Do you know any of these other people here that I could maybe talk to, or something along those lines?" Mm -hmm. Why would he tell her? Why would he tell him that? So Penguin clearly uh, doesn't well, want to I mean, cooperate. Surely, that Penguin is sharing information. Like, well, Pe Penguin is seemingly cooperative with batman because batman is slamming him into a window like yeah sure but he he all he said like i'm the proprietor of this establishment like, yeah, that's he's, what he he's said. doing the i'm cooperating but really i'm not i'm not yeah right um yeah like i i as far as i'm it's it's a huge convenient like it's 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 very convenient um because yeah he follows her back to her place uh but she has a phone call with uh with uh Annika, who's like her roommate slash girlfriend, and um she's she's stressed out because of the news, all the pictures of her, they're all over the place. Uh, and then Selena's like, well, yeah, we'll, we'll try and get the money tonight. Then so it's like, right, so they're um they're they're working on it. She goes back, Bruce is scoping it out. Uh, she got a lot of cat there. She puts on a little cat suit, uh, and then heads off, um, to uh the mayor's house. To sneak I thought, in. By the way, I think this is yeah, uh, once you see the whole film that I think this is definitely deliberate. When Bruce was looking at her through his little bioculars, as Mr. Burns would say, I was like, <laughs> "Is this? Are they deliberately drawing a parallel between Bruce and Riddler right now?" Yeah, I would say so. Because um, it seemed that way to me. I like wish I said, they went once, a little further. Once you finish the film, I feel oh. like I would actually cite this as deleberate. Um but yeah, like the, this, this, so, yeah. they are doing it for very different reasons, very different goals, but, uh, there's, there's similarities in, let's say, approach and, and ideology, like, is, is fucked for one of them. I mean, you could argue both of them, but, uh, it's, it's I just thought it was an interesting thing to note, because what, what Bruce is uh, doing in this scene is creepy as fuck to anybody who doesn't know the context. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, someone chats said every clue is convenient. Um, what? So I, I, so I mean, every, every, uh, only it, it, in the it, most basal sense could you say that to the point where it's not even worthwhile. It, so, convenience loses its meaning at that point. 
I think what it what's what's important in terms of uh, this particular conversation is think about the consequences of these specific clues. So that her coming into the room at that moment gives him the cause that he needs to follow her specifically, a person he's never met before and who he has no clue is related at all, directly to the woman that he's looking for. And okay. if she had come in five minutes earlier or later, he would have missed her. And if we can do a counterexample, um, if someone said, what does a liar do after he's dead? He lies still. That's a pretty convenient bit of messaging there that Batman can use to figure out the puzzle, isn't it? And be like, well, no, it's not convenient at all. Yeah. Riddler sent it to him. It's on purpose. Yeah, yeah, it's the opposite of a convenience. It is and, an engineered thing, yeah. specifically. It is he, by design. He gets the clue, he does some thinking, and then that leads him to the car, where he finds the thumb drive, where he then finds that it's, it's all following as, a, as like cause and effect. This is also cause and effect, but it's like, we are, we are stretching. We are very much stretching things to, to line up. Um, cause it's not just that it leads him to Annika. It's also that this person specifically is incredibly valuable to have working with you. She's, she's very skilled, uh, mm. and cooperative. Um, like a, a lot of what, and I guess it will become clearer later just how important, how different the story is if she didn't walk in at that moment. It, I don't know how he solves the mystery without her. It would be. I, it would be a different story. Could, it would be it a would totally be a different, different story. It would be a very yeah. different story if she had come in at a different time when he wasn't there. Um, Do you not just have her track him down? Well, it's, like, why, why would she be tracking him down? What What does she care about Batman? Okay, yeah, fair. She right. wants to avoid Batman. <laughs> remember? When they, like when they get into the fight. Um... Because I, because what you can pull from the scene is there is a bit of concern. It's like, oh, Annika's there with pictures. Also, fucking Batman's got him, and he's looking at him, right? Like that's not good for you because you want because she wants to protect her. Um, it's a convenience to quicken an inevitable crossing of paths. They would have they were going to run into each other eventually. Were they necessarily? The city it depends on what Batman's route well, is. Well, or route so, depending on where you're from. To, to be clear, it's it's not like it's not like <laughs> Selena's there for no reason. She is trying to steal money from Falcone's operation. Falcone's operation is central to the mystery. Um, but it's not about that they would have bumped into each other. It's that him bumping into her at this moment is extremely helpful. It is so very very helpful for his investigation. We'll be getting uh, and it soon to the biggest elements of that very soon, right? Like, yes, yeah. it's, it, it's coming later. We're not, we're not quite there yet to emphasize how important it is. Um, but he, yeah, he follows her to the mayor's office. She goes in, does some safe cracking. She is clearly quite experienced at this. Um, she gets in. Uh, Batman's there, uh, sneaks up on her. They have a little bit of a fight. Um, but they're making a little too much noise. And so the police officer's like, hey, what's going on? But Batman... Uh, keeps her safe from the from the cop, so she doesn't know that they're both there. Now, is the safe currently open when that guy enters the room? It should be, yes. The, the, the very so that all we have to assume is that well, he simply didn't check, and I'm just like, is that lucky that he doesn't check the most valuable thing in the room, and he's designed to secure <sighs> the room? Well, she does have to reveal the safe behind the portrait. Yeah. Yes. Well, yes, but I assume. So I don't think he. So if you're a guard and you, you're aware of the secret, important things that you're supposed to be protecting in this room, all you do is glance over uh, as you glance around the room, right? Um, I think on one level, well, it, had he checked the room in know? general, so hang on, if you look at the room in general, you're gonna luck out if he doesn't spot the. See the safe is open. Yeah, it's it's a it's a wide door. It's open, and it's and, and it's just it's it, it, it's a thing that would stick out in a room because you're like, oh, there's a big safe door open on the on the wall. But secondly, I think that it's lucky that he's not here specifically with the knowledge to know that if someone's breaking in here, that's what they would go for, and that he should glance over at it, if, if so, such a well, thing. Well, if he is a corrupt I think cop, a luck that would be the thing, if he is one of the corrupt cops and not just a normal cop guarding a crime scene. Um, I, I think the luck element comes from just him noticing there isn't an opened safe on the wall with tools on the floor. Um... I think yeah. that's really where the luck comes in. I think the like fact, said, though, that he's probably not... I, I think you're right. It's, it's uh, somewhere. Is there something that's... Yeah, it is somewhere. I think that's where the luck comes in, because um, if... 
I, I kind of give it a pass to a degree to a for a decent degree, because this cop probably isn't that familiar with the room. It's probably just his job to make sure people aren't here. Um, he's it's dark. He only has one flashlight or, a, or an electric torch, as they say, across the pond. Um, and so he just he, he probably didn't hear anything. I think he's just checking because he looks around because that's just what he's supposed to do is look around like a security guard, essentially. And he just he just shines his light in there a little bit. And he just doesn't see any body, so he just goes back along his way. So there's a little bit of luck. There is a there's some there's a fortunate aspect, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. Um, now, if it was like daytime and he didn't notice it, um, yeah, then I'd have a much bigger problem. No, Batman operates at night, fortunately. Yeah, he's um, he's become nocturnal. Yeah. He when just, someone uh, said, "Was it the same room?" I think they go into a different room, but he's checking the room. They go into in. a different room. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um. Uh, but so what we, what we find out is she came, the passport had been taken off of Annika by the mayor and locked in the safe. That's why she was coming to get it so that they could leave. Um, by the man uh, locked in the broke... safe. I was about to say something. I'm glad <laughs> no, you did. I, Do you know? uh, no, no, I'm Free, sorry. He's tiny. Was it a midget? I was like, Free knows what he's doing. Well, who was the man who was locked in the safe? I have to like try to remember. And I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> That's sort of where I was waiting. I was waiting for what the payoff of that would be. But I guess I guess yeah. it was just a little mis yeah. It was funny though, because my mind imagined the visual of a little person trapped in a safe. <laughs> Who steals? Like, oh, thank God bullets. you're here. <laughs> um, he eats past. He's the passport gremlin. He yeah. eats passports. <laughs> nom 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 nom. Delicious. You want to go to Bulgaria? You got to talk to me. Um, oh, he's like Randy the Goblin. <laughs> He is like Randy the Goblin. So they they uh they go back to the apartment. Um, it's trashed and Annika's gone. She's been taken. Um, which is not good. Uh, and mm -hmm. but then they they they. Is that what happens move. when an apartment leaves? It becomes a department. An apartment leaves and it becomes a department. He he he. Um, uh. they, they, they watch the news and it turns out that the commissioner uh has been killed by the Riddler. Uh, this night with some crazy elaborate, like rat trap. It's very it grim, grim, yeah. The the yeah. trap is designed to just make it so that the rats will eventually eat your face. Yeah. yeah. Really fucked. <laughs> um, yeah, horrible. Yeah, not a way you'd want Did anyone to else? Yeah, Did anyone else find it strange that the news outlet would just play the unedited video? I was going yes, I, I thought about bit, that, yeah. but they do it pretty much throughout with a lot of sketchy stuff and I'm like, is this just a Gotham norm? Are we supposed to take it that way? <laughs> Because Gotham's a bit of a, 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 you know, I don't know. I, I get, I totally understand the point of view, because I even, when I saw the rat cage thing, I was like, damn, they're showing this. Um, obviously for our benefit, but like the, it, it may be that it, Gotham's rules aren't quite the same as ours. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, that's. Yeah, they can have, yeah, it's like British commercials where you can have boobs in like serial ads and stuff, and we can't do that over here. Yeah. It's, it's a different place. Five place. links is just a news is just another news station in Gotham. You just you just have some just have some buxom lass and she's just telling you about maybe you should try some crisps and then she's unbuttoning her shirt and she just shows a tit and there you go. But um, that's actually every advertising campaign in the UK. Yep. <laughs> oh, um, how about some crisps? Even for things that are crisps. <laughs> Someone in chat has mentioned something that's actually quite important. <laughs> the crisps um, and tits. The bat, uh, not bat. The Catwoman's phone gets stolen, uh, from the from from this place as well, from the apartment. Mm -hmm. That is mm -hmm. important to remember. Um, but I don't know that it fixes the problem that, <laughs> that we that we've got to be getting to. Um, it, they talk about uh, uh, she Selena explains that there is a bar underneath the 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 club, basically where it's like this is where the super duper important people go. It's like the real the club, club in the club, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and then uh, makes the observation as well that oh, you you like cats, you got a lot of cats. Um, and they uh, so the the plan at this point, or I think that comes a little bit later. Um, oh yeah, yeah, that that the, the, the um, that's right. The next scene is uh, they're gonna like keep in touch. She says that you know, like you're gonna help me with this one, um, and we're gonna we're gonna help find you, you your friend, um, which then takes us to the morgue where we see the 
commissioner and the rat trap. Yeah, I don't know if it's um, worth mentioning, by the way, Batman does notice they have a lot of unpaid bills. I think it's just to show yeah. us this motivation mm -hmm. they're beyond greed. Yeah, exactly. Um, nice little, just, yeah, just throw these things in and he's take a look around as he would, and that's how he finds out her name. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, they go to the morgue, uh, he meets with Jim, um, and they take a look at the rat clue. There's a bunch of symbols written in, uh, like, UV lights, which will be part of the next cipher that they need to figure out. But also, um, there's a little hidden compartment in the rat trap, uh, that contains photos of, uh, the commissioner meeting up with some criminals doing some, and it's like, hmm, that's a little Wait, bit Wait, that's odd. illegal. Yeah, that's not, you're not making it's it not, illegal not, to meet up with criminals. Yeah, but, I was about to say, I guess in his no. aspect, but meeting up with criminals is actually sort of the job of the police. That is true, yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, <laughs> Tiny bit. It's just a little bit, uh, odd, um, given what Jim knows about the commissioner. And then there's a second letter to the Batman, um, and uh, it's it's got like a it's got a it's got a brand new riddle for him. Um, the 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 big part is like bring me to uh, bring him into the light. The you'll find the rat, bring him into the light, and then you'll find where I'm at, uh, which is a super important riddle for like the whole story. Um, but it doesn't become clear like exactly what that means until much later. Um, and the cipher itself that they start to work on later doesn't, it, it's like, it is going to give them the information on like who the rat is, but the nature of like bringing them into the light is, I guess it's, you know, we, we still got to figure that out. We're not quite there yet. Um, any observations about this particular part? None for me. Um, I thought, I, what, when you hear bring them into riddle. the light, where does your, cause we'll come back to this, of course, eventually. But what is, where does your mind go when you hear bring bring something into the light or bring him into the light? Expose them. Feel, yeah. 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 That's basically I, I think I think it's fair that at this point he's kind of got that impression that that's like mm -hmm. the idea of find the rat and exp and, and uh reveal them to the world. Mm -hmm. Um but then the next the next we're we're now with uh he is working with Selena, giving her the little eye thing to record stuff. She's going to go into the super duper crazy lounge. For, for those who haven't seen the film, him. it's basically like this mega bionic cyberpunk uh, contact lens. Lens, yeah. It's incredible. It is yeah. definitely a, a bat gadget. It is mm -hmm. definitely um, Batman gadget. So, this is the part, again, that I want to emphasize. Remember, the reason why he's able to have Selena help him at this moment is because they bumped into each other at the place and, and she came in at the right time and she was Annika's. Uh, and she's. Obviously, Your someone friend. who can access the club and someone who can do this, yeah, mm -hmm. for him and is very willing. helpful. Very and, yeah, and she's motivated to help him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god! I can't believe it. I haven't considered. Oh, fucking hell! She works at Club Penguin. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I've never even considered. Oh fuck. Um, she it goes took me this long. It took me this fucking long he's to gonna, put that together. Need Fringy, you have to wait. You need. <laughs> Fringy. <laughs> Fringy, she works at Club Penguin. Yeah, I, I heard you. Fringy, did you know she works at Club Penguin? What the fuck? Uh, oh my gosh. That's outrageous, I the think, right? Pool outrageous, yeah. Is closed. <laughs> um, oh. So, does she club so, penguins? She, uh, she goes into the, to the, to the bar. She goes up to the stairs and. She, we see that the person who is guarding the elevator is somebody that Batman got into a fight with two with the night before. He is an off-duty police officer. Oh, he's, he's the one who shot him with the pistol, officer, right? right? Yeah, hmm. uh, it's like oh, he's All here. Right. And he's got know, a distinctive huh? broken nose. His name is Kent, uh, like William Kenzie. Um, so we now find out thanks to this connection. Oh, th there's an off-duty cop here guarding the club. Okay. Uh, and then when she goes down into the super duper club, we see that there are a lot of high ranking like police and government and city officials in this place. We got police officers, we got politicians, members of, like the Bank of Gotham, the um, DA. Th well, that's yeah, that's the most important one. The the DA is here. So again, Harvey if Dent is there. That, if, no, it's not Harvey Fringy. Dent. His name is Fringy. His name what does DA Coleman. mean for those in the audience who don't know? Uh, it's the district attorney. Mm. The district attorney of Gotham. What does the district so, attorney to, do, Fringy? 
he yeah, like, Fringy. He 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 he'd be like the like pr- the lead. Don't in need to laugh of, about it. <laughs> he he he'd be like the lead <laughs> in terms of prosecuting uh, cases for the state uh, criminal cases. Like he's the one who oversees it. There'll be other DAs underneath him who like work the cases, but he's ultimately in charge. Super duper important person. Um, he, in fact, he he may well have uh, he may well have been involved in the the Maroni uh, drug bust. Hmm. Um, I just a long out, time ago. This movie has Maroni and Falcone, while the Nolan trilogy has Maroni yeah. and Falcone. It's like, hey. That confuses me. <laughs> yeah, Maroni and Falcone. Um, so Macaroni. The next Batman reboot will put will have Falcone and Marone. Marone. Uh, Falcone and, and Marone. Uh, Marone and so, Falcone. So I, I guess the name's just gonna get pro- progressively shorter until we have foot and m- <laughs> more and foul. Um so the the uh, the yeah, so it the, this the the amount of people that he finds out are here in this place and gives the seeds in terms of the corruption within the police and the state uh well not the state the city um uh like all of that he's able to find out because he's got that connection to uh to selena because i I forget did you mention that an aspect of the 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 bionic i Thing he has a computer that basically will scan your face, and in seconds it will tell you your yep. name and your occupation. Uh, that only works with people on who've got their face registered with the police, right? Because it works on the the police's facial recognition. The police, at fa- well, and the DA as well. No, but as in like um, people that the police would have a register of. Should, I think was the implication. It unfortunately it doesn't work like uh, like a Disney production where it just scans to make sure that you have a face and it lets you know that <laughs> yes this person imagine, does have a face. I'm imagining that that's actually a gadget that Bruce has is that it scans you and is like yep that's a face. He just has a face to Selena as she's face walking around confirmed. he goes yep they've got a face yep they do too yep. she's her, like what are you what scanning at him a lot longer. <laughs> No that guy's wearing a face hat. people here. That might not be a face Selena you have to get close. <laughs> <laughs> and then they have a discussion as to whether hats or clothes or accessories and they just get distracted and um so uh yeah th- there's uh she uh Bruce like uh, no look at him like actually go talk to him I-, I need like his face I need to see that you're talking to uh that the- that that's the DA um but by doing that uh he decides that he wants to have a, a chat with Selena um, which actually is super helpful anyway. So uh, he, uh, she sits down, talks with him, and then he, uh, now, now I will say, Bruce makes the observation, oh man, he's like high off of the drops. He's super high. I don't think that that is a good enough explanation for how- I agree. To I also share agree. very incriminating, well, not it's not necessarily incriminating, but very you... secret information with someone you've never met before. <laughs> when you- it. It can work, but you have to work harder for it. Um, if someone's drunk or high, they will probably be more likely to let slip information they wouldn't already have. However, you have to work towards it. You have to be subtle with the questions you ask, and you have to lead them on in a way that isn't yeah. obvious and direct. Whereas you'd never get them to open their mouth before, but now you sort of you have a chance. There are little openings in there. In, in their in their mind that you could maybe take advantage of, but wasn't impressed. They do was Selena's, not impressed at all with this. Here. Selena's dialogue. There was particularly a lie. They they the film thought it was achieving something when it shows her put her hand on his knee and then say so about this rat. A rat. This is yeah. like what? What are you? What are you doing? That looks yeah, so no. obvious. Yeah. <laughs> It's, uh, and if not to the DA, who's maybe high as a kite, the people around him, if any one of them isn't I high see. as a kite, they'd be like, oh, what is this woman doing? It's someone you've never met before, and her first interest is like, hey, tell me this. You literally just described that if this were found out, it could destroy the entire city. And then she's like, so, uh... <laughs> Ooh, that she... sounds fun. Tell me more well, about that. I mean, it's, it's, so, <laughs> it's so suspicious that even the girl sitting next is like, oh, that's what got that Russian girl in trouble. It's like, oh, man. That's exactly who Selena's looking for. Yep. 
And then a lot fought. of people saying things convenient to the people hearing them around. Yeah. Like people just happen to be an earshot of things that they really, really, really benefit from hearing. Yeah. And so, um, and isn't there a certain el element of luck? Just the fact that all of these people are here, um, yes. that night. I was just about to say that. Yeah. They're all here. They all go clubbing. They all. Or a lot of them do drugs, you know. Well, they're all you can be corrupt right. without going clubbing and doing drugs in a. Well, to, I guess, be, to be fair, I would consider this a huge like risk. It, it, let's say I am corrupt, I'd be like, I ain't going to the fucking Club Penguin. <laughs> Not <right now>. Yes. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you for <laughs> calling it Club Penguin. Well, the fact that he says like, "Oh man, I'm nervous about everything that's going on." It's like, why are you here? <laughs> yeah. I like it's to do drugs. I, I don't think Can't the DA afford to do drugs at home? Yeah, like, I think there is an aspect to this too where I'm wondering there doesn't seem to be any attempt whatsoever for these higher ups the DA and the stuff like that to like be subtle about them being there they're at the uh, you know like the like I understand yes there's a lot of corrupt cops and stuff but the cops weren't at all involved in the media learning about it and public opinion and stuff like that I I would have appreciated a little more subtlety in these characters going, like, like when she said, "Oh, you're the DA," and he's like, "Yeah, yeah, she, 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 she. yeah." Instead so of like, "Yep, that's me." TV. It's like, oh man, I don't know. This is that is the exact opposite of a thing you want to be told if you're the DA in a place like this. Yeah. While yeah, while like, high oh, as a kite, well, I gotta he go. Of, he of all people should understand this. His whole that's job. What is I'm the saying. War. That's what like, I'm saying. <laughs> that's his job. Um. But I, he's high, all right? <laughs> it's okay. And, but, uh, and he didn't seem brazen about it. Like, ah, no one can touch me, you know? No, I, he was nervous. He was incredibly yeah. nervous. Which means, why are you talking? I, it's it's the drugs, all right? You just got to accept that. Um, but then, yeah. uh, but but the, the girl who says, oh, it's that Russian thing. Selena decides to follow her. And Bruce not happy about that. She don't want to say anything. But then... It's like, hey, what's going on here? Why are y'all fighting? And it's like, hey, oh, forget about it. It's it's the penguin, but more importantly, it's Falcone. <gasps> He's right there. Oh my goodness gracious, Falcone, the big crime boss. And it was interesting to see like, John oh, Turturro hey. playing him because I just associate yeah, him yeah. as a goofy yeah. actor playing goofy people, but he was a very serious, mm -hmm. if not menacing, person in this film. Oh, he was yeah, so good. He's, uh, oh yeah. yeah, he's great. All the acting yeah. choices in this, I really liked. I don't think I there was too. anyone who stood out as a bad choice. Nope. Everyone, I was like, yeah, uh, that's yeah, all right. Yeah. Um, the, the main thing we pulled from the conversation is Selena is not particularly comfortable around Falcone. Um, and then she goes in the bathroom, is like, now nah, we're done, we're not working together, pulls out a little eye thing, and uh, that's it. Um, and then she leaves to go home. Um, the DA is there. Uh, oh, sorry, yeah. if, did you, uh, we're, str we're stressing that. We really learn here, and this cements the idea that the, the police, the are corrupt. the Bat, yeah, yeah the, the police are corrupt. Yes, but also in terms of Selena and the Batman, these two have very differing goals in why they're invested in this. Mm -hmm. Selena mm -hmm. wants to find out what happened to Annika. That is her primary concern, and yeah, like Batman wants to uncover the. Well, and yeah, yeah, once yeah. you've seen the film, you'll know there's something that would have triggered the fuck out of her with what they were talking about without Batman realizing it. But he's like, you have a relationship with Falcone? She's like, I do not have a relationship with him. It's like, you want, yeah. it's like, wait, there's something more going on there that, like, and, and there is, uh, which becomes quite interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think to emphasize how important this particular scene is in terms of what's happening, this is super important information in terms of instilling in Bruce's mind that he needs to think about the corruption within the police. Like, he's got a lot more... Re and specifically in connection to Falcone, specifically Falcone, it's uh, it's super important. It's super valuable information. Um, and it helps him in terms of instilling the idea that there's a rat. He could have found out other ways, I can believe, but damn. And this is all information that he gets through the connection to Selena, um, which all stems from that coincidence. It's like, hmm... Um, and another reason why you need to think about that is because uh, the DA gets abducted that night by the Riddler. So, like, if, like if he within the hour, it seems like when he leaves. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Ooh, the timing. So, yeah, like if they had shown up like a little bit later or he had met Selena and they went there like a few hours later or the next day, then uh, the, the stuff that he learns through the DA is lost forever. Um. 
he could figure it out another way, but like, damn, the story is radically different without that, uh, mm-hmm. without that through line. Yeah, um, it, there is a lot, just to be very clear here, there are many instances where if a convenience does not occur, this is a radically different plot. Mm-hmm. I think that's interesting to think about where where it stems from and uh how and i guess as well seeing how the pieces are aligning in a way to uh help out the protagonist in a sense like the story is coming to help him out um it's just something to think about that's all uh yeah do you think they'll yeah. give penguin a monocle in in his um... maybe maybe Wait, sorry, maybe, maybe i'll give him two and he can have bionicles <laughs> The DA is already dead. What are you talking about? No, he's he's not. That's when he's been captured. He's he's gone no, well before he's dead. A good ten. He's does, yeah. He's gonna yeah. Do stuff. Um, and if you mean that he was always going to be targeted, that's the point I'm making. This was when it was going to happen, regardless of what Bruce was doing. Um, yeah. The real- Everyone's going to die. So th- this is something that will become clearer later, but maybe it's worth noting now. Annika doesn't really have anything to do with the Riddler's plan. She is aware of the information that the Riddler is aware of, but he doesn't care about her in relation to her knowledge about what they're doing. Um, I'm, unless I'm mistaken, but I'm pretty sure I'm not. Like, I think you're right. I, I don't think, know. Yeah, I don't know where, if you're the Riddler, her, how she factors into it. So from what I gather, all that the Riddler knows is that she is uh, the mayor's uh, mistress and that by putting her out there that embarrasses her but like otherwise she doesn't factor yeah, her into his personal plan. life yeah her, her work her her personal life who she knows what she does her hobbies her favorite faction in starcraft all that stuff it doesn't matter it's no. all just it just it's not relevant so the reason why i'm saying that is because it's something to keep in mind as we progress her awareness of uh her awareness nice. of the conspiracy <laughs> is not related to the Riddler's <laughs> awareness of the consp- conspiracy. That's a good meme. Um, it was, yeah, it was, it was a good yeah. meme. Um, well, uh, in any case, the next scene is they go up to uh, where the bat signal is. Uh, Bruce meets with um, with uh, with Gordon, and he's basically talking to him now about how there's probably corruption in the city. That's something we need to be thinking about. Um, that perhaps the Riddler stuff is connected to the the, the corruption within the city. Um, that's about it for that one. Uh, we then see that Bruce is in his little suit, ready to go to the mayor's funeral. Um, I mean, it's a normal size suit. It's probably... It's, uh, yeah. yeah, I suppose it's a normal size suit. Yeah, fair point. Good spot. This is our only public appearance of Bruce in the film, right? Yes, I, I think. Not well, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. We're told well, about the funeral one, right? Oh wait. What do you mean? So the, is I think he talks to the one. investors or the bank people, but that's off screen. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it doesn't. Uh, yeah, uh, but and yeah, it's not really much, yeah. public. But um, also, are we? I'm assuming we're not skipping. It's just a. Uh, oh, is this? Which is? Is this well, the scene it, where Alfred and him have their second? Yeah, we're up to that of? scene. So right, go right, for yeah. it. Oh, yeah. just um, I I really. I don't know. I, 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 it's like I'm playing my hand so hard. It's just like I really liked the moment with the the cufflinks thing because I was just, I was I was getting those yeah. pieces of what yeah. I really want out of their relationship, and I was like, "Ooh, yeah, your father really gave him to me, and you gotta have your cufflinks." Mm. Yeah, you're a Wayne. He's like helping and... his Einstein who forgot to put on pants that day. There is an implication <sighs> as to whether or not Alfred should be considered a Wayne, like the. Via the you know this dad hand oh, yeah. the the cufflinks the Wayne cufflinks and it's just and they mean a lot to Alfred. It's like I really like these pieces, slivers. I want to yeah. eat them up. It's neat. Like when uh, at the end of the fil- at the end of the third film when Ray says, "I'm Ray, Ray mm. Wayne." <laughs> <laughs> Ray Wayne. Ruin, ruin that you may refer to me as R Dubs. Mm. True. Um, in terms of the plot relevant stuff in this scene, um, strictly for the mystery, uh, uh, Alfred has been working on that second cipher. Um, the, the, basically the, the, it's the, the cipher gives, uh, like, uh, in Spanish, like El Rata, like, or, uh, you are El Rata, whatever. It's like rat with wings. That is, that is what they believe that interpret uh that that's what it says um which we later find out is kind of incorrect um 
Or you immediately well, feel like, find out it was incorrect if you speak Spanish. Yeah. So, uh, that, just that remind me, how did they translate it this time around? Uh, I can't quite remember exactly how they translate it. It was something, it's just the cipher. You are I El Rata. Um, oh, I thought, oh, wait. no, I, I thought Muller meant like, how did he figure it out? Well, so what I'm asking is, they had the Spanish, did he put it into a computer, did he ask someone, or did he work it out himself? Like, what was the... Or was uh, it just something he, he guessed from reading it? Uh, he figured it out, like he worked on it and then got it. Well, because like, if you had access to Google, it. is the idea that the, the thing he used was didn't quite get it right? Or that they read it wrong? I can't no, remember. no, no, it was, that was, that, that was, um, no, it was that Riddler wrote it like that, I'm pretty sure. Like, oh, yeah, I, th I think what it was was that the way that they were reading into it was a misunderstanding of the clue. Um, that, that URL, because I guess we're jumping the gun, what they needed was URL, uh, they needed to piece that together, URL and then Ratalada, or La Rata, because that's, that's the URL that they use later on. But he thought, he read it in its totality as it was. Um... I, I think that was that was the misunderstanding. Then there's like there's one symbol in the cipher for this because it's not a straight translation of like English letters to you know other letters, is it? So it's um yeah, I think so. There is one cipher for the sound L. U R L no. L no. Yeah. Um. L no. So, uh, <laughs> El -mo. El -mo. We, we sh we shall come back to that later. Um. Euro. Heads off to the funeral, and we see that there are some protesters there who like the Riddler. They're like, oh, and, um, you gotta expose just to the truth. Mention hour into the film at yeah. that point. Yes. Yeah. That's uh, this is a, this is a long movie. Um, we got a lot, lot going on. Um, but I mean, uh, this, this is where we get, I guess, the clearest idea of like the public perception of Bruce that it's like he is reclusive, but everybody kind of knows who he is and pays like. There's an awareness of him. Uh, in the world, but he is not particularly active as a uh, participant in it. Yeah, um, yeah, um, something. Yeah, also, also isn't, it, isn't he more like people know him, but he's not like this. Oh yeah, it's Bruce Wayne. Fuck yeah, we love that guy. It's more like, oh look, it's Bruce Wayne, right? Well, the, all the journalists want to ask him questions because he's yeah. clearly not accessible. Um, this is their but, opportunity to talk to him because he's never out. Yeah, no, no, I was, I was trying to say he's not like the super popular guy that's going around being like oh, no 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 cool, it's like I'm a celebrity curiosity and whatever yeah curiosity would be probably the good way to describe it there is no billionaire yeah. playboy uh persona exactly, here yeah. um and what uh, i really like about this scene is just um is that um bruce we this is look this is what firmly establishes bruce of the reckless and we see how socially awkward he is how he doesn't really know how to interact with people at this point because part of his larger character arc is him learning um i suppose the place of bruce wayne in his life right now um he's because he's not yet the the swinging playboy um uh billionaire uh, um bachelor he he is he doesn't really know how to he doesn't really know you know the, the place that bruce needs to play in his life in the same way he's still kind of fig figuring out what batman is for that matter and i think that i think i think showing showing that he's not there yet here um it did quite a lot for me as far as his um character was concerned yeah i agree um i think i think it's uh it's again it's intentional that like the bruce wayne part has been totally left to the wayside and it's all batman all the time essentially um because he's very out of place in this setting um and he's still doing a lot of detective work while he's out here trying to piece things together um, yeah, he can't turn Batman off. No. Well, well, I mean, it's it's said later, but like he, it, Batman is who he is, mm -hmm. um, and it, it like fully. Um, the, the important part uh, in the first part of the scene is Falcone's here. He thought he saw Selena, but it wasn't her; it was someone else. But it, Falcone is here and uh, Penguin, um, and Falcone is being real nice to Bruce. Like, oh, hey, I remember you as a kid. Uh, your dad saved my life. He was a cool chap. Um, 
Uh, something else that's important that's mentioned though as well is uh, br like Bruce makes the observation, oh, you don't like leave your place very often, right? Like you're usually hanging out in your little club. You don't come out. Um, but this is a special occasion. Uh, it's just worth keeping in mind. Yes. They go inside and um, like Bruce is just paying attention to sort of these observers and then he's, there's a guy sitting next to him who's like, ah, this city sucks. Fuck this city. Nobody's going to help us, you know? Screw them all. Um, does anybody remember who this guy is uh, in terms of his relevance? Uh, is he the guy we see uh, at the very end? I believe so, yes. Um, he's, j he's just there, though, thinking about all of this stuff and how everything sucks, but he's keeping an eye out. Um, but then, Bella Real, the mayoral candidate, uh, talks to Bruce and is, is just like, I've been trying to reach you, but nobody's... You, you just don't pick up the phone. Um, why aren't you doing more with your money, you know? Um, so, yeah, now we know it's like, oh, he's doing, like, zero philanthropy, uh, unlike what his parents did. He's just, like, totally not even considered that aspect of his life in terms of what he could do yeah. with, uh, with money. Which is kind of going to come back a little bit later on when he kind of figures out... Because I think there's some subtext with him figuring out what Batman is. I think, in turn, that, kind of, uh, that implies to me that he's also figuring out that he has to be the, uh, the philanthropist. He has to be using the wealth both as Batman, but also to be contri uh, contributing back to the city... Um, as Bruce Wayne, like, because right now he's still in his edgy vengeance phase. Um, yeah. Well, well, I think this film is very much the the story of him growing out of that and maturing um, as as um, as a person. I think. Yeah, I agree. Um, it's definitely on purpose. Oh yeah. He then sees uh, the son of the mayor sitting up at the front. Um, again. And he also hears behind him Commissioner Gordon, uh, not not Commissioner, fine, it's just Lieutenant Jim, mm. uh, talking with the police about all of his stuff. Um, and then we see a detective is like, "Oh, it's Bruce Wayne, eh?" Uh, now this detective we also see later on in the film too. Um, and it is then at this point that uh, oh, something's going wrong outside. There's a lot of weird noises. Um, and then a car Thanos. comes barreling. What? Thanos invasion. Same timeline. No, as Infinity War, right? No, it's not. I think it's, so, yeah. yeah think, that would that would explain well, the aliens is, in the no, film. Boy, I did. Idiot. This is the dusting. Same well, thing. They, they Thanos, Thanos yeah. caused it. Same thing. Yeah. Um. Uh. The the car like drives through. Bruce saves the kid. Um. And all the police are like get out. And we find out it's the DA tied up with a bomb around his neck. Uh, a letter oh, on his I, chest I that says to the back. Oh, point yeah. of praise, I really like when he looks up and everyone moves back except one guy. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was cool. That was, that was one that of my was, favorite awesome. moments. <laughs> oh, really yeah. Good. Super cool. Um, yeah, they, the, there's a phone ringing um, for the Batman. Um, and we cut to some hours later, they've cleared the place out. It's getting a bit darker. Uh, police got the area all cordoned off and surrounded. They're keeping an eye on it. They've sent in a, a bomb robot, but uh, there's Batman coming on in to go answer the phone. Um, and uh, th th I guess the police the police decide not to intervene because I guess they're probably worried about getting blown up. Um, or I guess maybe like an interest in seeing what Batman does in this situation. I yeah, yeah, this to, is before he that. answers the phone, right? This is this is before he answers the phone when they see him walking All right, through. Just, yeah, just the part where yeah, if I yeah. it it is cure there is an element of uh, yeah it, if there was more of a I, I I guess I wish we got more of the cop dynamic of some people really like Batman and some people really don't and a lot of are mistrusting of him that would allow Batman to get away with a lot of this stuff. Uh, and knowing kind of why it'd be a little bit more clear. I wish we got that component because we get a lot of scenes of, you know, cops hanging around and being in the scene and, you know, talking to one another, but we never get that. Oh, I think he's kind of good. Or, Oh, I think he's terrible. He's a menace. He's a vigilante. Yeah, but he does this, but he does that. We, we never really get that. I, I feel like it's a missed to, opportunity. We have to infer it. 
Um, I guess. I, 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 and it's a, I get made uncomfortable yeah. because I just feel like the film acknowledges, oh yes, the police definitely take issue with him. And then I'm like, uh-huh, so what happens as a consequence of that? And the film is like, do, do, do. He needs to keep <laughs> doing <laughs> nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because uh, I'm assuming we're, it's fair to, I might have, um, I wasn't sure how far up we are, but just the, um, the bomb guy, and then, like, all the police seem to react pretty like, what, when Batman is coming in? And, but nothing happens, you know, with that. Yeah. They just sort of let it happen. When I wouldn't be surprised in seeing, like, a bunch of them being like, Batman's gonna fuck this up. He's gonna fuck everything up. Get him out of there. Yeah, especially remembering this is an important person. This is the DA. Um, He's got a bomb in his neck. Like, we gotta... Yeah. I just don't believe that they would be like, all right, let Batman give it a shot. It's like, well, no. I guess it would be, yeah, because <laughs> we have a bomb a, squad for a reason. Giving it a Batman shot. Batman is the bomb squad. I get, yeah, give, giving it a shot means entertaining the Riddler's game, essentially, which yeah. I don't know that and the police Batman's would necessarily. Game. Like, who knows what he's up to, to really? Um, well, yeah. I think it. I think when, when they get the explicit answer the questions and you won't die, there is an element of, oh, well, I guess we let him help him with the riddles. But that means they've still. You say help him with the rules, but like they've just decided he will be the one, not like whoa, whoa, yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, Batman's controlling this situation. That is not like our prerogative. No. Yeah, it's if once we got to get to that point, and getting that point is shaky. Like yeah. once they're in it, I'm fine. It's just there. There or needs to be that, that element of the cops who are okay with Batman being there. Because he gets results and he's on their side, um, but we we don't get you. You do have to infer it just because Batman seems to get away with it, which is not ideal for storytelling. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's us sort of writing the movie in a way, and plus I think I think it would just it would give a lot of nifty opportunities world building wise and to establish what people think about Batman. If the cops had strong opinions, which they would, on Batman's existence, and like, wouldn't and it solution... seems to be one guy versus all the rest? Wouldn't the solution here be for the phone to be called, and then Riddler says, like, uh, until Batman arrives, um, anyone who gets within X amount of space, this man will explode, or something like that. Mm -hmm. I think that would work, yeah. Yeah, I'll the only, I'll only talk to the Batman, or yeah, I the Batman has to be here if he's not here. Well, within I mean, is that not the inference that you would make of it to the Batman and a phone? But it's like yeah, but if the, the cop, uh, so yeah, but the idea until that they the get an explicit would... threat, the cops were not going to just let Batman be the one to control right, the situation. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. I guess, and, and then at some point, because it it's kind of spirals out of their control because they do a live stream for a. Uh, like the Riddler starts up a live stream for what's going on here, so that everybody can watch. Hey guys, second. welcome back to EFAP. What? Wait, what? Sorry, uh, Jay, that's, but uh, we never left. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's not, I'm I'm implying that the Riddler is running an EFAP like show. <laughs> well, right. well, as they say, he has whoa over five hundred followers. <laughs> no, real that's... fringe types. Yeah, that's for the later weird, like, dark corner of the internet where a bunch of radicals are, like, planning their attacks and stuff like that. But they, he has, like, a Twitch stream and comments are just flooding in. Well, I like the view count. They always do this in these things, but they don't understand how view counts ever work. Where they go in up literally in yeah. one, it's like, <laughs> one, 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 like, all the way up. And it's just like, no, 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 they're really laggy. <laughs> they always go. Yeah, like, it updates <laughs> every, like, yeah, yeah, it updates every 10 seconds and it's just, yeah. it's not, no. Can we talk about oh, you how this to, movie yeah. just doesn't seem to understand social media at all? We we'll get we'll get to there. We we can talk about that when we start to get near to the end There's of the film because that is a, yeah. a more the yeah. porn bots. Damn it! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's bullshit. Yeah, this chat is full of porn bots. <laughs> so you like? That would be funny as fuck if movie, on Riddler's stream that. there was like sexy women is right here. <laughs> 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 Like no one's Meet actually watching it except for bots. <laughs> Meet local hot singles in your hair. The other, the other, the classic Twitch bot. Want to become famous? Click this link. That's totally not scam. <laughs> Solve think, my pussy puzzle. I think it's <laughs> fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> Is that um, you could apparently post 
images in Riddler's chat because one person pointed out, hey, he got this mask off of Gotham um, Army Supply. Yeah, yeah that oh, was our winner. Uh, yeah, I've got one. I've got a, I've got a surplus um, uh, Russian one. Yeah. I wonder if now yeah. is the time to just mention they work. Just, what does everyone think of this adaptation of Riddler costume, not character? I like it less. The it's original fine. is like it's fine. wouldn't have fit the setting at all. Um, you he would have to be portrayed as a. Per We've incorporated the green. Um, the yeah, question marks the to a degree. Color and the question marks, yeah. The question marks aren't written on him, which I think would yeah, be is, is the correct yeah. decision in this way. They are. No, there's, there's one from, written on uh, his probably. jacket. Well, on his jacket. Okay. There's one on his jacket. Yeah, I'm happy, I'm happy with that. He's yeah. not like covered in them or anything. No, that'd be a bit weird, I think. It seems <laughs> no. to take a lot of inspiration from the Zodiac Killer, or at least yes. the movie Zodiac. Um, and it's just so funny to compare him to Jim Carrey's Riddler. Like, this this <laughs> is a different version. You can say that. Yeah, and, and they each have their place, and I appreciate them both a great deal. I think I was skeptical of the costume just because I I, I think when I saw it in the marketing, I wasn't a fan of uh, the, the gimp kind of costume. But then you see um, how Whoa. it's um, used in the film um, as um, um, through, as it's being used in these live streams and the purpose for it. And then I think I was fine with it um, uh, when I saw um, its kind of purpose and intention. All right. Yeah, I, 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 I like it. Um, <laughs> well, sorry. Yeah, uh, Batman answers the phone, and he's given a speech about how it's like, oh, the city's corrupt, and there's lies and bullshit, and we're going to get to the bottom of it, you know, here, live Isn't on it... on Twitch. Do you think it's weird that we say, <laughs> we say, answer the phone, but generally when you pick up the phone, you ask a question? Um, <laughs> but, I mean, you've answered the phone's thing, and then you ask a question. Told, right? like the, fo the, the phone, phone rings. Is, an, is the, a question. The card yeah, says you, answer. That's, when you, that's... you answer the phone and you ask hello, it's like, well, it, it's just, I think it's, I don't know. I just think it's strange. It's well, strange, like, but I'm yeah, fine why with why it. Can't it. Why can't you see it as the phone being like, blah, 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 and you go, whoa, 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 what's up? Hello, how you doing? Like, that's you answering it, you know? The phone is asking, hey, are you there? Yeah. Are you... Hello? Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. And, and and the card for the riddle, there is no riddle. It's just answer the phone. <laughs> like, that's what he's telling you to do. Well, maybe and the riddle would be answer the phone. It's It just says answer. Well, the, what, what, what if the Batman just started saying things? Phone. He's an answer. Uh, Switzerland, Portugal, Spanish, <laughs> uh, the, the Battle of Hastings. He's good at riddles, by the way, Batman. Yeah. He's pretty good he at riddles. Close, he gets all it, of them it's, instantly. It's, it's Except very fortunate he's a nerd. One. Well, he doesn't have all the information to solve that one. So that one's not fair. Well, he has. He's like all the well, no rat with wings. That was that was. Yeah, he cool doesn't solve them all, one. but he he solves just and 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 it was interesting because I it's funny um, some of them where they would finish saying it and I'm like hmm I wonder what he answers. So I go oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. Okay, thank you. A little more time to think about it. Yeah, because um. Yeah, we the the basically the parameters of this little test is there are three riddles you get them all right and then the bomb gets deactivated. Yeah. Um, and Batman is allowed to help you, I guess. Um, and so the first one, I guess, yeah. I, well, I presume he is, <laughs> um, because he does he help. That's not a problem. Uh, yeah. I think Riddler um, doesn't wouldn't mind if Batman is. is he doesn't. You know. Yeah. Uh, and I guess because uh, we keep not mentioning, I I do like the riddles. I can't remember all of the ones in this one, but the the first answer is justice. Yeah. The second. I thought one it was. Is... I thought it was love. You mean you um, thought the answer? To I the thought question it was, was love. love. I thought the answer for the first one was love, and I so think it I, worked. I, I, I feel like when he was going to highlight blind. was when he gives the um the actual question. I thought like I wonder if several things could fit this, not just justice. But then again, I guess that doesn't stop I it from being a riddle or anything. Yeah, in the theater, I do wonder if it, it, in the theater I was saying, "Oh, I, I think this is love," but it's a justice. Like, yeah, I guess that works too, and I think they both work. I can't, I can't remember what the specific riddle was, but I specifically remember what I thought it was, and remembering that I believed it worked. So I'm curious if I don't know. I, maybe I just want to hear Batman say love. So, but it, I wonder what would have happened. It was like, uh, no, the answer was justice. It was like, well, actually. Love actually also works because that's uh, and the Riddler's like, oh yeah, I suppose so. Right, I see your point. All right, carrying on. 
I've seen someone. And he looks off screen and he says, "Judges, judges will accept love." I uh, it's good I that see. They accept love. Love is yeah. good to accept. Yeah, I agree. I agree. In chat, someone said the DA was never meant to survive that scenario. It didn't matter how easy they were. I disagree. I disagree. The plan, the, the Riddler's plan disagree. works on multiple levels in terms of if if Batman has already figured out, which he might have at this point, the rat uh, with the clues that he has, he could have answered potentially, and that would have been good enough for the Riddler. Um, because it's like, oh, Falcone is the rat being broadcasted live to the world. That may well, like he he if, could um, be happy with that, and if he fails, then. If the DA had said Falcone and then blown up, I would have been like, oh, okay. But I was expecting Riddler to spare him if he actually gave the answer. I, I expected him to, yeah. Yeah. Um, but but of course he doesn't, and uh, yeah, he, he blows up within like an inch of Batman. Yeah, um, yeah is, that one was... This is, this is one of many examples, unfortunately, in the film of substantial plot Thanks armor. Cases. <laughs> this is... this Is is this the biggest plot armor? There's one of the ones I don't that know can compete. I don't know if it's I bigger than so. the other one. I don't know, man. It's the only other one... Think, there's there's, another, one, there's another one, yeah. There are two competing C in my head. Well, yeah. there, there are two competing instances of C4 block in your face, survived by character, but one of them is unarmored, so... Yeah. Um, God, he's so he goes, close to it. I remember thinking, like, dab, dude. <laughs> and he, yeah. goes, he goes flying. Um, there was also I, the glider scene where he, like, well, gets yes, hit in the like face. A, we'll get there. At high school. We'll get You're not too far away from it. With a road. It's not far away. It's not far <laughs> away at all. Yeah. But in, with regards to this scene, I remember thinking, why the fuck was the explosion that big? You know? I but, guess it might have looked a bit awkward if Batman ran away from him that was about to die, kicks him. No, wide, but I know? think I think the writer's <laughs> thought process was it needs to be big enough that it knocks him unconscious so he can wake up in yeah, the, uh, to get that scene in the jail. Someone in chat said it doesn't seem like Riddler's explosives they just are very powerful. The size of the explosion. I assume they needed then. I assume that's a sarcastic Dude, comment because like it blasts weird. him across the whole room, like um. And, and yeah. his explosives later on are certainly potent. And, and yeah, I don't, I don't know like I said, I think they were being sarcastic, like... but I just want to clarify that level of force in your yeah. face, like <laughs> it's just go, like Matt. Yeah, the heat and the concussive force and the oof, it's not good. So I just don't know why they don't make make it like duck or hide behind this cape or whatever, like something. It's like would yeah, like alpha react. Some... Another thing I would like. Just slot in a little yeah, ahead, flag for a little bit later, but man, Riddler must have been like, "Oh no, this has all gone wrong." Exactly. God, I never would have wanted <laughs> this to happen. Considering what we find out later, I don't know if I should say it. Yeah, yeah. Well, like, well, Riddler well, should be later. distraught. This is terrible. Mm -hmm. What's just happened? Also, I've had I've had a thought as well based on Riddler's reaction at the end. Should he have not been surprised by Batman saying, "Who is the rat"? Or does he expect at this point that he hasn't figured it out? I guess he thinks, oh, hmm. You know what I mean? Because later on, mm. he's like, oh, it's clearly you need help. Is it, are uh, we supposed to be really good faith and assume that Batman, he thinks Batman's trying to coax the DA to say it, even though he knows it? Maybe, maybe, maybe. Could be it. Yeah. Maybe, um, yeah, I could, yeah, I, I, I can believe that. Because um, he's, he's telling him to say it, say it. Yeah. So maybe that could be, yeah. Yeah, I, th I think we can be good faith in that. It, but he gets knocked out, and then he wakes up in the the police department. Like, all right, come on, take off the mask. Now, they probably should have taken it off already. <laughs> I actually <laughs> consider yeah. this a significant issue uh, for the film. Yeah. yeah. Not only do I believe the police would never be stopped by Gordon saying don't do it, I think Gordon would do it. I think Gordon would be like, mm -hmm. this guy needs medical attention. I'm sorry, your identity is not more important than your life. Yeah. Like, we need to save you. Plus, Gordon's curious. He asks him before, he's like, y you, who are you? Are you ever going to, am I ever going to learn who you are? And that's there is that a... curiosity element that he has. I just think that, like, I would do it for Batman. I'd be like, mate, you've been blown up. You're out of, I don't even know if you're dying. You're alive injuries. somehow. It's like, we got to yeah. get you to the hospital right now. Instead, they take you him to, to like, your brain. the interrogation room's table, just plop him on it. It's like, what yeah. are you doing? Dude, yeah. This is not what would just happen. Like, uh, Think yeah, about Pokemon the span of time as well. There were many opportunities to take it off from getting him 
into like an ambulance or a police car, taking him to the prison, putting him there. The EMTs like, would do it. They wouldn't even ask. They'd they would, be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're fucking they would taking think you're his fucking helmet off. If you said uh, like, no, he has to defend his identity, they'd be like, shut the fuck up. We got to save his life. Like, what are you doing? He was, yeah. he is miraculously not dead right now. Count your blessings. Exactly. Yeah. They wouldn't yeah. care who it's he is. They'd they just want to try and save his life. Well, the, the, movie treats, the movie treats the explosion not as a serious injury that he has sustained, but as a magic knockout button. It's, yeah. it's yeah. a really yeah. annoying trope that that, that, that that there's not actually a magic knockout button that causes no other like harm to you. Yes. If yeah. Getting knocked out is inherently very bad for you. It's just, you know, someone gets hit in the face, cut to black, and then they wake up later like, oh. That's that someone pressed the off button that I as a human have. <laughs> the magic knockout button? Are you referring to the G spot? Well, as in the G force yeah. spot? The, you should be in the hospital mean, the, the waking he, up with, with handcuffs, to be honest with you as well. <laughs> like, well yeah, he, wakes, yeah. he wakes up right when they're about to take it off as well, so that he can have his little like fight. Yeah, like, that's Grr! not in the hospital, by the way. They no, bring him the straight point. to the so police stupid. station. That's just not what would happen. Fucking wild. <laughs> and, and a little, and a little salt in the wound. He, his, his face isn't even bruised. There's no yeah, like, not at all. blood or anything. He's just he immaculate. Is not Bruce, he is not bruised Wayne. And he's not got he's like not bruised Wayne. No, he, he gets up off the table real fast, and he's totally ready for brawling. It's like, are you like disoriented and like, oh fuck, what the <laughs> fuck happened to me? Ah, you know, go to have a concussion. No, he's okay. at least it isn't a shotgun <laughs> to the back. That's true. <laughs> um, hmm. But yeah, they, they, he has a little altercation with the police. Um, I forget the guy's name. He's the I think he's, is he the new commissioner or is he like the captain? I, yeah, I think he's one rank below commissioner, right? Because he was there yeah. when the commissioner was. But um, he fucking yeah. hates Batman, which is like, goddamn, another super high ranking individual who despises you and considers you a vigilante, and yet you're able to do the things that you do with these police. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, because there is a bit of a, a brawl-ish, and they're like, oh, we can get you on assault and a police officer. And then um, Jim pins him to the wall. It's like, all right, give me a minute with this guy. It's like, oh, are you sticking your neck on the line for this guy? And it's That's like, Con like, O'Neill like is the, the, the dialogue actor, right? That Batman gives in response to that. Well, um, when he along. says, we can get you on assaulting an officer, and he just says, you can get me on assaulting three. <laughs> Good, yeah. But it's but this is, uh, he plays, he was in, uh, he was in Chernobyl. Uh, Con O'Neill. Yeah, he yeah. was he the uh the the the, the, the um the guy the the Victor guy Bukhanov. the guy. Oh yeah, no, he I was. Remember him. He did yeah, play yeah, the guy. Yeah, yeah. he has yeah. a very distinctive scratchy kind of voice. Yes, um, everyone in the yeah. in my theater laughed when he spoke. <laughs> oh, nobody oh, laughed. Really? I, was, I was hoping someone would prompt me because I didn't want to be mean. His voice was really funny to me. I'm sorry. It was very funny. <laughs> it is a funny <laughs> voice. Yeah. I. I, I guess I see why people would think that. I, I don't find it funny, but I can see how people would think it's funny, yeah. I think the more uh, I heard it, 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 the it more can... I was like, is that really? Like, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Poor, guy. Um, Poor guy. So, uh, we, uh, uh, we, they, yeah, they give him the room, they give him a minute, and, uh, Jim and Batman do, like, a fake, yeah, we're getting in each other's face fighting, but they're actually conveying information I quite to each like other, that which I like. Part. I, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. I like the it, he's, it's, they're having a conversation, but all of their expressions and body language points to an argument. It's pretty cool. Yeah, um, yeah. There, it cool. it's nice to see some cleverness, you yeah, know, yeah, in yeah. in a film where I think it could be yeah. used more. And um, they're also talking about oh, you know, corruption in in like the Gotham Police Department. You got to be you know careful about it. Uh, and then the guy who works the off duty cop in the bar, who is quite significant, he strolls in at that moment. So they can get a look at him. Now that is convenient, but I don't know how consequential it really is that he shows up there. It just—it's just a reminder of an important person, I guess. Mm. Um, so I don't—I don't know how big of a deal it is. It's um, fine. It's fine. I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, and to um, be fair, I would argue maybe it was it, it's a, it's a simple tweak. He's just there. Just make him there. He was there the whole time. Yeah. Instead um, of coming in at that moment. But yeah. I think there, I think there are a lot of simple tweaks you can make to the story that would uh, help out a lot. Like that, you've got a good amount of stuff that just needs a little amendment, a little fix, a little mm. uh, change, and then it, it becomes a lot more. Um, and then it's like you couple that with the stuff that is just well written, things that are cool, like mm -hmm. the you know any given riddle or anything like that. It's like yeah, that's um, it feels like the you can make these fixes. Um, but in any case. Yeah, it's like, all right, 
here's a key so that you can get out because at this point Jim realizes he's not getting out of here um the peaceful way he's gotta he's gotta get the hell out um and then yes. Batman punches him and escapes the police Which, station and I really I like this scene. that I think it's important to note that it was a pre agreed upon punch yes um that like mm-hmm. I, and it's it's agreed upon in a very na- it's like a, a very cool fun way as well where um gordon says you know i'll give you the key and batman says you're gonna get deep shit for this and he's going well no i won't you punched me in the face and then it's just like ah well i see what's going you know Mm -hmm. yeah i still yeah i I take some issues very nice quick exchange with with that exchange no i like all the exchange i think it's great but i I think this should have been the end of batman being able to have any connection with the police uh, I correct. Think so too. Yes, yeah. it's over now yeah. because this you. Is, yeah, this 100%. is hundred percent. Your this is the out. I would also argue that Jim should be in trouble if it was like he was punched. Like he was, he vouched for Batman. Still, so it's like your credibility still. is is pretty through the floor. Like you just fucked up, and he's escaped thanks to you doing this. Or yeah. at least be lucky. The only thing that you're punished with is you getting punched. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if you got demoted for this. Like this is big. Good, yeah. It is a big deal. Yeah, somebody who we now perceive as being very dangerous is uh is on the loose. Who knows he's what he probably, learned at from least he's, um, to the evidence rooms and he's, stuff. He's probably at least not first in line for the commissioner position. Probably not. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, I guess it might change towards the end, but for the time being. The, I, I actually do like the escape itself, though. I, I find it I find Where it just oh, yeah. fucking runs the fuck? Yeah. Yeah, I really like it. Um, It's it's something people point out, like in the Dark Knight, you know, trilogy, Batman will just disappear at the station. I like that we actually see him like run in to try and get the fuck out. Like, you know what I like, panic. yeah. When he reaches yeah. the roof and goes toward the edge, he goes, Whoa. Oh, it's, shit. It's like, yeah, yeah like, hey, oh shit, Batman is human. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really high up. It's my it's, armor it's... will not protect me from this fall. <laughs> Rags, it totally he works. Has to work. <laughs> it's not, well, no, 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 it's not best car. <laughs> I just like that he has to work really hard to get out. I just like that we see that he's vulnerable. Uh, yeah, he's. It's not film. graceful. It's not like planned. No, not he's graceful. just like, oh That's shit, oh fuck, like oh shit, oh fuck, oh shit, fuck, shit, fuck. It's yeah, really hard. like run, 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 run. There is no plan except to run. I particularly, and... music, I particularly right? enjoy the grapple hook up all of the staircases. Yeah, um, yeah. Where yeah. everyone's just running like, oh, he's there. Fuck, but what can we do about it? Well, and also, I I, thought, I really like the fixed shot that we have, like from uh from the from like the the hook down on on batman yeah. as he's going up there's a lot of cool shots i yeah the, i really like the escape and the music's awesome yeah we haven't really talked about it a lot but there's a lot there legitimately is a lot of really good shots and visuals there's a in this lot of great shots we, i think we opened um, with this saying that you just have to believe us okay movie. chat because we can't show well, you well i mean i feel like we talked about uh, <laughs> the opening scene the opening scene had a lot of great shots and we're about to get to yes. another sequence that has a well, lot of great shots too you know, like with Arcane, mm. like I can keep pausing and showing all of them. Like I, I, I do wish we could do it with this, but there ain't no fucking way I'm yeah, allowed to do that. Yeah, because they're really cool and yeah. they're often used and narratively yeah. to serve some sort yeah. of purpose. It's it's these things that it's kind of hard to remind you because, like I said, I do really like this movie and these are the elements that I think tie into it. But it's kind of hard to talk about when you're just going through the plot. Um, this film doesn't seem in 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 the vein of aesthetics and the shots. This film isn't like jerking itself off. It's not no like ah oh, look at it doesn't insist this, upon itself. We, uh, I agree. Yeah, yeah. It's not <laughs> um, it's not really hoity toity. You know, it's 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 displaying an actual like quality um, for it, not for its own sake, but because it's. Like it, it's just it's a good looking movie with good shots, and it's it, it's not indulgent. Maybe that's the word. Yeah, it's not it's, being indulgent. It's a little indulgent. No, just a little bit. <laughs> nah, you don't think the end of the car chase scene that shot's a little indulgent? You don't think so? Well, so we we can talk about that shot. Um, well, how about we save it for when we get there? Yeah. I'm, I'm actually gonna side with Cap. I do think it's a little bit indulgent. Oh yeah, I think this film is very okay. aware of how it looks. I, uh, I, sure, I, I'll, sure. I can, this film I can go hard. with a little bit, but I guess the thing is, is that yeah. I don't know what I want to, like, if you've achieved a really great shot, you know, like, and, and it's super cool, I, you know, well, like, I, would say there are I mean, it, it knows, only it knows it's exist. cool, but it's right. I agree, Cap, I do agree with what you're about to say there, um, but we, I guess we can talk about it once we get to that shot. 
Um, Sounds there's, good. There's a lot to talk about there. Um, and on your point so, that yeah, the he, escape is awesome, yeah. I completely agree, Fringy, except for the last right, bit. Right up until... Yeah. Yeah, he goes for <laughs> right, at the, oh, yeah. right at the finish line. He goes for well, a glide, like, and it's, dude, it's a... Yeah? Well, that's, no, so I, guess, I guess, no, say what happens first. And then, so, I was just <laughs> yeah. he, he goes up to the roof, he turns on his little glider, and then he he jumps off and he glides. We got some really cool Just POV it's, shots. It's like a wingsuit for those wing listening. Suit, yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's it his a, cape felt... and his outfit sort of like wrap around him, and it turns into a wingsuit essentially that he wears. I felt like that was the film's way of saying, um, yeah, you know what? Realistically speaking, he'd have one of these. He wouldn't have just the two yeah. wings that go out and he'd fly like that. No, sort of yeah, thing. he doesn't fly. He no. falls with style. It's uh, <laughs> this um. This this film is the most grounded uh, Batman film, I, I would say, at least in yep. terms of what it's trying to do. Now, of yeah, course, when he's gliding, deploys his parachute to land on a bus, it snags on the bridge and he smashes his head against a steel <laughs> oh, bar. There are, <laughs> there are several yeah. things, I guess, to go mm. over here. Like, first of all, why the fuck did you deploy it like that? You idiot. That was like, the <laughs> stupidest yeah, mistake you could make. The second mm -hmm. being... Do you remember how it goes? It snags, and the momentum it's he would snags, have, it yeah. rams his head into the above bar. Like, he's so yeah, dead. Yeah. He's all yeah, kinds of dead. dead. very dead. He's dead. If I am and then he believe, hits the bus, and then he hits the ground, and, and then rolled, he hits the trash like, can. 30, yeah, for like 40 meters. And um, relatively, yeah, that bus like, is a nice soft pillow. Relative I, to the, to I the, face palmed this, and I was like, like "No, why did you like, do that? No." Yeah, I saw that. That's it's all like, I thought. Is, it, why it, did it you just do didn't this? have to happen? It doesn't actually. It's, yeah, you were so close. close. <laughs> like, just his injuries aren't a significant part of the story. This doesn't result in him like getting captured or anything. Why is this here? Why is so, this put yeah? The film so, recognized that this busted him up. But this it is, didn't recognize how much it should be. It should be Why didn't you just have them glide away and then land messily and roll? Right, Something was, like that? Well, Not say, slam to, into a bridge? Just to I correctly put this is, in perspective, it's like he got shot in the head. He's like, oh, headache. You're like, yeah. <laughs> like, oh. It's like, we see, we recognize Ouchie. this affected him. Oh. And, and um, once again, and once again, his face comes out immaculate. There's no bruising mm -hmm. or anything. It's, uh, th yeah. This film has an interesting relationship with the human face <laughs> in the sense that it doesn't <laughs> seem to recognize that when concussive force is applied to the face, things tend to happen to it outside <laughs> of it just hurting a whole lot. Yeah, like uh, I, I get. I get the impression that, yeah, their goal was to say, see, he's not perfect. It's like, I appreciate that. You didn't need him to slam into a yeah. metal bar. Yeah. <laughs> sort of, he's not a bad he's idea. A clear a little bit, guys. Like, just <laughs> dial it down. I, I, like, why? I don't get it. Like, why, why this way? Why this way? He's relatable. Way? He's just like you oh. or me. He doesn't yeah, we've all been there. Like you know, you Mondays. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't. It's like, and, I, and, I, and like he he crashes on the floor, and I'm like, oh, so they're doing like a thing here where he actually doesn't escape, and that was an intense scene. It's like, uh, but because of this, the police, you know, this happened within view of the station, so that's obviously gonna get him now, and he's actually gonna need serious medical attention, and he's on the floor, and he's this next stage of this film, we're gonna see him under arrest more properly, and they'll probably unmask him, and oh no, he just walks away. Okay, I am oh, totally. embarrassing. <laughs> if I were like handed the film at this point, like you, know, if we're not allowed to tweak, it's like you could just you cut it. After he's flying down, his, yeah. the shot of his face, yeah, yeah cut. you could have the music he swell, flies. and then we yeah. cut to the next scene because we know he escaped. He glides he away, yeah. like, exactly. Honestly, he glides right, away because he, he needs to, like they, they show him busted up after the scene. It's like, yeah, because you know, like he had a brawl with the police, you know, that could have done that, yeah. And the explosive in his oh, face, oh, and the bomb yeah. exploded in his face. <laughs> what, if, what if he flew into a bridge? What? No, um, he would have, he wouldn't have done that. That would have been stupid. <laughs> so, yeah, that. That's not great. Uh, yeah. I think that did affect me a, a decent tad. I was thinking about it for a few more, like, tens of minutes after it had happened, because I was just like, that was so absurd, and I don't know how you miss... The explosive one to me seems more reasonable in terms of how they ended up creating it. This one, I was like, you deliberately made him fucking crash headfirst into a bridge at full speed. Why did you do that? I don't understand. Yeah, someone had to animate that. And you didn't have to. Because <laughs> a stunt man, yeah. a stunt man had to die so that we got that shot. <laughs> right, a no, little no, respect, no, please. No human did this. This is this is CGI. <laughs> no oh, 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 really? So 
So, no, so I was fucking around. Oh, okay. All right. I see. Oh, with yeah. actually stunt man who flew into a brick. Okay. No, I, I, I know that, but I'm just. No, Fringy, no, Fringy, Fringy, you need to look Holy up the shit. list of stunt men who were killed making this film. Do it. There was no. Well, well maybe in the like credits. Twelve of them. They used like twelve yeah. of them on this scene alone. Yeah. It was really controversial. <laughs> it's like the prestige. It's total. It's total devotion to the craft. You know. Yeah. The end credits where they listed the stuntman did look in like memory a of War yeah. Memorial. Right. Sorry. <laughs> is this David Shap? What's wrong with the bridge crash? Though, really? Are you memeing? Like, please, <laughs> please be a meme. Is that a meme? meme? I choose to <laughs> read that oh, as oh, what's wrong with it, really? Though. You mean accept all the things we just giant, listed with a giant grin? I hope so. <clears throat> yeah. It was all practical, and we Kappa. found out after Kappa, the stunt please, that Kappa. Robert's face cannot. No be way! <laughs> yeah. Wait, that says the second. That says May second, twenty twenty two. That is Kappa. Oh that, man, that is definitely Kappa. Well, yeah. date aside, I'm pretty sure that wasn't actually something he used. <laughs> um, guys, make sure to say smug Ross one. whenever you say something sarcastic, okay? Smug Ross. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I almost so forgot about that. The, the next scene is uh they um he meets up again at the bat uh signal place to meet up with Jim and uh they're basically settled at this point it's like yeah there's corruption within GCPD we need to like try and figure out uh, how to get to the bottom of it and they make the decision that they're gonna tail uh the penguin um later on and see what he's up to uh but because he at this point is like rat with wings being a penguin that could be it. Um, which is, a, I think that's a totally fair deduction. I do to make. think it's reasonable. Okay. I know a guy okay. called the hand, Penguin. I think it's fair, but I also feel like at this point they should have thought of Bat by now. Uh, wow. That is what yeah. came into yeah. my that mind. Penguin, that right? my mind. Yeah. Penguins don't actually have wings. No, that, they have are they wings flippers. or are they? Are they, they are wings. Or, yeah, hold on. Ostriches have wings. Yeah, they all have wings. Um, they mm. just don't look like wings. Yeah. I like I said, I'm fi I'm fine. I actually would have preferred it had we gotten rid of pigeon and bat, and then they went with penguin. Uh, but we went with penguin before bat, and it's like okay. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's yeah, like a rat with wings. It's like man, I feel like a bat. <laughs> you know, like that's like we're getting pretty close. Um, so Fringy, when you heard rat with rats with wings, did you instantly think about Grand Theft Auto Four? Um, is that is was that a Damn, I'm blank. Was there a reference? No, Grand Theft Auto Four. Not specific. You should the be thinking about Simpsons. The pigeons. Wait, so, I'm lost. Sorry. I'm we'll do. Confused. Well, here, here we'll do the. We'll do the Grand Theft Auto go, go Four. Right, do the Grand Theft Auto Yeah. So GTA it was like a collectible thing. There were there were pigeons scattered all over uh, the city, and if you shot them, then it would be rats with wings eliminated one out of however many there was. Mm-hmm. So that was like a collectible to find all the rats with wings and shoot them. Right, and then Mola said the Simpsons. What uh, I... Hugo, the other child that belongs to the Simpsons family, he's showing Bart that when they get sewn back together as conjoined twins, it'll be fine. And his example is a pigeon rat, and it's just a rat that flies around because it's attached to a pigeon. Ah. Uh, <laughs> damn. It's really funny <laughs> because it tries to get out of a window as a pigeon, but the rat hits like the thing and then it falls down. The rat tries to go through a hole and the pigeon's head hits the top. <laughs> that's so stupid. That's, that's, that's what awful. A life form. Oh, yeah, it's terrifying, but it's done in a kind of No, they, they will learn to work together and they will become greater than each of them individually. Symbiotic. <laughs> Once yeah. they learn each other, it's like the two headed dragon from Dragon Tail. Oh, it's like Quest for Camelot. It's, it's like, like Venom and, and Eddie Brock, you know? Yeah. Or cat dog. I'm cat running dog. out of yeah, I'm running out of two cat headed dog. two brain creatures. I didn't like cat dog. Cat dog. I, never little cat dog. Uh, I didn't mind cat dog. It wasn't hugely it. yeah, it wasn't the, like my the favorite. only exposure to that I've had to cat dog makes me think that it's almost certainly like a horrifying nightmare. Yes. Oh, I can get you scientifically accurate cat dog if oh, you want. Oh, yeah, I remember horrifying. that. I remember that. Do video. they share yeah. an anus or they e each have their own? I think that's what the video is. It's like a worm. Was, uh, concept. Oh, neat. Um, uh, in any case, yeah, so they decide to go tail the penguin and they tail him to a little, uh, old Oh, no. Oh, my God. Uh, Fucking horrifying. To, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> to, that, to a facility, um, like near the docks or, or some industrial area. Uh, and while they're scoping it out, Jesus what they Christ. discover is now remember Moroni's operation that was talked about, the drug bust. As it turns out, 
uh, that, that, you know, the drugs are still being widely distributed. Um, there was a big operation for these things. Um, and Batman suggests, uh, uh, Jim says, oh, they must have started back up Moroni's operation. And then uh, Batman says, or it never ended. It's like, hmm. Hmm. Um, um, worth thinking. Oh, and then, then uh, Selena shows up uh, now to steal some money. Man. <laughs> timing. Bitch. I guess she was following them too. Um, maybe. But yeah, timing. Um, and she takes out the twins uh, and then opens up the car to get the money. Bruce stinks up. Is, this, like, what, you? is Selena being here more like justified? I think it's more this justified would be... because she's trying to get the money. Um, yeah, and this is like an exchange the where the money would be oh, present. Yeah, and she to would be, be here. Sort of... It's more so the timing of it. Um... Yeah, a little bit. Um, in in like, what sense do you mean? Like, had she turned up her... like a half hour, well, ten minutes earlier or later, different things would be happening. Well, it, it would be later. I'm wondering... so... Well, oh right, because it could be if she knows that this is a location. There's a few explanations. Either she told them, or she knew that this was where the operation was. And I think it might be more reasonable to know that this is where the operation was, considering. Yeah, I think it's the latter. Exchanges. Yeah. And if she knew where it was, that makes it worse. If she was tailing them, that would be probably better in terms of timing. But if she wasn't, then she showed up at this moment. She didn't show up earlier in the night and wait for them to get there and then get it. Or alternatively, she didn't show up later in the evening uh, to get the money. She showed up while Bruce and uh, Jim were there. I guess something you'd say in their favor is she would have, maybe they would have stayed there for a while and she would have turned up I... eventually. Yeah, because I figure that these things are actually scheduled, these meetups for the criminals, and Probably. so she would know when to show up for it. Yeah. Like, I don't think it's too big a deal uh, compared to the other examples. No, I don't, I don't think so either, no. Um, but she then goes in, grabs the money, unzips it, it's like, yes, there's the money, and then she unzips the next bag, and there's her girlfriend. She's been killed. Oh my goodness. Um, the, she's right damn, there. Man. Wow. She's just wow. there, in, the, in there, with yeah. the money. Like, mm -hmm. shit, you guys yet. not want to, you know, to get rid of that? Incinerate it? Yeah. Do you not have well, a... Because remember, you... it's been at least two days at this point. If, I, if yeah. I've got my timeline right, it's been at least two days since she was kidnapped. I'm um, starting to smell and, here soon. And based on, um, oh, yeah, I mean, she... <laughs> <laughs> and she was probably, spell. she was dead before they kidnapped her, essentially. Like, once they found out that she knew the stuff, I think she, she got killed. And so got, they essentially yeah. just kidnapped the body. We are jumping the gun a bit um, in terms of the That's, timeline, but yeah, it, it, I, I'm not sure that it matters for, think, yeah, for this thing though. I don't think it makes sense that she would be here anymore. Um, no, they here. would not keep, yeah, they would not keep the body While just going hanging for around for two days with money. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. Like, why would you, why would you have this with no dumb? You, you, you would put, this throw it in a incinerator. or you'd throw it in keep our your, money in our corpses, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. you would, you would feed it to your hmm. pigs. Or something, but yeah. you wouldn't. Yeah, you, you wouldn't just like, hey, hang I'm, on to it and keep it around. I am pretty sure it's been hey, two days, know. unless I'm mixing it up. Because it because there was the first night when <gasps> he met Selena, Thanks. and then it would be the next night was when she helped him. So that's one night at least. And then we have the next day with uh the um with um uh the DA. So it's at least two days, possibly three. Um. Damn, yeah. I uh, <laughs> don't know about that. Um, I want to see the I want to see this movie but directed by Guy Ritchie where he just embraces the crazy coincidences and runs with it and ever and everything's just hectic like all yeah, of the, the characters the mobsters understand like understand that that's happening and they're like this yeah. is fucking insane. Yeah, Catwoman's mm -hmm. here, Batman's here, Commissioner Gordon's here, the mob's here. Oh no! And, and hijinks ensue. Because Thanos this, comes up. By the way, this is uh this is important in terms of this happening. Because if if she wasn't in there, this is what leads uh Selena to realize that specifically that guy who worked the off duty cop that he was involved. Yeah. Uh, and that's the thread that then connects there. So yeah, if 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 the, if uh, Annika if she wasn't in the car, things become again Which very different. Is a strange place for her to be considering the time and just logistics of it all. Time and also strange. just why would you keep yeah with the bags of money um. But yeah, it's, the shock and then uh, gunfire. They've seen them. Um, and I, Bruce I, is I laying there on. The... I, don't, I don't want you to under, understate. Bruce is standing yeah. there looking. 
and then he gets hit with a array of gunfire from a machine gun, and it yeah. goes spark, 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 <laughs> all around everywhere that isn't his jaw. And because yeah. you might be like, well, it's just not very likely. It's like, it's just Mandalorian. It's the same fucking thing, man. It's, it's just like, mm -hmm. he's lucky, okay? And the fact that the, the, the force of these bullets just does nothing. It never does anything. And just, I don't know, that's just lame to me. Yeah. Uh, yeah, when, if you very have... Lame. If you have hard body armor, fine, but if it's soft, you will definitely get bruised. Mm -hmm. And if the helmet, because you have, we have masks, we have bulletproof face masks that you can wear, and it will save your life, but you'll be done for the week. You'll be, <laughs> you will have a horrible bruise on your face. You will be alive and you will heal, but it will, you will be just knocked the fuck out and it will not One be pleasant. Mentions, but he covers his jaw, so uh, he's shot at and then he reacts to it. Um, so he's still lucky no matter how you slice it. <laughs> Which is, it. yeah. And, and um, I don't know, I just find it more interesting when Batman has to like weave and dodge around gunfire. Oh, yeah, I do. When he doesn't get shot, yeah. yeah. Do you remember the, the first proper Batman action scene in Batman Begins? I remember that one still holding up. He does a lot of I, secret oh, stuff. I don't remember that one. It's been so long since I've seen that. I just don't remember yeah, anything same. about that movie at this point. It's, Damn. Also, He's in the darkness maybe, a lot maybe, yeah. and avoiding shit. It's like Ninja Man. Um, maybe yeah. his maybe his helmet is bulletproof. I, <laughs> well, so at this point, it would have to be <laughs> actually. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's shot yeah. in the helmet. Yeah. 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 I, I thought we already I, agreed on that. That's why it well, didn't I thought, because I was pretty sure on. I remember a scene where he gets shot in the head specifically. Well, and nothing I think happens. the reason you didn't why say that maybe, yeah. I think the reason I know why I didn't say it because I thought we agreed. You're a horrible the person, Mel. Thing. Um, hey, well, what, why is this always <laughs> happening to me? The reason why I thought the reason why I thought the reason why I thought it wasn't was because um at the end with the the shotgun um I, but but I guess we're just meant to assume it's like well would have hit him elsewhere anyway but we'll get to that um they're hiding they're shooting Jim tries to come in to help um and penguins coming up like I'm a, I'm gonna get you whoever's there trying to take my money um but then when he rounds the car Batman's not there anymore um ha now I did he. I guess he just ran to, like, ran away and nobody saw it, or... He what teleported. Make of that? Yeah, it's a bit of a teleport. It uh, seems like it'd be yeah. hard not to notice him, especially when you consider where Penguin's standing, where all of his men are standing, and where Batman was, and where, where the Batman car is. shot, yeah. Um, um, but, uh, but yeah, it, Penguin's like, oh no, and then he turns around, and then we have a very, very, very cool reveal. I'm imagining Penguin reveal. saying, oh right, no, right. like you said, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> and it's very amusing. Oh, oh no. Oh no! no. Uh, we oh, no. no I, his internal monologue is just like that tone of voice. The question: Does Batman know Gordon is here? Know where you're going? Well, I mean, he knows that he's here. Yeah, he would have to, right? Because they both came together. They were talking I'll, on the I'll radio. That, and they came you know what, Rags? Him. I feel like because you you brought it up, I'll let you. Uh, so this you end that thought. So when I was in the theater watching this movie. This was the first big point where I was like, oh, Batman, no. Because when, the peng when Penguin leaves, Batman goes to chase Penguin, which means that he has left his friend with all of these gunmen who are showering his concealment because a car is not really he's covered. behind a car door, his, which is bad enough. He's behind a car door and part of a car yeah. who's being showered with automatic machine gun fire. And he leaves him there to go chase Penguin. Oh, like, no. oh, Batman, no. And let's be fair, this is not known by the movie. They don't have a moment of, of them acknowledging, like, you left yeah. me to yeah. chase him or anything. There's like, no, the movie yeah. thinks it's Gordon fine. just, yeah, Gordon just shows up next time they meet. And I guess he survived that all that, which is insane. Because, <laughs> again, say with me, cars aren't. Bulletproof. Cars aren't movies. bulletproof. Cars, cars are not bulletproof. Yeah, he was severely outnumbered, severely go outgunned. Uh, he should be dead as a result of Batman's choice. I, I think he should be as well. Uh, he has a gun, he has a, he has a pistol, and he is being assaulted at uh, uh, upon by multiple thugs with automatic weapons. And again, cars aren't bulletproof. So yeah, and I think does he, should he be dead need here. to chase Penguin? Really? Can he just find him later? Is it time sensitive that we go well, get Penguin right now? It's a character thing. Um, like, oh shit, my friend. Like, because they should be like friends at this point, <laughs> you know. 
and I I just like you you sort of left him to die. Like Oh, for sure, yeah. Um like uh, I think, uh, uh, to be uh, fair, so Batman. can we highlight in that it shouldn't even really be like it shouldn't be that it's not like the difference here is this is the one chance I have to get information or save my friend. It's yeah. no no no, you can follow up Penguin another time, help Gordon. Exactly. Yeah. You would think so. I don't see any reason or that you... it's time sensitive that he goes and ch not only follows him and tails him to wherever he's going, but actively causes him to crash. Like, why was any of that actually yeah. necessary? Okay, well, so wait, was wait, it a cop car? Those would be <laughs> bulletproof. Uh... I don't think would would they? I, I actually don't. I, I, I actually, you Maybe know, the doors question, will have they? a plate. The, so the doors might have a plate in them that's installed. But that is not, mm. um, especially at the angle when he's trying to shoot him and he's got his like, body he's... sticking up. It is. Can we go, some, can we go yeah, further than that? It's just, he's can. standing behind us. He's standing behind a car door. Those well, things don't go all the way down to the floor. And, and can exactly. we just highlight when you Google uh, the bulletproof police cars, the answer is, of course, there are because they make them specially. But we're also we're talking about the average just on the beat police car right now, not an armored police truck. Yeah, it's yeah. Because remember, when when the police are done with the car, they sell it to the public and they, they take out all the lights and things, but. That most of them, I don't think they're gonna have. They're gonna be like armored. They're gonna be normal cars. Well, and um, unless obviously like the windows go car. out straight away, like in this car, that's at least some indication that they're not reinforced uh, to take on bullets. And also, that's not something that Batman would ever leave to protect Gordon. No, well, it wouldn't matter. Like if you, if if Batman actually said, "I left you because your car's bulletproof," he'd be like, "What? <laughs> like, what? That's <laughs> not <laughs> me." <laughs> It is, yeah, th this hurts, and it doesn't just hurt because it really has an impact on Batman's negligence for his friend, and that hurts his character a lot, but this is a huge opportunity to present Batman with having to make a choice. Do you go get your very important, we, we set up the Penguin where he's like the lead that he needs. He needs to get the Penguin for the case uh, to stop the Riddler's plan or whatnot, or he can save his friend, and he has right, to choose. You think, you think about uh, in the film, Batman doesn't do a lot of like saving. That's not that's not something he does a lot. Comes um, up it's a bit much later, about, quite a bit it, it? later. Yeah, it later. Does, yeah. But, but 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 for like a good period of the of the film, it's not about saving. So it's like that might be the opportunity to show that 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 is the choice that he makes. Like okay. I'll yeah. I'll get Penguin. That's 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 important now. If Jim dies, then that sucks. But like I got to get Penguin now. Worth planting um, a little seed, by the way, that yeah. uh, overtly the penguin has opened fire of like an Uzi, possibly several thousands of bullets, I don't fucking know, hundreds, uh, the, on, on Gordon. That's a thing that's happened here. Yeah, so yeah he's, a got a, he's got a Mac, uh, he's got a, like a Mac 10, I think. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to that a little later. Well, yeah, because uh, now the, the ch so before we get to the chase, like Selena grabs some money and then and leaves. Mm -hmm. Um, and it seems like the goons are kind of dispersing, but again, I'm not sure. Like, it's still like it would it would it would seem to me that even if the goons are going to be dispersing, that uh, you'd still want to you'd still yeah yeah we we've covered that. Then then the chase begins. Like Batman is chasing Penguin. Visually, I think the chase is fucking awesome. Um, Visually, it's very impressive. Absolutely, yeah, there's some fucking amazing right. shots, like the the shots that are locked on the wheels of the car. We get like th those are really cool. Um, and I and add the the, uh, the caveat to that though that I think it could do better to communicate no, what's actually uh, happening you know in what? the scene. I think, I think it could do better, but I actually think I disagree with what you were saying before that it does like a really piss poor job. I think that we have enough information to understand the changes in what's happening. Uh, that we can understand the progression. Um, could it be improved a bit? Uh, yeah, probably. I, no, I understand. I, actually, I understand, I understand the progression of the scene. I just, um, I don't feel that I can consistently have enough of an impression of where the players are in relation to each other. Like I understand uh, the important events and and how they happen and that they happen. So I, I'm not sure that I agree with that either. I think that there are. I mean, parts it might. It might honestly. It might just be that I have to watch the scene again if everyone's saying no to this. Well, yeah. But... So, 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 what we the the core progression is they're like chasing through a more quiet, like uh, industrial era and smaller places. They're they're a lot more like next to each other and bumper to bumper. Mm -hmm. 
and then, then they, like, get on the the, they get split up with a truck. Uh, so Penguin gets a bit of a lead, and then Batman is gets on his tail on the highway. They are on the wrong side of the road of the highway at first, and then they cut over to the correct over, side yeah. of the highway. And then it's the trucks that block everything. That's the core progression of the of the chase. I think that that's communicated pretty well, to be honest. <laughs> um, but there are parts where, yeah, it gets a bit harder to keep track. Mahler, did you understand because... the like progression of the uh, the scene, the the car chase? I feel like it could be argued either way. I'm basically just listening to this one because I don't. Um, I didn't have strong feelings either way. On I, I felt it was yeah. tense. It was an intense scene. Um, I'd have to rewatch it to give an opinion on this one. Yeah, I, really I wanted to get it. the opinion of someone who doesn't have a driver's license just to kind of round out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think you mean the the uh, only one who's not an adult, okay? Yeah, what I mean, believe. Hey, one I day. don't have a driver's license. If you ever visit, I'll teach you. I don't. But, uh, I don't care to so, learn. Honestly, I'd rather shoot guns with you. Uh, so there was like a. Another example as well. In terms we'll of combine the two and do illegal things. <laughs> yeah. Horribly illegal yeah. things. Do some drive-by shooting. <laughs> drive-by shooting. Grand Theft Auto. Um, I got a some, convertible. It'll be really fun. Something I like about the chase is that we see Batman making mistakes and kind of bumping into things. And, and he, he, he ain't perfect at this. This is tough. He's, he's not easy to, to do this chase. Um, but it was totally, absolutely necessary. Wow, mm. no, we, 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 mm. we've 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 uh, do you wanna, we've we've got over that. <laughs> yeah, do you want to just describe the complete of the scene that we can roll it back or yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So, so the, this is now. Yeah, when I watched the film the first time, I I was like, hmm. So, uh, penguins gets cut off by trucks. It's like, oh no, shit! Batman's getting closer, and then he he hits the brakes, rams the truck behind him. It starts skidding out of control. There is a massive pile up now separating Batman from uh, Penguin. We got like tanker trucks and shit. Everything's fucking crashing and it's going insane. Um, a ramp then forms through the crash that, uh, that, that, that <laughs> yeah, Batman yeah. uses to ramp That's one over. Way to those it, are the, yeah. ramp, those are the ramp... words that have to be said to describe so the scene. The, yeah, the, 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 the ramp forms. <laughs> To, to ramp Suddenly, through. the spirit of evil Knievel possesses the truck <laughs> and creates a ramp. To a ramp. ramp appears. To ramp through a, a ramp appears. <laughs> to ramp through a massive explosion, um, a huge explosion of fiery. Probably a lot of people got killed in that. Uh, in that oh, crash. Yeah. Um, and then he he flies through and makes and hits Penguin's car, and it just goes flying all over the place. So. Yeah, the thought in my mind at this point is, holy shit, that's a lot of people dead, probably from that explosion. So, my a lot God. of carnage. Here's the part that really <laughs> fucks with me. I didn't, I, it sucks to say, because everyone adores the shot, right? The it's shot's hard, awesome. It's hard but... not to think about the screams in the background. No, 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 but... Cap, it is. Fuck off. <laughs> 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 that, this is, I think, this is the clearest example in this film of the story being beholden to the spectacle. Absolutely, um, we we really wanted the shot of upside down Batman walking through yep. the rain with the fire <laughs> on the back, red, Batman. and we needed to get it. And it doesn't matter how insane it is that like this thing caused a ramp that he could fly over, or that the chase itself happening is like iffy, and then it creates a massive explosion and people getting hurt and killed that Batman ignores. And that the mm -hmm. penguin did this, and I guess we're jumping the gun. There are no consequences for him for this. He's not, not arrested yeah. or convicted for Honestly, this massive pileup that he caused. But he does waddle like a penguin. This was mandated for the trailer. Um, maybe. Um, maybe. There are ways to make it work. You can get this scene and make. I it feel work. like totally, uh, yeah, the yeah. other one yeah. would be you could make it work. Yes, there yeah. there are tweaks that you can do. I, I, I guess the problem is I don't know how you get the shot of the fire without Batman trying to help the people. Uh, in the cars. You can make a fire totally happen that doesn't involve people, right? There's got to be a way to do that. Yeah, maybe. But that explosion is huge. <laughs> like, Correct. Maybe involved. even a bit indulgent, would you say? <laughs> uh, I, no, I, yeah, so that's what I mean. I, I, I like the shot a lot, but goddamn. But I guess it's not that it's indulgent. I think that the story breaks itself to make that shot happen. It goes out of its way to make the shot happen, and we don't really think about the consequences for it. Good one, define um, the indulgence that in that it's way. Not like you're going so well, far with your desire for the shot that think other things are falling yeah, apart. Yeah, that's what. That, well, that's when I when I'm saying like the story is beholden to the spectacle. It's that 
your number one priority is I want the scene, um, regardless of how you get there. Like Endgame has that problem constantly. Yeah, I, want, I, want I want the want, visual. Yeah, I mm. want the visual. I want the imagery. I want this particular scene, but I don't care what the uh, what the what we do to get there. I feel like they care more in this film than otherwise, but this to me is like a a significant example of damn man, <laughs> like you yeah. really. You bended <laughs> physics, you bended the characters, you bended everything to make this happen. And it's uh, a what cool you're looking for is Ben. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, go for it, capital. Uh, just the, in terms of the, the fact that the Penguin never faces any consequences for this, neither does Batman. And yeah. obviously, Penguin is the one who's most responsible, but Batman could have just followed him. There's I know no the real reason to crash him. Yeah. This is something that the real police do. Yeah, Yeah, that's a huge issue. Yeah, so if you watch if you watch cops and like like police stuff where they do chases, a lot of the times police in the real world would be like, "Don't chase him because he's in a really crowded place, and we don't want him going at super high speed. So back off. Don't give the criminal a a like." Don't make the criminal feel well, like they have to speed super fast through very well, he's not dangerous low. places. I know it's, uh, it's, it's, been a, a it's, it's typically been a big discussion in Australia about pursuits as a thing that cops are even allowed to do because pursuits often lead to crashes. Um, I remember, I remember, like years ago, there was a like public debate in terms of like policy here about whether or not we should encourage or even allow police officers to pursue in chases because once people chase to speed up and they start doing dangerous stuff, and that it might be better to just let them get away rather than do a pursuit that could kill someone. Um, I guess yeah. that man decides that that's not important to him, which... I, well, so, it, it's complicated. He doesn't have... We, this is the scene where you have Alfred in his ear going, the, yeah, like, calm the fuck done? down, Batman. Yeah, like, like, like calm down, it isn't worth it. This, there's too many... Like, not even not to chase people, but this specific chase, where this guy's a maniac, there's yeah. too many people on the road, he's going too fast, you're gonna have to back off. It, it, you, you gotta back off. And Batman's well, like, no, I got him, I got him, I can do this. So, here's a thought. I think you can very clearly identify the theme in terms of, you know, how Batman operates that at this point in time, this Batman is it, it, like the way that he's approaching situations is flawed. Um, it is this should flawed. be a teachable moment. This, yeah. It, if the story uh, acknowledges <laughs> this as well, uh, so, so let, we could make more changes to make the explosion less severe. Let's just have people get hurt by some pile up and we can still do the ramp. I guess we just can't have the fire. Um, I don't want to do the ramp. Can we not do the ramp? Uh, well, yeah, yeah. We, off. We, yeah. Let us have some <laughs> fun. <laughs> so what? Uh, I, I ramp is shit. I hate it. So what, <laughs> not what you I too. I'm, what I it's, uh, it's I, spreading Jay is correct. So uh, I think a, a point a point that I'm trying to make here is that you can have a reading of this film and this particular scene that this is in relation to the way that he's operating, being dangerous and reckless. I think you can read that. The problem is that the story itself doesn't seem to it's acknowledge what's happened. It. Yeah. It's yeah. not recognized in the story in terms of the story's condemnation of any specific event. Um, and I think that's why it's easier to believe that's like, no, this was just you wanted the shot and you didn't think about the collateral damage. Yeah. It's huge collateral damage for a chase. The that read that I get from this. The aspect of vengeance in this in this um, like in this movie that this aggressive vengeance sort of idea is that the f to me I get the read that it is saying it's more ineffectual than counterproductive, and I feel like you could have gone with it you know like the other way where it's not that it's ineffectual being you know this this dark avenger, but it can you know if if you are not very careful with that, then it will create more problems because people will get hurt around you, and this would have been the scene to convey that, but they don't. Yeah, yeah, not 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 great. Um, do we have anything else for the the chase, or um, uh, should we? Progress? I don't know how I feel. I'm gonna test this one out, see what everyone says. Um, mm -hmm. what right. he does to Penguin could easily have killed him. Ah, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, there's that too. Yeah. Fuck yes, it could. When I was watching the movie, I was asking, "Did did did Penguin put a seatbelt on?" I, <laughs> he must. He he did. He must have. Because he must have. Because he had. He clearly is. Because he is. If he if you were rolling around like car. that, 
Yeah, if, if you are rolling around in that car and you are not buckled in, you are being thrown around and out that vehicle. Please wear your seatbelts. It's there to save your life in the event of a crash. <laughs> um, like, if you remember... Package that, that imagine that's, that's, how the, that's, that's just how the film goes. Penguin flies out, and then the... Penguin the died, appears, yeah. Please wear a seatbelt. Please wear your seatbelt. the end of the film. Yeah. <laughs> he does some it was all one big, yeah, so, yeah. speedy and intense spins to the point where it's like he should probably be unconscious, right? Like penguin. probably, maybe. Um, um you, I think you're generally okay in like if you if you're if you got your seatbelt on, you should I think you'll be okay and conscious if you roll around like that. Um but without the seatbelt, you are you're probably dead or but, um, severely it, injured. I guess it just makes me worry because it's like there there is a big moment in this film uh, that makes it very clear Batman's uh, very much in the rule of no killing, and it's like, but this action you take, you you, yeah. you I don't know, man. This is like, dependent on the person you're chasing having a seatbelt on, which you don't know, <laughs> and even then, <laughs> it, it's not a risk you want to take. And, and aren't you chasing him? Penguin dies, and Batman's just there, like, questions. Where he should have worn a seatbelt. He brought this on himself. <laughs> he brought this. On. I uh, once the, we get access to a very good quality one, I would like to see if he's got a, a seatbelt on because it's just uh, <laughs> holy fuck. I want, if he does, I want Penguin to get Peng, Penguin gets in the car, and then as he's he, he clicks, you know, he clicks it he, that seatbelt on. He looks straight at the camera and says, "Safety first," and then he drives <laughs> off. <laughs> That's an extended. Oh, you know, but knowing this film, like trailer, the right? scene where Bruce crashes into the bridge, I wouldn't be shocked <laughs> just before, just before the crash, uh, Penguin's like, "Don't need this," and unplugs the seatbelt <laughs> for no reason. Oh, it's that kind of movie. Okay. Oh, I did just have a funny thought. Like, what if this scene was like constructed um, from uh, in comparison to BVS? So the question they were asking was not if. Batman will be killing people, but rather, is he like mowing people down with machine guns? Is he sawing them in half? As long as he doesn't do that, that should be fine, right? Because as far as I know, in the later parts of the film, he is okay with the people he's fighting dying if it is of indirectly him or through their own sort of. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. We'll, we'll get there when attack. we get there. We'll get there when we get there. Yeah. I guess one one important thing I just want to bring it back to is that he leaves Gordon to go chase Penguin because it's clearly very, very important to him that he can't get away because he needs to ask him questions and all that. And what he does is causes a giant car wreck that could have killed him. It's like, that's what and you left Gordon behind people, to yes. do. Yeah. What? Gordon oh died God. for this? <laughs> <laughs> and could have. <clears throat> oh, uh, by the way, I boot up the trailer just to see if I could get get it from the shot in there. I think you guys are gonna have to help me out. Is that a seatbelt? It looks kind of like one. Uh, let's take. Yeah, yeah. I would say yeah. that's what it is. Yes, it do. Definitely. I, I assume belt. he's got the seatbelt on because he's just not flat out ejected from the vehicle. Well, and, and just to, <laughs> yeah. just PSA, you should wear a seatbelt, everyone. They're, they're good. You should, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You should serious. If you take anything away from this uh, EFAP today, it's that you should wear your fucking seatbelt. Seat it is designed to save your life in the event of a crash at rollover. So if you remember, and they do a really good damn job at that. We have to check uh, Boy Season 2 because I think the whole family get flipped in the car in the final episode, and I think all of them are wearing seatbelts except for Mother's Milk, and it means that he should probably be dead. I think yeah. that's what um, we found. Fun fact, though, uh, Volvo invented the seatbelt, and they did not... Uh, they, they gave it an open patent copyright so that everyone could use it. Uh, that's correct. Uh, it's good on them. Good, uh, good guy, yeah. Volvo. Um. Yeah. So yeah, I guess I want to just clarify about this scene. I think it's actually pretty drastic in everything other than production values. Basically, like, it, oh, uh, it's, it's such a cool scene overall. Yeah, woof, but like, yeah. oh, this is damage. This Disastrous. is some big damage we got Disastrous. here. Disastrous. Um, yes, so this I was gonna is say, not on top of good. Everything else, Batman and Penguin are done. Like, will building wise, they are absolutely fucked. They, the, what they've just done, like, it's. The, the idea that it's like, yeah, maybe we shouldn't chase Batman. It's like, he's a fucking vigilante. He's got no right. He should be taken down for this. This mm -hmm. is not okay. Yeah, he's on a... There is this understanding with the Batman character, generally, that the police tolerate him because he gets results and doesn't get in their way. And that he's he produces enough of a good effect 
that they put up with him being a vigilante. And even then, it's a, uh, it's a gray area that they're probably never going to directly have a official position on, you know, for the, the public and whatnot. You ca- if you have a Batman like this, there ain't no way. There ain't no way. One thing I liked was uh, Penguin causing this and then being so happy with himself. Like, I got you. Like, I did it. I got yeah. you. <laughs> I, I do really like that. Yeah. <laughs> He's so thrilled. I like and then it. he looks in his, uh, in his mirror and just yeah. sees the fucking Batmobile fly away. It's like, oh, shit. Not, yeah, it's just that return to the fear. It's like, oh, shit. Like, damn, this guy. There's something else to keep in mind in in regards to the police is that Batman really does want to have a good relationship with the police because you know what happens if he doesn't? The police are going to get in his way. It's going to cause a lot of problems with his operation. So it's within his interest to not do shit like this and get on the police's bad side. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. But alas, but that brings us to them talking to him. Like, oh, you're the rat. And he, I guess the TLDR for that part is, you're the rat. No, I'm not actually. Uh, I'm not. And then they, they, then they're like, oh, they're they're El Rata thing. And then he says, no, you obviously like basically you guys obviously don't speak Spanish. It's La Rata, or uh, whatever the whole saying okay. is. And, Thank goodness um, he's fluent, eh? Yeah. Um. Yeah, but I mean, in the United yeah. States, I guess I can expect that someone might be familiar with and Spanish. Like, I'm not sure that it's something that you need to be fluent to know either. Like, no. It seems pretty um, a word ending in a. It's I just don't believe that's common knowledge. Less than, than, more more than um, less common knowledge. Sure. I think I think it's weird that Batman doesn't know this and Penguin Agreed. does. I think Batman I should know this. Mm-hmm. Um, what like that? It wasn't a mistake that he should have made. I'm yeah. I, found I it think really if weird. you're gonna write well, it to for any one of these three characters to know this, be like probably Batman. Would it be probably Batman? Why would we say that? Because I don't see so any reason like why Penguin probably. would know it. He's He's got very much different interests in life. Batman's like world's greatest detective. I figure he's probably aware of a lot of things to do with different languages. Um, I would expect well, Penguin to know some Italian. Yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe. Um, but but it is worth noting as well that um, it was uh, it, I, it was like Alfred who did it. And I guess it would be, does Bruce have any reason to like doubt what Alfred concluded based on what he was able well, to put together. That was actually someone I was trying to ask earlier. So does that mean had Alfred used, I don't know, better translation tech, this just wouldn't have happened? Um, uh, probably. Sure. I mean, because because he says, like, oh, my Spanish is not that great, so, but I think this is what it says. Like, oh, maybe we should double check. Because, like, they have, yeah, said, we're, we're in... We have internet, right? Yeah, yeah instead of going, this is what this means, right? Well, uh, double check. And, yeah. and we have apps on our phones that can translate. Um, well, text, and we just talked like, about augmented reality. How it could yeah. very commonly yeah. be understood by a lot of people in America. And it's like, yeah, do you have a friend? Maybe <laughs> just someone who is, I don't know. Like, there's a lot of things you could have done do instead you know of just a going. Senor or senora? Yeah. I guess why, it's in why the code. It's in the code. Like, no one can decrypt Spanish. Well, well, so, I guess the, uh, it I is an alien we'll tongue, not spoken well, by men, the race of men. He could have talked to Riddler straight away then, if Alfred had gotten it right. If he had figured it out correctly, yeah, he would have been able to talk to him straight away. Doesn't he say in the beginning that, like, it's the wrong, like, he mixes up El or Lava, it's like, oh, it's probably just an accident. Well, it's yeah, weird that yeah, they but, don't just assume it was probably deliberate because well, everything else has been so deliberate. No, but so the thing is, is that they, uh, I think Jim says maybe he screwed up, and then Batman says, "Well, Riddler hasn't made any mistakes so far," and that was the thing that made them think URL. Other than hitting me with that bomb, but that's uh, fine. Well, well, but, but <laughs> they, he hasn't made any mistakes with his riddles. Uh, um, I thought that. I thought that line about <laughs> yeah, okay. like he might have messed it up came earlier, but. I no, I, I think that it, it was in that scene. He, they're like, oh, maybe it was a mistake. And they said, yeah, they, they weren't. They didn't make any mistakes um, so far. Anyway, with the riddles, and then they think URL, and then Ratalada is the is the URL, and then they can have a little conversation with the Riddler, and he essentially asks them, "Have you figured <laughs> it out? Figured it out yet?" And they say, "Well, Rat with wings is is a penguin." 
And he says, oh, that's interesting, but you're missing the big It wouldn't picture. be Penguin, because then it would be El Rata Lardo. <laughs> <laughs> wow. El Lardo. That's, 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 that's dumb. Um, <laughs> hey, so, I'm not saying this for any reason, but Lucky Batman didn't mention in any part of that that he's against Riddler's ideas here. Uh, what, in the messages? Yeah, the back and forth he has with them. It's a good thing that all of it can be read in a light that is encouraging of Riddler's goals rather than discouraging. What do you think he would have written if he was more hostile? Anything. Stop could, it. Could, could have been all you kinds of things. Yeah, it. like, like stop literally, it. Get some uh, help. do you, do you, like, do you, do you think <laughs> you'll get away with this? Or, or just anything at all that could have yeah, implied yeah, yeah. something, like, sure, negative. But... Is is that something that he would have been compelled to write um, at the time? You would think maybe. I, well, I, I feel like I shouldn't have to come up with an them, example right? of something as broad as in any way implying he's not on board with Riddler's plan. Uh, could I just make the argument he doesn't want to screw around if he's got this opportunity to interact with the Riddler that he wants to play it as straight as possible to extract as much information as possible? I think the to have a conversation and no language to imply that is lucky. Especially when Batman's um, not intending to do that. Because he's not intending to hide that he thinks his plan is evil. Yeah, sure, but I mean, if, if like, being confrontational ha runs the risk of screwing anything up. Well, any implication at all, as instead of just... And especially if you don't want to get confused, wouldn't you want to be as matter-of-fact as possible? So when so he says, like, you, get... you know, there's going to be a next victim, the fact that... You, imagine all of the things you could say in response to that that would easily imply you're not on board. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I can agree. I guess I would also say, like, what if he just wants to play it as straight as possible to get as much information as necessary? Again, so you can do can that him. while also implying... This thing, if, if you're arguing Batman's position right now in his head is, I don't want to anger him, but he like we are antagonists to each other. Like, Batman's perception of Riddler and him right now are that I'm trying to find you to stop you. Riddler's perception yes. is, you are my teammate and I'm slowly giving you the clues to figure out this whole thing. Like, you can yeah, no, be non-confrontational can... while Batman can give away, while giving you know, like, away the, the Joker yeah. Batman interrogation. It starts pretty non-confrontational, apart from punching his hand. You know what I mean? Like, they recognize yeah. their positions, but they can still give language to it. He's like, you're a, you're a garbage who kills for money. He says that, like, in a very yeah, chill I way. I got you. I assume the reason that um, Riddler doesn't just tell Batman everything and is, okay is even... That using riddles in the first place is just him I'm as a okay character and him anything. I'm not uh, okay with other things away. and we'll get there. Yeah. yeah. Um but then they they figure out it's like uh basically they get to the the clue orphan um the, the, the mm. and then they go to an old orphanage that was um sort of uh financed in part by uh the Waynes. Um really they, quick yeah. It's it's really bizarre to me that he doesn't figure it out right then and there that he's talking well, about Bruce Wayne. I figured it out right then and there. Obviously, yeah, sort of like, it makes yeah. it makes no sense to me. Weirdly for that me, he doesn't go. Oh, I didn't believe it until uh, this the, the, the explosion happened because I was like, but I I had it in my head that he'd probably figured out who Bru who Batman is, and so I was like, he's not going to want to bore Bruce Wayne. Um, but obviously that. That was well. This, I'm just explaining my perception. But I was just like, so that can't be it then. <laughs> like, I must well, yeah, be it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, and plus, there are many things that so, like at this point in the film when you're watching it the first time around. I think it is intentionally leading you to the conclusion that Riddler knows. We, you're getting little hints now. We're get we're ratcheting up the intensity from Bruce's POV mm -hmm. in terms of the connection to him. Um, but yeah, they they go to the old uh, orphanage. It's really downtrodden there's uh some homeless people residing in there and then they go into a room with a projector. drop heads yeah yes. they're, they're addicts right. to drop no i will ask you this though now that we've arrived at this scene you have to take either one fictional batman world drug would you rather take drop or snake bite drop <laughs> drop which one what, all right snake bite i don't remember that woman oh uh, Snake yeah. is like hyper addictive, <laughs> and it gives you your you experience your like what you most want to re-experience in your memories or or, or things you. It, yeah, it basically puts thanks. you in a ecstasy state, which is like holy shit, that would be so addictive, oh. wouldn't it? 
Can I take Bane's venom? Go for it. No. Yes. I will choose that. Because I can then move the couch. Well, isn't easily. Bane's venom in Batwoman? What what is that? It's like it a because yeah. that's remember that's like a that's like a thing in Batwoman now. Uh we it's have like to a super we have steroid. So much, we have to catch up, but it's like a um isn't it like a snake bite thing? Uh, it's a super steroid that basically just gives you a lot of strength the more you pump. Are we talking about Batwoman? Uh, Batwoman is a lore. super steroid that gives you I'm more a... strength the more well, of it I'm you talking about, I'm talking about Bane's I mean, venom. I well, I would I would like to take this opportunity to we are we are about halfway through talking about the movie when we talk about it for four How's hours. It feel, Frank? How's it feel? Oh, <laughs> yeah. okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> like I yeah. Um. So in the orphanage, they find the projector playing a speech by uh, Thomas Wayne when he's doing his mayoral campaign, talking about the one billion dollar endowment for the renewal fund for like public services. Um. But then, sprawled across the walls, this is my least favorite riddle because it's not a riddle. Everybody knows the saying, the sins of uh, the sins of the father are visited upon the son. And then he realizes, oh no, Bruce Wayne is the target. This is my least favorite riddle. I, I don't think it's... it's, it's everybody knows this saying. The first time in the movie where I was like, wait, are you only going after Bruce because he's his son? Oh, right, you think yeah. about all the other like people it. that you I went don't after. Like it. I enjoyed the people. other targets as a v understanding a villain, but this one I was like, ooh. Hmm. This seems to be a, a break of ethics that really kind of makes Riddler a lot less interesting. So, now, the steel man in favor of the film would be, well, Bruce Wayne hasn't done anything to try and make the city a better place. As from the from the Riddler's POV, he's just rested on a pile of money. Now I think you could read that in, but there is no reference to this in the film. Yes, I feel um, if that was the reason, Riddler would have told him. And I would like yeah. to have no, that but it's scene where Riddler... explicitly every time, every time it's explicitly because of the sins of the father. Like that's the reason yeah. cited in the that film. That is the reason given. Yeah. yeah, that's what. That's why I don't know that what I said is the be the first one that you can laugh. You on could to. you could change the movie to have that be the case without. You know, too much alteration. If if you if you swapped up the like the dialogue more than anything yeah. else, and maybe some messaging, but yes. mm, it but it would be. I think it'd be better. So what did chat said? So, break of ethics. Didn't he attack the new mayor? She seemed good. Nah, that didn't break his code. So what you've highlighted is a very good point, and we will get there. We will yes, get there. We will get there. Mueller, Mueller is saying that while rubbing his hands together. I'm very. <laughs> like, it, when you're like, you highlight another inconsistency. As C is not consistent. I'm just like, lol. <laughs> Thank you, but um, we'll get there. Well, so yeah, um, we, we will. No, get there to be we, to be fair, mm -hmm. the the steel man of the reason he is going after Bruce is because he resents. Um, how he had that rich lifestyle well, so, when he himself yeah, was I an think orphan, that's, right? That's, I, wouldn't that, say, I wouldn't that's say that's bad, the steel yeah. man. That like is that. just that's the story. That is what the film. That's what the film yeah. presents as being. Well, yeah, but I, I think wouldn't that great. wouldn't the, uh, the argument for how that makes some sense as a motivation? It does kind of. It doesn't. It goes against the reasoning well, behind all the other targets. But this is something much more personal, and he has this um, resentment. What Bruce. I would highlight there then is that I think that that is weak from a writing standpoint in the sense that all the other victims were very deeply connected uh, to the central conspiracy. And this one, which happens to be the most yeah. personal one to Bruce, is thinner. And it's like, very, hmm, yeah. you could do better than that. It clearly stands like, apart. You, you need yeah, to do there's no reason for this to be. There, there's no reason for this to be linked to the other victims who are very closely related into why they were chosen. And this is yeah. just like, mm, yeah, I don't like him. And yeah. I, I think uh, by the way, what you've said, Frank, just like the, the, I think that they should have ran with that, that Riddler should have made a yes, big deal about have. how Bruce Wayne is a piece of shit because he's sat on so I much money, he could have helped so many people and he's chosen well, not to. Yeah. ties in so well to He could also tie Bruce it? Wayne, I think there's, an, there's an attempt, well. there's it an would, attempt yes. to do this in a film, but it's not cited as the reason to tie um, Bruce Wayne to the renewal fund. Yeah, I just how I do you type Bruce Wayne to the renewal fund? The father. Like, this is another example of a thing that could be improved very easily. Um, like it's it's a minor tweak, and and you you fix it immediately. Yeah. Um, but I in agree. any yeah, uh, in any case, he's racing home to call Alfred about uh, this because Alfred is uh, he's picking up a package for Bruce Wayne's eyes only. Opens it up, 
there's a fireproof little message to the Batman and then a bomb and it blows up. But as it turns out, he was already well too late. It, it's been like an hour since it, it detonated and I was happy with that. It's like, yeah, it's not going to line up perfectly for you uh, in terms of timing. I would be fine with that, except for he didn't, as soon as he figured out that Bruce Wayne was the target, he's like, oh my god, I need to race home to make sure my people are safe. And he probably should have figured it out out before going to the orphanage. I don't know why Um, he didn't. Well, uh... That's relying on him figuring out the clues, but he acts within character once he learns the info. So the flaw would just, if you could say there's a flaw, it's that he didn't figure it out fast enough. Which isn't really a, it's not a character flaw. It's just he it just seemed it very factor. obvious to me that Bruce Wayne was. But here's the thing: is there meta implying that because one of the big significant things we understand about Bruce and Batman is that he is an orphan rather than from his POV. Yeah, from his perspective, he just might not see oh, himself as that but, thing. Well, I think uh, something to remember as well is renewal becomes important now from his perspective. The renewal fund hasn't been something that he's had to think about. Up until this point, um, probably, it's now that he starts to think about the renewal fund. I would counter a little bit on the orphan thing. I think that is on Batman's mind quite a bit. The, the uh, orphan. right, yeah, right, right, right. You know, well, orphans, they just... can't fucking let it go. <laughs> How could you? Uh, it? Jesus uh, Christ. Um, just, they're just fucking mad about their bone density being so low. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they don't if at least blood. if I could keep my blood, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's been so long since that was a thing. People are going to just be so confused. As to <laughs> and we're not even going to explain that. it. Nope. Uh, it's, well, they'll it's, never it's know the why Goliath orphans street. don't own their own blood. Yeah, that's right. That's a, That was a prime lore stream. Mm-hmm. That was that a long was a time ago. For lo- I re- a lot of people will never know why orphans I had a lot of fun. <laughs> that was a great stream. It's um, very fun. Yeah, uh, so the, the thing went off and uh, Alfred is in hospital. He is clinging to life, but barely. He's not well. Do you have any next of kin? Lady Holding Alfred. on to life! Um, and he just says, no, it's just me. Uh, which I... Which... He is another sort of, like... The, the, this, it's like five seconds, but like I just appreciate like the, the constant sort of discussion that's happening in the subtext about Alfred's nature in relation to the Waynes. I just, oh, there's so little of it. Come on. It's just been, yeah. a, long, it's been a long we time just, since yeah. we've seen him. We, see he is, we, his scenes are separated by that half an hour. <laughs> like, each one. Each of the four scenes that he has in the film. Um, does not get a lot of screen time mm-hmm. or dialogue in this. And it is really, it's a, it's a damn shame. Yep. Because I really like him. Um, I do too. Yeah. But then, uh, yeah, so I want to know Bruce, more. Yeah. Bruce starts, uh, he goes up to his big gothic little place and starts sprawling things out on the ground trying his to house? connect all of the pieces. Yes, well. His big gothic it, it is little his house. place. Also known as his house. <laughs> also known as a house, yes. <laughs> it's a big office little place, all right? <laughs> um, and then, yeah, he starts to try and go through stuff about renewal, but... um. Before he can actually figure it out, he gets contacted by Selena, who's got her little eye thing, and she's asking to meet up. Wait, have a hold on. Uh, really quick. Um, mm-hmm. I thought it was very odd that he took all the time to spray paint that stuff on the floor. I was about to say him, something. Yeah, was oh, to go look in a file cabinet renewal. about renewal, which was already on his mind. Yeah, Why I did agree. He to make I, it agree. All, I totally yeah, agree. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, all I, of I, the time it would have taken you to just... I'll write it further. down on yeah. a table. I think it's absurd that he makes is... this retarded thing. It's yeah. 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 this, this makes it difficult. It's for the trailer. It, it was so yeah, weird because this... I was, I was expecting like a like a like a detective scene. It's like, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna connect this to this and here and there, like a five minute scene or whatever. And it's like, uh, and then he gets a call and it's like, let's me open a cabinet. I'm gonna look in the cabinet. It's like, for <laughs> oh, well, okay. the trailer, that's it. So I guess yeah. that's just in his well, place so now. I would, I would happily this one as. As indulgence, I would I would cite this as indulgence. Oh, I was about to, I was oh, it was on the tip of my tongue. I was going to say that, yeah, uh, because this actively it. makes it more difficult to like process information, yep. to spray paint it out, and to spread all this stuff in this big room yeah. instead of just having it at a desk with you. I'm not on an eight. Eight. Well, he's going to have to clean his floor after this. <laughs> Genuinely, eight no, he's got a paper. butler. Well, well, he's got a butler for that. Oh, never mind. Oh, but uh, the. 
But, the, also, but yeah, this seems like it would hurt him. <laughs> Harry, do you think that the, this is just indoors. a regular occurrence? Do you think this is a regular occurrence where just Alfred walks into the fucking living room? Oh, did Master Wayne have a clue-seeking adventure again, again on like, the floor? I want to point out as well, remember the effort he puts into moving the table into the center of the floor? All Such he writes on that table. is a question mark. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing, Bruce? Like, a waste what? of space. It's such a waste of space, isn't it? Yeah, he's gotten a little high on the spray paint fumes, and he's not thinking too clearly. <laughs> so those the oh, two yeah, concussions you, you he had in the same day. Spray paint, yeah, the they, they did something to him. Let's get a fucking when he got blackboard, you freak. <laughs> no, Batman would have ba Batman would have a blackboard. Oh, it's fine. Um, Apple. Fucking orphans waste of space. Yeah. yeah. He, he, he meets up with Selena on the on the Correct. roof. He meets up with Selena on the roof to have a little chat about what's going on. She's not super happy. Things aren't going quite well for her right Just now. One one um, last yeah. thought. There needed to be an after okay. credit scene of Alfred washing away that with a big broom thing. <laughs> <laughs> and he's all oh, like bandaged stupid. up and he has yeah. his like, bandages Fucker. all over him. He's like on crutches, <laughs> hunched over. Why, Bruce? Why? <laughs> they, they, anyway, carry on. They'd be talking on, on the roof about uh, everything that's going on. Um, and uh, the, the big revelation here is, because he's talking about like, so what, what's the deal? Like you were working this operation, like you kind of were, you're inviting trouble into your life. Um, and then she says like, well, no, I'm entitled to that money. Um, because Falcone is her dad. <gasps> um, yeah. play that music. That wasn't the music that they played. Yeah, right. Oh, the okay. They don't play I was, it all the time. I... <laughs> you oh, fool. Okay. Oh, yeah. all right, all right. Um, yeah. You're actually then... fucking moron. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I should have, yeah. And, uh, essentially, they just come to the conclusion like all right well let's work together to you know to try and basically like avenge uh annika so that she deserves some level of justice you know because all of all of these unfortunate yeah like she's a victim here you know she deserves justice let's let's bring them down by um, the way i like i really like their conversations that these two have so do I. um i like like he apologizes after he assumes the worst in her and mm -hmm. they there, there's like the potential romance aspect there, but it's I, I really like these two as characters together. I would not be upset if we got more later. I wouldn't be either. Um, Except for I, that I imagine. Line, though. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, that the yeah. right the the what was it? It was the the white privileged assholes. That was the line. That was like Feels the one line. Out of yeah, that it one took me out. Was, I, I, I just yeah. sort of like, where did that come from? Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that had nothing to do with anything. Um, it didn't. They yeah. were. They weren't. Yeah. They were just. I. It feels really you be weird. Like, you want to be like Selena? Just because all of the bad people are white doesn't mean white people. Like you need a, a Selena. Well, Falcone <laughs> is. Is Falcone isn't white? Is he? He's like John Turturro. I, well, I he's don't, alien. Isn't he? Yeah, he he's he likes like a Mediterranean sort of complexion. He's depending Italian. on who you ask. They're white too, Italian. but it's Italian. Italians, Italians are Schrodinger's white, so. so just again, your your regular reminder that racism is really stupid. All right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're, we're trying because <laughs> we're trying to figure out if what she said makes sense. It's just well, I think I think it's just that there was nothing in the film that was talking about the idea of like racism being race an until she it. brings it up. Yeah. Like yeah. It, it was yeah, mainly that they were. It was all about like power and right, government officials and senior people. Yeah, and, it's about like, the abuse of power. It was I, I, barely about gender either. So, like, it wasn't even about like privilege, really. It was more just abuse of power, institutions. No, no, there, that were, are there, were, there were stuff about privilege earlier in that scene where you're talking about how people clearly grew up rich and things like that, right? I'm fine with privilege. Uh, to I'm Batman, not fine he with clearly the, grew up rich. The white There's part class is super stuff, awkward, but yeah. Well, there's definitely class elements to it. Um, I, it's just the race thing I don't understand. Like that, it felt like we never got anything about just, that at all in the like story. It, it comes out, out of nowhere. nowhere. Yeah. It's like listening to a, it's, it does it's come the out smiling nowhere. friends thing. Where like you listen to a friend doing their rant on things you completely agree with, and then they just throw it like, "Yeah, I fucking hate the bad. They're Jewish." You're yeah, like, yeah, I kissed my dad. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa
reminds me of the uh, the X women line from uh from Dark Phoenix. It's just like, man, they just came out of nowhere. Like, what are we doing? If it, it's it's a moment where it's like, damn, I see the script, I see it in in front of my face, I see the yeah. line written in the I mean, script. If, You've taken me out of it. it really, no, I see the note written on the script from the executive saying, "You need Put to this in. emphasize." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Put in this line, all right. Yeah. What's what's especially weird about it is that they take great pains to establish that this isn't our world. There's future tech. We have like, uh, you know, corruption that's more akin to like twenties to forties America Mobsters, levels of corruption. Yeah. yeah. There's so many things that make this not our world, except that they're also the like, message he's on Twitch connects, and so it works. Yeah, it's 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 very strange to just insert our current like social and political ideas into this world because it's it's like he rem he decided he wanted to do social commentary in a movie that well, it already is a has completely it. different well, world. No, it already like, has social not, commentary. I think you know? I think I think it's another one of those um probably mandate lines of this will get people talking, this will stir up the pot a bit and that'll be it, right? It's more than things to make discourse happen more so that people go and see the movie more. I don't know. I don't know. It's weird. weird. It is weird. In terms of I forgot, the, I forgot that line was in there until he mentioned it again. <laughs> I remember. I now that you mentioned it, you, I I do remember in the theater. I was like, wait, what? Why? I, I was, I was like, pulled right out. I was, I was listening intently, and then I went, Whoa, I was. what? Why? Why? Whoa, what? Yeah. <laughs> why would you? Why? <laughs> it, it tainted the neck, the rest of the conversation to a degree because I kept thinking about it. I was like, why would? Why would she say that? Is that wh why? Where this? What? Yeah. Um, it was really the, odd. The, the important, the really important part in terms of the plot stuff is she basically is, I'm going to go find uh, the, the off-duty cop because he's involved, so I'm going to go find him. Uh, and then Batman returns to his little old Batcave, and um, there's, there's a new video up about, uh, from, from the Riddler uh, about the Waynes, uh, and oh boy, there's revelations. Nah. So, huh? Scary revelations. Oh, yeah. Just a nice um, revelation. I just thought you were saying oh, something. Sorry. Oh, you know what? I'm Resurrections? I'm, I'm having a brave wave. Oh. Did you think oh, that no. the helmet was leather? Because when he takes it off, it bends like cloth almost. Yeah, 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 yeah that's yeah, why. Yeah. <laughs> that is why I it's thought just it was like, leather. Yeah, so we just ha it's John Wick at this point. Like, that's the tag. It's just John Wick tag. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I thought it was leather because it looks stitched together around it does the nose. Look stitched together too, yeah. It, yeah, the um, nose. Yeah, you could see the stitchings on the nose. Well, mm. because everyone, it is. But <laughs> like, you <can't, laughs> is it magic bat leather? Is the question. Mm -hmm. It is magic leather. bat leather. It's, yeah. It is magic bat um, leather. What's well, so Aesthetically, it's like baby's birth first bat suit, right? Like this is the first iteration of the suit, so it's like aesthetically, it's not really sending the message that this should be as indestructible as it is mm -hmm. yet. And I can yeah. believe the armor on the chest and like the arms and stuff. The helmet, though, mm. Mm, it's, yeah. it's it's iffy. Um, the helmet is not. It does not look. It's it not could like, use um, Dark Knight Returns uh, adaptation, kind of the suit the. Ben Affleck wears against Superman that suit, where it's like, whoa. That Tank, one is like, boy. yeah, mech almost. Yeah. It's it's that middle ground well, between could, armor and a mech. Yeah. You could have like some armor on his head though. Like you could have just some you more can, clearly yeah. armor plated. Helmets face masks. exist. They, they have do, existed they for many years. Yeah. I've seen them. The idea oh, of uh, head cases. protection. Is, yeah. Is head protection a, is uh it's a thing. Is this a Batwoman reference? Does something like this happen in Batwoman? Does something become immortal when it's dipped in the blood of Ra's al Ghul? Oh, that's just <laughs> dumb enough to be believable that it's in Batwoman. Because <laughs> yeah, Ra's al Ghul already, already exists in the Arrowverse because he fought in Arrow in season three of that show, so I can believe that they brought that back. A lot of people are saying, um, like, yeah, from the way it looks, but I'm just saying, like, so the reason why that's just... <laughs> with these sorts of movies, it's like, you can't go off the way it looks when you see it sparking off of bullets. Like, you just have to go, okay, I guess yeah. it can't be leather then. <laughs> Um, That's well, so the, the, uh, the, the big re reveal in this scene is 20 years ago, I wrote this, I actually wrote a lot of stuff down, but <laughs> I've just been, mm. uh, I'm just going to read it verbatim. 20 years ago, when Thomas Wayne was running for mayor, um, uh, a journalist had uncovered 
some dark history about the Waynes and the Arkhams, the two founding families of Gotham. Uh, when Martha was uh, <laughs> when Martha was young. <laughs> So now I just had a meme show up, and now I'm distracted. <laughs> the meme is, the meme is good. I'm trying to talk about this movie. I, we we, oh, we really are listening. It's just the meme pops up, and it's funny. Um, it didn't, it didn't <laughs> Please do your best to continue. Okay, so um, when Martha was young, uh, her mother had like a psychotic break and killed uh committed murder suicide killed uh, her dad and then killed herself um but the arkhams covered it up uh because they're a big prestigious family and then we find out that martha had uh she's she's had uh, mental health issues that she's had to deal with for her whole life being in and out of uh institutions and um the journalist had uncovered it and was going to be reporting on it um thomas wayne uh now this is what this is what is presented by the riddler uh, Thomas Wayne went to his old associate Falcone and had the journalist killed to cover it up, um, yeah. to cover up that that happened. Um, and then, of course, shortly thereafter, Thomas and uh, Martha were killed. Um, so it's like, yeah, there's the legacy of the Waynes, and Bruce, you got to pay for that. Um, that feels a bit unfair to Bruce. That's your but, fault, Bruce. But, uh, it does, but, uh, yeah, it does feel like a breach of ethics. But, uh, but carry on. Damn, an interesting revelation. We don't typically have that as a as a thing that's that is odd. That yeah, maybe it's, Thomas yeah. Wayne is like a, not yeah. a particularly great Dip, guy. Yeah, uh, and that Martha is unstable. It's like, damn, we don't we don't typically get that. And um, I feel like this is one of because we haven't talked we we've talked about it briefly. I think Robert Patterson was really fucking great in this role. Oh, I think fuck that uh, yes. uh, there were so many strong examples of very subtle changes in in his uh, emotions. Um, coming through in terms of the performance, like it's 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 really strong. Like as I'm watching, even it, under the yeah, hood, it, yeah, even under. Well, mm -hmm. so the scene I'm thinking about specifically with under the hood is later on when he's talking to the Riddler. But we'll get to that. I think that's like the strongest example of the 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 amount that you can achieve even with the hood on. But it, it, yeah, his performance is great. Um, oh, apparently this was done in Telltale's Batman game. I haven't played it, so I don't. I, I that's didn't... what I, I knew it was ringing a bell that's where okay okay yeah okay right mm. um okay Wait. now okay now i talked about this with more and rags last night i want to put it forth oh. uh something that i'm not sure what i think about it as an observation but i think it's worth talking about i'm posing this as a question okay hey Put down the pitchfork. I'm just, I'm just making that clear because no. I don't want people to get mad at me for raising this question. Um, I feel safe and with my pitchfork. Jumping to conclusion <laughs> about what I think about it is. Hey, is a, can, can I? Uh, right. So, is it a coincidence? You said we could interrupt you whenever we wanted. Good. Not right <laughs> now. I'm trying to ask my fucking question. All right. Fringy built um, his nest with lies. Is. <laughs> No more lies. No more lies. Also bad. No for more right lies now. for you. <laughs> <laughs> no more lies. For you. Uh, <laughs> that's appropriate. Is it a coincidence that Bruce Wayne and Batman are the same person? You're gonna have to explain yourself because everyone in chat's about to say what? I'm gonna have this to. Is, yeah, this. I, is I, odd I, yeah. <laughs> so, that, I, I actually, I actually put it put it forth as more of a yeah. So, so this is this is what I wrote down when I was thinking about it. Um, is it a coincidence that Bruce, ju who just so happens to be Batman, is directly connected to the conspiracy that he is currently investigating? Think of it this way. From the world's perspective, is there any reason for anybody in the world to think that Bruce Wayne is Batman? Now, we know what the answer is, because the Riddler doesn't think he is. It's no. Batman could be anybody. Um, and the Riddler has got Batman participating with him in an investigation that ties to Bruce Wayne in some way. Is that a coincidence that, like, the conspiracy that the Riddler is obsessed with and trying to uncover just so happens to be a conspiracy that is directly tethered to Bruce, who is Batman? Do you, do you get what I mean when I say that? Yes. Yeah, I'd say that's a coincidence. I understand it. Yeah. Yeah, I think it is yeah. a coincidence, yeah. This is, this is an interesting question that I don't feel is, like, ever asked. Yeah. It's, it doesn't even... This is almost, like, 
sub meta. It's Dude, a very it's, weird question. You don't want so to fly. Again, to but address the chat, one. I didn't say that it was bad. I am I am simply exploring this <laughs> avenue. Yeah. Chat, this is why I brought it up. Take it easy, okay, Calm chat? Down. Take it easy. Yeah. <laughs> you're gonna have to. You're gonna I, have I, know to know that, I know that the angriest people in chat are just gonna be there going, "A coincidence that Bruce Wayne is Batman?" What? Yeah, but he I, has to be. Yeah, Bruce Wayne is always Batman. I will say, I yeah. made a mistake by presenting it that way because now I feel like it's tarnished the fucking no, I, I, No, I, I think. The question is, is I think it, you asked it fairly. Um, <laughs> it's just an odd question that isn't asked much. But I think it's a totally fair question. Well, we don't have to ask it much to explore. We don't have to ask it much because typically, so bad. Oh, man, thanks. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, typically Batman <laughs> oh, and okay. Bruce Wayne's involvement in cases and in adventures isn't linked in this kind of way, where it's yeah. extremely convenient what, that um, the person what, who is Batman doing all these things what can often... also is Bruce Wayne. Take Dark Knight, for example, yeah. I think, where he, Bruce, uses his position to get involved in business with Lau, right? Even though his main well, thing with that is getting information that can help him as Batman capture Lau, which I think makes a lot more sense than this being like... What I wanted to bring up is this is similar to the one where people are just like, wait, what? You, I, We never think about this, which is like, is it a coincidence... The Green Goblin, Doc Ock, Sandman, and all these people, they all happen in the same city that Spider-Man is in. Like, I think that is a much more overt, ex and all of them have a personal relationship with with Peter Parker. Right. I think, I think that yeah, is a that more is overt. Yeah, that is the big one, yeah. Well, so that would be, to me, a more overt example of what I'm thinking about here, because typically, typically, Bruce Wayne is not, like, directly connected to... Like, Bruce Wayne as an independent entity from Batman is rarely directly connected to, like, what is currently being investigated. But in this story, it kind of is, if you get what I mean. Like, the, the Bruce Wayne element of his connection to the conspiracy has nothing to do with Batman specifically. But Batman is investigating it as an entity. Um, I like guess it's um, just, I'm not sure what it's I think unique, that what, for sure. This summary of, of what you've said is, like... A rich and corrupt family have ties to corruption in a city, and also the scion of the family is, like, nuts enough to be involved in the city. That's not a coincidence. It's like, nuts- The scion of the family is nuts enough to be involved in the city is your way of representing he became Batman. That's really <laughs> interesting in as a framing. City. He's Batman involved is in involved city. in the involved city involved in the same way that everyone in the city is involved <laughs> with the city. Yeah. It's always just- it's always a fun game to hear when people make those kinds of arguments. The amount of removal from the original thing that is actually happening, they have to do for, to make their little description of it that makes the argument sound yeah. stupid. Well, I, How about instead of being, being irrationally being hostile off the bat, the you actually engage with this hype? This where, where is the breaking point for when it becomes too convenient to the point of a contrivance? The link between a superhero and their their unsuperhero self between well, yeah, a person and their alter ego we know why the decision was made it's more potent for drama um it's it's you you can tap into that more personal side of his life to uh to explore something interesting that's like that's why you do it i guess it's just it was something i was thinking about because batman being bruce wayne affords him access to information that batman would either have a much harder time getting or wouldn't have um that's interesting. Yeah, it's it's just it's just something I was thinking about um, when I was when I was thinking about the movie a bit. I will warn you um, though, as a result of this, anybody who doesn't like us will say Efap said it's coincidental that Batman is Bruce Wayne. I mean, if the, like uh, that, th that would be because <laughs> that's a silly that, way to phrase the question. <laughs> that. <laughs> I'm this actually, is, I'm, I'm a little bit annoyed now thinking about it. Like, that's going to really <laughs> frustrate me if that's actually the takeaway, just because I asked the question like that. Now, I'm it at, is I the mean, I, test. To be fair, I, like, I, I, you shouldn't uh, have said it's horribly written because of this. That's something you shouldn't have said. I, you did say it. Yeah, yeah because that because that is definitely something <laughs> that I said. You did say this is an objective flaw, right? Yep. <laughs> I, that, was, that was certainly something I said. I didn't overqualify the hell out of this question. With, yeah. <laughs> with so when, many, with so it, many it did seem on when Fringy called Bruce Wayne a white privileged asshole. Hmm. <laughs> I didn't think that was relevant, but it did seem yeah. a little out of you know, like out of yeah, nowhere. Gone a bit woke, I think. It's absolutely the right takeaway. The reason why I bring it up is just because it's something I was thinking about. 
in terms of the connection between these two from the Riddler's perspective. That's what kind of made me think about this as a question. Um, the Riddler likes Batman and he doesn't like Bruce Wayne. And it's interesting to me that he wants the Batman to investigate a case that directly ties to Bruce Wayne when from his perspective and the world's perspective, Batman and Bruce are not only not one and the same, but you wouldn't necessarily have any reason to believe that they are one and the same. I just find that interesting to think about. That's all. I think it's that also there is thematic sorry, value to this connection at the very least, though, that you could argue Riddler and Batman were created as as victims of this big event related to the the fund and the all the corruption involved. Yeah, in stuff. right. That would be the that would be the counter argument that you would propose that it's like, well, Batman is a consequence of this. I guess it's that Batman is one potential consequence, but there could have been other ones too. And from the world's perspective, the Batman wasn't the consequence of that. The, the world has no idea. We know that because we're following Bruce's story. Um, but the, you know, the Riddler doesn't necessarily know that because it's been many, many years removed. Um, it's. I, I think that's to, to make the point clear. There's like no. It, it's not that it doesn't make sense that Bruce would become Batman. And similarly, that there would be a connection between Bruce and the Renewal Fund. It's just, I guess, interesting to think about the dichotomy in terms of that these are two entities in the world uh, from the perspective of the world. Yeah. Very well. Just the thought, that's all. I, I don't know why I, I like it. It's a good Mull thought. it over. Try not yeah. to kill Fringy in your dreams or anything, anyone. I What's that, sorry? Well, if I may add something to it, um, I think um, the fact that this is the first entry in this universe and the fact that it, it, it I think there's, there's something to be said about the fact that it doesn't feel as much like if this was like a television show and this was one story out of many that didn't have that connection, it would almost come up almost like the law of averages that eventually he would come across a case like this. But because this is the first case we're seeing in this universe, it does highlight the coincidence a lot more here. Yeah, uh, it's not yeah. the only factor in this, but it does make the, the the world feel a little small in terms of how many players there actually are. You know, mm. everything being tied together. Indeedy. What's next, Fringy? <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, so. We uh the what's next is uh Bruce decides he's gonna go talk to Falcone um to try and get some answers from him. As Bruce. Uh, about what happened. As Bruce, yeah. yeah. As Bruce Wayne. Oh, real quick, um, I just wanted to plant a seed. Uh, I think this will be more important later, but how does the Riddler know all of this? Um, so there is there is a line later on that um is is that is the best that we're gonna get as an explanation. Maybe I'll jump. Right. It's it's the No, we'll save it. We'll save it. Okay, yeah, sure. Um so he goes to talk to Falcone uh and a, what Falcone tells him is that the the information he adds on top of this revelation is that Maroney uh had was paying the journalist. The journalist was in Maroney's pocket, the old if you don't remember again, the old mob boss. Uh and then he gives the implication that it was actually Maroney who I uh, had Thomas killed because he wasn't in his pocket. Like he, he didn't have him as a somebody that he uh, could be in charge of the city. Um, this is something that Bruce accepts to be true because that what comes next is he confronts Alfred in hospital with uh, this piece of information. Um, does someone else have any thoughts about this scene overall? I know that someone has a lot of thoughts on this scene. I have thoughts on this scene. <laughs> um, yeah, go oh, for you, it. you go ahead with your thoughts. I want to hear you. I'm going to go ahead with my thoughts. So, uh, this is the most we get, I'd say, for Bruce and Alfred. This is the big uh, Bruce and Alfred scene. And uh, when I saw Alfred waking up, and he looks over and sees Bruce is waiting there for him, and he smiles... My my heart melted a little. I was like, "Oh, <laughs> that's yeah. nice." And then Bruce is like, "You're a fucking liar." He's like, "Yeah, what?" Well, 
And well, I was like, back into my oh, corner. no. And it's not because it's uh, bad writing in any way, shape, or form. It just means that it's definitive. There is a direction this film has decided to go with these two that wasn't my preference, but hey, that's fine. Him saying you're a liar means that he's taken what Falcone has said to be true uh, over whatever yeah. Alfred has to say. Now, you could be like, well, that's not true, because once the scene ends, it's like, no, 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 I mean before he gets at Alfred's take. And that's what I took from this subtextually. I was like, that sucks that their relationship is like this. I was expecting the conversation to go like, you know, how you feeling? And then we have a back and forth, just making sure you're okay, telling him he was really fucking worried. And then maybe a bit of a silence, and then him just asking the question, did my dad have someone killed? Or like, more specific than that. And you can just see Alfred's face drop. And then he'd be like, I was hoping that you know, we'd never have to talk about this. Or something like that. And then he can explain it, and we can get it through. Instead, we have him just outright being like, my dad's an asshole, and you're an asshole for lying to me about it. And it's like, dude, all you've got to go off, Falcone's word, but that's how little Alfred apparently means to you, that you're willing to believe all of this just on a whim. The evil crime boss, yeah. Uh, so it was sad for me to see that. Um, but I enjoyed the scene, and I very much liked that it ended with them uh, holding hands. E. As gay as that is. Very. I don't like how quickly he believed Falcone's... And then flipped back. Yeah, after getting Alfred's it, it perspective, just... you know? It's like, why would you... You have to get that yeah. first, right? And yeah. Alfred's, like, pissed at him during this conversation. I enjoyed it, because I was like, you should have a bit of a, like, what the fuck, man? Like, yeah, your, yeah. your dad was a good person. What the fuck do you even know, <laughs> like, about your dad? Oh, yeah, he definitely killed someone, huh? Is that what you know? Like, ooh. Yeah, I was getting a little annoyed on Alfred's behalf in-universe, if that makes sense. No, I understand what you mean. I like the scene a lot. Um, it, it is, it, I would say it's, like, the main feels moment in the film. Yeah. Um, something I really liked um was um that the scene ha keeps the nature of the wayne's death ambiguous so alfred says it could have been because falcone um got someone to knock them off or it could have just been some desperate mugger um happened mm -hmm. to um happened to kill them and i think I, I like it from kind of two points of view one is the adaptational point of view in the sense that writers can't seem to agree in the comics a lot of the time if the Wayne's death was just a senseless tragedy or if it was part of a larger conspiracy. So this kind of rides the line of saying, look, it could be one or the other, depending on what your what your preference is. For me, I prefer it more to be a senseless tragedy. Um, but from a thematic point of view, um, it, it what it emphasize it kind of emphasizes um, something larger um, in the film, and that is um, it is part of Bruce learning to get over the vengeance Thing because um, by emphasizing that um, the person who killed the Waynes, like the cause of the Waynes um, murder, whether that is um, a single individual or the larger society as a whole, um, that's not the important part. The important part is that Bruce needs to protect other people from um, be uh, from experiencing those future tragedies rather than focusing so much of his energy um on avenging his own and i think later in the film that's kind of the conclusion that he starts to come towards um especially in the, some of those final moments yeah i think that's about right yeah mm -hmm. oh i guess uh to clarify what we learn in this scene uh alfred says thomas in a moment of weakness, he did go to Falcone. He didn't know he was going to kill him, though. He probably should have. He like it was a mistake on his part to not realize that Falcone would do something like that, so that he'd have leverage over him. Um, but right. he intended to report it to the police immediately after he found out. But and that was the night that they died. And something I do yeah. like that is added is, oh, do, do, so Falcone killed him. It's like, well, actually, I don't know. I can't know. Maybe it was just some robbers. Who knows? Yeah, and the Alfred you know, basically says, I like, like it's tore him up that he never got to know the answer. Yeah, he never knew. But sometimes yeah. you just don't get the answer. I appreciate that as a <clears throat> storytelling choice. As do I. I think it's neat. And then uh, it's uh, Bruce, yeah, he talks about how it's like, this was a moment that reminded him of 
he's not afraid of like dying but he is afraid of losing people it's just like a reminder of um i guess the different types of fear that someone can have and uh a part of himself that he had forgotten um you know as a uh a part of himself that he for forgot another meme <laughs> <laughs> they just keep coming through and they don't stop coming Ugh. the calm never stops thank goodness yeah. um uh uh that was that was about that and then um they see that the bat signal is up in the sky uh he heads over there and uh selena has captured the off-duty cop we can pause um, so oh uh, sure i uh talked to rags about this for, for a decent while actually because i was just talking about the nature of the bat signal in relation to batman and all the adaptations and stuff so the fact that it is not on the top of the the police station and that it is instead in some kind of uh, scaffold-laden skyscraper that's not quite complete uh, means to me that it is, you know... So so you have pieces of information here, right? There's got to be a lot of people who don't like Batman, and they know that the signal is relates to him, especially the people in the station that connect the mob and stuff. And you know that there's this one guy who activates the light all the time, and so, like, if you follow him, you'll find the location where they always have their meats pretty easily, and you can manipulate the light, be it destroy it or use it to, to call out Batman mm. whenever you want. And so when I saw... Yeah. Um, I thought maybe there'd be some level of security or some super level of secrecy. What kind of threw me off was, like, the scene begins, and it's like, wait, you didn't do the light? No? Did you? No? And I was like, whoa, anybody can just walk up there and turn the light on? Like, oh, yeah. damn. <laughs> and of course, mm -hmm. like... What Selena okay. did, she just walked up there and turned it on. And I thought that was interesting as well, because she's got a cop there that she's torturing. Like, man, if anybody else would have just be curious enough and turn up, and, um, I don't know. I, um, it, I had to take a call. I assume you're talking about the bat signal now? Yeah, it's a very, it's a big curiosity to me. My brain didn't, it didn't quite, um, yeah. sit well. It seems like it could be easily used to just create an ambush or whatever. Yeah. yeah. They've got no man, system for this, man and, and they're surprised. Batman, geez. They're That's like, oh good. man, someone turned the light on that wasn't us two. And I'm just like, you never thought that would might happen someday? With how it's just there, <laughs> and anyone can use it? And if anyone followed Gordon from the station, or his house, or anything ever, then they would find a location pretty easily? Yeah. And the fact that you can just follow the fucking light to find it? <laughs> There's a reason why it's it's advantage it's it's often as to my understanding it's often portrayed as being on top of the police station, yeah. which implies that to a degree the police will work with Batman, and also it doesn't mean every random Tom Dick and Harry can just access it at their leisure. There is a um, you know, it's got some level of protection, but here it's just seems to be fair game for everyone, and people would be all over that shit. I wouldn't oh, yeah. be surprised if your average yeah. man was just like, if I follow that light, I think it's not a skyscraper, and you go up there and just wait, and you, you know, and you're just like, oh shit, Batman. Fuck crazy, man. Like, you could just pay it to anyone. It's so easy to do. <laughs> Meanwhile, yeah. crazy, if it's on top of a police station, you ain't getting in the police station, so fuck off. Yep. I mean, surely there's, there's, built, there's security on the building. I thought the implication was that Catwoman climbed up there because that's a skill that she has. I don't, I don't no, think there's any security. Um, Where was I the think... security on the building? As far as we know, it's well, like, just a lift you can't that just you go walk in it into and walk well. up. I don't see them unlocked. Well, there's anything. a lift. So, like, it's, it will be locked like a building, but the, she's the Catwoman, so she got in anyway. Like, I assume that there would be at least be a lock on the building. Yeah, like well, with and... the policeman on her back. Well, it's not even. It's not even like an in the building. It's all outdoors. It's a construction oh, yeah, site. Just, there's like, not even like a. Engine. And to be fair, I don't mm. think a lock is going to stop many people who really want to get up there. No, it's like one lock like, separates me from the bat signal. Riddle me this, lock man. Then what has a lock but won't stop me? <laughs> this, <laughs> door. <laughs> this door. <laughs> this door is. A lot of other Batman stories don't have this problem because the the light is on the roof of like GCPD. Yeah. 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 The secure location. It it's just something I never had to think about before because all the other adaptations usually have it secure on the on the building. Yeah. Um. But this one doesn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. In any case, up there they find yeah, Selena's captured the. Oh uh, wait, well, actually, is it is this bat signal? Is it worse than the Batwoman bat signal? 
Um, I've always wondered about bat signals. Has there been like a Mythbusters or, or whatever on this to test out how it would actually work? Because you can't. No, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. Yeah, I figured it wouldn't work. That's all. It would probably have to be much larger <laughs> for it to to function. Um. Yeah. So she says. Well, so like. <laughs> you can't just you can't just like shine a spotlight into the clouds like e I even that and like so if what if there's fog, no clouds it, on that day and then it relies yeah it relies on very there, low it wouldn't clouds. have the bat shape perfect in it like it, yeah it has to be a lot bigger to get you could, do it, like a, to get you could it. potentially do it with a projector in the perfect weather conditions but they don't use a projector well, even with the yeah, it, weather it makes conditions, more um, sense to shine it on a building. Wouldn't the bat symbol yeah. itself be all like blurred and fucked because of the distance of the light and how it would change as it goes? Like, I, I guess one yes. someone explained this to me, and I was like, oh, I think so. Yeah, because in theory, right? If light was if light was more accurate, should we say that every plane in the sky would be casting a plane sized shadow on the ground? But, of course, because light is constantly bouncing around the atmosphere and things like that, that shadow is going to get blurrier and blurrier and blurrier mm. as it goes up until it just disappears. Yeah. Whereas when it's on the tarmac, it is casting in the air or whatever the word is. is it, hang on. Def, defum, defum thinging. Def, diff something. -ing. Are you thinking of Defacing? diffusion? No. Diffusion, that's the one. Diffusion <laughs> is when, uh, yeah, it, it, sort of, I think, yeah, because that's just when things spread out, when things are diffused. Well, because I'm fairly... Out. I, I've been I told so, yeah. that this um, this effect doesn't happen in no atmosphere, and that if you had a plane in no atphere, uh, it would fall to the ground. Yeah, I would imagine. Die. No, yeah, in would, no um... atmosphere, because the <laughs> atmosphere is what causes it to diffuse. It bounces <laughs> off of the the atmosphere particles. Yeah. Also, as light moves away from its source, it falls off exponentially. The inverse square law. So, like, it doesn't work for a whole multitude of reasons. Very well. Um, but if there was I, no I'm atmosphere, really, I, I, think I it would don't cast like when gritty. Shadows. I don't like when gritty adaptations of like I. You know what? When it's like some stupid fucking sci-fi everything adaptation of Batman, sure have the bat signal. But in this one, it's like hmm, you guys like know how like that's stupid in every way, right? It makes you wonder if there's the, a way the to. Work I don't think that. they. I don't think they necessarily know that. I wonder if there's a way to update Surely it totally they do to make it more. Um, Grounded, dare I say? Well, I'm not sure. What What's the way to make it more grounded? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, like maybe to like shine it on the a building. building or something. Yeah, shine the building. On a building. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that could be. Yeah. It. Yeah. Um. And I there is a part of this movie where I was like, oh, this is trying to be realistic, but that's really not realistic at all, and it's actually really silly, and it took me out of it. But we'll get to that when we get to that because it wasn't. Wait, sorry, we're not to that point yet. No, we're not to that point yet. Um, well, no, the, the point that we're up to is, uh, that Selena has gotten the, uh, off-duty cop who was involved, the, the guy who was at the, uh, the drug place as well, um, they had Selena's phone, uh, on which a voicemail left, a message was left by Annika. The voicemail reveals that she got picked up, brought to Falcone, uh, he, he had had asked for, uh, the man to take her passport. And she's like, what, what, what the, uh, what, what did he tell you? You know, I know he likes to talk. What did he tell you? Uh, and basically, she just admits that she knew that he was the, uh, that Falcone was the informant. Falcone is the rat. Um, I guess there are a few question marks here. Um, so they did go get Selena's phone, but why didn't they delete the voicemail if they got it? And they, and the reason why they got it was because they were aware of the phone oh. call. When you brought that why up... Why didn't they destroy wait, it and wait, drop wait, it in the wait, lava? Wait. No, sorry. I'm totally lost now. If they took <laughs> her phone when they went to abduct her, why would she call Selena's phone? So I, Unless she... I, when you brought it up, huh. I, I was actually not sure where it was going to... Like, I was so confused when you said they took her phone from the apartment because I was like, wait, but... But how does... But... Does so, Selena get it? Is I just, I, I was actually just gonna, or... I'm gonna sit out of this one. I don't understand what's happening with the phones of this film. I don't know if you guys can I... explain it. So, so I, I think, I think what's happening, they, they go to raid their apartment, get An Annika, and for some reason, Selena's phone, right? Well, I think that's so the they, idea, because yeah. if Selena recovers her phone from, um, from the cop, unless I'm mistaken. Yeah, um, which was off screen. 
before so we get typing here. out in big text it's a voicemail we know that yeah, we're trying to yeah, figure man out man who the in caps lock call. says something we've already said thank you uh we're figuring thank something you. else out you you just you wait there give us a sec folks. okay and turn caps lock off so, <laughs> so yeah. wait, I, I guess oh. <laughs> we are i guess <laughs> to, to just dial it down so annika gets her phone that she has access to uh, even though she's been abducted violently from the house, to call Selena, and it goes to voicemail. Um, so the question would be, I guess, how which, was she able to make this call? Which would just, be the first question. Just to clarify, so when she calls that phone, it is currently in the possession of the cop. Yes. I think, unless I, I am so. deeply mistaken <laughs> on uh, on how the phone... Because like, otherwise, well, I because don't we, we, do, we don't know who if the cop was raiding the, uh, or, or going into the house getting her. Well, we don't so know that, the thing right? Is, is, um, I, I think I think we're overcomplicating it. If Selena had her phone, she would have answered the phone and heard all of this. But she mm -hmm. never had. She was oblivious to all of this, so she didn't have her phone. Which is um, yeah. So we got that in stone, right? Like this, the phone was taken from the apartment. So the first. And foremost thing is, why wasn't it destroyed immediately? Um, That's my yeah. first thought, is if you're him, that phone is getting dropped in a bucket of lava. It is being destroyed. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> out of, I'm, it, I'm just gonna fucking... I, I wanna, Boba Fett needs to shoot a, rock, a, a rocket at this thing to vaporize it so there's nothing left. Is EFAP serious right now? Yes. <laughs> Yes, like legitimately, if you can actually explain this to us, well, uh, you, I would really can appreciate you specifically that. specifically give us an alternative explanation because I'm not sure what the other one would be right now. Yeah, I, I would legitimately like to know because I was confused by this, uh, this, this, this phone thing and the fact that there is a message that exists and can be retrieved and is used in this way. When what was... if the convo was in the apartment before they took her? Wouldn't they have heard Selena's phone ringing then from in the apartment? Selena couldn't yeah, have had her phone when she went to the club. Yeah, that would definitely make it worse. Um, mm. I am waiting, though, for the... Yeah, I'm, I'm waiting. Just... Christ, you guys are pedantic. I don't know if you're talking about chat or us. <laughs> but if it's us, well... I hope happen. they're talking about chat, because with us, like, this is, this is a very, very important thing. Yeah, in the no, movie. This is so important. I don't know yeah. why you this can't is... see how important this call is. We need to figure out how this call came to be and how they came to listen to it when they did. We need to know how and why. Yeah, so someone in chat said that she said that her phone, when her apartment was robbed, that it was taken or what? What else? If her phone, I don't understand how she could have her phone and only just now uncover this information. No, her phone was taken. So that's what I was saying. That's what she says after she sees after they right. get back to okay. the apartment. Okay. I'm Excellent. pretty sure that's what All she right. says. So he took the phone. Excellent. Yeah, so she's that's called. Great. We got that. Okay. Next step. Yeah. Uh, they take Next Annika step. to Falcone, and she uses her phone to call uh, Selena's. And then it goes to voicemail, yes. and so while this thing is happening with Falcone, all of it gets recorded. Now, already, why does Annika still have her phone? She shouldn't, if she's been captured. They should have taken that from her. Secondly, I guess they didn't notice that she'd started up a fucking voice call message, and then they didn't check her phone afterwards having done it. And then they didn't notice any notifications on Selena's phone, and they didn't destroy Selena's phone. Because remember, this is serious phone. enough. This, this is serious enough to strangle her on the spot. No questions asked. That's how serious this information is. Just her knowing this warrants her immediate death. She was Hanukkah making a call to Selena when call they burst in. Does, right. So, no, she's brought to Falcone. No, she, she was brought to Falcone. That's when she has her phone, so it wouldn't have been when they broke in. Thought they killed this her in her apartment? Bad. I assume they didn't kill her there. Well, why would they have the line that Falcone doesn't leave the place if he leaves it regularly to go to like <laughs> dingy apartments and and, and we uh, still and have Gotham? Yeah, go get her go get her and bring her here. It it just it, it might have just been whenever yeah, it, it could be that they brought her 
in or she just while she was working, they questioned her and killed her. And then afterwards, they went to the apartment to be like, what did she do? Did she tell anybody? Did she send any notes? Did she? So they went to the apartment to ter- trash the place and look for her because you didn't you don't need to trash the whole place if you're just bringing her in. To my understanding, though, perhaps I'm mistaken, but that was my read of it. I think I think we've covered the problem. Um, and it's it's about threefold. Yes. There's at least three significant things here that shouldn't have happened that had to happen to make this happen. Um, yeah. And like I'm reading most of chat, and it does seem like most people are like maybe this happened, and maybe that. And it's just like yeah, we haven't got much to work with. I, I don't mean from chat. I mean from the movie. Like there's not much to work with to figure out how this all happened the way it did. But obviously the goals of the movie were that we couldn't have Selena know this stuff yet. We needed to wait until a bit later. And so she has to get the phone And the back. delivery mechanism for that info was very poorly done. Con- especially, especially considering how insanely important this is. Um, it needs to be... This would have been where a... Like, maybe very early on we, s- like, set up a phone or something. Because it just sort of comes out of the blue. Like, oh, turns out this was all recorded. And here's the phone that did it. And did, luckily it still exists. Did they and already go it. over Batman go. getting a ton of civilians killed in a pointless car chase? That may have been covered. Yes, we did! <laughs> we did! <laughs> that was great. Oh, yeah, we did. <laughs> um, yeah, we can probably move on then. Yeah. Um, well, sorry, Very she... contrived. Yes, I would say so. Um, Teeny bit. The, uh, the, uh, like, Selena is resolved. It's like, I'm going to kill, uh, Falcone and this guy. And Bruce is like, no, we're not, we're not doing that. Like, that's not. So this is kind of an interesting thought that it's like that he does have the no kill rule. It ain't a huge part of this film though, by comparison to other Batman films. Like we don't, we don't talk about it much in the, in the story. Um, it's much yeah, more about the way that he, two yeah. parts where, where there's reference like this one and in the orphanage, I think. No, um, when he says and, no and, weapons. And, and there's a little mm. bit of a thematic. There's a little bit of a payoff t- for it towards the end when he starts beating that guy, and um, Gordon has to hold him back. It's not really right. spoken, but it is supposed to be like he's about he's about to go over the edge, but the people around him um, mm-hmm. can help him bring him back from that line, which is kind of part of his larger arc of um, maturing and opening himself back up to others and all that good stuff. Yes, it does play a role in the final fight scene. Like the the gunmen are on harnesses. I'm getting ahead of myself, but it seems like they're on harnesses only such that he won't kill them by throwing them off the jumbo truck. I was hoping to make that point, but oh well. (laughs) Oh no, sorry. (laughs) I'm I'm jumping ahead. You have to apologize. This is totally fine. No, totally fine. Yeah. Um. Uh. Sorry, I'm just reading it now. Um, did these guys watch the movie? These guys are lacking knowledge on the film. We're calling it a plot hole. Can you specifically, again... I would love to know. So one of the funny things that guy said... <laughs> you're you're that, wrong. Um, Doesn't elaborate, Lee. One, of, one <laughs> of the funniest things that guy said in relation to that whole conversation was Falcone didn't know she made that call. Uh, like, our yeah, whole issue that. was that. <laughs> like, yeah. that's, the, that's problem, the problem, my dude. Yeah. They didn't know, and then they did, and then they didn't do anything about it. And why does I that explain why she still it. got to keep her phone and make these phone calls? They took Selena's phone. They were smart enough to take that, but they didn't investigate whether or not any outgoing. Why would that not be like? Would you not it's just not the out first of thing you do? if you yeah. find her phone on her, just start checking her contacts? Maybe you need to chase these people down. Has she called the police? Who has she called? I think it is po- totally reasonable that like a mob boss would want to look into these things. Um, yeah, uh, but I mean, anyway, uh, yeah, she, uh, pressing on. She she uh, she kicks the guy off, which is uh, now I guess we'll talk about this shortly. So she kicks the guy off. Batman and Gordon save him, uh, and she runs off to go kill Falcone. Uh, and then Bruce is like, all right, you deal with this guy. I'll go stop her. Um, because she, if, if she kills him, we we probably lose our connection to Riddler. And um, she's obviously going to get herself in serious trouble. I, uh, um, 
want to mention, yeah. right, that we had the DA earlier in the film who basically said, like, I am not going to name the rat because he will not only kill me, he'll kill my fucking everyone. Oh, yeah, love. sorry, we jumped um, the gun there. Yeah, this guy is very talkative. This guy tells them oh, everything yeah, they could ever want to know, and I was really surprised with that. Oh, sorry, it. yeah. Um, sorry, I, I forgot. This is impo I, it, it's, it's important to understand. Yeah, we, we, I jumped the gun a bit. So just to make it like crystal clear what the central conspiracy is, um, t uh, there were two major crime organizations, Moroni and Falcone. Um, when Thomas Wayne was running for mayor, he set up the renewal fund. But uh, after he was killed, all of the corrupt elements within Gotham competed to gain control over the renewal fund. It's like a billion dollars, not much oversight, just super useful. Um, and in order to acquire that, because he was competing against Moroni, Falcone uh, basically... He informed the police of uh, his operation and a bunch of information on it. That led to the major drug bust, but nothing changed. Like Maroney basically, uh, sorry, Falcone consolidated uh, control over the city. He's got all of the, uh, like the, he's got like the mayor, the DA, a bunch of cops, including the commissioner. He had them all on his, on his payroll, in part financed by the money he got from the renewal fund. He is essentially the mayor. That's that's what we find out. That is the mystery unraveled, essentially, uh, at least in terms of the conspiracy. Mm -hmm. Um, just and, and this is all told to them. A lot of it, anyway. <laughs> Very abused by this. Uh, Annika wasn't abduct abducted. She went to Falcone because she wanted protection after the photos of her with the mayor were released. She made the call before Falcone came into the room. So what they're saying is, she made the call when speaking to Falcone. Then she went home, and that's when a bunch of people came in. I think this person may have forgotten she dies on the phone call. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. Sure, I'm not sure this person She screams uh, as she's being second. strangled to death. Like, I, I don't think she goes home after that. Also, well, I guess, <laughs> well she goes home. Manner speaking, <laughs> manner she did not go there. With, uh, she went there against her wishes, pretty evidently. I don't, well, yeah, that's because that, maybe that's where my confusion is because I thought that because she works there, right? Well, she was, they're, so, they're trying to steal money, remember, from Falcone's operation. They're working together to try and steal money. So if, so if Anna, uh, Annika, and Annika? Yes. yes. Annika? Yeah, Annika. Annika. If, Annika. Annika. Annika works there. They could have just brought her into the office while she was working and then killed her there. And then gone to the apartment, and they trashed it looking for anything that she might have copied, written down, sent, just to go there. I that's what I that's what I pulled from it. Not that she was violently abducted from her home when she was working there anyway. Um, I, I guess it doesn't really matter. It's just um, I, either way, there's problems that we're dealing with just by virtue of the 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 phone call and the fact that they took the phones. I feel like that's like actually really hurts it. Um, but I, either either way, you would think that they would be thorough <laughs> enough that they'd be checking these things. But yeah, and someone had mentioned that the the voicemail was stored on the network. Um, whatever. What, that, what about like... Selena's phone getting taken though? Oh Still. yeah. I, so I would argue that's another problem for the film. She could access her voicemails without the phone from other things. Yeah. yeah. The film doesn't really um, acknowledge that. I don't think because it treats it as though she has to thing... get the phone to get the voicemails. And I, I guess this is a point where it's you got to think about how important this is. This is like this is a substantial plot element resolved because of this phone like um it's huge how much stems from that i and i like to think that we collectively as a group are pretty smart when it comes to getting info from movies and stuff oh, and the fact i just, that we I just have appeal this level to that of we confusion have seven is, sets of ears and it seems like we can't we are really struggling to like that's out what i'm what, saying yeah yeah that's yeah. what i'm saying i'm like we we there is enough like we we are all we all seem to be a bit confused about this or cert we're not certain and i feel like with something this important in the movie it should be very much either super set up or oh, sorry i got a phone call terrible timing i can hear it <laughs> mm -hmm. beep, 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 beep. Um, I mean, I guess the points come across, but uh, yeah. So now it's a race against time to stop Selena from uh, from killing Falcone. Oh, now just, I guess on on that uh, point though, yeah, I, to end it, the it. um the yeah we've got 
everyone here has been talking about this point, and I'm we're more than ready for someone to be like, "Oh, you guys missed the part where they said blah 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 blah." I'm be like, "Oh, okay." I totally, um, of course. If there's, if there's any information that makes this film better, I will happily accept uh, accept those. Um, and yeah, and, and of course, I've been reading everything from chat just to see if there's stuff that we can catch. Unfortunately, you gotta we gotta do both things, right? We can't just accept any information that might work. It's is we gotta sift through and find the ones that are accurate were there and, and, and answer the these questions. Yeah. The other thing I wanted to say was I felt it was a little awkward when she threatens to kill him with the gun and Batman pulls it down and is like, do not, like, don't become just as bad as him or something like that. She then slowly puts her leg in prep to mm. push it forward to kick him. Then she looks at Batman and says something and then she kicks him. I was like, dude, the second she lifted up her leg, Batman should be pulling her back. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So what do you think she's going to yeah. do? Like, oh, he's just putting a leg on him, like you do. <laughs> Chilling. <laughs> just getting close to the guess. touch <laughs> moments. <laughs> um, That's it, yeah. Go ahead. I, I have a question in terms of time scale. Um, can Bruce... Uh, like, when we think about how far Selena is from Bruce, does it quite line up how that, that Bruce can get there in time? Do you know what I mean? I know that to, he writes to, down to, the... So she, she's going straight to there. The guy, He's going straight there, right? This, this is going to be close. Well, so, so this, is, this is something... So they are both going straight there, I agree. But once they're inside, Selena has much easier access to Falcone than Batman does. She can go in and say, I need to speak to him and get in and talk to him. And then they have their conversation. Whereas Bruce needs to... He needs to he needs to undress as Batman, at least in part, like take off the mask or anything. He needs to slip in he needs to um, he needs to take off the eye disable makeup. The... Huh? What's that? <laughs> he needs to take off his eye makeup. He doesn't know. What do you he mean? doesn't. Does, well, he wears a hoodie. He doesn't take, he take off his off? eye makeup. Yeah, he's got a he's got his eye makeup on. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Sure. I, I was very confused there for a second. <laughs> he's he's definitely <laughs> got his eye makeup on still. Um, and then and then go in and then disable the power and then go down. Into the into the uh, the basement and then stop Selena. Like it feels like, it feels like it could work in terms of timing, but I wonder. Hmm. Well, she does. Doesn't she have a conversation with him at first? She which, does. You know, she does. does. Yeah. That's that's something that helps. Um, yeah. Well, it's it's kind of. I don't know if maybe that could be considered a bit of an issue in that <laughs> she. So if you remember the conversation, we see the tail end, I think, where she starts crying and he's like, let me get your tissue. And she's like, oh no, I have my own. And it's like, that's, the, mm -hmm. that's her way of setting up <laughs> reaching into the purse. But I'm just sitting here like, I don't think you needed to do that. You could literally have wanted to blow your nose. You didn't have to like set up the sob story and then cry. You could have just shot him. Well, once he was on yeah. his own, you could have pulled. Yeah, right. So I, I guess that's the concern that Batman's going to have is like, damn, by the time you get there, my man, like. <laughs> It might be well and truly too late, but I guess you got you know you got to try, right? There's nothing oh, you can I'm, do about that. I'm fine he with him trying. As as I think my, yeah. I, the, way, the way I would frame it is he should have been too late. I think. I I that's kind of what I'm thinking. That it's yeah. like the timing. It just seems like it's going to be harder for him to catch up to her than it is for her to do what she wants to do. Um, but it, it's not a, it's not a big deal. I don't think. Well, well, depends because. If he got killed down there, that may well have so screwed up everything. So I was actually going to bring this up. How does it affect Riddler <laughs> if John Turturro yeah. is killed there instead of outside? And that whole second act uh, to third act, yeah, because big break. Riddler has yeah. no reason to fire the rifle, no reason to get the apartment caught, no reason. To, so like, I don't know how that. I don't know what Riddler's plan is. From the, does he just give himself up because he's but, just like, oh, he's dead? Oh, yeah, I guess so. I guess yeah. Oh, and I guess uh, this is this is also probably a point to once again reiterate that like the story doesn't this this whole sequence and all of this and a lot of the information that Bruce has gotten doesn't happen without the Selena connection, or at least it would have to play out in a very different way, and that all stemmed from her coming into that room at exactly the right moment for them to meet. It's just uh, this would be the time to remind that of like how much stems from uh, from this. Oh, and also, they uh, while she's having the conversation, the 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 audio gets released to the press yes. at that uh, like around that time to just um, and then he's taking a look and he's distracted from the situation, which buys Batman a bit more time as well uh, to to get there. That was uh, that would have been released by Gordon, is it? Gordon, Gordon yeah. released it. Yeah, 
Um, By the way, playing that as well on the news, the scream. I was just like, damn, <laughs> yeah. dude. Yeah. Jesus. Edgy Gotham news. news. <laughs> they, they get to do whatever they want. Seriously. Yeah, all the <laughs> uh, news there, for sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, Bruce, Bruce sneaks in, he cuts the power, he gets in his bat suit, and then he goes down the elevator, and it's that really cool shot from the trailer where the flashing muzzles are illuminating the room, and you can see him taking down all of the yeah. bad guys. Um, getting hit with a tremendous amount of bullets, unfortunately, as well. But mm -hmm. it is very dark, and it's um, and I can imagine that like if it's really yeah. dark and you're only getting flashes, that you're not going to be aiming for like his mouth. You're you're going to yeah, be yeah, like, they, they, they can only see once they fired, and then exactly. they're dealing with recoil. This would be a question for Rags, but he's um fucking abandoned the podcast. He I'm has right that, now. Um, yeah. Yeah. The, uh, so. With the amount sparking off of his torso, I wonder how his face is doing. But... Right, if any of the bullets are reflecting into his yeah, face. You get, if, we're, if we're to believe this kind of armor is just making the bullets shatter on impact, it's just like... Man, shrapnel. Yeah, basically. Because um, we have to just believe that's his suit. His suit is magic at this point. Because um, the amount of the flurry of bullets that go onto it, it doesn't have an effect. He's like Iron Man. Uh, it's weird. Yeah. In that particular scene, which is yeah, interesting in, when um, yeah. the, the pistol bullets had more of an effect, would the would rifle, they'd be larger, right? They'd be higher caliber bullets, right? Or I'm pretty I... sure, yeah, they punch harder. As, 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 again, rags, we're... Ah. And they're all <laughs> firing, they're, they're using they're a fully the automatic weapon. Down, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. And like, it they're looks awesome. Ahead. And it looks great, yeah. If you were Iron Man, I'd probably be like the scene you want there. I guess is the uh, one where they're they're all missing because of how fucking terrified and confused they are with how he keeps moving around the mo the the room. Um, but instead yeah. he just tanks all the bullets, and it's like, okay, that was really cool. I just don't know. <laughs> you want you want one where he's using the grappling hook under cover of darkness to just completely get behind. You know, so they they have no idea how he's moving, because like they um, can't see. He moves very fast under cover of darkness. Like in the Arkham games, where you, you jump down, you beat someone up, you go back up, and then some other guard yeah. is near. It's like, oh my god, what the fuck? Oh, jeez. What happened? Well, yeah. Oh, god. No, 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 yeah. you forgot the part where you do the uh, gargoyle spam to make sure that they forget you exist. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. These, 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 like, counters There's to my position are very interesting, by the way. Are... It's Batman, dude. Lol. Like, okay. Well, yeah, so Batman that's... doesn't typically do this. So. Oh, so oh, okay. I, but, like, that's a fucking meme response. You seriously think I'm going to take that seriously to, like, defend the writings? Like, it's Batman. It's like, uh... <laughs> like, just like, um, sorry, <laughs> what, what, uh, what are, what, we, what are we supposed We're to talking about, that? uh... Um, so, Rags, Rags, you 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 know the up? things about guns. So, in what the hallway it? scene, the really cool hallway scene... It is very cool. Um, when Batman is getting shot with all of the rifles... That, um, now, hi, rifles would have higher caliber bullets than a pistol, right? Or By definition, wrong. essentially. Okay, so... What what would that mean in terms of the impact that he's going to suffer from those bullets? It's going to be uh, it's going to be hitting a lot harder. So you're going to have larger, well, not necessarily larger bullets, but they'll be moving at a much higher speed and will generally be imparting a lot more energy onto the target. Well, so um, that's that's a thought. So if you you're can, can, yeah, oh, if, go, if, if you got continue, Batman's yeah. armor, right? You get your plates of armor. You could get. You would much rather if you would much rather want to get shot by a by a pistol round because it's going to hit you less and part less force on you, less likely to to break it or to get through it. Um, and when you have that much, depending on the nature of his armor, so bullet the bullet doesn't disappear, right? Um, it will. It's going to spall out in different directions. Mm -hmm. Little pieces of shrapnel will go here and there. It's not. Often, it, especially if he's just has a smooth, um, like, so one thing I like about a suit is it has that little guard under his chin. Uh, like knights That's would have that V-shaped bit on their breastplates that would stop arrows from sliding up uh, if they hit the breastplate and hitting their, you know, necks and stuff like that. Um, so uh, it it just, there is an aspect of if you... I, I'm totally fine with the idea that he has special armor that stops bullets from getting through, but it's still 
Like it's like getting punched really hard, especially if it's an automatic weapon and that punch just keeps coming with every bullet. Uh, so him walking towards the guys as they light him up in the chest is like, man, that's that must be really hard to walk because this is basic like physics stuff. If you if you're the guy shooting the bullet, you're getting the recoil of the gun pushing against your shoulder. And that means that the guy who's receiving that bullet two feet in front of you, he's getting that same thing that's being, you know, that's happening to him, uh, which is where my, where, which is, which we'll come back to talk about later in the movie. But yeah, it's, do I buy it? No, there's too many bullets flying around in too many different directions. And it's the, the fact that he just gets shot that many times and it, it's it's definitely done for spectacle. I wouldn't have had him just tank it in those kinds of ways. Well, I think it's interesting that in the first fight, we see what a pistol does. It knocks him back a bit. That's one shot, whereas yeah. this was many, many more shots. But, but it, it's almost like the way that it's presented, we're meant to assume that the bullets are just weaker, um, when in fact, they, it seems like they'd be a lot stronger. Um, and there's way yes, more. probably. Now, I, and there's a lot I would more. need to... Yeah. I would need to see to be sure. I'd have to see what kind of guns they had, but in a, in essence, look like, if one pistol know, shot, because the guy, yeah, the guy who shoots him, it's with like a little snub nose revolver, like a little like a little thirty eight or something like that, and it does that to Batman. He's like, okay, being just just fired on like that at such a close range. Hmm. Must, Did Fa- how come Falcone, Falcone and uh, Selena didn't seem to hear or pay attention to all of the gunfire in the hallway? Yeah, I they don't acknowledge it when the guards acknowledge that they can hear from in the hallway the gunshot from within uh, the little chamber. Is the is it like um, because it's his office? Is it a soundproof door? Do well, they no. ever do well, anything? But, about- but what I just said is yeah. that they can hear the gunshot from oh, okay, in that area you. in the hallway. Okay. Remember, and then they turn around because the elevator I got uh, yeah. opens. Yeah, so like, you are correct. They should have heard they all that, hear- right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Guns are loud. Guns yeah. indoors are extra so loud. Falcone is there trying to like strangle Selena instead of, I guess, because the gun is around. Oh, but, well, like, actually, before the... before you go into the scene, I was yeah, thinking sure. one thing that would be really cool with that scene in the, the darkness when they're fighting in the hallway is when it lights up when they're shooting. Right. And it lights yeah. up the room and they're shooting at where they thought Batman was. He should just be like behind them. And then we oh, see that, him take him out. Cool oh, yeah. That would have been really yeah. cool. Instead of them just shooting him, when it goes dark, they have no idea what's going on. It's because it's dark. But Batman, he can, you know, he's Batman. And darkness is where he thrives. So I would love the scene of them shooting at where he used to be, bullets hitting the wall. Kind of like the Splinter flashes, Cell, right? Like, with the little, holo- the little uh, projection. It's like, this is where exactly. I'm Like, he was over there. Yeah, they still have some level <laughs> oh, think, of spatial I think awareness Arkham in the dark. as well. Um, yeah, and, and then it yeah. just lights up the fact that Batman's behind them. He's yeah. moved, you know, in the darkness. I guess it's just, you don't typically think of Batman as tanking, like, a full round, <laughs> like, a full magazine. Yeah, um, no, yeah that, was, that, was probably, that was probably that shadow like so perplexed me so much. It's like, um, he's Batman. It's yeah, like, like Batman Batman's so known <laughs> for tanking yeah. bullets. Like, he he, he tanks punches, but like he definitely don't like get shot. He can get shot. Yeah, I thought um, the whole meme not... was that he's in the shadows and he never gets shot at because he's so good at evasive maneuvers. And to be fair, this is early age Batman, so I'm totally fine with him not being as uh, accomplished or experienced in that regard. But I don't. I I guess I don't know that. That tanking like can last for a lot of scenarios but not i'm gonna cr- climb out of the elevator and just walk toward all the people with machine guns it's like okay that's that's just stupid it's a this cool is like shot, perfect though. smoke bomb territory because yep. this yeah. scene by the way would have worked great with smoke too because the light of the guns would illuminate oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, it's, it's like kind of yeah because sh- it's like your headlights and fog if you're if it's really foggy and you're driving sometimes your lights can hurt because it it bounces off the fog so much and creates glare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it would have really lit up the smoke in a cool way. We would have seen more silhouettes. And that would have been badass. The kind of shit you can get away with, right, is the elevator opens, smoke just piles out, and they're all like, what the, blah, blah, blah. it all clears, and then they go to inspect the elevator, and we get that shot where they're all looking at it, looking in, and Batman's just behind them the whole time. And we're just we're just appreciating the fact that he's got the complete jump on him, gets to do whatever he wants now, because they just, they did, didn't anticipate that through the smoke or something. Just 
And that's not even anything, right? You can come up with really clever stealth stuff. Uh, yeah, there, there's a there's a, a distinct lack of cleverness for a character who's very intelligent and is a detective. Um, he, like I said earlier, he sneaks up on uh, Selena so much that it becomes like a meme in a sense, where she's like, "Ah, oh, fuck, stop doing that." But he doesn't do that with the people who are trying to kill him. Um, man, I've just seen something that's made my head explode. Oh, he's oh man, no, we sound all right. He's Batman, as in he has plot armor, so his armor oh, being no. OP isn't an issue. You have oh. put the, you have put the cart Sorry, before what? the horse. My you friend. made it even worse. Uh, <laughs> he's what, so, what, so, what, he's, what it's Batman, so he's supposed to be badly written. Oh no, you're he, pulling a shad. So, no, don't this do that. It, this is not well. So the to to read it again, it said he's Batman, as in he has plot armor, so his armor being OP isn't an issue. That is. That is very much a cart before the horse in the sense that your recognition of him as being the main character in the story, that, that he's not, he he's doesn't not the get main character rules. in the Batman world. Yeah. He is Protagonists don't world. exist in the real world. Um, um, it's not, yeah, it, he, the idea that, let's say that his armor worked, per, well, we can't even say it works perfectly, but it works as if as it's been portrayed, where if he gets shot by a pistol, it will make cause him to flinch. It will impart force onto him that saves his life, but it will stumble him just a little bit. That's what's been shown to us in the movie. So therefore, a much more deadly firearm imparting far more force and far less amount of time is going to do that to a much higher degree. But apparently it turns on and off. Much like Mando, when he gets shot, Sometimes, right, he the actor knows to like stumble back, but a lot of the times he just gets shot and it doesn't affect anything. It, he, it, it's like he isn't shot at all. It's just clearly. Well, I've an always after found effect. that weird. Um, it is like, weird. Him weird. getting well, him getting shot in the first place, like almost makes sense to me with Star Wars ammo that it wouldn't impart physical force onto him. It would like just heat up his armor or something. And like if he takes too many hits, then he like I don't know, he gets burned. But it's like it's an energy weapon. Surely it doesn't impart physical force. Well, um, it's got to have. There's, there's probably going to be mass to it, but it's, it's a weird. I don't even begin to know how it works. That, that's a weird space said, Badly written. He's still vulnerable with the armor. It's like, um, is he though? <laughs> what? He, he doesn't act like he is. Is he though? No. So okay, but so hang on. So hang on. When is like totally invulnerable? Where have you got that from? Because that's not the problem. It's not that he. But I'm like, what? Okay, I'm Space happy. I'm happy to totally disregard those observations entirely because it's like yeah. it's totally wrong and worthless. So, um, yeah, that's that's the conclusion I just reached. Just yeah. we watched um, the sea full Bob go off at his face, and it's like he's he's vulnerable. It's like is he though? <laughs> he smashed his face into a metal beam. Like, well, just to be clear, we have. Feet. In media, we have depictions of people who are wearing body armor, and we have like war footage and stuff where people get shot, and then they like they know they've been shot, and they're wearing armor, and they're like fucking that they're checking themselves to make sure that like am I okay? And they're like, oh fuck the the ar like oh the helmet took the bullet or the the armor took the bullet, and it's like it's a very traumatic thing because you you escaped death because of it. And is he inexperienced or is he not? I feel like we're we're turning one off and turning on the other kind of between scenes as to which one kind of helps it out. And I don't feel we're being consistent with it. In fact, well, I feel if he's I feel like if he's a new Batman, he'll be he would be very afraid of guns. He's like, oh, shit, there's fucking guns at me. Jesus um, Christ. I would also yeah. I'd be willing to concede that, yes, all of us were wrong for saying he is completely immune for damage, though. I don't remember any of us saying it. Uh, we were wrong for saying that. Oh, that's the that. Oh, here's the thing. That's the opposite of what we've been saying. Oh, I think shit. that's where yeah, the, uh, the oh, I, I, that might be where the confusion came in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Uh, well, I think there's, there's, let's take an an example from another Batman story, Arkham City. So uh, very early on in that game, in a cutscene, Batman tanks a shot that is aimed at Selina. This is only from a handgun, but he takes the shot and. His arm, like his Kevlar underneath his suit does the trick. It, it tanks the bullet. He's fine, but he still, it still hurts for a little bit. He stumbles, he falls. It's still like a substantial hit. And that's, uh, that makes it to me much more compelling that although he can take the shot, he's still going to hurt. He's still going to 
hit the ground. He's still going to be vulnerable for a little bit when he takes that shot. I think that's much more compelling than just did, 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 did. It's, it's bouncing. Uh, the bullets are just consistently bouncing off of him with, with inconsistent at best repercussions. Humble power. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, if, like, are... if you get shot and it makes you stumble, right? The stumble isn't the only bad thing you've experienced there. That's also enough force imparted on you. Like, okay, so like, if enough force is imparted on your chest by a very fast-moving object to make you stumble backwards, that's also hurt your chest, right? It's like, I, I have heard being shot while wearing body armor is akin to being punched. Now, it depends. Uh, it depends on the vest, depends on what you're shot with. But people say that um, depending on it, it depends. Some people, when they get shot with body armor, it's like they someone just chucked a rock at them. Some people, when they get shot, they feel like being punched. It it depends. But like that, that's how much of a pussy you are. Whoa. Yeah, it's directly tied to your sheer your your just your sheer force of will. But typically, a lot of people. Yeah. If, if you're if you've got a strong enough force of will, you don't even need the vest. <laughs> I think that elevator sequence, by the way, happens after Selena's first attempt at killing Falcone. Yes, it does. Because um, when the lights go off, she misses. I found that very disappointing. Um, um I that scene, definitely bugged me in the theater. In the theater, I was like, I unironically come on, thought how to myself. Do is he about to affect the power in such a way that she will miss the shot? Please, I beg you, don't do this to me. Um, I Is that what they're going for? I think that's what they're yeah. going for, but there's yeah. no way she would have missed. Because he would have had to physically move faster than the bullet in order for that to happen? Now, some, well, something that makes it very confusing to me is it seems to me, in terms of the way that it was cut, that she shot before he ducked. Like that's what I the and then <laughs> like. She dodged. missed. Yeah, like that's what like, dodged the bullet. You know what I mean? Like it's presented out of order. We need to like, see him move before she shoots. You can definitely miss it's a pistol not, shot, but man, he was standing still. Yeah, not she at knows that range. How to use a gun. Not at that range. I just don't see how you she's missing him. that shot. I just don't see it. Ev anyone in one hundred with one hundred percent accuracy, I could give anyone in the chat a gun and tell them to make that shot, and they'll make it. No one would miss. No one would miss. Hey, I mean, you know, some Look, people. You're the gun expert, but I still feel like we've that's had some an over exaggeration. I, I, he was how far? How far was he in front? Like four feet? Uh, I think it was he like two meters far. or three, right? Two or three meters. Which is. It wasn't far. It was in the same room, basically. Like seven feet, I think. That it. It would be. It would be very difficult to miss. I agree. Like, with I don't that. see how you could. Um, I don't. I. It would be you know, shockingly. It, so difficult just, to just to clarify, the reason I'm pointing this out, right, is you know, if I put a gun to your head, pull the trigger, and the bullet misses, I think that's a hole. However, if I miss you because I'm ten meters away, that's not that bad. You know, the contrivance versus hole. I think her missing here is just a really big contrivance. Uh, oh yeah, like a ten meter shot is. I mean, that's that's what thirty three feet or so. That's. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's one thing, but I feel like he was. Uh, I guess I'm going from memory, but I felt like he was just right in front of her. Uh, she just, yeah, she misses. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's a to You gotta, you gotta fix that. That needs to be fixed. She should not miss. What if it's just she never shoots, and then the lights go out, and she's like, "Fuck," or like she's about to, she's about to, or she's saying, "I'm, you know, the daughter of da da da." Oh, of. Uh, you, uh, but I'm going to, you know, I think I've been waiting for this for a long time. You're going to get what you deserve. Then the power goes out, and she's not like sitting there with her finger on the trigger, like pulling yeah, it. Yeah, say, exactly. I would still it's say during... that's pretty convenient that she hadn't finished his speech a few seconds earlier. You know? Yeah, it's yeah, it, it's better, but I still would. We have to we have to come up with a reason why he doesn't just die when she pulls a gun on him. There's got to be a reason for it, and the laziest thing to do is to just be like, "Oh, she just missed this point blank shot." I guess. A very easy shot to make. Yeah, there's no denying. Or, that. whoop, the gun jammed. I'm like, "Fuck off!" Just don't. No, <laughs> just stop. We got to do something a bit. We got to do something better than that. Come on. Uh, Next time, by American. <laughs> nice. <laughs> To this day, I am told that is not any problem because guns aren't that reliable from China or something. And I'm like, okie dokie. 
I was not. I oh, was not even aware that when they're could... talking about China and all of that's a that's a racism. And then I think it's a high point too. And I don't even think those are made. I don't know. I'd have to see it again. Um, the the scene ends with he he gets there. He stops her from uh oh, he stops up. Selena from killing um Falcone. Uh, and then they uh, they they're going to take him out to get arrested. Uh, and he's like, oh, I'm not, I ain't saying anything. I'm not saying nothing. And then when he meets Jim, he's like, Ah, uh, you know, I I own all the police. I'm I'm uh, you know, I ain't going to jail. And then we go outside. There are many police officers who are the non-corrupt police officers. Oh, we that uh, Jim Jim wrangled up. Wait, did I miss over, something? Um, well, it's possibly my favorite part of the film is when Batman stops her from killing him. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, right. We can slow down a bit. Yeah, I, uh, I just I, that was the peak of my investment. I felt the most in that moment. That's the most I felt throughout the whole movie was just her desperately yeah. trying to execute him, and Batman just reassuring her over and over again. You don't want to do that. No, no. Interesting. Yeah, that, that was that conclusion. You know, given given yeah. what's happened in the story. That's when Mahler it, said the one moment of the film, and I said the one moment too, we that's the thing we but we finished each other's sentence on that part standing out as the part that we were really into. Mm -hmm. I legit really liked it. Yeah, it's it's, it's a good payoff uh, for both of them. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, he, he he so he he gets brought out and he's getting arrested by the police, uh, and then um we see uh, Penguin come out. And they have a back and forth of him being like, ah, you know, you're a stooge, you're an idiot. Um, Penguin then pulls out a gun to shoot Falcone. Um, but then there's a, a <laughs> wait, gun wait, shot. wait, can we just... Uh, Penguin so, is here. I... What the fuck? Yes, he is here. He, he's, he's just here <laughs> chilling out. I, yeah, he he, uh, I, he he went back. He hooked up with him again. He's just chilling out. I legit. Last time when I was watching was it, my face, like my penguin. fucking mouth dropped. I was like, "How are you here? What the fuck? Well, you should you, be in jail." If you remember, if you remember, he was in there with. He was playing pool with Falcone when Bruce showed up to talk to him. I think I might have missed that because I just didn't. I believed I wouldn't be wait seeing Penguin again. So, wait. Uh, go ahead. Wait. I, how? How could that be possible? Because. I, I distinctly remember that in Club Penguin, the pool is closed. Nice. 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 So, nice one. All right. Nice. Well, yeah. All right. <laughs> so, um, what I was saying sorry. was, uh, I had heard before I saw this film, and I don't know, I can't remember who said this, but they said, the first hour is dealing with Penguin, the rest is Riddler. And so, which by the way, I don't think really... Is what? about like I don't think that I don't represents think this film's story at all. No. no, so no. so I thought no, because that's of just not the film. Yeah, that's true. So I, from he hearing that when I was watching it and the the car chase with Penguin happened and after they talked to him I was like ah oh, so he ends up in jail and we won't be seeing Penguin again I guess or at least not until you know aftermath stuff. What he just showed up here I was like what the fuck are you doing here? You should be in jail, man. You should. How are you here? What? I, oh, it fucked with me so much. And then he just pulls a gun. I was like, what are you doing? In, in <laughs> front of every cop in, in the of, city who isn't yeah. corrupt. Literally, yeah. all of the worst cops to pull your gun out. And then yeah, some so, kind of like and you do it. Reddit level law degree person who's like, I didn't pull the trigger. I didn't. I didn't. I was like, what the fuck? Are you, yeah. you pulled a gun yeah, on the yeah, police. Sorry. You fucking moron. <laughs> Just, Someone just to, beat me to it! Just in case it wasn't apparent what the issue is, uh, Penguin is definitely in jail now. If he wasn't before, he is now. Yeah. Th there's no, there's no escape in prison for this. Which you might, you no might be thinking, gentle viewer, like, well, yeah, he ends up in jail from there, right? And you're like, nope! <laughs> no, he does not. Yeah, no, Still um, not in they jail. Apprehend him, they pin him down, but he gets to go off and do his own Maybe thing. they just can't fit him in the jail. No. Oh. oh, man, that's amazing. Just, there's just nothing that I just. Well, you know, he's a jerk. He's a jerk, so I'm okay with it. You're like, oh, Gordon, man, that 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 penguin guy firing a fucking Uzi at you. Do, do you want to press charges? No. Okay. <laughs> what about well? Massive it's not actually. It's not actually up to you. I was about to say, yeah, it probably it's not is actually up to him, you. Yeah. You're you're going to jail anyway, whether you want to press charges or not. <laughs> um, but but as it turns out, he... if Gordon put in another good word, you know. <laughs> Gordon's good words, they Gordon, do a lot man. in this Gordon world. Makes yeah, it all we all make mistakes. Gordon's like the force. He makes it all happen. We were all, we were all on edge the at the time. Luke. He, uh... 
Falcone, it, it wasn't shot by the penguin. He was shot by a sniper across oh, the road because the riddle, bring him into the light and then you'll know where I'm at. Now, I think that's cool in terms of reincorporating the riddle. I feel like at that point, you start, to, you forget about that last part that it's like, that's the thing that will, that's when you're going to yeah. find out who I am. Um, we, we can't jump too far ahead yet because I know there's something to talk about. They go up and the place that he was in that he's escaped from is where he was the whole time doing clues and stuff and and uh, writing all of his stuff down. And this is where we find out that the reason why the Riddler was able to figure it all out was because as part of his job, he came across something to do with renewal. And when he decided to look into it and keep digging, he uncovered basically the whole conspiracy. He had a, he what? figured it all out um, himself. So what, he I don't because I don't remember that scene. What was his job? Uh, I think it, oh, it said it was like a forensics accountant or something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That sounds uh, right. He works with numbers, which would explain how you could dive into like renewal stuff because it's all to do with money and start to trace things back. I can believe that with that as a thread, and if he's smart, which it's safe to say that he is, that he could work there and, and figure out these things. One very intelligent person who's very driven can accomplish a great deal of things. Yes. And I believe that the Riddler is smart enough that he can absolutely do it. Yeah. I'm mostly fine with the Riddler's time plus knowledge plus tools that he did it. Yes. But I've seen complaints about uh, specifically the, the his end thing. How did he get away with getting all that stuff done? I'm not sure that I find it too hard to believe. I don't find it that hard to believe, personally. Um, I think that the Riddler's overall plan is like pretty solid. I don't agree with you there, but um, that's okay. <laughs> right, okay. Well, well, well I, I get what I mean is, I guess, in terms of connecting like A to B to C, whether or not motives and stuff, I think we'll have to talk about. But like, does it does anything seem incongruous in terms of the information he found out and how the information was presented as part of the riddles? Or I do you think, think we're there's... fine up to this point. The only thing would be right. Well, we we need to just get a little bit further along, and then we can start talking. Yeah, about yeah, it. yeah, sure. Um, well, so while they're here, they've, there's a bat in a cage with a bunch of rats, and it's the uh, the last letter that he has. Oh, I, I, I can't remember what you mentioned. The fireproof thing said, see you in hell, uh, the one that was meant to be read by mm -hmm. Batman after Bruce died. Um, this one, it just says inside, my confession. Um, and... Oh no! Sorry, I've I've I think I've jumped the gun. Um, they they arrest the Riddler before they go up to the uh to the to his his uh, office. They get a call that he that somebody went into a coffee place, and so they oh. find him sitting there. So he turns himself in. I thought that was so kind of funny, in that they said a witness spotted him leaving the apartment and going into a cafe or whatever. And I was just like, so if that person hadn't spotted him, do you think he would have waited there and been like, fuck, I'll call him because clearly they're not. Telling oh. him. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what are they waiting like, for? I'm right here. It is like oh, right please. next to it, so, and and you would expect that they're gonna fan out and start looking around. So, well, so um, what I I'm suggesting is, is even if they looked around, I don't think you can look at Paul Dano and be like, clearly the Riddler. You, 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 right, 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 yeah. right. Yeah. I get maybe you would have. You should have been there wearing his mask. I guess. I just I don't know why we uh, had it. I don't know. No, we bought... uh, they would have recognized his heavy breathing and be like, ah, <laughs> I, that's Paul Dano. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, <laughs> They they made it so that a witness spot him as opposed to him calling it in himself. Um, but mm -hmm. fine. Uh, I just thought it was funny because if if someone hadn't spotted him, was he just gonna wait forever? Or must have called <laughs> the phone. Must 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 have called. I think it was but, uh, Riddler who made the call. Oh, that's actually a fair point. Maybe it was him. Yeah. Maybe it was Riddler. Yeah. Maybe yeah. 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 That, makes that makes more, more sense. sense. I'm more happy with that. Yeah. 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 Um. Should we talk about him turning himself in now or later? Uh, probably a little bit later because we get the yeah. mo quote unquote the motive, and then we can talk about it. Well, yeah. To return back to what we found out, how in his office, how he had figured it out, and then we have the thing that says the confession, and then I believe it's at that point that um, Batman gets told that he wants to talk to you specifically, and then that takes us to Arkham. Oh, I dun, figured dun, someone dun. might have something to say there. <laughs> um, <sorry. laughs> uh, oh no, but, Arkham. Anyway, dun, well, dun. Is, it, is it worth mentioning they have they have looked everywhere in his apartment? They have definitely done, they got a forensics team in. They've looked everywhere. All right, they found oh, all there yeah. is to be found. I'm not saying this mm -hmm. for any reason at all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
So, oh, right, so like, yeah. I don't remember Ye? if this is when he goes back or not, but I do like the shot when he reaches into the the bat. That was you that know? was before. Yeah. Uh, that, that was, was a cool uh, shot. I liked it. Um, so I, it's also worth noting that he saw up on the walls stuff to do with that gives you an indication of hmm, does he know Batman's secret identity? Mm-hmm. Um. And uh, and then he's like, oh, I think I think I'm the last target. So he goes to Arkham, and he's sitting there, and Riddler's giving a big old talk about a whole bunch of stuff. Um, I really like the performance, personally. I, I, the first I, half of the scene, I, I'm I afraid, definitely yeah, did. I really liked it up until this the wailing. <laughs> yes. Yeah, <laughs> I liked I liked it until the uh... wailing too. Because um, it's such weird wailing. Like it's not even like that. <laughs> it's like the least passionate wailing I've ever heard. He's just sort of going, ah. This is and not it feels going like how it goes I on planned. planned. Feels like it goes on forever. That it, that, that yeah. first one is like, okay, I get it. Okay, stop, please, please talk again. Well, that's this like is loud. <laughs> um, like, like that's the only scene where the people <laughs> giggling throughout the whole film. I was like, yeah, fair. Uh, <laughs> yeah, fair. I, the 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 sort of through line for the um the 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 first half is he's he he keeps saying things like Bruce Wayne in a way that's a little bit concerning, and uh, mm-hmm. Batman's just standing there, not not saying anything, but he's certainly thinking about everything, including yeah. the existence of the camera. Um, this Quietly this is himself. the scene where I am like I I think it is like the most impressive I guess display of acting as Batman. Like all of the, you can read so oh, yeah. much into every glance and the, the expression in his eyes. Probably mentioned. So, how yeah. the fuck is Batman walking around and being happy pally with the cops that has access to the Riddler? And yes. Wow. We would yeah, eventually yeah, have yeah. to come back. Uh, the fuck oh, is yeah. this they're, happening? They're the good cops. I think no, the film the cops, legitimately though. forgot. It feels that way. <laughs> they didn't address this they at just all. just forgot. It's almost like the um, other scenes didn't happen. It's so weird. <laughs> Tiny bit. Uh, he, yeah, so I, I, I like this in terms of it's, it's cool because there is reason to believe that he would have figured this out somehow, but also it makes sense that he hasn't figured that out either. It could go one way or the other. Um. So I don't think it's I don't it, I think it's cool in terms of leaning into like freaking us out that he's figured it out, and then it's like nah it's just damn well, we didn't get him. Um, if he had figured it out, then it wouldn't make sense in accordance with his motivations um, that he tried to kill Bruce Wayne. Uh well yeah but remember he he talks about his motives after the fact. Um, oh, oh yeah, wait true. no sorry but no but you have pointed out something wait. there that's interesting because if he sent the bomb to Bruce. Like at that point in the story, before Batman had figured it all out, um, yeah, it doesn't. It, I, I guess that's. I well, maybe, but maybe well, it, doesn't, it doesn't fit with his motivations. But we, as the audience, don't sure, know but, that yet. But I that's. But I feel like that's indicative of the that you have come to this conclusion incorrectly, and the film confirms, yeah, that he didn't know that this is Bruce. So, like, it's not that it's not that there's a problem here. I guess other than. Maybe it doesn't make it. Well, no, 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 no. There is no problem here, there, because Bruce has no reason to believe um, that, like, the Riddler was his pal and likes Batman a whole bunch. That's what he figures out later. Yeah, jumping the gun a bit there. Um, yeah, he says like this is the part where he starts to talk about how uh, he was an orphan. Nobody really gave a shit about his circumstances. Everybody cared about Bruce, even though he was rich and taken care of, while he lived in a shitty orphanage. Um, and even own his blood. Yeah. What? He didn't <laughs> even own his own blood. <laughs> <laughs> Did he own his own bone marrow? No. That's just well, um, a different thing. It's about it being weak. Don't worry about it. Not about owning it. Yeah, no, I, yeah. No, but um, just, he was a very unfortunate orphan. He, that was just unrelated. He didn't oh. own his own bone marrow. Um, That's a coincidence. And so Contrived. Riddler basically, in a, in a bit of a roundabout way, says like, "Yeah, we worked together. We we really showed him, didn't we? You know, we we really did it." Um, and of course, Batman's like, "What do you mean we? Like, there is no we. We're not working together. We're not." Pal. I think you're underselling how funny his response actually is. Uh, nah, like, I, nope, 
nope, we were, yeah, I wasn't we working like, with you. You're insane, like you're you're psychotic and all that. Um, and I guess maybe this is the part <laughs> where I open the floor to to uh, what what do, what do we think about this as uh, a motive? What specifically now? The I mean that he, that he yeah, was working aspect? with Bruce, that he uh, that he was working with Batman to do all of this. I'm not sold. Uh, I think it's a bit silly. Well, I mean. Uh, he clearly wanted bit. to use Batman as a tool, right? I'm not sure that I'm not sure he, that he believed he was clear cut. I think he wanted Batman to figure it out, and he was going to give him a bit of help. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah I figured like, it's clear. The, it's uh, clear from the off that that's what he wanted. Just not that well, well, so he I think them to be like I think Pally, people, right? I think you'd present it this way: he figured it out, but it's not as simple as just giving this information to Batman. You need, you need, because otherwise the information becomes available to the police, including potentially the corrupt police. The like, if you can guide Batman towards an objective of yours, and if you perceive Batman as being somewhat outside of the system, I can see that lining up. Um, and I think a big thing that works in favor of it, this interpretation of Batman is on my side to some extent would be that Batman to the broader world, there's not a lot of information about him and what he wants, which I think is on purpose in terms of the thing. Well, oh, that's definitely the, what like, the film's going for. The, yeah. Don't hurt me. He communicated very poorly to the world what his objectives are as a hero. Um, However, I mean, as, there are yes, things to pick up. For yeah. example, we have sp so the reveal here is that Riddler thought he was working with Batman the whole time with him. And to an audience member, you might be like, oh, that kind of just makes sense because everything up to this point has been interpretable on Batman's part. And I'm just sitting there thinking like, yeah, pretty conveniently, actually. If you look back at some of these scenes, all of the, like, the, there's plenty of implications. Like, all it takes is for, you know, like, the DA when he's on the phone with him, all it takes is Batman to be like, what's it going to take for you to stop doing this? Or what's it going to, like, like, what's wrong? What are your plans, Riddler? Or, like, like anything introspective about, like, how we're going to solve this problem? Because if he avoids asking any questions like that, then Riddler will never have to wonder if Batman is on his team. But you also have to worry about Riddler never clarifying that with Batman. It's just an understanding he has. And then it's like, is that a fair understanding? It's like, it's kind of weird considering how much Batman works with the cops. He fucking hates all of them. Mm. And you're like, yeah, but Batman, you know, he's, he's all about beating up corrupted and bad thugs and people. He's about justice and, and stuff. He's, he's, Riddler sees himself as that, you know? And I'm just like, yeah, that's not really enough for me. I don't think Riddler would believe Batman is on Team Riddler, especially without clarification. Uh, he seems like a pretty smart guy, despite the wailing and screaming and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> With all the plans he has, he has to have been put together to some extent. And the idea that he's like, Batman's my teammate. He's going to enjoy watching with me as we drown Gotham. I'm just like, are you insane? Yeah. That's totally not yeah. Batman's MO, dude. I think it would have worked a lot better for me if if the Riddler thought he had like unwittingly ha uh, used Batman as a tool as part of his thing. Like, no, you helped me do this. Like, the fact that he's delusional about whether Batman is on his team doesn't make any sense at all. Here's, here is a big thing that I think makes it a lot harder for me to fully understand uh, all of it. So... Something he says to him at the end of the conversation is like, oh, clearly you weren't as smart as I thought you were. You haven't figured out my end game, essentially. Because uh, he's, like, he, he's, Batman is surprised by the notion that there's more going on. Yeah. And I guess to jump ahead a bit, what the final clue was the first thing that we saw in the film, the murder weapon. It is a thing that you can use to remove, like, carpets. The reason why Bruce eventually figures this out when he goes back to the crime scene is because the cop there points it out to him. Because his it's dad was so a carpenter. Fucking it's very, lame. It's, 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 a oh, very, yeah. it's very, <laughs> very, very helpful. Um, oh, he, it's like he had this thing. You can remove yeah. the carpet with it. Wanna, can like, we restate oh. that, please, for, for, for those listening? Batman's so, not oh, yeah, got yeah. a clue for this. He's done. He doesn't know what to do. He goes back to the evidence. Well, I say evidence room. It's the it's Riddler's uh, and it's, home, I it's guess. It's Riddler's office. apartment. And, and uh, the friendly looks cop. At the, that, yeah. Yeah. yeah that, well, so, funnily enough, when the cop saw him and was like, you know, what are you doing here? I thought we were doing something else. I didn't realize the whole reason that cop exists is to put Batman onto the fucking case. I was just like, oh, that sucks. Yeah. I thought he says, 
which which causes kind of more problems. He's so fucking lucky that this cop isn't the kind of cop to be like calling back up and being like, "Batman has broken into the fucking evidence place. He's doing all kinds of shit." Yeah, because yep. he shouldn't be working with the police anymore. The police should mm -hmm, be very yep. anti-Batman, but like putting that yeah, to one he's, side, he's trying to arrest him. Batman picks up the fucking first murder weapon, and he's like, "This is interesting." That the guy's like, "Oh, that's a carpentry tool. I know this because my dad was a carpenter or some shit." This is like, "Fuck off!" I grew up <laughs> surrounded by yeah. carpets. I'm sorry. No, so to <laughs> make it clear, the you merely adopted tool. the carpets. I was born in it, molded by it, the burned art. by it. The carpet tool. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I was born. I was born in carpet. In fact, I got carpet burn on the way out. <laughs> the carpet tool is used to remove um, the carpet. The carpet, and <laughs> underneath it, we have, we have we have a big old map showing seven locate. I think it's seven locations are along the seawall for Gotham. Oh, something we probably mm. should have mentioned earlier. Gotham is a uh, the the oceans are really high up, uh, and there's a seawall protecting this part of the city. Yeah. Um. So what we find out when a real change, which is written on the map, is entered into the computer, that the plan, the big plan at the end of it, was to blow up the seawall. Um. So to bring it back to the scene in terms of the Riddler thinking Batman was on his side and being surprised that he hadn't figured out the seawall, what did he expect Batman to do when he was in the crime scene with the police to? open it up and see it all and be like, yeah, cool. Like, is that what he thought? <laughs> and then none of oh, the yeah. police or anybody would have a perspective well, on it at all? Can, can yeah, I also clarify, that... he didn't expect the forensics team would check the fucking carpet? Yeah. You kidding I me? I guess the thing is, is that when yeah, they, cause when they check the carpet, they don't even... Already a man. Because the big thing is they don't need the video. It, once you see the seven dots, you're just like, oh shit, let's check what's at the seven dots and you'll find the vans with the bombs in them. Um, what did you yeah. guys find? I found a van. What did you guys find? Oh, I found a van. What did you guys find? What do they yeah, have in there? In the oh, just like a way. bunch of equipment. Yeah. Oh, it's, um, it's um, it's you know, one of those um, it's must be the explosive man's van. You know. Also, please, <laughs> there are some people. I don't know if it's just a joke, but some people are saying like he is insane. I'm like, please stop saying that. Don't. I so, hate so, that. So <laughs> the reason why that is frustrating to me is because the Riddler. In my in my mind, in this film, who is like super duper really strong, there is a very clear motive and goal in mind um, that he's trying to achieve. It's not just that he's it's it, like I want to give him more credit than just oh no, he's nuts. You know, D there's no reason why he does anything. It's like well, no, it feels like he does have a reason for doing. Yeah, he's things, not he nuts. That's clearly, at all. he is I, insane. I, 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 but I, like so he he uh he he has a clear goal. He has consistent in insanity. He's, he's a yeah. functioning crazy person someone said you, know? you do realize the plan was over at that point so please listen i beg you what we're pointing out is the riddler thought that batman already knew this plan and therefore the carpet I mean, was already was pulled up yeah therefore the knowledge of the vans would be available and stoppable before it's conductable by the police this is a problem for riddler but he doesn't right. seem to care mm -hmm. So, so no, like, if Riddler not... was insane enough, if Riddler was insane enough to think that this is a good idea, there's no way that he would have been sane enough to conduct the rest of his plan as flawlessly as he did. He's like there, he, there... he if if he's insane enough to think oh, I'll just reveal my entire plan to all the police before it's uh, conducted, right? Then you know why? Why is he not like sent a letter to fucking the commissioner saying I'm going to murder you tomorrow? My this mm. is my address. They never um, knew about his hideout. He gave it to them. He handed it to them. What are you the talking whole, about? If you remember, the whole, the whole <laughs> goal, the broad goal of all of the riddles was Batman is going to help me execute my goal and he is on my side for it. And the fact that he's surprised that Batman is unaware of the plan at the end means that Bat... Like, do you not understand what that means in terms of him being surprised? Oh, you're my friend. Wait, you're not my friend. Oh, but you don't even know about the. Wow, you're not smart at all. Like, do do, do man, I'm <laughs> like I'm really struggling he'd, to he'd see already, how it's, it's not that he had already set up yeah. the vads. Like, yes, yes, you're getting there. So the vads haven't exploded yet, and if the police know about them, they can stop them. Do you understand? Yeah, and 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 think about it. So Batman was in there with the police, which he definitely knows the police were in there because the police everywhere and they arrested him and Batman was with the police. When did he, like, 
if if Batman took out the carpet while all the police were there, which very much could have happened, like damn, you know, like, like were, <laughs> it's not the too late. Did it. He keeps it's too late. It was not too late. They had plenty it of was, time. It was only too late. It was only too late when Batman went back after he hadn't figured yeah. it out. What movie like, did you watch? It... <laughs> it's plenty of time. It was between Batman finding the thing under the carpet and the police being in there. Should it should have when they should have found the carpet thing. There's like they should have found know, it when they first got to the apartment and turned everything yeah. over. Oh my god, he's just not yeah, listening. Literally moments later, they blow up. I am talking about when they first get into the apartment thanks to Riddler. If they find out then, which was Riddler's, Riddler's plan, which then is what be Riddler fucked. believed that Batman had done. That's an important part as well. That Riddler believed that Batman had figured it out. You have to understand the... this, right? This is so straightforward as a flaw. Come on, I believe in you. <laughs> That's after Riddler got caught. Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, in I, fact, I, actually, I'm it's not, before I, he got caught because they hadn't grabbed him from the cafe before they got into his place. I, yeah, like I'm, I don't, I don't, I don't understand what the source of confusion is here. How is this hard to accept? What's wrong? With I you? don't agree. <laughs> they yeah, checked the carpet. No, 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 no. It's not. The Riddler believes that Batman has figured it all out. That is what he believes when he uh, talks to him in Arkham. He hasn't, though. But the Riddler believed that before coming there, while all the police were around, presumably that Batman had taken off the carpet and seen everything. There's just something there that is mismatched, like in terms of what he believes of Batman and what his plan was. The carpets betray you because they belong to me. I mean feel like it's that's that's kind of clear at this point, right? Are we we all happy to I still uh, press on I guess with the call back with now me. as well to the explosive in his face. It's just it would be awkward for Riddler knowing that he's like, Yay, Batman's my bro, and he's like, Oh Right, oh, yeah, yeah. No. That's not, yeah. <laughs> right, Batman's <laughs> here? That? Who said that? And then he blows Batman. Up. That's sad. Uh um I wanted I... to talk to you, but I want you to be next to this explosive, but I don't want you to die. It's also confusing. And I guess we haven't talked about it either. Why did the Riddler turn himself in, do we think? Um, I think the movie's argument uh. is that he would like to use this as an opportunity to meet up with Batman and they can watch as Gotham drowns from Arkham Asylum, which doesn't make any fucking which sense safe. at all. Well, he says that Arkham is safe. That's not good enough. It, you can be safe. No, I, I know, right? But you can be safe you, yeah, so outside of Arkham. Go to like, a hill. <laughs> or any tall go building. Go to a curb. Yeah, yeah. Like, the, the, the water that eventually wants his calm is what? Like, three feet or something? How significant? Okay, but uh, you know, it is very... It's, it's very, higher than that, my dude. It's pretty high. <laughs> once it's, it's, it's calm. It's once it's, it's calm. No, we see places yeah, once it's calm where it's calm. three feet it's deep. It's very high. It's it's super no, no, no. There are places where it's still on the ground where it's like it's it's like so, chairs in a restaurant and you see it's like just coming to the bottom of the chairs. It's like we see there are it flooding a lot of the, the street, city where like, once it's calm, rags. Yeah, but like when it when it's but when no, but that's the thing no, you don't rags, want to be caught. Rags is you don't want to be caught when it's calm. When it, uh, no, stop. When we see at the end of the film, there are areas of the city that are super underwater. Like, yeah. there are parts of it that okay, are so very, very for, underwater. For, for, for me to be correct, I need one area that is three foot deep. Well, no, so so what, so what? the clarifier is that the entirety of Gotham isn't underwater. Part of Gotham is underwater. So this that, part of the that city, really there are other point. parts of the city. Yeah, yes, that does. But, like, I have no idea why you were talking about the calmness of the water. Like, So, you so I, I can explain that. So when the water the rushes in at first, it will be higher than when it is calm. Yes, but when it is calm, it is very high. Are you willing so to accept it that that's the case in the city? Well, it in the like city, what you, were saying was you already counted your high. own point by saying that there's different no, levels I, throughout the city. Yes, but like so I'm I willing to say, to, there, so my yeah, whole but, point is that there is safety to be found outside so, of Arkham. Yeah, no, so, we agree. Uh, but the implication yes. of what you were saying was when the water was coming through and it was violent, it was like. Oh, just find a curb and you'll be okay. No, it's that's like, not what I said no, at all. That, I said what it's calm. You, that is you not li calm. You literally yeah. said find a curb. You, no, exactly. exactly. So what, what I'm, when it's yes, calm, what, for fuck's sake. Yes. But, okay, yes, but he, needs some, what, he needs to be somewhere what, while it's flooding. So What, what I am trying... <laughs> he could be anywhere <laughs> when it's flooded. He could go to his own house. Specifically what I was trying... You made it sound like when it was calm, the water wasn't that high. In the cities, in the part of the city, yeah, and I only flooded. have to be right as long as there's one area where it's not. He can stand there. I'm, no, I'm sure he'll be fine. Yes, but but we're talking about like a different part of the city. 
it, you made it sound like the water wasn't that high in the flooded part of the city. There is a part of there the city that has been flooded. There are several parts of the city that are flooded at different levels. You've already said this. No, no, but like you remember the part because because the imagery that I was thinking of it was uh there's like a part where um you see the steps of uh like the bank and it's super high up. It, you you made it sound like oh when it's come it wasn't that high. It's like. It, yes, it was. <laughs> like in parts, in I only need. Parts, why are we even talking about this? Matter, I only okay, need one place that... for him to be able to go. Why does it no, matter? I, I no, I agree with you on that. But I'm just saying it. it when you were talking, there are about obviously going to be places like... that are more dangerous than others. I would just expect him not to go to those places. Did this you not say is being that... torn apart? Did you not say that, like, the water was only three feet high? Is that not something that you said? Yes, but I didn't want to imply that's everywhere. Well. You may like. Why did you say when the water was calm? Like, well, what the, was that? That wouldn't make sense for me to say making? anyway, because there's obviously going to be places that are deeper than others for when Wait, the water no, cools. Sorry, but, but you said when the water is calm, not when the water is violent. What yeah, did but, you mean so by that? So this is the problem. What I'm perceiving is a riddler walking around looking for places to stay. Go to a curb where the water is calm in parts of the city where it doesn't go as deep as nine feet or more. Simple. Why would you say it like that, other than, why doesn't he go because to a it's part quicker. of the city that is not flooded? And I figured you Arkin could infer get... that I'm talking about going to a safe place, not heading well, to no, a pool. But, but, well, no, but, but, but I mean, when we're talking about in this city, like, the reason why he, he, he cites it like Arkham is above water, like it's not even, it, it, there was no water that went through that part of the city. Why are we there pretending are like a bit of water is gonna kill him no matter where he goes, so he has to go to Arkham? No, 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 what? Well, so what I'm trying to point out is, like, I'm not sure why you're focusing on the idea of, like, go to a part of the curb when it's calm. Just don't be in that part so, of the city when it's flooded. I don't that's, know why that's all I'm trying to say. It's practically a joke at this point. I'm trying to imply that it's that simple for him to avoid water instead of going to Arkham. I, I agree. But you said stuff about fast water and calm water. So it's, you it's said higher those things. when it <laughs> rushes in. Why is this hard? <laughs> Is it higher when it rushes in necessarily? Yes. yes. W well, wait, no, hold on. It, like, ha it, it has to be higher it when it rushes in. Literally, has it'll to be higher. higher yeah, when it it, no, no, no. Yeah. So it'll be higher in certain parts, but as the water is progressing through the city, it's going to progressively get higher, right? As more water from the ocean floods in. Like, in right, the, well, it will get more, in the pool. It parts. will eventually get up to ocean level, but it will never be above it. Um,. Yeah, no, I agree with that. But like when, you, like the water is when the water is rushing into the city, surely it's only going to get higher as more water from the sea starts to come in to the city. As more contents of the water get in, parts that were only like a foot underwater are going to get higher, just because more water's coming through. The parts where it pools, yes, it will never be higher than when it was rushing in. It will never be higher when than it was rushing in in parts. In other parts, it would be it will only ever get as high as when it rushed in. If we're talking about parts that are below the where the standard ground was related to the water, like literally, like I said, where it would pool, then yes. But I don't know why we would consider them. Because that's part of the place that gets flooded. See, and that's what you're relying on? While well, I'm relying on Riddler's desire mean, to I'm stay not, safe. What do you mean I'm rel yeah, I agree that Riddler has a desire to so say I'm safe. hoping you can now understand up. that when I said it, that's what I was referring to. Not everywhere in the city. Okay, I I think I think that a, a po I I don't see why we would need to just talk about that other than just go someplace because else. In my the criticism city. is he doesn't need to stay. Is in that Arkham it is to that safe. simple, right? Well, yeah, I agree that he doesn't need to go to Arkham to stay safe. He should just go to the area Hence, that Arkham is he in. He can find a curve to stay place. alive in places where that will be applicable, wherever that may be. <laughs> applicable wherever that may be. Yeah, I got, sure. I got to be careful now in it's case just... you think I'm talking about every location everywhere. <laughs> I wasn't thinking that you meant every location. That's what everywhere. I've been torn apart on when it was like the simplest point ever. And instead, like, what I should have said is there are places that are dry and he could go there. Yes, I agree. You're acting it's like a charity. I'm glad we got through this. <laughs> yeah. I learned a lot. Are we I think the reason I'm annoyed is because this is a major flaw in the film and it's almost been torn to well, shreds and I... something that didn't make sense. 
so so I guess to clarify for chat, so I guess I guess to clarify for chat, we are in we we are in complete <laughs> we, 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 we are in complete we are in complete and utter agreement that the Riddler did not need to send himself to Arkham to stay safe from the flooding. We yeah, are in complete agreement on that. Ever. That is a flaw. <laughs> Yeah. What I like about these tangents is how productive they are. Yes. I think they're productive. (laughs) What we learned is that Mola thinks that the water would be higher than it would be lowering. Don't say it's rushing it. You already agreed to that, so don't even try. Yeah, when it's rushing it at the parts (laughs) next to it. That's what I said. Thank you so much. I'm going to hit you. Cease and desist. That's um, that's for if someone's violating your copyright. So yes, um, uh, one of the first questions I asked Springy when we the... first talked about this film was, I need help understanding what Riddler got caught for. And I even cited, I think I did this with Rags actually, Loki got caught to fuck up Bruce and to fuck up the, um, the Helicarrier and to fuck up the Avengers before enacting his plan. Silver got captured, if someone can correct me on this, I think, to try and kill M when people break him out of uh, MI6, whatever, whatever. Uh, Joker got captured to be able to get at Lau in the station because he knew he was being held there. Why did Riddler get captured? I don't so know. So he wouldn't drown. He yeah, wouldn't drown. So he, 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 was, he wouldn't drown. He, he, could watch, he could watch from the safety of Arkham instead of uh. the safety of outside of Arkham, like on the street next to Arkham, well above the water. Yeah. Or a curb somewhere. I I do not know why well, Joker allowed him Kirby to be captured. Kirby Are you man. telling me it took you it took you like a week from when I sent you that meme to figure out the joke well, from you, that Kirby meme? Oh, well, I because I, I, I hadn't registered the connection between what? Curb and Kirby. I said, Kirby I and then you said Kirby, and it made joke. me think of Kirby. And I realized. <laughs> So, so for reference, well, yeah, chat, just sort of I never saw, really got no, it. No, I, picture, so re- do you have the picture with you to show us? I don't, so I'm the, so fucking lost right now. So, Kirby and the Forgotten Land is a new Kirby game, and they have like Kirby and Coneby, all of those memes um, yes. that everybody really likes. I saw one where it Kirby said Kirby made out of bread. It said Kirby C U R B Y, and it was Kirby, but in the shape of the curb. I sent that uh, to, I think it was Mola and Jay. About a week yeah, ago, I did, I didn't and Jay has text, at so this saw the image. Jay oh, has God. at this moment, so... about a week later, <laughs> finally figured out that yes, Kirby, get it? Because it's a curb. I didn't realize <laughs> that there were like different Kirby's called like Kirby in that. I'm not. I'm I, not. Deep I don't think you need Kirby that. I, or whatever, I feel right? like. I feel like no, I have told you I didn't this see explicitly. the text, right? I just saw Kirby. There it is. Yes. Yeah. 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 I just saw this <laughs> image. Yeah. I was like. I was just stone? like, why? Okay, so Kirby what? is part of the pavement. <laughs> Kirby is a stone. He's a rock. He's you gotta a... show that on uh, on the stream. Well, I, wasn't, I wasn't going through that. I wasn't trying to figure it out. I was like, okay, that's an image, I guess. I tweeted. I don't, dude. Even without the <laughs> text, like when I send even without memes the to people, text. and they're like, oh, that's a picture, I guess, and then this is the go. <laughs> Dude, but even without the text, come on, it's well, a curve. Like that invested in figuring it out, right? I wasn't sat there going, "What could this possibly mean?" Neither was I. I just figure out. What is there to figure out? I just out? looked at it. I just like, oh, that's an image, <laughs> and then I moved on with my life. And then I heard someone say the word "curve," and I was like, "Oh, right, that's that image. That's what that meant." <laughs> you solved the riddle, man. Did I did solve the riddle. Um, this is um, this is. I guess. Quite- an interesting chapter in EFAP. Just this last, you know, twenty minutes. minutes. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's riddle me yeah. this. Jay. Um. So yeah, the, the bombs go off. The city is being flooded. This is a real change in the Riddler's mind. Now, I guess West pink that's, and pink and curb some, all over. Something. <laughs> it's, uh, it's uh, it's it's something that I think we talked about. Um. D- yeah. Does it make sense that the Riddler, who has specifically been targeting corrupt officials within Gotham's uh, city, that he would flood the city. No, no. I don't think it does. No. I think it's a huge breach um, of his... Is it his, worth, this is, a, is it worth mentioning... It's antithetical. Do, do we at this point know his full plan? Has it been said on his little thing? Uh, uh, this is in the video where he, he he's effectively said, like, this is a real change. We're uh, gonna... Flood I the meant, city. like, the other thing he's gonna do. The, uh, with the rifles. What it's oh, gonna lead to. Oh, oh, so what, kill the new mayor? Because I, I take issue with both that and the flooding. 
I well, take issue with well, both as well. The new All mayor it, has got no, no corruption behind her that we're aware of. She seems and to be pretty altruistic. It does Correct. seem that. I, I think it, we could say it's definitive. Shall we do one, much, then the other in order? Which one do you want to sure. do first? I don't mind. So, let's start do with we the do flooding. the flooding? Okay, okay. The flood comes first. Because yeah. the, the flooding happens and then we get, you know, the I'll present the response. best argument I've got in favor of both of them. And so as far as I'm aware for the flooding one, it's a matter of trying to go after mainly the districts that relate to corruption and to force most of the corrupt people into the same area to then execute them, because that's where they're likely to go. It was that, it's something he says, right, that people are likely to go uh, go to that area because it's, it's safe. Uh, yeah, the, the but, garden. Uh, the, well, um, it's, well, well, something that is worth noting as well is she was already there because she had won the election. That was where they were holding the celebration. Yes. Right. So, but so, so the idea being target... then that he wants to f like shepherd everybody into the same area so that he can then get at the people he wants to kill. So kill it the seems like he wants to kill indiscriminately. Well, so it does seem other than the mayor. I hope it. it does I hope seem it's more than way. the mayor because otherwise, why not just kill the mayor? You why know? do you, well? Why do you need so many people? Why do you need like yeah. fifty people with guns? And then of course, is it to be just super duper sure? Or yeah, the level know? of collateral damage involved in this for innocent non-corrupt people, which seems to, and I guess yes. we got to deal with this. Like so many people be like, he's insane, he's psychotic, he's blah blah. It's like he has a fucking reason. He has yeah. a consistent level of understanding of the events within Gotham, and he has a motivation to do things. Like, we shouldn't just go, ah, oh, he's crazy, fuck it. Like, come on. Yeah. I feel like it, I want to give the sense. film way it's... more credit than, than that, than just... Yeah, yeah it makes saying. sense yeah. to him. In his mind, this makes sense. He's operating in what he believes to be a, a line of logic. Like, is it crazy that he's doing all this stuff? Sure, but there's a method to the madness, so to there speak. There is a method to the madness, for sure. Yeah, it, it, He's not just going around randomly people. punching people. Well, it's something, yeah, exactly. that, it's something that Batman says himself. He's not going to target you, Gordon. You're not corrupt. That is Exactly. True. Yeah, yeah, that another, feels yeah. very deliberate from the film to say that the Riddler isn't just a crazy person. But what if, his, but what if Gordon's dad was corrupt? Oh. Uh-oh. Oh, uh -oh. oh Sins no. Of the father. Oh, but yeah, yeah, so, so he's I, not going to target anyone who isn't corrupt until the end when he's just going to target the whole city indiscriminately, basically. Now, to steal man his position, my what I would say is the logic behind it is, well, I like we can't change the system from within because as far as I can tell, the system is broken to the core. And I am the product of that. I am like a victim of a system that is broken to the core. So screw the whole like the, no more system. Destroy it completely. That that would be the the th no, just we no that just the, the, the system is corrupt. And we <laughs> but now, but it. we could live in a wet society. Yeah. A wet society. We <laughs> we live in a wet society. What is a sweaty? These people are for the mayor that Perth needs against. He was against society. the old mayor, my dude. Um, the old mayor was corrupt. She hasn't done anything yet. And, oh, she's that's just another, been elected. Just that's been another elected. defense I've seen is he's like he he assumes she's corrupt like everyone else. Like no, he doesn't. He finds out who's corrupt. He knows who's corrupt. He doesn't just kill indiscriminately. They he make a point about know. this in the film. That's the whole yeah. That's yep. that's that's why there's it's so weird to be like oh yeah Bruce Wayne we gotta kill him we gotta flood this district she dies too. It, that's why there's like a line where I go from okay he's like this is in, are they doing like uh. It led me to believe that they would have an aspect of this film where he would go to the Batman and say, yeah, you and I, we're trying to do the same thing, but I'm willing to do what it takes and you're not. And yeah. they have that kind of confrontation, but they, they don't really do that. I don't think it just it goes in a different direction it with him thinking matter. Batman's his friend, which is like, oh, that's worse than yeah, what was in my head. He thinks she's but, corrupt, too. This is something he says. And it's like, so we're pointing out that that's bad. He shouldn't think that. He has no reason to. The idea that it's just like, nah, they're all corrupt. Fuck yeah. it. It's like, oh, so he's just not the character I thought he was then. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And also, all the people he's hurting by flooding the city are all the people who are also just victims of this corrupt system that he hates so much. Well, you know yeah, I mean? like, and he, yeah, and he exactly. clearly feels a level of camaraderie with people because he has all the followers, and he he talks mm -hmm. to his followers in his private videos way more different than how he presents yeah, himself publicly. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. waiting for him to say, "Please like, like and subscribe." Thanks for, thanks, yeah. for, yeah. thanks for hanging out. You know, I, it's been so great talking to you all. Like that's how he's talking. He he does go a bit floopy where it's like, "Oh, is it gonna have real change?" Yeah, like mm -hmm. he, he does, but still, it's it's definitely more restrained.
Um, he said he has no trust in the system. That's why he's cu uh, he's cutting it off by killing her. Yeah, that's the issue we take. Thank you for pointing it out. Then, I, then why does he not kill? Why would he not kill a Gordon? Point. Why doesn't he just kill like everybody who works? Every for the fuck it, like, why, like, every just, kill every form of institution. institutional power. Just kill them all. <laughs> in which case, if everything. that's his goal, and if that's his goal, what a dumb way to go about it. Also, like yeah. you're setting up some flood to be like, no, this will this will affect the rich people and the institutions the like the least. You're gonna get martial law, Correct. so good job with that. And now you have the people, the poor and downtrodden, or just the regular Tom, Dick, and Harrys. The, all the businesses are the little corner store. Well, they're all flooded. Sorry. Housings. So this is something that I guess because the film is obviously saying that he is wrong, like that 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 his idea of how to fix it is just totally wrong, and that the reason why he thinks that this is the way to fix it is because he misunderstands like what the goal of Batman is, but misunderstands it based on mistakes that Bruce has made in terms of the way that he operates. I would say that it is very much on purpose that the revenge against the city uh, screws everything up. Um, I guess it's just that it feels like there is some uh, some weakness. You know, like there. thematically, you're saying it works. Thematically, it works, but the pro I guess it's a question of why is this? I see what you mean. Is this mm. well? So I think the theme is very clear because it, as we find out, I guess we are jumping ahead a little bit. Um, as it turns out, yeah, like the Riddler and his group were thoroughly inspired by Batman. Um, after he gets into a fight with one of the dudes in the place with all the guns. When they ask who he is, he says, I'm vengeance. It's like, oh shit. Like, Batman inspired these people because they do not understand what he's trying to do. And that is his fault, in part, because he all he's focused on is scaring people. There is no idea of, like, inspiring of how we ought to make the world a better place. It is just lash out violently against the people you're opposed to. So, like, the theme of him then deciding, I'm going to blow up the, the, the wall and, like, flood the city. And then at the end, it's like, this is just going to make things worse. It's like, yeah, that's the point. Vengeance isn't actually going to fix anything. We know that it didn't fix anything because at the beginning of the film, we find out crime is still rampant. Like nothing's, nothing's changed on that front. Batman himself hadn't actually done anything to stamp out the institutional corruption um, within the system. All he'd done is beat up criminals. Joke, uh, the Riddler had figured out all of the, uh, the corruption within the system, but the way that he went about fixing it was screwed. Whereas if Batman was a little bit more involved in the affairs of, of what was going on, maybe he could have looked into the renewal fund and figured everything out. Uh, maybe he could have tried to affect change in a more meaningful way. I think that is the intention, but I'm not sure that I would say that it is fully supported by what is in the story in terms of making complete sense. I do like yeah. this movie, just in case you needed a reminder. <laughs> Um, I, I do I do like this film. So, so oh Chaz said these guys wanted an anti-hero but they got a villain and now they're blaming the film for having a genuine villain. So I feel like I love was, it when that, people that was, tell me what I want. That was pretty damn Shut Freudian, up. my friend. You just told us you considered him an anti-hero after he'd fed someone to death to rats. Like <laughs> wow, you've got an interesting point of view. I wish you the best of luck. Secondly, uh, the this person says, uh, I took it as the Riddler wants to kill the new mayor because he sees her as a sellout for wanting to work with the system instead of destroying the system in order to change it. So, Batman does that. Correct. Also, yes. lines to... Lines to... Th th we need lines. We need more, I think, to support this. And I think... Considering how long this film is, it is interesting that we are absent some of these uh, references. Yeah. Which I, I, man, it feels like when you think about this film, it's like it really is for the most part small tweaks, like just an, an extra line here or just calling a little more attention to something here. That like if you make a few minor tweaks, you strengthen the film significantly. Um, but. You know, in the totality, it's like you think about the amount of conveniences and things that are just like not that things that don't line up so very well. It's like, hmm, it is just it's worth thinking about. I never said he was an anti hero. You're treating him as such. I don't know where the fuck you saw in this podcast that we treated Riddler as an anti hero. 
He was no, always the villain. villain. He, he was always the he's clearly he the, villain. the villain. Just because you, what we or, thought was interesting like, about him was that we, he we just said that his he had a code of free. ethics. So so villains can have yeah. motive that makes sense to you. Um, I feel like oh man, do you wonder if like Arcane has changed like because people are like oh well, Silco, you know, I he's think an he's an anti-hero and he had motives and reasons. It's like no, good villains typically have reasons for what they're doing that you can understand. It doesn't mean we. Yeah, you it's like everyone with thinks that the only villain that exists now is Michael Myers, the guy who runs around stabbing everybody <laughs> with no motive. You're just like, no, <laughs> like this, what the fuck? Where are we? What has happened? So, because um, the divide I'm seeing here is, um, antihero is the an antihero is a is a dubious character that makes sense, and a villain is a dubious character that doesn't make sense, which is completely <laughs> not <laughs> what this is. <laughs> A code of ethics um, targeting corrupt villains is a trait of an anti-hero, not a villain. I like how you've skirted by feeding people to rats. Like, we just... Eh, don't worry about that. It's, he's, he's targeting corruption. That's what he's doing. He's just like Batman. Um, I guess to get back on track in terms of talking about what happened. So, yeah, the bombs go off. Everybody's congregating at the... That's like Gotham Square Garden where the mayor was. The new mayor. And um, we're going to get everybody in here. Uh, we need to take care of it and get everything sorted. And then she goes out to like try and calm everybody down. And we see that all of the Riddler's henchmen are up on the roof. They shoot her and hit her in the arm or like the shoulder. She is hurt. So I thought it was the side, gonna, like we... in the middle and the side. I thought she hit in the gut. I, 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 I default to you yeah. guys. Oh, well, left, okay, to, okay. left well, to the gut. So she was shot in a way that was non-lethal, at least with medical attention. Um, and then Gordon comes out and uh, drags her off to safety. Yes, uh, I just wanted to say if we rewind so, just a little bit, I uh, laughed uh, yeah. in the cinema because she's she's gonna go out there and make her speech, and Gordon's like, "Whoa, don't do that! We, you know, it's dangerous out there." And then she's like, "I am tired of people not standing up for what they believe in." She walks out there and gets shot. I was just like, "Oh, jeez, why?" <laughs> well, yeah, because like, and and I thought what was gonna happen was. She actually is like, no, I'm going to do the right thing and try and get control of this and, you know, be, you know, good and a good leader. And so she goes out there and starts making her speech and the guys on the roof are like, wait, OK, this is what we expected. She's actually like, that could have hmm. been interesting. And then they start, yeah, we frame they start the having these They understand sort of that doubts. she has the courage to speak, even though she knows she's about to get shot sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something like that. And so there's almost yeah, there's a moment this, of pause, like, and then Batman oh, drops yeah. in. It's like, well, I still got to stop you, obviously, because look what you've done. And then Batman stops, mm -hmm. jumps in. By the way, is it not a little dangerous for Batman to set off tons of explosives on a glass roof? I was gonna mention and then drop this. down. Yeah, yeah. you, you say it like you know, it's a theory, but it's just like if you watch it, the fucking yeah. shards of there glass. There are some big shards of glass. glass that is yeah. falling on and the ground. Yeah, I thought that was dodgy. There are many. I was confused. I didn't think Batman is going to come down. I was like, "Oh shit!" They put explosives dotty. up there as well. And then, sorry. Is it well? Uh, you're right. The the the, the it, there's a lot to this. It's like he took the time to plant explosives all the way around the roof just yeah, to blow it yeah. all open when he needs to get in himself. What is he doing? Why are you doing this? Is it because it looks cool? It does look cool. <laughs> Uh, but well, man, is it dangerous for the civilians? And it would take you more time than you need to waste to get here. Yeah, and it's not stealthy. That's another thing. I guess it's worth mentioning. Yeah. yeah. Um, if, if your armor can deflect bullets, surely it can tank going through a glass window if you just cover the face hole with your sleeve or something. Uh, and I, sorry, I didn't want to jump too far ahead as well, but uh, on that earlier point, but I don't think Gordon would have let her go out on that stage with what he knows. Yeah, I, I'm not. He, he wouldn't just let her basically kill herself. You know, I I I heard the same thing from a normie film watcher interesting um yeah that they were like you... well, no surely that like the police were just they're just not gonna let her do that and what i, I was, said um... was i guess you can't stop her necessarily can, but he yes would. you can. can well i mean i mean <laughs> <laughs> well i guess uh right like in terms of imminent danger it's for your own you safety ma'am like we cannot out, let yeah. you get out, go out there and she's like let me yeah. go i'm going and you're like no you can't like if like if like like if the, if there's an assassination attempt on the president and wow, he's like no I could yeah. take him and he pulls out a gun or whatever <laughs> he's like a like, cowboy I can I'm take gonna him. take him I'm gonna Dude, get him all and they're president. like Mr President please 
<laughs> we're not letting really you funny do this. picturing Trump or Biden doing that. Both doing of them. <laughs> they, what's I'll amazing is that they would do it for I'll totally handle this different Milwaukee. reasons. I'll handle this Milwaukee. <laughs> I'm fuck yeah. this Milwaukee <laughs> up. Trump, Trump would uh, do it but, because he's just that confident in his own abilities. And Biden would do it just because he's crazy and doesn't know what's happening. Yeah, um, Trump, Trump's like, yeah, sure, I can take on these guys. Fuck I can it. take them. I can fuck it. Who are who? I, who and, How dare know, they? Biden's, <laughs> and there's like, I just, and then Biden the doesn't realize right. there's real danger, right? Trump, <laughs> Trump realizes that there's extreme danger, but he runs, thinks that he is more it, dangerous yeah. than is any dangerous. extreme danger. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Whereas Biden the danger. just doesn't realize that they there's danger. I, they that, that, uh, we have, yeah. Oh, we're the greatest, totally we have, we have the greatest stager, and I, I'm the greatest stager, and I know it, you um, know it, we all know it. <laughs> so it's like, it's like the immovable, it's like the unstoppable force versus the immovable object, but in like the, the, to be, to be I, I just want to make sure that Rag's point got through there, which is that if the gun pulls out a pistol and says I'm going to fight them, the Secret Service just grab him, stuff him into a car and get him out of there. Like, it's like, no. I guess. Yeah, like, have you guys seen the footage of Ronald Reagan, the assassination um, attempt on him, where they get where he's just shot at, and in just seconds, fucking Secret Service is pulling out Mac tens, and he gets shut. He gets shoved into his car so hard he like gets hurt because they 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 speed him out of there. Like it's a uh, imagine it's no joke. Him I guess in the yeah, and they got a very credible something credible threat on her life. So I just don't think. <laughs> Yeah, and by well, the way, the other the other part of this I think that's really worth mentioning is if anyone takes a fucking gander outside, you will see all of the riflemen. Yeah, uh, they're not they're not, they're not mm -hmm. hard to spot um, yeah. from I mean, the stage anyway. It's yeah, because she sees them, and she's like, "Oh shit!" Uh, I wonder if well, at that moment she was like, "Maybe I made a mistake." <laughs> like, it, well, that's <laughs> the thing. If you are gonna have her go up on the stage, the police are gonna go with her at least. At least you'd have the cops go up with her. Yeah, um, yeah I was her on her own. very yeah. disappointed that uh, Gordon let that happen. I don't think he would have, but consequentially, it's fine because, of course, she bleeds out and uh, she dies yeah. as a result of that. But yeah. I, I guess, I guess, here's the thing, though: <laughs> if you've got like you've got like ten <laughs> people up there, how do they all? Well, the worst keep political getting... career, but <clears throat> wait, sorry, well, did you say? So, how do they so all... there, there's like ten guys up on the roof with guns shooting at her while she is slowly. The I, I don't want to say I think slowly. Only one of them shoots. I thought, I thought only one shot and hit her. They, well, so they all have guns and they start shooting at her as Gordon drags her out of the way. Oh shit! I didn't even realize just, that. I am it's, just wondering yeah, how, how, do, how do they, they all miss? miss? How do they all the, miss? You know. The only thing that I could think of is that these are just random people who don't actually know. I don't know, man. He nailed that to, first thought, shot. <laughs> like, yeah, that's the thing. But I'm <laughs> like, I, it's I. Uh, it's it's where like I can like in the Batman fight that's about to happen, which I have issues with. There's some leeway because they're not like trained soldiers or just people who have guns now. But oh, there's oh, we we're we're te we got too much too much stuff is set up to where that's not enough of an excuse to warn everything. Yeah. Hmm. Um. Because if because uh, if it's just random people and they've never shot guns before. And they just think that they're better at this I sort of thing that they, yeah. yeah, like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go out and be a hero and fix the system of blah, blah, blah. But I just like they don't know that you have to do things like sight your scope and actually learn to aim and put things in. And they're just like LARPing as revolutionaries without having any actual applicable knowledge, maybe. But we don't know enough about them. It's, it's a pure guesswork. Do you remember the moment as well where Gordon goes to fire back at them, but he realizes because there's like 30 that there's just no point? Yeah. yeah. Well, and it's just He's like, been in situations try, like try that not before. to die. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 to clarify, yeah. I, I appreciate that decision from him. I think it makes sense. I'm just saying that's how many there are. Like, um, Well, uh, yeah, and yeah, he stops. And then that's when the explosion, Batman jumps in, he does this whole big fight. Uh, fortunately, because all these guys have hooked onto their, uh, the, the yeah. hooks, he can knock them off without having to worry about killing them. Uh, which, which, as, as Cap said, I, I don't know, I, I don't know, it came across as that was why they have it that way, so that he can't kill well, them. Well, so it came across to me as that after it all started happening, because I hadn't quite appreciated it at first. But yeah, that that is probably why they're wearing them, so that Batman doesn't have to kill them. But... He does well, dodge a bullet that then shoots another dude. So, like, yes, you, you know, I guess he is cool with allowing them to kill each other. But even if he doesn't kill them, 
Wow. Yeah. I, I wonder if um, I wonder if talk. I wonder if he watched Batman when, Begins when that he would be like, scene, you know what? That's when fine. When I first watched this scene, yep. Do you want to go? Go for it then. Yeah, well, I, I don't know if you. One heard of what you I needs said, to assert or... dominance. Yeah. All right, I'll do it. Mahler. I'm gonna, did, Mahler, I'm gonna pee on you now. Did you hear what I said or not? Because it, I finished what I said, no, but I if nobody heard me, I, I, I guess I'll repeat I it. legit didn't so actually hear what I you said. said. I wonder if he watches Batman Begins and says, yeah, that's fine. You know what I'm referring to? Or? <laughs> well, I guess, what should he have tanked the shot? No, uh, so, so, so this is the, the clarification, I suppose. There's a really interesting cause and effect argument to be made about, uh, did you cause that person's... See, because what we would say is, it's totally fair. You avoided a shot, that shot went into that other guy, yeah, it killed him, but I mean, you know, that's, you cannot be held responsible. What was your choice? Yeah, what other However, choices, yeah. However, could one argue that you still caused well, them to die? It's just you're not held accountable for it because you're just avoiding your own death. Um, I mean, I would say that these guys sort of caused it themselves by doing this, you know? Like, he, had a, he had a role to play, yeah. Yeah, uh, we, depending on how we you want to get into problem. the... Yeah. Like, do you, when you do I, the trolley problem, do you clear. cause the, the one person to die when you choose to rescue the five? If you yeah, rescue you do. yourself, do you cause the one person it, who yeah, you the have... result to die? And it's just like, I just don't, I think the important part is you're not supposed to be held to some kind of moral condemnation. Yeah, yeah. It's just that yes, you did cause that. At least you had a hand in it. Oh, are we also are we also arguing that Batman definitely knew that that would be the outcome of him dodging? Oh no! There? So I actually think this is pretty chill. Um, yeah, and I think I'm that fine I, with it. I'm yeah, totally like, fine like with I, it. I, 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 oh, it's very the, chill. The only thing I could well, ever so say like, is I wonder if he would. He, it's so I, I'd chill. like his opinion on it. You know, I'd like him to to see see what he if thinks you asked about him, that. It's not yeah. as chill. It's not as chill as what I initially thought was happening in the scene when I first saw it. Um, I didn't realize that the that they had harnesses on, right? I didn't notice that. Um, They're pretty and blatant. I saw with it. that the first time. It is very well, the blatant. The first time, I, I I I guess I just managed to miss something very obvious, right? That's Wouldn't all right. It happens. Time. It does. It's, all, it's, it it's does. like the Kirby thing. And it's the first fine. time, <laughs> the first time, like two of them get thrown off, right? Um, Batman shoots a grappling hook just before. You mean thrown off correctly. So what I think. What I think is what I think has happened. What I'm seeing this is that Batman has shot a grappling hook so it's lodged in their flesh and then thrown them off the side, oh. so they're hanging from the hook. And I'm like, going, Jesus metal. Christ! <laughs> nice. Jay, you didn't and, then, and, then you, and then they keep just being thrown off and hanging there from their harnesses, and it takes me a while to be like. I'm sorry, is he doing this to every guy? Is he shooting them with a grappling hook and then stringing <laughs> them up the hook <laughs> in their flesh? He does hey. uh, tank a shit ton of gunfire again in this scene as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, well, then, but then the last one is that he gets shot with a shotgun and, uh, yeah. yeah. Not, uh, not oh, that's, really, not that really was the, with him. that's the moment for me where I was like, oh, this is. This is a realistic movie, and that's really, really fucking silly and stupid. Sorry, what do you mean? What, specifically? The, when, when he gets shot with a shotgun and he, like, flies through the air backwards. Uh, honestly, I, I wouldn't know what the proper... Well, like, what should have happened? What it... that, that, not that. It's, it's like getting hit by... So if, if you are... Sta let's say you got a shotgun and there's someone right in front of you. If you if you shot someone with enough force to make them fly backwards, what should happen to you? You should fly back as well because yeah. conservation of momentum. Exactly. All oh, right, right, right. So now, if anything, yeah. So it's it's one of those it's it's another big gun thing that in movies that happens all the time where people get shot and they like fly back. It's why a lot of times in video games, if like that will only happen if a, if someone's running forward and you hit them. They might sort of keep their forward momentum and fall down mm. or, or but that's not you, you would have to have some kind of explosive round, something that has more energy in it that isn't involved with the actual shooter. But the shoot, he but it happens so violently that he's thrown back and flies through the air that uh, I was just like, OK, all right. OK, I do think it's worth mentioning, sure. by the way, he spots gunman A and then he spots gunman B notices they're in a line and moves out of the way of B's shot so that it hits A. Um, mm -hmm. As I said, I would love to know Batman's opinion on stuff like that happening. I would also love to know Batman's opinion on working with someone who is using a gun. Okay, uh, Mr. Mixie Spidlick, um, I've well, just got a response for you. Okay. Um, 
Yeah. For every action, there must come an equal and opposite reaction. So you get you fling someone across the room with a shotgun. That shotgun's flinging you backwards in the opposite direction, equal and opposite. I mean, That's why he's it's already being criticized. He's it. already conceded. He said yeah. it's a movie. He's conceded. Okay. Oh, it's a movie. Okay. <laughs> well, in that case, in that in that case, fucking anything goes. Fuck it. You've given up. It's a movie. So fuck it. It's space wizards meant for children. To hell with it all. It's a movie. Good job. It's a movie about road I'm not. Men I'm not. Intended for teenagers. Oh, by the way, this is a very important thing because it puts Batman in an extremely vulnerable position. This is what like knocks him off the platform, it do. and he has to grab. Like this, this particular shot that violates the laws of physics and how he's been treating gunshots up to this point, it puts mm -hmm. him in a position where he needs to be saved by somebody else. Um. Yeah. Can we talk really quick about his no kill rule in general? Because I sure. think in the context I'd love to of talk this, about Batman's no kill rule. In in the context of this final conflict, I think it's stupid that he can't just incapacitate or kill these people. But he doesn't Expect want to, right? Like principally. Are you saying are you saying like he should make an ex an exception because of how dangerous these people are to civilians or Yeah, I think the idea that like there's there's clearly a difference morally in what it does to you as a person when you kill someone out of vengeance and when you kill someone to stop them from killing other people. But that's also what that man has to grapple with. So right? I really want yeah. him to explore that. So, I would love to hear his thoughts on all of this. I, I just I just want to... I don't know... that. Have we done that? In, did we do that in the Nola movies at all? Like him exploring the no-kill... Because, well, he kills people. We, we had... We, he, killed, he killed Harvey to save a child. But, like, uh, that's, that's, a, that's the thing. I can see those events happening. I want him to discuss it with someone. I just want to hear him talk about it. We'll listen to him on the Batcast. Hell yeah. Um, but like, so, and so I that's don't the think thing. it, if a I don't think it be... makes a lot of ethical sense for him to not realize that just killing these shooters to stop them from killing other people well, guys, is we, the obvious thing to do. We have so much chat. You said, nope, Batman doesn't kill. Oh, that's, oh, that's all. Which is actually, which by the way, it. it seems to be against the trend. Uh, Batman does seem to kill. In fact, he 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 tends to kill a lot. In He's, fact, he has killed a lot in the, uh, even many popular iterations. I'm not just talking about Snyder. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, but that's not me. This is the thing. I'm more than happy for him to <laughs> just, just principally said, I do kill. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more happy for him to principally be against killing. I just want someone because what Cap's bringing up, I think, is a really good thing in terms of like, if another, if Catwoman even was like you choosing to spare all these people, do you know how many lives have been lost as a result of that? Or some, you know, the standard uh, Daredevil talk with with Punisher, the really good shit. With Punisher. I just want that to be explored, uh, and preferably before we see the results of all this. But I'm willing to have it be that these are used as arguments against Batman. Um, but yeah, all we're supposed to go on is that he definitely has a rule against killing people, and it's, you know, a little... There's, there's some flumes in this film regarding that. Yeah, he... Yeah. Yeah, um, we... It, I feel like we don't... We don't... People always talk about... It's one of... Some people would even say it is his defining characteristic... Um, others say that it's just an important aspect of his character, and I think that is an important aspect of a character, especially a superhero, especially a vigilante superhero, yeah. especially someone who dresses like a bat. We but in Spider Man, as well, it's we? never, it never mm -hmm. seems to be explored with Batman as much as the others. Like it, on the movies, well, yeah, not in, it, yeah, not in this. We don't. It's it just the film acts like it doesn't happen, or Batman doesn't acknowledge it, and there's no yeah. like, it's not. Given its proper we get weight, the, I feel the him and Catwoman payoff of just like you know don't don't be them essentially. I'm just like oh, I could really use some more on that. Oh, it's a little taste yeah. because yeah, and there's a difference between uh, yeah because he stops her from killing him killing him out of revenge, which is something that she doesn't want to do because the ethical implications of that are vast, right? And there's a difference between trying to send a criminal to jail when they potentially could get out again instead of just killing them. But in this situation, this is about stopping active shooter threats. I feel like the idea that, oh, you can't kill them just seems ridiculous. I it's yeah, because there is there is a there is a massive 
chasm in between some killing indiscriminately or being fine with killing and i will only kill if i absolutely have to mm. that's a huge difference between those two things and a batman who will only kill as a last resort if he absolutely has to is still a very interesting character you know, you practically describe and i think you could, you could say that's cap's sort of position in the mcu from what we saw of him he was like i won't kill but i will if i have to that seems to be what without saying it same for tony though tony's probably way more okay with killing people um but uh batman and mm -hmm. spider-man they tend to try and stick to this as a rule and i just feel like it's got when you put them in these scenarios it's got to be worth exploring right like you gotta yeah get us the the tools to understand it um I don't necessarily disagree with you that uh, it's something he probably should have opted in for, but the fact is, like, if we're really, if he very to the core principally will never take a life, then I guess what we see is it, that's the way he's going to handle the situation. Yeah, it's yeah, not if, a problem. Mm -hmm. I just don't think it makes any moral sense in this context. Wait, sorry, you're saying what? Uh, what? Which part in particular do you not think? Makes I don't think sense? it's a. I don't think it's a problem that he goes out of the way in this particular scenario it's not it's not a problem with the story that he doesn't kill these people but if if you know let's just say god forbid he actually had a gun and was able to take a number of these shooters out in a quick manner it would save a lot more lives and yada yada i think he would be perfectly justified in killing these particular yeah. people in order to incapacitate them it's not a problem that he doesn't i just don't quite understand the no kill the no kill rule in this context it's definitely something that needs to be um explored like his relationship with guns in particular it's not really <laughs> um elaborated on here it's so uncivilized <laughs> <laughs> um if we're i don't know how far this is moving on but are we up to the part where he's uh almost knocked completely out and catwoman yeah. saves him yeah. Well, yeah, because he got shotgun and he's hanging on, and then dude's um, about to shoot him in the face. Oh, well, this I, scene was weird for me. I just can't place this logistically, so you have to help me out. But the part where he's like hanging on with the lights and he gets shot at like two hundred times, I was not. Oh, that we also have that. That was early. Yeah. yeah, we could definitely talk was, about that yeah. if you'd like, though. Well, I don't know what else there is to say other than I was just like, what armor? Damn it. Yeah, just. He really doesn't want to get shot, I guess. So he's and he even shows shot. at one point he gets shot in the hand, and he goes, "Ooh, ow!" Like a nearly, you know, like that hand's done. I rely on this remaining hand, and then he spots the the canister, and he gets the smoke bomb going. And I'm just like, "Oh man!" Like I just don't believe you should be surviving this. I'm sorry. I just, I just yeah. Don't. You're just like just it's, hanging there right in front of them, and they're all shooting you. It's like, come on, do something. Pretend that you're vulnerable. Mm -hmm. You know. I wish. All the little displays go out from all the shots. Like, man, that's a lot of displays that you are do. getting shot right yeah. now. Yeah, and a lot and of them are fucking awful you hit it. It's a great way to see how and many bullets really are being fired at him. Yeah. Yeah, yes. exactly. It's like, oh man, they're really making sure to hit all the other ones they haven't hit before. Maybe the maybe the they just thought it was right cool now. that if they know. shot part of it, it goes out, and so they just wanted to be like, huh. <laughs> it's like it's like popping the little uh the air bubble pack the what's it called Sh the um bubble wrap bubble with wrap. guns and a but guns and a tv screen basically direct parallel mm -hmm. once you pop you, you just can't stop <laughs> correct um by the way by the way are we talking what was the what was the so i guess the point of all the gunners was to just shoot people indiscriminately so, yeah, that's what it we seems that way. Yeah. Have. Does anyone know the definitive reason for what they were there for, other than shooting the mayor? Only that's all I've got. Because they I brought know, like a lot of ammunition. That might be corrupt or whatever. Because they brought, yeah, as Rex just said, they brought like a lot they of ammunition, a lot just, like, of a ammo. whole pile right next to the guy. And the whole point is yeah. that he he knows that if they flood the city, everyone, like the refuge point will be uh, Gotham Square Garden. So he knows it's going to drive a whole bunch of random civilians there. So it seems like, like indiscriminate yeah. killing is the goal, which really I don't does understand. Come across as without it. paying more attention that I actually for a moment there was like, Riddler's plan is to just kill everybody. If that's his plan, yeah. why would you do it like this? If you want to kill specific people. Because a flood is not how you kill specific people. No, a like bullet has man, someone's if... name on it. A flood has to whom it may concern on it. It's it's not a 
It's not like a. It's not <laughs> like a precision a weapon. <laughs> it's just like, well, I guess this flooded the city now. I guess whoever is in the way is just, fuck you. It's people who support the mayor. No, are, a lot of people. So, so when do, 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 wait, 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 the mayor does, does that include this, the this is, is, well, so getting this shot? Is, this is still incorrect because that's the, worse. The garden is identified as a location where a lot of people are going to go to try and escape the flood anyway. So it wouldn't just be people who supported the mayor, even though that alone I don't think is something that Riddler would consider. Because if so, oh, why, we... wouldn't he, why wouldn't he consider anybody who I guess like calls the police ever, you know, to get their help? Oh, they clarified. He's insane. Is... He's insane. There you go. Oh, okay. Man, well, well, oh, oh, can we, can we give the film sense. more credit, please? Like, seriously. <laughs> he, uh, he clearly can we operates please give with the a... film more credit? He operates with a code of ethics up until a certain point, and that's where we start having issues. Yeah, because like, we're comparing his behavior with his past behavior that seemed to be structured and ordered. Yeah, the the issue is that we had something that was strong that has ceased, um, as opposed to it was all just he's insane. I'd like to give the film a little more credit than that. Yeah, uh, did there you, are aspects did of the film that I do appreciate, uh, and I'd rather not just dismiss it as he was entirely insane the whole thing. Yeah, and then he was operating therefore we in lose a lot of the manner. We lose a lot of the cool stuff in terms of how thoughtful and relevant broadly mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the riddles are if we just yeah. say he's insane. Again, I'm going to emphasize it. Give the film more credit. I so, think yeah, uh, the film is plenty of that of credit. We're going to have to with many instances. Are we going to have to bring up Cheryl? Like, uh, you what? can bring. Yeah, if you want. Well, I mean, if you want to explain Cheryl, um, I feel like you could. So, you could use an example like that. Sure. Well, like, uh, there's a when you ever you have a good example of an insane character, they act consistently, right? So, just saying that he is insane is not good enough. How is this consistent with his character as he has been characterized? Well, yeah. Cheryl from Archer is Jinx. so fucking great about this, just because, like, um, she is very consistent. Like, she's an absolutely insane character. Like, she's great. Um. She's one of my favorite characters in the show. Um, she has very consistent things that she is insane about. Very particular ways that she will take certain things. Very certain, like... Um, if you ever mention something about, like, children or pregnancy, or, like, people who are, like... Or, like, she's consistently disgusted by dwarves. Like, that's consistent with her. She's a, she's a crazy person in a very specific way. Well, uh, I, I, not only is that I a good mean, reference, Jinx, but right? yeah, Jinx yeah. feels like the relevant one because a lot of people in Fab Chat would have seen us break it all down. But uh, Jinx is completely fucking insane. Her mind is completely torn to shreds, but she's very consistent. Yeah, like we, we see an event happen or a character say something and then she gets that information and it does something to her directly based off of that. And this happens over and over and over and over. She's not just doing things at random. She doesn't but just people think turn into a different person means, randomly. You don't have to have a character if you're insane. You can just be whatever. It does seem like a get well, out of jail free card for writing it's sometimes weird that with people. That's the dead end every time. It's this makes sense because of this. But what about this? Well, this. What about this? What this? What about this? Uh, insane. Hey guys, guys, guys. Luke and TLJ. He just went insane. Well, the, they would argue that's unfair because Luke wasn't characterized as insane, while the Riddler is clearly but characterized as insane. But he was insane. insane, though, in that film. But no, but he went insane between films. Yeah, okay. He <laughs> developed a mental illness. I don't know, it so just feels like such a cop-out. So if anyone in chat is not getting And actually, no, he was insane. He was always insane. It's just that, you know, he was insane um, because um, it, it just, his character didn't, he didn't violate his character until a certain point, and that was because he was insane. It was old, that's how the Riddler so, works, you know. right? So, so, so for those in chat not getting the distinction, insane does not mean inconsistent. It means it means your it means your mindset is complying to a different version of reality. But that doesn't mean that that reality doesn't have its own set of rules that you are therefore following. Does that make sense? Well, and we know that he does have rules because you don't spend this long planning out something and concocting riddles that are thematically appropriate in in universe as well. I mean, as well as out doesn't matter in universe. Like you don't do these things if there isn't some kind of through line in your mind of what you're aiming to achieve as something that you've thought about for a while. I do not think the Riddler is insane. Yes, 
but that doesn't mean that he is inconsistent that he ought to be inconsistent with himself yeah, and I just think you, it makes him a hell of a lot less compelling if it, our answer for a lot of the decisions he makes in this film is just, I don't know, he's, he's nuts. Like, oh. I don't even think that's what the film wants you to think. I don't think like, so, Like, he no. is insane. Yes, this is an yeah. inconsistency. I think the film is trying to present a character who is obviously not comporting with uh, reality in the same way that we are, but has some sort of clear motive. But, um, yeah. He's, um... um He's, he's losing it, Mr. Bootman, when he gets pulled up by a Catwoman. And, and yeah. then, then they have a little kiss. And then she gets dragged off by a Riddler crony who takes a very long while to figure out how it is he's going to kill her. No, 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 no. He, he tries to stab her. Exactly, um, that's what I'm saying. Blocking... What do you mean, takes a really long... So, so, she pushes her back. <laughs> so, com so comparatively, had he shot her... Yeah. True. Why did he grab her? <laughs> Why didn't he just shoot her in the back? It's very yeah. odd to me like that it. he's like, I am going to gut you like a little fish after I drag you away, <laughs> sit on top little, of your it's like, bit, uh, okay. It's, it's a little awkward because you didn't need there to be another bad guy. Um, the only reason you would have that is the adrenaline so that yeah. he beats him up really bad. I, think, I, I, don't, I don't think you need that. Yeah, yeah because I don't know anything we, we all know why they've done this. Like, it's... A, we know a, a, why, It yet. makes for very Oh, no, has he gone too film. far? Forget about it. Yeah, and, the, the, oh, and it does the, make... when you drive Batman to his to his edges, you start to be like, oh, shit, like, who is this guy? You know, and I, I love all that. I just wish it were... You know, you, you could literally have it. had it so that the guy shot her. No, they, she... they do do something with it, Rags. It's just that I he think... They do. They do. They do. <laughs> I mean, because because obviously the goal is uh, he gets very very mad in conjunction with getting that adrenaline shot, pummels the dude so bad, like needlessly, and then takes off the mask. It's the guy he met before. Who are you? I'm vengeance. It's like ah, uh, that's the point. Yeah, I think that there are other ways that you could do that without the bad guy forgetting that he can just grab a gun and shoot her. I think well, like that. There once are again, other, I think we've already got enough, right? Tweaks. Like if we. You see the yeah, guy. Yeah, exactly. The guy could even shoot Catwoman. It hits her in the shoulder or whatever, and Bruce takes that actually as she's been. She might have been killed. She just like you know she falls to the side. So he injects and goes fucking ham on this guy. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um. Mm -hmm. It feels like there are a couple of things you could tweak that would just immediately fix the problem while retaining the uh the cool idea uh there. Because yeah, I because personally I think that it's a really cool idea and downright bold to have the villains be directly inspired by Batman yes. because of the way that he's operating. I think that is a great mm -hmm. idea. Um, and I don't even feel like it isn't fully supported by what's here. I think that there are, I think that there are plenty of references. It's just that there are things that are amiss. It isn't as strong as it could have been, but it's a, it's a great uh, idea and it's super relevant in terms of theme too. Yeah. Yeah. Like I think what so, was, um, I want to make it clear. <laughs> Them as henchmen or Riddler's henchmen. Is your thing about this? Is this my thing's about this. Or, uh, yeah. <laughs> my thing. My thing is it's about the in injection. Okay, so okay. give me a sec because my thing's directly following from Frank's. The Riddler henchmen, being that they hate <laughs> this fucking city's corruption, they're inspired by him as a leader to then take out the corruption, and they see that like, hey, Batman's kind of doing this too. Like, I think that's good enough for me. Um, there's just other elements, especially with Riddler, that don't sit well. Yeah. Um, have we? So, Sam, read the comics. Have we done in any of the live action films that the villains are directly inspired by Batman? Um, I don't think so, right? We have not up until this point. No. I don't yeah. think so. Like the, with the Joker in the Dark Knight, there's the question of escalation, but he's not directly yeah, yeah, inspired. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's something that is often considered in Batman the idea that his existence invites other people. To to like it invites this type of it's it's like Vision said in Civil War right like our strength invites uh, challenge it's like the idea that Batman kind of the the villains will arise in response to him but this is different it's that the villains arise because they are inspired by him they want to be him mm -hmm. and the reason why they want to be him is because the way that he conducts himself as Batman is not the right way and then we see. Afterward, like, because uh, I guess I'll, I'll just run through what happens now. The the flooding happens. The entire place is flooded. There is an exposed electrical cable um, dangling above the water. And uh, he decides he's going to oh, jump, wait, chop I... it. 
Jay's thing. Oh, oh, Jay. Yeah, sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, this isn't exactly important. Um, it's just a little story I have to tell. Is that on the way out of the cinema, right? One of the people I was there with had to go to the bathroom. So the rest of us, you know, we stood, you know, stood around and waiting for him. And as we were standing there, these two girls came out of the cinema. Um, and one of them said, what do you think? Uh, what was it that he injected him into, uh, into himself? I didn't get it. And the other girl just looks at her and says, hey, it must have been Kame. And I was like. <laughs> <laughs> I could picture you being very Kame. happy with hearing that. <laughs> um, we, we is, up I, I didn't that... actually I didn't actually hear it my friend heard that and then told me that that's what had been said have we brought up the fact that mostly everybody is like adrenaline but there is the theory of course that it's venom venom yeah, well I yeah, mentioned yeah, that yeah, I think it was green, green right I mentioned that way it's earlier green. I think because we had a little tangent about goo ah well, uh, yes. yeah, like the yes, implication being, of course, that he would have taken well, maybe you taken did Bane in for out like ten in, minutes. We tried to stop you. Um, maybe um, in in year one, or that you know, it's just I don't know. Maybe, I yeah. I think it's a neat idea to think about that he maybe defeated Bane and he kept some of the venom as a venom as a backup. Out, yeah, yeah, it's kind of neat. Yeah. Um. So I guess I uh, also liked uh, that he had like a little a little thingy to open up. To a little the compartment, gen, yeah. Because yeah, it's yeah. all armor, but he had like a little, I don't know, like clip thing? I don't know what you want to call it. It was a little hole that he could it was use. Like a little hole, basically, yeah. Like the petrol thing for a car, isn't it? Kinda. A bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah a cap. It was like a cap. Um, yeah. Cap, yeah. So, it was good. We're talking about, that. We talk about the theme of the film and how, at least, a, or, or like what we've seen so <laughs> far, that he is... <laughs> He he's he's been fighting people, beating people up. He hasn't done a lot of saving, and uh, I mean, he started to do it a bit more now towards this point because of recent revelations. But um, this just hammers home. It's like, oh damn, you inspired these people because like the way that you are doing this and being Batman is not you're you're doing it wrong. Like making people afraid, that's okay, but like that doesn't change anything on its own. Um, and so to jump on, I'll cut the Y, which it probably should have killed him, but that's just another example of plot armor of many in the film. What do you mean? Because um, of the really? electrocution? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I if, mean, it, if it had enough charge to kill several people in the water, then it should have killed him several times over, surely. Unless we assume that his suit is super duper good at, like, stopping that. It's full uh, Yay! Yeah, that's yeah. God. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, I feel like this is a good time to mention, I, um, I felt tricked by this film in one way, because the first fight I felt was really grounded, and he's showing him getting punched in the back, in the back of the head while he's fighting other thugs, going, ah, you know. I was like, oh, this film's gonna do great in this regard, isn't it? And then I was like, fuck me, this film is filled with plot armor. It is significant. It's like, got a huge. lot of plot armor. Yeah. But it kind of did the Suicide Squad um, thing, but I guess where to, they to, mowed to down all the people at the beginning to give the impression that uh, their that plot armor was not going to exist in the film, and then plot armor was rampant. And, and then just I, in that in that mowing down, three the the, the plot character the plot put the, the plot important characters all survive, and it's just like we survived somehow. Yeah. I guess to, <laughs> to 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 round out the point though, oh, wait, that to, once he's to, 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 yeah, so, someone. I think feels they've counted you. Uh, the the wire was insulated, so it's fine. He gets electrocuted. He gets zapped. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it gets stuns him. That's why he, he that's falls. That's why he lets go and falls yeah. in. And that's why everybody's yeah. scared that he might not come back out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why they do the dramatic shots of like Selena and, and yeah. Jim looking. It's not because of the fall. It is because of the electrocution. Yep. Um, yeah, he's survived plenty of falls. So that should that be fall fine. wouldn't be <laughs> that well, fall uh, Yeah. So, the batarang is metallic as well. I feel like it's important to like. Yeah, he got electrocuted. You you, you rewatch the film. Um, pretty pretty really clear. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yep. Definitely. Yeah. Clear. The Very flood. Clearly. I want to I want to talk about the flood really quick because they Which make one? a point of saying that the Gotham uh, Madison Square Garden, whatever the fuck that, that this is called, is the safe point. Right. Everyone should come here because it's the highest point in this region, it except reminds... for the floor of this stadium is below street level. Oh, it pools. Well, so it, this reminds <laughs> me, do you, in the day after tomorrow, we got to get to the library. It's like, what about just any number of these very tall buildings right next to you? <laughs> no, the uh, library. It's not, it's not, no. it's a place it's that's not harder to insulate any by other the way. building. Yeah, it's, it's below street level. This is not helpful. Like, 
Well, uh, the water something that, it, rushes something that in. is worth noting, though, is that uh, they didn't close the uh, the doors. To br- that was something that was mentioned that they didn't want to leave people outside. So I don't think they were given enough time to close what I would presume. Any other like. tall building? Any well, other no, tall no building. I, I, I totally, I, I, I do agree in terms of there are other safe places to go in this area. This is not a safe place at all. Well, no. Well, well I wait. mean, if you had like steel reinforced doors that you can close to lock it in, then you and would be safe. On, um, and you can fit a lot of people. Didn't they go to the roof of this place by the end of the film? Like, they yeah. did. Was the that the plan? The film, I think that was yeah. the plan, right? That might well have been the plan to coordinate to get them on the roof because that would have been safe. And there's a lot of space up there. But, um, yeah, maybe. I guess I don't disagree with the idea well, that it's like. Did the mayor don't... try to give like a speech downstairs though? So like, uh, true. To rally uh, give your speech to... as you all go to the roof. Is Unless that... the speech was go to the roof, that seems a bit awkward. Well, what, what what I think the point should be here is that you probably shouldn't have put out a big thing of everyone come to Square Garden. It should have been everyone get to a high place now. Any building yes. that has stairs, yes. yeah, that you can go higher up. Um. Step on a Kirby. Uh, so, um, I guess to, I'm gonna. St- I reckon I'll start from the beginning. So, uh, we we have a, uh, we've we've now come in, uh to the end in terms of like, oh yeah, they were inspired by you. The way that you operate is not is just uh, um, bad essentially. Um, and then once he falls down into the water, we see basically like the first clear instance of him just flat out helping people, uh, and nothing more than that, just helping people, getting them out of the wreckage, leading them to safety. Um, I love that moment. I think it's great. Feels like, uh, feels like we are doing the, um, that it's very clear to us at this point what the arc of this film is for Bruce, as well as the broader theme, which is that what it means to be Batman is not just to scare the shit out of people, it's to help them. And this becomes clearer, like, I guess we're jumping a little bit ahead at the end on the top of the roof when he's trying to help people get to safety and cooperating mm-hmm. with, like, the National Guard to save people. And I believe, because one of the people he rescues in the water is the kid, and I think it's the kid that he takes to to be, uh, to be lifted out yeah, mm-hmm. and it's as simple as a gesture as he puts his hand on your arm and you put your hand on his. It's just like, yep, I'm here for you. I'm helping. It's like, damn, I really love this as a uh, as a, a message. Yeah, honestly, like seeing him with that kid and uh, having the the focus on his empathy for for orphans and everything. I'm I'm just like, please give this guy a Robin for the love of God. Give him a Robin. <laughs> I want to see like the. I'm a, I, I would be okay with seeing that at this point. Yeah, I think I think it could work even in this grounded universe. Absolutely. That and they mentioned there. Bloodhaven. Can't give means, the Robin his original yeah. they didn't mention outfit. Bloodhaven. True, they did they mention <laughs> Bloodhaven. Well, so something we didn't bring up but was brought up on Friday Night Tides, I just didn't spot it. Apparently Hush was pretty heavily implied in this. I think there was uh, a I Hush, reference, Hush yeah. mentioned once, yeah. Um, and I think. As was disappointed because he thought that the film was trying to tell us that um, Hush was actually behind Riddler. Um, and that, because the, the, Riddler said, uh, I'm an instrument. Um, but they they didn't mm. uh, do anything with that yet. Uh, we might get him next movie, I guess. But he thought that it was going to make the film congeal a bit better to reveal that Hush was uh, puppeteering a lot of it. But I wouldn't know. I just wanted to make sure it was mentioned because I feel people would be like, why didn't you bring up Hush? You know, our favorite from Batwoman. There are some parallels to the Batman Hush storyline, specifically the the Riddler's role in that. Um, not it's it's nowhere near being um, a faithful adaptation, but there are definitely parallels. Yeah, um, um, to draw. There's a lot of fan love for Hush's uh, position in Batman's story, or at least from the ones that, that he was involved with. And so, yeah, you know, for for the people out there who are hoping for a good Hush adaptation, it's like, yeah, maybe next time. I don't know. We'll have to see. <laughs> we'll get him next time. <laughs> get him next time. Bat- get him next time, Batman. Um, oh, yeah, I guess uh, that brought us to now the state of affairs is a good portion of the city is flooded. Martial law, National Guard are here. Um, I remember when I saw that, I was like, hmm, are we doing a... I can't remember what the exact run. It was the Snyder uh, Capullo uh, run where, like, there was... Wasn't it like Gotham was... Uh, it was like a sort of a wasteland city, or like a abandoned. Ah, oh, damn! I can't remember what it was called. Hold on. Oh, no man's land. Hold on. Uh, zero year. That oh, was zero what it was year. called. Oh, yeah, yeah, I saw that. I'm like, huh? I wonder if that's what they're doing. Maybe it is. Um, okay. Could, that could uh, be interesting. 
Yeah, it could be that on No Man's Land where um, no Gotham Man's was Land. rocked by a huge earthquake that basically separated it from the rest of America, um, and they had to like deal with supply shortages and escape from Gotham. Well. I could see both of those being options to explore, which is cool. I think that's uh, that's, we haven't seen that before in the films. No. Um, but uh, yeah, like it, the, his arc has basically come to its natural conclusion, and then we. we uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what? 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 That? what? <laughs> his, his arc has basically come. <laughs> and then... like the that I heard the laughter, I was like, okay. <laughs> Carry on, it's fine. I'm sorry. I just thought it was funny and I laughed. I didn't mean it didn't, it just spiraled out of control. It was just, it was just an innocent laugh at you. you know, said. There's really no. I wasn't really? even about to laugh about it, but everyone else started laughing. <laughs> it's not my fault. No one would have stopped if anyone else said. I wash my hands of this. Come. Yeah. Wash my hands of this cup. I wash my hands of your cup. <laughs> See? Uh, it wasn't um, me. Don't blame me. So I, I guess something that's worth mentioning now is that there is the implication that the penguin is free to take over because he's not in jail. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's people out there uh, who are like, yeah, you know, because the place is in chaos. Well, it's like, fuck you, the Riddler's in jail. <laughs> He's just sitting yeah. there. Or Penguin just. And Penguin was once, caught so. twice, and he's still not he there. He was never before caught. All they happened. never arrested him. <laughs> He's just doing whatever he wants. They left him to waddle around like a penguin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and so the last we get the final scene of the film. Um. Selena is at her mum's grave and wait, wait, wait! You're missing a scene. Uh, Am I? Takes place at Arkham. Oh, yeah, right. That's right. That was. Uh, oh yeah. yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Riddler, Riddler's in prison, uh, but the Joker is a couple of uh, cells over, and they're going to be good old buddies in the next room, probably. <laughs> or apparently, they're doing uh, an Arkham really Asylum show. On it felt real HBO cringe to me. me. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, so I think my thought when I was watching it is, can we like? Can we hold the brakes on bat on our Joker a little bit? Can we like? Yeah, um, I was. There, I kind of got the whole villains. Joker again. There again? are other every villains goddamn in Batman's time. Works gallery. Yeah, every time. Actually, this, <laughs> like, this Joker. Wanna... All that this Joker persuaded me of with his brief appearance is like, oh, my, my initial reaction was, oh, I wonder who they've got. Like, uh, this is Joker cast reveal. I was like, I didn't recognize the guy, and all he persuaded me with with his like thirty seconds was that the performance was cringe. <laughs> well, apparently that Joker um, actor was in Eternals. So yeah, it was. was. Uh, yeah, he played uh, Druig. I think his name was. Um, yeah, he's been in some good movies though. Okay. He was in. Uh, he was in the Green Knight. Uh, more than Rags, if you remember, he, he was. was uh, he was the guy who ambushed the them and took their sword. Yes, ah, he was in gotcha. the killing of the sacred deer. He's in a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. Killing Barry uh, Keegan. That's his name. Yeah, um, he's Irish. Oh, Barry uh, Keegan. I guess we'll see that in the next film. You um, need to have Joker in the Batman movies. All right. You don't. You don't have to. Who said that? Who you, said that? You can have other. No, who the fuck don't. Said that? <laughs> fuck <laughs> off. I'm <laughs> sick of Joker. I'm fucking. Bring that more... person to me. I want totally... Scarecrow and all that stuff. Yeah, I, I no, would. I, I would be totally cool. Yeah. With Mr. Whole Freeze, please. Give me yeah, Clayface. Yeah, uh... Or Hush, I want a legit, yeah, yeah like mm. horror movie with, with, with would Batman. Would Mr. Freeze and be too sci-fi to fit into the setting we've established? Uh, uh, it's stylized enough that I think you could um, stretch it because you've got stuff like the fictional drugs and. Um, Whoa, you could just have like Clayman not actually. Maybe he's just really good at making masks, except not cringe like uh, like uh, in except Batman. Not cringe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like I don't know. Um you got a lot of options and it's just like we don't have to keep doing joker like we don't have to keep bringing him in um but uh yeah i don't know uh and then hbo max show is it there are going to be multiple hbo max shows more, more based than, off of this film yes in this mm. universe Ew. separate from the dc eu yeah, they're doing a penguin Man, show. That might get, it's Gotham. probably going to get confusing, isn't it? it? It might. Well, I mean, we'll have to see, right? Because the Flash is going to be super important in terms of like the other, the the other universe, the actual, the main one, <laughs> the DCEU. Which I would be surprised if there was more investment in that than uh, this specific universe at this point. Um, who knows though? Uh, well, yeah. So the final scene is Selena's at her mom's grave. 
Batman shows up. They have a chat. She's going to be leaving town. She asks him to come with him. Uh, asks him to come with her. Uh, <laughs> and, um, yeah, he, he ain't leaving. He's going to try and save Gotham. She thinks it's beyond saving. He doesn't because he's got a renewed sense of focus and hope for the future. Um, and then they go their separate ways, but not after going on a little <laughs> motorbike <laughs> ride together. Yeah, um, which I which I quite like as a sequence. Wait, really? I do. Yeah. Oh, what, I did. What's the problem with it? <laughs> it's not. It's not it's like fucking gay. Object. No, it was. It no, felt a little bit like they there. said their goodbyes and then they left in the same direction. You know? Yeah, it's, it's that awkward <laughs> moment when you like say goodbye to your friend and everything, and realize you have to walk down the um, rest of the hallway well, it, together. Or I don't something. know. To me, to, me, to me, it just feels like this is the real goodbye as they go like driving in the same place together, and then they split yeah. off right at the end. They go in their I separate know. ways. I yeah. Considering I, how long the movie felt by that point, I I was like, you could cut this. You could. She could leave. You could cut on the scene of him with the skyline behind him. Boom. End of movie. I don't, I, I guess I just I don't see how we lose anything by having having the scene. I I don't see how we get anything. No, we don't lose game. anything, but except for time, um, except for precious I'm, time. I'm going to agree with Fringy. I We've really like it. Variety. I like it. Yeah, it's very, I'm fine very with it. Poignant. I'm fine with it through the graveyard. And uh, someone in chat said something interesting, which is it seems like they were each hoping that the other would change their mind. It's like, yeah, maybe, maybe, mm -hmm. the, maybe there is the implication of that because she turns one way and he's going the other. That is the decision. They are going their separate ways. He's gone back to save Gotham. And then that's the end. We did it. Seven hours. Uh, yeah. yeah. Bum, 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 yeah. bum, bum, That's the music. I guess so. Bum, 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 Fun. So, um, something I, I figure it might be worthwhile to see how you all feel about the movie after having talked about it. We do an order. There was an after credit scene, a really short one. Oh, was there? The I, was, yeah. I didn't care. Wait, there was? It yeah, was it was a really more... short one. Yeah. Do you want to explain what it is? Yeah. I, I mean, I can tell you what it is. I don't know what it said, though. So it's basically... Uh, you remember when he opened the URL, when Batman opened the URL with the Riddler thing, and you had like the little question mark and like the terminal, the computer terminal. It was basically something like this appeared, and in the middle of the screen, there was the question mark, and then did it write something out? I already forgot. He said goodbye. It was like um, the it, it was, was goodbye like... question mark. Yeah, goodbye question mark. Then it and then quickly it was like flashes a, little... a URL on screen or something. Oh, it was the URL. I only saw like blah, 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 and I couldn't see what it was. I think it was the Rada a lot of thing again. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and then that, that's it. Um, well, why don't we uh go left to right this time? Yay! Capital. How do you feel now after having talked about it? Capital cap. Uh. There were I, I learned new problems I hadn't noticed. So I everything that I liked about it, I still liked, and I didn't really find much that I, I didn't appreciate the first time. Um, so I'd say uh, six, six, five or six out of ten, maybe question mark. I don't know. I liked it. I could see myself watching it again at some point, which is more than I can say for most DC movies. So. I it think was the rewatch would benefit you personally. I thought that the rewatch was super helpful in terms of clarifying a lot of things. Um, yeah, and also I can appreciating that. I, th I think what I would say is that there are certain elements that I think, with a knowledge of where they lead, you can gain a better appreciation for like the double meaning of some of the riddles. Certain things that we set up really early on that we come down back to later. Um, I think, I think it doesn't come through in a discussion when you're talking about especially when the plot is, there are a lot of moving parts in this film. Um, it can be hard to keep track of them all at once. And when you're trying to lay it all out as you go, I think trying to figure out all of the mechanics can mean that it somewhat overshadows um, the other aspects of the film that are, are strong. Um, to which, I suppose, if I can go next, I think I'm... I think... 
I am at a five. Uh, whereas I think before I was a little bit higher than that. Um, because the plot, there are a lot of problems stemming from it. What about you, Jay? Oh, I, I've got to agree. Um, I came into this assuming that we would probably all end up at around like a seven or an eight. Um, Damn. and then this conversation has led me to notice a lot of problems that, like, not only that I had thought might be there, but I just hadn't registered, but because like, I... I, I remember saying, like, going into this, that I was completely happy to accept there might be lots of problems with the plot that I hadn't noticed. Um, but I didn't realize that we would absolutely annihilate a lot of the action scenes, which was something I was very ready to praise this film for nailing. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I thought, I thought we were going to end up with this in a, lot, a much higher position than we did. I don't want it to be, like, understated how interesting the production is right it's not just like it's not it's i it's certainly just, respect this film a lot I do. Yeah. I, um yeah i think that's something i would make clear i respect it from a craft perspective it's fucking amazing the acting is great and even with the issues in the writing there is a clear deliberateness <laughs> to it that comes through there are just things that need and and like so many of these things it's like a minor tweak um you know, a, a little change, maybe one or two extra lines, just change a little bit, and then I think it would just improve it tremendously. Yeah, um, I, I think <clears throat> this doesn't feel like the normal kind of praising production where, hey, the effects are good and it, it looks pretty. It's like, no, it's it's something more than that. The production is something of its own. It, it's a There's unique style and it's it, yeah. say very well is, realized. I would it's, say that it's, it's more than just the effects looking good, yeah. It, it's more than just the effects looking good and the individual shots being pretty. It, it's something much more than that. And I, I don't want it to be understated how valuable I think that is. Um, on the other hand, the writing problems, I think, probably take it to about like a five or a six. So what do you think? that's what do you where think? I leave it. Um, what do you think, Muse? I think this film has a fucking excellent soundtrack. That Gotham is this wonderfully realized world, and from like yeah, the we never really talked about that. I don't to think. the atmosphere, to the just every the buildings, the everything about mm -hmm. it, it felt real. This is probably my favorite Gotham, with maybe yep. some exception. If I could, find, I'd have to rewatch the others, but I'm pretty sure it's my Batman favorite. Batman and Robin, Gotham. obviously. Hell yes. <laughs> Uh, top, <laughs> top fucking notch cinematography, gorgeous performances, and a pretty solid thematic through line. But Batman oh, wow. has problems with the no killing characterization and his regard for civilian life. Riddler's plan, partial nonsense, and opposite to what I think he believes in at times. Uh, and he makes several decisions that come across as not thought out at all, despite being incredibly important to just everything that we're considering in, in the grand scheme. Will building regarding, like, Gotham PD seems floompy at best related to Batman, and it provides him great access to the case, along with the plot basically bending in general constantly to allow Batman to do everything he needs to do. Um, and then... Uh, any... Then there's the plot armor. It's absurd, and it fucks with my understanding of his approach to, like, all situations as a man who uses the shadows and stealth and gear and intelligence, but he barges it everywhere he goes and just tags every bullet he can find. And that's on top of making me unbelievable. Like, I can't believe that he's ever going to be in trouble with anything. In fact, if he would be significantly hurt, I just get confused. Like, I, just, I don't understand what it, they're trying to tell me. So, with all that in mind... Uh, I I think I'm gonna have to agree with Cap. I am stuck between five and six. Uh, I think we're dealing with such a mixed bag here. It's insane. Like I, there's so much I like. There's so much I don't like, and um, I just don't I don't quite know what to do with it. You know, because it's interesting. I think that the easy thing to bring up right now is like, oh wait, so it's a similar score to No Way Home, a film that fucks with the multiverse and assassinates Doctor Strange. And I'm like, yeah, I think it might balance out to be similar because of the fact that. Uh, we've got a lot of damage to a lot of people in this film, I think, characterization-wise, and the plot, and the world. Um, while No Way Home, as far as we were concerned, Strange was the only one that was damaged, and then they brought in characters from legacy franchises and gave them arcs. Like, there's some impressive character work for the limited time they had for different people. Trying to make this make sense with our scale, I mean. 
I think Which would you rather rewatch? I don't think that's a fair question, Rags. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, it's not fair. Obviously, No Way Home. I, um, so, yeah, I think... I think I could be argued to six. I could also be argued to five. Um, suppose I was really hoping I'd enjoy. I did enjoy this film. I really did. In fact, I think my score from the moment of finishing it was like a high seven, like like near eight. Um, it's just that the more I thought about it, the more I think it falls apart. Uh, unfortunate, because my god, this film's got a style, and I really wanted it to be awesome, like like ten out of ten, awesome, you know. Um. What do you yeah. What do you think, metal? The metal is up. Uh, uh, Mala said all the things. Uh, no, it's uh, this one was weird for me because when I got out of the cinema, I was like, I don't know. Like I get, I liked it. I guess I think it's pretty good. And now we talked about it, it's like, oh, there's a lot of not so good in this. Because uh, as I said earlier, I wasn't really super paying attention. I was just kind of watching the movie, and I realized the plot armor stuff. I, Definitely the contrivances already, but it was the most things I've seen. So I was like, "Oh, this is probably going to be pretty, pretty, pretty well rated." I think after we talk about it. But yeah, now that we went through all of this with the plot being floompy, uh, the whole PD stuff uh, again, it's like, yeah, it was... I think I think I think too, it like evens out like a five, five point five ish. I would I would say. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I wonder if I want to rewatch it at some point. I think it'd be interesting to watch it with a with a closer eye. Maybe if it's out for streaming or whatever, or available on DVD, I can pause it and even take some notes. Because I I thought I got to cover it as Metal's Forge as well, but now I'm like I don't. I think I need to rewatch it and really really watch it to do it properly. Uh, because. As we said, there's like a lot of moving parts, and I forgot a lot of the movie right after I watched it, and it was just like a whole feeling thing where I was just like, "Oh yeah, this, this, I think it was pretty cool." But yeah, that's yeah, I think that's that. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I did it. What do you think, Rags? Thinking that, listening to everyone else, um, I guess I walked out of the first viewing with my initial impressions probably being the most close to my uh the score that i'll give it now um i know when i left the theater i was just like ha, ha, you know i was i'm glad i saw it i appreciate it but i didn't really feel strongly for this movie either way which is odd because watching the trailer it it gives the impression that you'd either love it or hate it but i really was just like eh, you know it was a movie um and i and i think i'm I think last night when we were talking, I was I said it's anywhere in the four to six range. Uh, I think I'm just going to settle on a five. I think for all the good it does and all the bad it does, it just kind of evens out. Um, I appreciate a lot of the shots. The music's great. The acting's good. Um, I think, you know, Fring, you were saying thematically, there's a lot of great, uh, great stuff in here. But there are a lot of the conveniences and contrivances, a lot of the inconsistent character stuff. It, uh, a lot of the, a lot of plot issues, a lot of plot issues um, kind of makes it to where I think it evens out and lands square in the middle at a five out of ten. But I would say it is worth a watch. And meme. Um, well, I'd say uh, um, what I, I'd say um, th uh, this is about what I expected um, to happen, where um, I only had the one viewing ahead of time. Um, and so hearing out the plot issues and everything, it's definitely bringing into perspective what really worked and what really didn't. And I think um, a lot of what I um, thought really worked still uh, basically works. There's some character stuff in there that I didn't catch on the first viewing. It's like, uh, uh, like there was some stuff with the Riddler I already thought was dodgy, but now it's kind of more coming into perspective um, how many issues <clears throat> that character has. Um, and of course, uh, some of the, uh, some of the, the, the plot armor is even worse than I thought it was. And I, and I already thought the plot armor was pretty bad. Um, so I'd say it's definitely around, um, I'm, 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 I'm about between a five or a six, um, on this. I definitely need to rewatch it again, but at the same time, I'm still, this is like a version of Batman. I can be excited to see again. I think Robert yeah. Pattinson might 
be my favorite live action Batman, having gone back through all the other films now. Um, and thematically, I think this is probably the most fertile ground for Batman to grow because he is um, developing into the character that I think a lot of us are familiar with. And I think you can say that a lot about this world, the Penguin you can see that he's an earlier version of the more familiar character, Catwoman, an earlier version of what we're more familiar with. And I'm and I'd be interested in seeing that grow. And like honestly, like it is a more grounded setting, but I think it's stylistic enough that it can go in a lot of different ways. Um and I, it's honestly a shame to me that we're continuing to have to carry around the bloated, festering corpse of the old DCEU when I feel like <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's, <laughs> especially thematically a Batman who is now opening up to working with others and opening up to being um, more than just the, the broody one. I feel like this is, that's almost like a perfect setup to eventually work with other heroes and stuff like that and have a, a like, I want this Batman to meet a Superman that's also really well realized, but I just don't, I don't think that's going to happen. But I, I think, I think that if you, you, if you were to give me a choice between where the DC you actually started and this film, I, I would take this film in a heartbeat. But even without that, I I would still love to see this Batman go up against um, all kinds of different foes. I, I think they need to work out their plot issues. They need to definitely, I think, I definitely think there's a lot of valid criticisms that need to be taken into account. But at the same time, I also think this is a far more refined product than I'm used to seeing out of Hollywood nowadays. And it's very clear that they did um take their time in a lot of aspects it's just um there are obviously parts of the script um and the execution that are still um deficient um that that need to be um ironed out in in future installments um but i would say subjectively i'm basically still the same i came out of it subjectively really liking it at about a high nine and please note, i was going in so burned out on batman because he you just open up any streaming service that has dc films you type in batman you get assaulted with Batman stuff, it's ridiculous. Yet, despite that, I found something, as, and I wasn't even that excited for this one because I was skeptical from the trailers and everything, but the fact that I had all of that and I was still able to enjoy it that much, um, I, I think there's, um, it, did, it definitely did something right for me, even if there are a lot of issues that need to be ironed out. So I think that's my, that's my final thoughts there. I think you and I line up similarly in terms of the enjoyment because it appeal this version of Batman appeals to me quite a lot, and I would be super happy to see again another attempt at a detective story as the focus yeah. and a continued oh, yeah. and yeah and a continued exploration of what it means to be Batman. Like, what is it? What does it mean in terms of how Bruce ought to go about being Batman? And I can see, I can see very clearly in my mind a future for this particular series that could be really great in terms of aspects of the character that we can explore um i am i am excited for the next batman film despite the issues present in this film i think uh i yes, think it's great it potential we've got here great. great potential absolutely absolutely yeah definitely I like I remind everybody the rest of the dcu scores at like a three at most with us and most of the just catastrophic. Um, this and Suicide <laughs> well, I mean, Squad if, have if similar this, scores, I guess. If this were in the DCE, you would be that it would be. Uh, I guess if you put it up with the Suicide Squad, it's like it's the contender for the strongest film by like a margin that is appreciable compared to the rest of the content in that universe. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess obviously compared to Joker, it's like Joker is. Though I saw Jay, you tweeted this, and I. Totally agree that it's like it feels like with Joker and the Batman that they've kind of managed to nail a sort of gritty vibe. Yeah, in, in these they've, stories, they've cultivated a style that mm. they have. seem to like. I th I could see people going from like going to a DC movie expecting something along these lines. Not necessarily, you know, you don't want to back yourself into a corner and and force yourself to manufacture more of the same product over and over again. Um. But, you know, in the same way that Guardians was an experiment for the MCU, I could see the DCE, um, the, the DCEU. Mm -hmm. if, if DC um, created more and more films like this, I could see them experimenting in similar ways, having their foundational style that they then experiment from 
And I think that could be really interesting. And I think that could probably benefit them quite a lot if they continue in this direction. I think something you Either mentioned- With individual films or a new extended universe. Well, something you mentioned in the tweet that I was also thinking about because Meme brought it up. Like, you don't necessarily need to, if you wanted to do more DC characters in this Batman universe, you could just do it with more of the grounded superheroes in this universe, like Green Arrow or something. Yeah. Um, and of course- Actually. Batman itself is like rich ground for having many, 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 many characters introduced because Batman has a huge rogues gallery and a huge cast of supporting players. Yeah, you, I mean, the thing is, you could have a Batman cinematic universe. That's the thing. Um, like, that's the plan, seemingly, and, that they are going to do a Batman universe where Batman is at the center and, and all the other stuff spins off from it. And you could, they might even, you know, end up having characters that they because like the, they're probably going to introduce a robin and then have him turn into a nightwing and all this kind of stuff right you know mm-hmm. that would be yeah. nice well yeah i mean uh you could even do jason todd but not have the lazarus pit just have him have like a near-death experience and then i oh, want him man. i want him to have a lazarus pit that's guarded by a confederate war general <laughs> confederate civil war general oh, i want that I jonah heck. Yeah. <laughs> in crisis jonah heck <laughs> Oh, man. Um, is there anything else that you think needs raisin? Any pressing thoughts I, that he has? We, I think, have we officially sort of, because this is, what was the last DC movie? Was it The Suicide Squad? It was, yeah. Mm-hmm. So they've put out two, what I think are solid fives. At um, least. Yeah. Um, so I'm yeah. like, wow, that's kind of impressive. No. Um, <laughs> Not just five. Sorry, <laughs> The fives with like legitimately good things in them and um, potential yeah absolutely with sure. potential and, and if i compare this to, to marvel yeah i'm like oh. what the fuck is there even to begin yeah. to look forward to like i'm afraid for them to release uh, release things and i'm actually kind of interested in what dc will be putting out so i man what that's, I, that's yeah. how it is what a flip what <laughs> a fucking that. flip and I, I wonder if Same. it's something... All you had to do is get rid of Zack Snyder. It's, well, <laughs> something oh to get God. talked about. You can fucking clip us on that. I flip think, it. Um, I, feel like, it. I feel like in many ways the Batman is the film that Zack wishes he was making. No, I think I think that Zack Snyder makes the films that he wants to make. I just don't... He's just, just bad at making films. Right. I, I, I guess, I guess no, I, I want to rephrase that. I want to... I want to... Is that a coherent thought in my brain? It's just not. It's just I, I think I know what you're saying. And my mouth I think is I'm in the way. sort of. Yeah, I feel like this um, is. If you took a, I think that, how this is perceived this is how the, Zach wants to be perceived. Yeah, I think. Yeah. That, I think that the way. I think that when you see fans coming out of a Zack Snyder film, and maybe not the super crazy ones, but the ones who are like pretty into it, and they're going, "Oh, it's great for this reason and this reason and this reason," they're not describing Zach's work, but what they actually are describing is this film. I think I get what you mean. If you put on your your Zack Snyder, your Snyderoid glasses, and then you watch one of, like, if if you watch uh, Batman vs. Superman, you see this through the glasses. Yeah. Yeah, this is, this is what, this film is what Snyderoids see when they watch a Snyder film, I think. This is, this is us getting their experience rather than the the cringe. In terms of executing on the idea, looking at the yeah the like the more darker elements of the character um yeah and and doing it for the most part in a way that isn't cringe yeah where you have him being like you know what what does it mean to use vengeance as your main motivator when blah, 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 versus do you bleed You're like all right all right <laughs> yeah, <I'd chill> out. <laughs> um okay snyder I, I think uh, something that has been benef- and I guess it will become clearer at the end of this year, because this is the first of five DC films coming out this year. They make oh, it a lot of films really. this year. Holy well, yeah, because uh, they got Black Adam, then they got mm-hmm. The Flash, they've got mm-hmm. Batgirl, the HBO movie, and Aquaman 2. So making mm. like five movies that seem to be quite distinct from one another. It seems like DC cares a lot less now, and I imagine it is a byproduct of how badly it's gone so far, about really trying to make sure that each of these films connect and are like unified and cohesive. It feels almost like you've got whatever ideas people have 
that you just sort of do them and allow them to execute on the idea more so to what they want, whereas Marvel is a much more controlled environment by the looks of it. It seems like that approach may well just yield better results, not necessarily for a shared universe, but for like stories that are interesting and somewhat unique um, and can sort of achieve interesting things with their characters. Not that Marvel couldn't do that, but it feels like at this point, a lot of the way that Marvel films and TV shows are made, there is just like, but it's all about what's next. You know, that that's such a big aspect of it. But maybe we'll see that with these films, considering like The Flash seems to be setting up like huge things in terms of the future of that universe. But whatever, Batman's safe in his little, in his own little club. (laughs) (laughs) He's safe in that armor of his, that's for sure. Yeah. (laughs) What, um, Pat, what are you thinking after after all this? How do you feel about the Batman? Because the thing is, from what I've gathered, this film is adored, and then there's a small amount of people I've seen Uh who kind of hate it. But I feel like we have the most controversial position position ever of being like, it's pretty mid. Yeah, Yeah. it's It's got good good stuff, lots of bad stuff, lots of good, lots of bad, yeah. This is le- it's less um I think where the suicide squad was like super high super low and they just sort of eventually even out to a middle. Uh this one is a lot more I don't know I feel like it's more that the waves aren't as high or or low in a sense. Um I think I think I get what you mean in terms of the the like the plot in Suicide Squad it, is just completely yeah, and it's, utterly screwed. Like it's because I feel like it's got two things in that movie, which are characters and plot, and the characters that, are in, sure, yeah, yeah. Like, but it's 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 just like those are the, the there's a big negative and a big positive, hmm. and those are really what um, kind of the they're the biggest aspects of that. Where I feel like this movie has more that's going on. Mm-hmm. Well, so I think something I would highlight is that uh, when we talk, a lot of the issues we talked about were extreme contrivances and coincidences. There were a lot less just outright breaks um, in the logic, whereas like, which now, of course, that's a problem, but it's like it it ain't nearly as much of a problem as just breaks where there is a contradiction. There's just like a, a big contradiction that just breaks the story here. It's a lot of like man, it's really lucky that this lined up at this time. It's really lucky that this went that way. But they could have gone that way. It wasn't impossible. There are a few things where I think it's like, hmm, we might actually have contradictions. So yeah, I guess it's like the lows aren't as low. uh, And maybe because the Suicide Squad achieves a lot with character. um, I think the Batman also achieves a fair bit, but it feels like it could have gone higher uh, with the characters. Oh. What is the general sentiment that you're seeing? Um, a lot of very like a lot of different answers. Got, got a lot of things. Like some people are saying, just, I haven't seen it, so I don't know. Some someone said they're not gonna watch it. Um, I hope that's not because of us. I or think anything. you should. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's I, I would definitely while. recommend really this, is. especially for Batman fans. I would as well. Yeah. Yeah. I this would. is mm-hmm. this is not a five out of ten where it's just like it's, uh, there's nothing to it. You know, this definitely has a, a flavor to it that I would recommend. This is this is a five out of ten that's worth seeing. It's a meaty film. There's a lot to talk about. Um, there is in terms mm-hmm. of theme. I think it has value. I think it, I think it has a lot of value as a film. Um, not just from the craft perspective, but also from the writing perspective. Batman. And if you have seen it, Batman a rewatch a rewatch does d- clarify a lot of things. I think uh I think a rewatch is very helpful with this film. I can see myself rewatching it, but it'll be once it's out, not uh in the cinema again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um but yeah, I suppose that's that's about that. And since we're at seven and a half hours, we will likely move uh super chats to the catch up. Because uh we're a bit we're a bit long in the tooth already. The um so, but before such exits would be made, we should we talk a little about who everyone here even is and what they're up to in life? I think so. I guess we should go left to right to make it nice and easy. Hello. Uh, uh, I am Capital O Opinions. I have a YouTube channel. Sometimes I make videos there. You should watch them. Liar. Uh, I'm working on a... Because I'm working on a super, I hope, super funny video about the Matrix Resurrections and how oh boy. Uh, it's uh, making it. movies 
making movies bad on purpose is good actually it's gonna be great if you if you really don't like people like high top in terms of their video content you're gonna love this video Uh Um, i'm excited for it what a great sell (laughs) dude he fucking adored this film yeah, it's like I know he cried like eight times or something. He's he was it was like it was tailor made for him. Um, I'm sure his video yeah will go over all of the the stuff we've mentioned that is good, but maybe even point some stuff out that I didn't even see that was good in the film. Who knows? I'm hoping he can actually come out with like a decent video because he's very passionate about Batman and this film. Please don't be crazy. Don't hold your breath. <laughs> I don't know. Look like, at what shot on me, fam. Is that? Mm. Oh, I, I, I don't know about that. Like, because I, I don't know. The, we're look at we're gonna consider watching uh, Ben Shapiro's review. Apparently, that's out now. <laughs> that sounds like it would be very funny, depending <laughs> on what it says. It so. could be funny. His, his Star Wars <laughs> rankings were hilarious. I love well, the Star Wars rankings. Isn't isn't the meme? Didn't you talk about Jay that he thinks that Tross is better than in this film? So I know. So what he has said is that Shross is great and that this film is terrible. So right, I have so extrapolated just... from that that he thinks. I that love. That I would love to hear why. I need to hear why. <laughs> that yeah. requires justification. I think. I think that's a simple. That, that's got to be a fact at this point. Like we haven't checked, but yeah, it, it would make sense that Ben Shapiro believes the Rise of Skywalker is superior to the Batman, which is man. phenomenal. <laughs> that's fantastic. Aww. Man, it's just very funny, isn't it? Mm-hmm. That's hilarious. That is really funny. Yeah. Wait, hold on. Oh, oh, no, that's right, because he, he tweeted about it. So this was something that he said, which I'm guessing will be in the review. He says this, the Batman hates Batman as a character. I <laughs> fundamentally disagree okay. with this assertion. How can, and I don't understand. I don't get, I, I feel like this is the live action film that's gotten Batman the most out of all of them thus far. So I, I don't know. Was he gonna say like? Is he gonna say like? Oh, it's um, I don't know, cause it's got. Is he is he gonna say like the whole films thing of being critical of the pure fear approach and just beating? Is he gonna say that that's bad and that's anti Batman? I wonder. Jay, I do wonder. you want to join us for that coverage? Because that's <laughs> that would be fun. <laughs> I'll re- I'll raise my hand for that as well if uh, mm. if you'll have me. To bring back the same crew. Ooh, that would be cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, power part two of the Batman coverage. We gave Arcane four streams. I feel like Batman can have two. Can have two, yeah. Yeah. What are you working on, Jay? Yeah. I am working on... Well, I've got some some merch coming soon that I think um, oh, cool. the EFAT audience will be interested in. Mm-hmm. But um, Does it piss? other than that, it, <laughs> you, just, you can buy bottles of my <laughs> piss. Yes, finally. Gamer, Gamer piss. piss. <laughs> um, drinking it is not recommended, but you know, um, <laughs> you don't have to live according to recommendations. Gotta say that for legal reasons. Um, <laughs> and I've currently got a um, in a full critique of uh, Lego Star Wars: The Complete Saga, basically finished. I'm doing revisions on it at the moment, and that should be out pretty soon. Um, you're gonna get burned. Some. Um, I mean, you don't know what I say in it, though, do you, Morlet? Well, you no, know, no. I how don't could know. you possibly know what I say in it? Having anything but possibly hey, say about Lego is going to get you it. destroyed. I think I've made some revisions since the you saw the video. Sword. I, I might, might show it to you again. Lego Lloyd. Um, Mel, what are you up to, mate? Hello. What are you doing? I'm uh, playing Elden Ring all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's basically what I've been up to this last week. I streamed every day Elden Ring. I think I streamed like 60 hours the last week. Or maybe even more. I'm going to stream even more tomorrow. More Elden Ring. I'm still not finished. Uh, yeah. Also, I hope Metal someone's Sport. making you nuggies. No. No one's making you nuggies? What's the no point, one's then? making me nuggies. Mm. I, I just gonna die. <laughs> What's the point <laughs> of living? Uh, and yeah, the, the well, I wanted to talk about the Batman on Metal's Forge, but I realized uh, one, I don't really care too much about the movie that I want to talk about it, and also I want to rewatch it here. if I do. Sorry, just link them here. Just specifically, yeah. I was like, this is it. Hey, That's welcome to Metal's Forge. Here's the EFAB. 
Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Just have the have the editor put that at the beginning of this evening. Well, you, you do go. the live edit. I can do it. You, Carlton, yeah. just yeah, fill that out. Thank you. <laughs> See, I think I think I'll do just a medals forge on 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 my experience with Elden Ring uh, on on Monday. I think is my plan because I'm off work on Monday, so I have time to do that. So yeah, look out for that medals forge. Boy, hey. it's good stuff. What about you, Reem Mapository? Um, well, uh, Mandalorian video um, is still uh, still going, um, and Aquaman is also being edited at the moment for Refat Movies. Um, I'm also thinking about um, maybe uh, starting a podcast of my own for the simple reason that I have so many ideas floating around that I often, I don't know, I feel a little, sometimes I get overwhelmed with how many ideas I want to turn into videos that it ends up just not manifesting into anything. So I figure if I just have something every week, where I just choose a topic that I'm thinking about at the time, I draw up some notes in a roughly structured way, and I just ramble about that for a few hours. That might be, uh, that might that might just be a way to, um, I suppose, satiate that need and help and 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 help to focus the more um, edited work um, that uh, that I have in the work. So if that does go forward, I would be calling it the stream repository, both at, because it would be live streamed <laughs> oh. and Wait, because it would, be, it would be a both because it's live streamed and because it would be a stream of consciousness. So it's kind of a double meaning there, the obvious one and then the kind nice. of almost clever one. So that's, okay. that's, what I, that's what I'm getting up to. Um, well, Springy, what about you? I uh, got nothing right now. I'm just working. Damn. Rags, what about you? <laughs> no, just working away, working away. I, um, I'll probably have... I'll... I'll have a, I will have a dog bites video tomorrow around noonish, um, around EFAP time, and um, probably another one after that the next day. Uh, so you can go there and take a look at those while the big stuff's getting uh, taken care of, getting over the sump. The big stuff. Um, I bet you there's at least one person in chat right now who has no idea, but I put out a video the other day. Called TFA Part Four. If you want to go see it, <laughs> right there. I bet it's long and you don't say anything. It is long, and I don't. There say is at anything. least one person right now. There is one person going. What? What? <laughs> there probably would be statistically like I someone bet, like, who subscribed and been waiting for it and didn't know it's out. They're just like you. Fu you are joking. <laughs> it's like no, seriously. Reload the channel. You'll see it. It's right there. <laughs> I ain't lying. It was short. I hate you. <laughs> 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 DFA plus five one. one. No. Now, now they're all saying what? Well, I don't trust that all of you are those people. <laughs> I think you're lying to me. Uh, but yeah, go go check that out if you wanna. And work has already begun now on just the next thing. The thing you probably know what the next thing is gonna be since we're getting so close to April. But you know who knows? Oh, <gasps> the boys. Was the Halloween video. I, yes. Uh, nice. The Halloween video. <laughs> all <about> Halloween. <laughs> April Fools. Here's our Halloween coverage. Um. Yeah. I, I guess that's about it. Uh. Like I said, we'll we'll tackle today's super charms first on the catch up. Be on when Wednesday for that. I'll be on uh Real BBC on Tuesday. Other than that, I think that's 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 all of the things. Next week, you may very well see us checking out Ben Shapiro's. Fucking Batman review. Why not? I don't know. <laughs> I'm so excited, and I just can't hide it. I could, I could tell because you said it. I was like, you can't hide that. Damn. <laughs> um. But yeah. Anything else? Anything else before we run off? Oh. Mm, bum semen semen tired. bum semen semen bum. That's all I got. Semen bum semen semen. And can we can we do that together? Yeah, let's do it. Bum okay. semen semen bum semen bum semen semen bum semen semen bum semen. I, I, sort of I, sunk no already. Joke. It's incredible. <laughs> no joke. I just started chanting that randomly one morning, and then Mimet came up to me later that day and went, I've had bum semen, semen, bum semen, semen <laughs> all day. I don't know how you did it. It's a beautiful it was, song. It was, it was, it's a lot of, yeah, it's a lot of the power of music. I, I think so. I think so. It's got um, a nice waltz to it. Um, okay, so uh, thank you all for hanging out with us. Thank you all for the kind donations and commentary. I hope you had fun, and we shall see you next time. Bye-bye. Yeah. My boy, oh, goodbye. Goodbye.
Bum 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 b